All right, let me talk to you. In this video, you will be able to watch the entirety of four different playthroughs I've done on this channel. All of these playthroughs were done in the 100 days format, which means you will be able to see what I did each day. These four playthroughs are the vanilla playthrough, which is the base game with no mods. The Stardew Valley Expanded playthrough, the Stardew Valley but with loot boxes playthrough, and the Stardew Valley on easy mode playthrough. The playthroughs will be shown in that order, and I will have a quick segment before each one explaining some things about them, like the goals and the mods that are used in them. Feel free to use this video as background noise while you're working or studying or doing whatever you please. Or if you haven't seen one of them or any of them, I hope you enjoy them. As these playthroughs were recorded at different times over the last year or so, there will be differences in the audio and video quality, but hopefully that won't take away from the experience. So with that out of the way, let us get started with the first playthrough, the vanilla Stardew Valley playthrough. This is Stardew Valley at its most bare, no mods, no enhancements, nothing that could possibly give us an advantage of any kind. I'll keep this short and sweet. I set four goals for the first year, another four goals for the second year, and one final goal for the remainder of the playthrough. The goals for the first year are the following. Earn a total of one million gold, complete the community center, become roommates with Krobus, and collect 100 golden walnuts. The goals for the second year are to complete the fishing collection, complete the shipping collection, complete the monster eradication goals, and collect all 130 golden walnuts. Finally, the goal for the remainder of the playthrough will be to achieve perfection. So, let's not waste any more time, let's see how this playthrough went. We are breaking the mold on day one as we do what pretty much everybody else does on this day. Clear out space on our farm, make a chest, collect any forage items we find, which actually happens to be quite a few, become acquainted with the local trash can population, harvest fiber in the hopes of getting mixed seeds, collect spring onions, do some dilly-dallying at the beach, donate an artifact we dug up to the museum and receive 250 gold for it, plant our 15 parsnip seeds and spend the rest of the night harvesting some more fiber on the farm. It's straight to business on day two as we plant the mixed seeds we collected yesterday and water all of our crops. We chop down some trees, then we visit Willy or William where we receive Stardew Valley's official meta item, the fishing rod. I make a chest, then I spend the rest of the day fishing at the beach. That's right, it's going to be a fishing playthrough for the next couple of days. We're really going to be following the meta for this playthrough, at least during spring anyway. Opening up treasure chests provides me with a small dopamine boost every time, so that's something good at least. On day 3, we return to our natural habitat, the beach. We do some foraging, then some fishing while we wait for Willy's shop to open up. We sell the fish in our inventory, then sell the fish that I kept in the chest I put her yesterday, and buy the fiberglass rod and as much bait as I can afford. Then I committed an act that only a certified Tom Fooler would commit. I tried to pick up my chest, but it fell in the water. I was a bit miffed about that one, I can't lie to you. Once again, the rest of the day spent fishing. This time we have maneuvered ourselves to the river outside Leah's cabin. Our goal here is to catch as many shad and catfish as we can before the day ends. I was hoping to get the Neptune's Glaive, a really powerful weapon in a treasure chest, but fortune did not favor us today. We did reach level 4 in fishing though, so that was nice. You know the drill. On day four, we water all of our crops. It was at this point that I realized I am in for a really long spring. I plan on buying at least 80 strawberry seeds, so if we don't get a bunch of sprinklers pretty soon, I'm going to be watering my crops for the majority of every day. I head to the mountain lake and do some fishing. I promise we won't be fishing for the entirety of spring. This is just something we need to do right now. I take a quick break to deliver a daffodil to Haley, then it's back to the lake for the rest of the day. For the sake of being completely transparent, I want to show you all how badly I fumbled at 1am. This should have been an easy guaranteed catch with a treasure chest, but my brain cells went on vacation and I emerged from the battle empty handed. If there is one thing that became abundantly clear throughout this playthrough, it's that I am a professional fumbler. We reached level 5 in fishing though, so we're making good progress in that area. Marnie visits us on day 5 and presents us with an interesting proposition. We can adopt a cat. 
I immediately say yes and welcome Louis the cat into the family with open arms. I toss some fish and other items into our shipping bin and harvest the parsnips that have grown. Armed with a pickaxe and some chubs, I meet Marilyn in the mines who gives us a rusty sword. The entire day is spent in here. We reach new levels of bad luck as floor 18 ends up being a monster only floor. Things were looking grim for a moment, but Lady Luck smiled at us on this beautiful night. One of the slimes dropped a wood club. This is an absolute game changer. Armed with this wood club and complete sheer willpower, I defeat the rest of the monsters and eventually make my way to floor 20. I end up passing out on floor 22. How would I describe today? In the words of street poet and philosopher Ice Cube, it was a good day. Some of our mixed seeds have transformed into fully grown parsnips on day 6, so I harvest those with the quickness. I clear out some more space on my farm to prepare for the shenanigans we will be participating in later this month. Then I head to Clint's to sell some items and ask him to upgrade my pickaxe. I buy 141 potato seeds in Pierre. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. 141? Alright, this might just be the most progress I've ever made during the first week of spring. Unfortunately though, that is the end of the good news for today as we now have to plant and water each and every single one of those potato seeds. You'll notice the seeds have been planted in a 3x3 formation. That is because I have done something I normally never do. I have planned ahead. We're going to make as many quality sprinklers as we can this month to make sure we don't end up watering like 300 melon seeds every day during summer. Lady Luck has once again decided to shine a light on my life as I woke up to the beautiful sight of rain on day 7. I harvest a potato that has sprouted from a mixed seed, then it's time for some more fishing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody in between, there are multiple things that have happened during the last few weeks, both in real life and in Stardew Valley, that have made me realize my luck is not as bad as I once believed it to be. But this, this is the coup de grace. I opened a treasure chest while I was fishing, and I was blessed with the Neptune's glaive. When it comes to the mines and the enemies that can be found within, this weapon is a game changer. In fact, it's not game changer. It's game over. I continue fishing for the rest of the day, opening treasure chests, catching catfish, and overall just having a jolly good time. On day 8, I am suffering from success. Every single neuron in my brain is engaged as I painstakingly water every single seed I've planted so far. Low on energy, but high on life, I make my way to Pierre's shop to purchase 200 parsnip seeds. You know that phrase, go big or go home? Now, ordinarily I would go home because I'm very lazy, but I am a completely different beast now that I have acquired the Neptune's Glaive. I head to the mines and prepare for a day of adventuring when I realize I have made the rookie mistake of forgetting to collect my pickaxe from Clint. I return a short while later where I am quickly met with a monster-only floor. At this point, the oxygen in my body has been replaced entirely by unrivaled levels of motivation, so this was light work. I continue through the mines, making sure to return to the surface every once in a while to keep my furnaces smelting. I decide to return to my farm around 9pm to plant as many of the parsnip seeds I bought today as I can. In total, I planted around 70 of them. Mother sends us 500 gold in the mail on day 9, which is simply delightful. What is not simply delightful is the fact that between the parsnip and potato seeds, we have over 210 crops planted on our farm. A weaker person would simply water a good few of them, but mainly hope for a rainy day. A smarter person would have made as many basic sprinklers as possible before this point. I am neither. What I am, however, is stubborn to a disgusting extent. I water all of the seeds, completely exhausting myself multiple times. Then I head to the saloon and purchase six salads before spending the rest of the day gallivanting around the mines. Unfortunately, I met my mortal enemy very soon into this adventure. Floors 30 through 39 of the mines. A.K.A. the Dark Floors. A.K.A. the I can't see what I'm doing, I have no idea where I'm going, I'm just going to keep breaking rocks in the hope that I somehow stumble across a ladder floors. The good news is we made it to floor 47 before passing out. Louis provides me with some emotional support on day 10 as I water all of my seeds. This emotional support worked until I passed out from exhaustion. That's right, I passed out at 11.30 in the morning because I watered my crops too hard. 
thanks to that little kerfuffle, we awaken on day 11 with an energy bar that is half full. In a rare turn of events, I decide to utilize 10% of my brain power instead of the usual 7.5% and go foraging. Back on my farm, I feast upon the delicious items I collected while watering all of my seeds. You know that meme of the farmer saying, it ain't much, but it's honest work? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a lie. It is much work. In fact, I would go a step further and say it is an astronomical amount of work. It's off to the mines for the rest of the day where we very slowly make it down one level, then pass out. On day 12, I am happy to announce that all of our hard work during the last few days was absolutely worth it as all of our parsnips and potatoes are ready for harvest. I sell most of them to Pierre, earning around 15,000 gold. With our energy bar full and our spirits high, we spend the rest of the day in the mines before returning home at around 1 in the morning. We reach level 5 in farming, which is good, but we unlock quality sprinklers at level 6, so this might become an issue very soon. Demetrius pays us a visit on the luckiest of days, day 13. As always, we go with the fruit bats over the mushrooms. I spent some time in the mines collecting iron ore and making sure our furnaces are constantly smelting, then I entered the town square for the egg festival. I spent all of my gold on strawberries, buying a total of 151 of them. Now, in previous playthroughs, I sometimes made the choice to purposely lose the egg hunt. Not this time, baby. Not this time. I'm still riding the adrenaline wave that began when we harvested our parsnips and potatoes. There is adrenaline in my soul. Something something, Cody Rhodes. Uh, yeah, my, my, uh, my point is I dominated the egg hunt. The other competitors were a complete non-factor. The only things that existed were myself and the eggs. My victory culminated in me receiving the straw hat. Neat. Back on the farm, I plant all of the strawberry seeds before the day ends. We are making so much more progress than I thought we would. Honestly, I'm not that good at this game. I don't know how we have made it to this point. But, like a surfer in Australia, when something unexpected happens, you just have to ride the wave. It's back to basics on day 14 as we start the morning by watering all of our strawberry seeds. I head to the travelling cart to see what's on sale and looking back on this, I wish I hadn't done that. There were quite a few things in here that I wanted to purchase, but I only had two gold, so all I accomplished was teasing myself. We visit the wizard who teaches us how to read and speak Junimo. We can now donate items to the community center. Yes, I realize that we should have done this on day 15 rather than day 14, but hey, sometimes my priorities get discombobulated. Another round of foraging is on the agenda as I accidentally on purpose continuously ate all of the forage items I had during those days where we had hundreds of crops to water. I sell some of this forage to Pierre, collect a horseradish and a leek from the chest in the mines, Give Robin the axe she lost in the forest and complete the spring forage bundle in the community center. We receive 30 spring seeds for this, which I sell to Pierre. Then it's back to the traveling cart. Yeah, I couldn't resist. I needed to buy the fruit salad so I could give it to Haley for her birthday. I give Leah a jade that she requested as part of a quest. Then I give Haley a present that cost me over 2,000 gold. Never let it be said that I don't care about the villagers in this town. Because I do. A lot. I also give Pierre a gift to complete one of the introduction quests that requires you to give a gift to a villager after speaking to all of the villagers. The rest of the day is spent in the mines where we pass out on floor 69. We have a bit of a problemo on day 15. Our energy bar is currently on the floor as a result of us passing out in the mines last night. The good news is it's salmonberry season so we have easy access to energy for the next 4 days. Haley and Emily are having a quarrel over who should clean the couch. Guy like me, I would simply purchase a brand new couch to avoid having to clean the old one, but that's just me. I collect a good few salmon berries around town and in the forest, then I inhale them to get enough energy to be able to water all of my strawberry seeds. I buy two green beans and a cauliflower seed in piers, then surprise surprise it's off to the mines for the rest of the day. We make it down to floor 73 before we pass out. I really need to stop passing out. I finally make two scarecrows on day 16. I do not know why I didn't do this sooner, but it is what it is. We continue our brand new tradition of collecting salmon berries, then returning to the farm to water our strawberries before heading to the mines for the rest of the day. 
We've got plenty of refined quartz and iron bars at this point, so we really need to get to floor 80 so we can start collecting gold ore. Thankfully, we do manage to get to level 80 just before the day ends, so things are looking really good. We reach level 5 in mining, so I choose the Miner perk, which gives us one extra ore per vein. Can you guess what we do on day 17? If you said, collect salmon berries, water the strawberry seeds, and spend the rest of the day in the mines, you would be absolutely correct. I feel like now is a good time to mention that things will get more interesting soon, I promise. I, I, just, I just bit off more than I can chew with all of these strawberry seeds I bought, so I need to get at least 20 quality sprinklers as soon as possible. We make it down to floor 90 where we obtain the Obsidian Edge Sword. It is with a heavy heart that I cast the Neptune's Glaive to the side. You served me well. Thank you. Something peculiar happened though. The game straight up wouldn't let me throw the Neptune's Glaive in the trash. Like I literally couldn't do it. Perhaps that is Stardew Valley's way of telling us to treasure the things that we hold dear to us. That the emergence of new things in our lives doesn't mean we need to forget about the old things that are still beautiful. For example, I used to love Pepsi. Absolutely love it. I would guzzle a liter of it every day, which probably wasn't the best choice now that I think about it. But anyway, one day I found a can of Cherry Pepsi. And it was sensational, exquisite, immaculate, other adjectives. Though my fondness for Cherry Pepsi grew stronger, I still retained an appreciation for the normal Pepsi. I don't know where I'm going with this. Thank you for coming to my TED talk, I suppose. Right, day 18. You know how it is. Water as many crops as we can, collect salmon berries, finish watering our crops. Go fishing and catch a smallmouth bass, which I give to Penny to complete the quest she gave us. Give a parsnip to Pam for her birthday. And continue our escapades in the mines. We make it down to floor 98, but I don't want to push my luck too far, so I leave and head back home. I did not make it home, however. I passed out by Linus's tent. It's raining on day 19, which I am very thankful for because salmon berries have stopped growing, so that source of energy is gone. I spent some time in the mines, but I became exhausted on floor 98, so I left. I decided to spend the rest of the day fishing in order to collect the fish we need for the community center. First we head to Leah's cabin, then we move to the beach. I have to say, this was a very nice change of pace compared to the last few days. I feel peaceful. Our strawberries still haven't fully grown on day 20, so that was a bit of a mild annoyance. I grab some diamonds from my chest in the mines and sell them to Clint, then I buy four spaghettis and a beer in the saloon. I give the beer to Shane as a birthday present, who thanks me by saying, Why are you bothering me? I want to be alone. Bit rude. We make it down to floor 100 of the mines, where we receive a star drop. It reminds me of my favorite thing. Water. I'm just going to leave that there for a moment. Stay hydrated. And also hug the people you care about. As I am watering my crops on day 21, I can feel it. That special feeling deep down in my soul. That feeling that lets me know we won't have to water these crops manually for much longer. Somehow, some way, we will make a ton of sprinklers within the next two days. What can I say? I've got that sprinkler sensation. Today wasn't a very interesting day though, we just went to the mines again. We did have a very close call on floor 108 though, where we just barely managed to escape the mines without being knocked out by the bats. AKA, the fart goblins. Our strawberries are finally ready for harvest on day 22. I cannot even begin to describe how happy this made me. It felt like the good old days where you wake up early on a Saturday morning. Everybody else is in bed, so you go downstairs and sit in front of the TV. You watch cartoons while eating the biggest bowl of cereal you've ever made in your life. All is well. I sell most of my strawberries to Pierre and buy some spring crops. I return to my farm to plant these seeds. Then it's time. Up to this point, I've been going through the mines with a copper pickaxe and no backpack upgrades. I think we've used up all of our good luck. We need to wait until we upgrade our pickaxe and buy at least one backpack upgrade before we go any further in the mines. That is something that I will never ever say. We have come way too far to back down now. I steamroll through the mines, every ounce of vile and venom, passion and willpower that runs through my veins has levitated upwards. 
attaching itself to my skin, pushing me further and further towards my goal. Every time that little voice in the back of my head tells me to give up, I push it to the side, for that voice does not matter to me. What matters is that I make the most of the situation I have found myself in. With a level of dedication flowing through my body that I have not felt in years, I keep repeating one single phrase to myself. I can, I will, I must. I can, I will, I must. The monsters, nay the minor inconveniences could do nothing to stop me as I delved deeper and deeper into the mines. For the last 22 days I have been working on one single story. That story has one ending. I must reach the final floor. I can, I will, and I must finish the story. And that is exactly what I do. I make it to floor 120. I obtain the skull key. I am proud. I am happy. But more than anything else, I am exhausted. This segment lasted maybe a minute at the most. I'll have you know I spent around 8 minutes sweating and shaking while making my way to the final floor. To end the day I bask in the silence of victory as I watch my furnaces smelting the gold ore I have placed within them. On day 23 we keep the momentum going and make 20 quality sprinklers. Hot diggity dog life is good right now which normally means things are about to go very wrong for me. I make another 4 sprinklers and begin planting the rest of the parsnip seeds we purchased a few days ago. I pretty much went all in on this and ended up realizing that I need another 10 quality sprinklers. I head to the mines and spend most of the day collecting the ores I need, then I return to the farm, make the 10 sprinklers and place them down. I say goodnight to Louie and head to Sleepy Town. Hey, that rhymed! On day 24, I realized that I made a slight mistake when I was planting the strawberry seeds. This has resulted in there being a single vertical line of crops that aren't being watered by our sprinklers. But it's not really a big deal. I head to the flower dance where I purchase the tub of flowers recipe and a rare curl from Pierre. Then I ask Haley to dance. I won't lie, I wasn't paying attention at all this day because I was too busy staring at my phone. I was watching Drew McIntyre vs Sheamus vs Gunther from WrestleMania 39. On day 25, I realized that I have grown to love our little strawberry farm. In fact, I don't want to leave. I feel like a schoolboy on Sunday. It's nearly tomorrow and I don't want to go. But alas, we have work to do. I collect some gems and geodes from my chest in the mines, purchase the first backpack upgrade and an apple tree sapling appears, and plant it on the farm. I donate my gems to the museum, ask Clint to crack open some geodes, donate more items to the museum, and ask Clint to crack open a few more geodes. I then ask Clint to upgrade my axe before donating the final couple of items I have to the museum. We've been very busy during the last week or two, so I decide to take a chill pill and spend the rest of the day fishing at the mountain lake. I visit the traveling cart on day 26 where I purchase a lobster, a coconut, a cactus fruit and a rare seed. I spend some time collecting iron ore in the mines, then I give a daffodil to Pierre for his birthday. Again, I decide to take it easy for the rest of the day and fish at the beach. I also want to catch the legend fish before spring ends, so we need to get to at least level 8 or 9 in fishing really soon. We've got another strawberry harvest on day 27, which is absolutely sensational. I donate a green bean, a cauliflower and a potato to the community center, then I realize I forgot to bring a parsnip. Even when I'm making decent progress, I still have that scallywag mentality. I sell most of our strawberries to Pierre, then I return to the community center with the parsnip we need, completing the spring crops bundle and unlocking access to the other bundles. I complete the crab pot bundle and donate some fish to the other fishing bundles and I complete the entirety of the boiler room. This means the minecart system will be repaired which should make things a bit more convenient for us. The majority of the day is spent giving Emily a birthday present and going back and forth to the community center with the items we have that can be donated. We reach level 8 in farming so we can start making kegs as soon as we get some oak resin. Day 28, the final day of spring. Our parsnips are ready for harvest, so that's a really nice way to start the day. I donate 5 gold star parsnips to the community center, buy a, a puffer fish, a coffee bean and a fish stew from the traveling cart and sell our parsnips to Pier. Just to be on the safe side, I buy 5 of each spring seed. 
I buy some bait from Willy and I almost bought the Iridium Rod, but it cost 7500 gold, so I figured I'd be fine without it. I could just use the fiberglass rod without the lead bobber or any attachment like that. I was wrong. In fact, I wasn't just wrong, I was very wrong. That was the single worst decision I have ever made while playing Stardew Valley. This reality set in very quickly when I attempted to catch the legend fish and I failed. Horribly. But that's okay, right? I mean, we've got our fish stew bumping us up to level 10 in fishing and we've basically got the whole day to catch it. Yeah, yeah, no. No, I, I tried. I really, really tried to catch that beast of a fish, but I just couldn't do it. It embarrassed me at every turn. At one point, I began to wonder if I should ever be allowed to touch a fishing rod again after my absolutely flabbergasting attempts at catching the legend. I just wasn't strong enough to catch it. I'm a... <laughs> I'm a... I, I'm a weak man in its dojo of masculinity. I definitely stole that line. There's no way I made that one up. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure Moist Critical or Penguin Zero said it in the video he did with voiceover Pete where they eat chicken wings. Anyway, yeah, I failed to catch the legend. This has been a very humbling experience, I must say. It's not exactly how I wanted spring to end, but I mean, you know, like what can you do? Let's just let's just move on to summer. I'm I'm sorry for how that went. All right, we had a decent start with spring, but it's a brand new season. There shall be no lollygagging, no daily dallying, no tomfoolery, and absolutely no form of shenanigans during summer. We need to be serious. I collect my axe from Clint and buy a few summer seeds from Pierre. I didn't notice my inventory was almost full, so I couldn't buy all of them, but I did get 249 melon seeds and everything we need for the community center. I head back to the farm and start planting these seeds. It takes a while, but we do get everything planted. We're still on track to complete the community center around the start of winter too, so things are looking good for us. I spend the rest of the day chopping down trees, taking advantage of our upgraded axe. Day 30 begins with a trip to the mines to collect a red and purple mushroom from a chest. I probably should have moved this chest to my farm, but it, it keeps the day interesting, you know, it keeps me on my toes. We, we need something like this, I'm going to leave it there for another few days maybe. I donate several items to the crafts room, finishing off the summer foraging, exotic foraging, and construction bundles. I also donate a couple of mushrooms to the bounty board bundles. The rest of the day is spent collecting copper ore and iron ore in the mines. I passed out at 2am. In the mines. I need to stop doing that. I start day 31 by chopping down trees. We're going to be doing a lot of tree chopping this month. I need a ton of wood for a coop, a barn, and at least one upgrade for both of them. I also finally move my chest and furnaces in the mines to the farm. I make five tappers and stick them on a few trees so we can get oak resin and maple syrup. We need both of these items for the community center and we also need oak resin to make kegs in the future. Now that I think about it, I should have done this during spring, but oh well. Chopping down trees is next on the agenda, followed by the construction of a preserve jar which I toss a spiceberry into. I fully intended on spending the rest of the day fishing, but uh, yeah, I got bored, so I went to sleep. That, that's it for today. Day 32 begins with a quest. Clint de Pooh would like to inspect 35 copper ores. We will collect those for him at some point. I caught a sunfish for the community center as well as a tilapia, a tuna, and a sturgeon. All of these get donated to the community center. I decide to sell some fish and fishing related items to William, then I buy the summer seeds I didn't get on the first day of summer. I make six quality sprinklers and get everything planted and watered. I catch a bream which also gets donated to the community center. I spend the rest of the day in the mines collecting copper ore and quartz. I have some horrible news on day 33. I passed out in the mines last night. Again. So I, I woke up with almost no energy. I accidentally swung my pickaxe on my farm so I was exhausted straight away. T this, this is not a day already. I checked the traveling cart and the duck feather and large egg look very tantalizing. And by that I mean we need them for the community center. I do a bit of foraging to find some scrum diddlyumptious items that we will... <laughs> Sorry. 
I do a bit of foraging to find some scrum diddly umptious items that will increase my energy. Then I do a tiny bit of fishing and sell the fish I catch to Willy. With 2000 gold in my pocket, I head to the traveling cart and buy the duck feather and the large egg. Oh wait, no I didn't, because I accidentally bought an octopus. Look, I'm going to be completely honest here, summer did not end up being a good season for me. I didn't realize, but this was the beginning of the darkest timeline. I head to Clint's and show him the 35 copper ores I collected last night to complete his quest. Luckily, the gold I received as a reward for this was just enough for me to be able to afford the egg. I decided to spend the rest of the day chopping down trees until my energy ran out, which didn't take very long at all. But tomorrow is a new day. I'm feeling... hopeful. Our spiceberry jam is ready on day 34. I guarantee that it tastes amazing. Like, like there's no way it isn't one of the best jams that has ever been made. I really want to try it now. I collect some fruit from our bat cave and chop down even more trees. I want to say that I won't mention me chopping down trees anymore, but I'm fairly certain I spent a good portion of summer chopping down trees, so I'll, I'll play it by ear. If the only thing I did on any given day was chop down trees, then I'll mention it, but otherwise my lips are sealed. I donate a couple of items to the museum, sell a few minerals to Clinty Winty, and finally repair the broken bridge at the beach. Again, this is something I should have done during spring, but this is a learning experience for me. Alright, I am legitimately surprised I've even made it this far. Speaking of learning experiences, I tried to catch the crimson fish. This is one of the legendary fish. I thought I would be more than capable of catching this fish. I've done it many, many times in the past. I was wrong. I could not catch it. Also, spoiler alert, I completely forgot to come back here at any point during the rest of summer, so we never caught the crimson fish. I'm gonna have to do a 200 days video in the future. This is, this is just embarrassing at this point. Any whomst, I donate a few items to the community center, then I spend the rest of the day chopping down- Okay, no, not saying that. Uh, let's just move on to the next day. I have an announcement to make on day 35. If there's one thing you need to know about me, it's that I do not get nervous. Okay, no, I'm, I'm lying. I do. Quite often, actually. My point is, my nerves are slowly starting to go through the roof every time I go to the traveling cart and the red cabbage seeds aren't being sold. We need that for the community center. If we don't get them, then this whole thing falls apart and I'm guaranteed to fail at least two of my goals. I become a good Samaritan and donate a couple of items to the museum to calm my nerves. I also collect the melon and starfruit seeds we received as rewards for a donation so far. I sell a few items to Clint and we don't have enough to ask him to upgrade our axe. That is unfortunate. I sell a few of those melon seeds to Pierre to reach exactly 5,000 gold, then I return to Clint and ask him to upgrade our axe. I spend the rest of the day collecting iron ore. And I actually went to sleep instead of passing out in the mines this time. On day 36, I head to the mines to do some fishing. I catch an ice pip, which is good because we can throw this into the soup at the Luau later this month. I also catch a ghost fish for the community center. I spent some time fishing at the mountain lake, then I head back to the farm and throw most of the fish I caught today into the shipping bin. Some radishes and peppers are ready for harvest on day 37, which is... you know... nice. I make a few generous donations to the community center, even more generous donations to the museum, collect my axe from Clint and ask him to crack open some geodes. The items we received from these geodes get donated immediately, then it's back to the farm to throw pretty much our entire inventory into the shipping bin. Next, I chop down the log that's blocking the entrance to the secret woods. This is an absolute game changer. Actually, no. No, it's not. I, I, I don't know why I said that. But we can get hardwood here, we can collect fiddlehead ferns, and we can catch the wood skip. Also, I probably should have mentioned this sooner, but I've been smelting copper, iron, and gold ores and quartz in our furnaces the whole time. Continuing my quest to become Santa Claus, I deliver more items to the community center. We're actually making decent progress on the whole community center thing. I'm surprised. Like, I'm, I'm happy, but I'm really surprised I haven't missed anything so far. I catch a rainbow trout, then I grow tired of the town river. I simply do not vibe with its aesthetic. So I head to the mountain lake instead. Something whimsical happened here near the end of the day. I became absolutely mesmerized by the scenery here. 
I decided to pause for a while and simply take in this moment. Then I started walking back to the farm. This is the first time in a long time I haven't been in a rush to get home at night, so I was finally able to appreciate the nighttime energy of Pelican Town. I want to move here. In, in, like, in real life, I mean, I want to be here. Give me a little cabin with a fireplace and a little garden where I can grow some vegetables. Look, it's the little things in life that matter. Two oak resins are ready to collect on day 38. I donate one of these to the community center and then I make a troubling discovery. I missed Gus's birthday. Th this was rough. It completely ruined my day. Gus is an absolute gentleman. I cannot believe I forgot about him. Today is Maru's birthday though, so I give her a strawberry. So that kinda cancels out my little kerfuffle with Gus's birthday, right? I ask Robin to build a coop on her farm, catch a couple of fish, and empty my inventory into the bin of shipping. Some poppies and radishes are fully grown on day 39. I don't care about the radishes. The poppies, though, these are huge. And by huge, I mean we need one for the community center. I collect the ice pip from my chest and head to the luau. The fish was enough to get the best reaction from the governor, earning a tasty 120 friendship points with the villagers. I know I didn't do much today, but it was nice. Sometimes you need a lazy day. A actually, I've had a few of those so far. Uh, but uh, our melons still aren't ready on day 40, but some of our other crops are, so I'll, I'll take that. I collect two maple syrups at the bus stop, make a bee house, and donate a few items to the community center. At this point, I'm still feeling good about how our community center progress is going. But if there's one thing you need to know about me, it's that I am a certified jinxer. Like, it is baffling how often I jinx things. It's at the point where I think very carefully about whether I want to vocalize something or not. But I'm going to vocalize this. We will complete the community center before the end of winter. Uh... uh oh, okay. I, I shouldn't have said that. That's, that's going to backfire. Oh boy. Anyway, I sell my crops and forage items to Pierre and buy 25 wheat seeds. I head to the traveling cart and as always, red cabbage seeds are not being sold. That's okay. We have like 20 more opportunities between now and the end of winter. It'll be okay. I, I hope it'll be okay. I make a keg and throw a cherry into it, then I plant our wheat seeds. Day 41 is an absolutely marvelous day. First of all, it's raining, which means we can go fishing and catch the red snapper, which we need for the community center. As well as this, our melons are ready for harvest. I do some foraging at the beach, sell this forage to Willy and catch the aforementioned red snapper. I donate this and some melons, sell my melons to Pierre and buy 500 melon seeds. I ask Clinty Bear to upgrade my pickaxe, then I spend the rest of the day planting our melon seeds. Even after making some more sprinklers, we still don't have enough to cover all 500 melon seeds, but I did manage to get 370 of them planted. We reached level 9 in farming and unlocked the ability to craft iridium sprinklers, so that will be handy in the future. We also reached level 10 in farming, so I picked the perk that causes crops to grow 10% faster. Mother sends us a lovely pink cake on day 42. Thank you. I harvest some blueberries and visit the traveling cart. Unsurprisingly, the one thing I need still isn't being sold. I did buy two complete breakfasts, though. They give a plus two to farming, so I'll eat those during fall when we're about to harvest a ton of pumpkins. I also bought a walleye, which I donate to the community center along with a blueberry. I head to Robins and buy some wood and stone and ask her to build a barn on her farm. It's off to Marnie's next, where I buy some hay and welcome four chickens into the family. Joyce, Tato, Boo, and Sully will make fine additions to our farm. I say hello to our new chicken family, spend some time clearing out more space on the farm, and buy three bean hot pots, ten coffees, and ten spaghettis in the saloon. I donate ten hay to the community center just before the day ends. Our hops are ready for harvest on day 43, so we hop right on that. Do you, uh, do you, uh, I, was too, I, I was too early to enter Clint's, sorry. I was too early to enter Clint's shop, so I just stood there doing nothing. Then the shop opened up, so I went in and collected my pickaxe. I decided to spend some time collecting gold ore. Also, I hate when this happens. You go down a ladder in the mines and you literally cannot move because another ladder is blocking your way. 
I see gold ore and fire quartz, which made this even worse because I couldn't get to them. I was a bit miffed about this, I won't lie to you. Eventually I ran into a monster only floor, so I left and went to the ice floors instead so I could get iron ore and coal. The crop fairy paid us a visit during the night though, so maybe our good luck is coming back. Day 44 is a big collection day. I collect gold bars, honey, melons, hops and wheat. I sell most of our melons to Pierre and donate the honey and wheat to the community center. It's back to the mines once again for even more iron ore and coal. Once again, I am putting the knowledge I have acquired thus far to use. And by that I mean I don't pass out in the mines anymore. I decide to take a bit of a risk on day 45. I plant some melon seeds and one starfruit seed and cover them in the speed grow we received as a reward for completing the spring crops bundle in the community center. Truth be told, I do not know if this will work out. I'm hoping they'll be ready around the last day of summer. But there is a very real possibility I just wasted those melon seeds and the starfruit seed. I head to Marnie's and buy two cows. Please welcome Butters and Cody to the family. I make a mayonnaise machine and I realize that my farm looks like a complete mess right now. I know. I won't lie to you, it's probably going to stay this way for a while. I think it'll be during winter when I finally work on making my farm look aesthetically pleasing. Piers is still closed on Wednesdays. I should know that by now. I ask Robin to upgrade our coop and that's it for today. I start day 46 by taking a look at our financial situation. It's not looking good. We haven't even reached a total of 200,000 gold so we really need to step up our game during fall. I'm not talking 100% effort, I'm talking 101% effort. I pay a visit to my animals to make sure their vibes are good, throw some items into my shipping bin, donate a corn to the community center, and buy 31 radish seeds from Pierre. I know radish seeds are a bit of an odd choice right now, but we need gold and this is the only crop we can get that is guaranteed to grow before the end of summer. A bottle of wine is ready on day 47, so we collect that. Moment of truth time? Will the traveling cart be selling red cabbage seeds? If you said yes, then I appreciate that, but no. No, they're not being sold. I did buy a common mushroom for the community center though, and I bought a duck. I decide to call it clay. I donate the wine and common mushroom, then I spend the rest of the day in the mines collecting minerals and copper ore. Day 48 is another mini sale day. The small things add up, alright, it's the little things that count. I've said that before, I'll say it again, I'll keep saying it to justify me having mini sale days. We will reach 1 million gold, alright, that's my point. It, it needs to happen, I can't fail that goal. Somehow, some way, I will do it. Probably. I donate two dwarf scrolls to the museum, crack open some geodes, ask Clint to upgrade our watering can, and donate more items to the museum. Then I went to sleep. On day 49, the traveling cart isn't selling what we need. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get a bit anxious now. I decide to cool my nerves by heading to the mines. I've got a plan this time, and it's a good one. I go down to floor 70, then immediately go down to floor 71 and collect the iron ore there. Then I return to the surface, then back down to floor 70 and 71, over and over again. I used the iron ore we got from this to make bombs. Then I head down to floor 115 and make my way to floor 118 before returning to the surface. All the while using bombs to blow up clusters of rocks along the way. The whole point of this was to get as many geodes as we can. After a few minutes of doing this, I emerged with one Omni Geode, one Frozen Geode, and one Magma Geode. I was... I was disappointed with this result. Maybe it wasn't a good plan after all, now that I look back on it. We did get a good bit of gold ore though, so that kinda made up for it. I collect my watering can from Clint on day 50, crack open the geodes we have, and ask him to upgrade our watering can again. Slowly but surely, our museum is starting to fill up. Very slowly, admittedly, but we're getting there. We did get 9 pumpkin seeds as a reward though, so that was a nice bonus. I finally ask Robin to build a silo on our farm, then I spend the rest of the day doing some landscaping. We reach level 6 in foraging, so we can finally start making lightning rods. Our radishes are ready on day 51. The entire day is spent in the mines collecting iron ore. I'm beginning to realize how much I've said that during this video. Sorry. It's going to happen again, but sorry. I passed out right beside my bed. 
On day 52, I almost made a mistake I have made multiple times so far. I was on my way to piers when I realized it's Wednesday. I throw my inventory into the shipping bin instead and donate a duck egg to the community center. I also give Willy a diamond for his birthday. I have fallen behind on our friendships, but I will never forget about him. I collected my watering can from Clint and then I went to sleep. I, I was very lazy during summer. I don't know what I was thinking. Honestly, I blame Easter. I ate two cream eggs on Easter Sunday and I felt like a trash bag full of soggy cornflakes. I, I don't know why I'm telling you this. Let's just move. Let's just, let let's move on very quickly. It's finally time to harvest our melons on day 53. Each and every melon I picked up provided me with a slight dopamine boost. By the end of it, I felt like someone who is really happy. I, I'm not. I'm not good with metaphors. I'm, let me think. Let me think. I felt like Harold and Kumar when they finally get their burgers in White Castle. That. That might be a bad reference, actually, I don't know how many people have seen Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Look, my point is, I was very happy. My happiness reached new heights when I sold those melons to Pier and ended up with 120,000 gold. I asked Robin to upgrade our barn, purchase 75 corn seeds, buy 50 coal, and ask Clint to upgrade our pickaxe. I also finally purchased everything in the vault room. That's two of the rooms in the community center completed. And the bus will be unlocked tomorrow, so we're doing very nicely for ourselves, which is, you know, nice. I went to sleep because I was afraid I would spend all of my gold if I stayed awake for the rest of the day. The rest of our melons are ready on day 54. I plant our corn seeds and use the quality fertilizer we received from the community center to increase the chance of getting gold star corn. I head to Calico Desert for the first time for one reason and one reason only to catch a sandfish. I sell some items to Pierre, but I keep some gold star melons for energy. Then I donate the sandfish, which means we only have one fish left to donate, the tiger trout. But we have to wait until fall before we can catch it. I also buy some hay, a milk pail, and shears from Marnie. Day 55, the penultimate day of summer. I decide to ship some of the items I've been keeping so far that I don't really need. With that being said, I guarantee I'll end up regretting this choice in the future when it turns out I did actually need some of those items, but we'll deal with that should it happen. I collect my gold pickaxe from Clint and head to the desert where I enter the Skull Cavern. I did alright here, I, I suppose. Floor 9 was a monster only floor and it was full of those Pepper Rex monsters, so that was not enjoyable at all. We didn't even get a dinosaur egg from them. I eventually made it down to the next floor, but things only got worse as floor 13 was another monster-only floor. And we got knocked out. And we lost our obsidian edge sword. Uh, okay, that, that was actually worst case scenario. I, I don't know what to do now. Um, we're either going to have to use the item recovery service in the Adventurer's Guild to get it back, or we're going to have to buy a new sword, and I really don't want to spend any gold. How did we go from a decent spring to a disgustingly bad summer? On day 56, Mr... Uh-oh. Mr... Mr. Key? Mr. Chi? Look, I'm gonna go with Mr. Key. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, there's no definitive way of saying his name, so... Mr. Key challenges us to make it to at least level 25 of the Skull Caverns. Yeah, don't talk to me. I, I, I don't want anything to do with the Skull Caverns after yesterday. Something good did happen today though. Our one starfruit grew, so that was nice. I sell most of our melon seeds to Pierre just so we can buy as many pumpkin seeds as possible tomorrow. I head to the traveling cart and surprise surprise, no red cabbage seeds. At this point I was completely over summer, so I did something I have never ever done before. I skipped the dance of the Moonlight Jellies Festival and I went straight to sleep. So that was a weird season. Ups and downs. But listen... Tomorrow is the dawn of a new season. I can feel it in my soul. Fall will be our best season so far. Day 57. It's time for a new era in our adventure. This is the single most important season during this video so far. We need to be on our A game. Zero mistakes, always operating at 13.8% brain power. A little shopping spree takes place at Piers as I buy a few of each seed, along with 100 cranberry seeds and 300 pumpkin seeds. 
I donate a large egg to the community center, then it's time for some fishing. We're going for a legendary fish here, the angler fish. Now if there's one thing you need to know about this fish, it's that it is arguably the easiest legendary fish to catch. So I was very, very relieved when I actually did catch it. If I failed to catch the angler fish, then I would have just ended the video right here. I do a bit of fishing at the river and catch a tiger trout, then I head to Willy's to sell the fish we have. I donate the tiger trout to the community center, completing the final fishing bundle. Back on the farm, I get to work on planting all of the seeds we bought. I was able to get all of the cranberry seeds and half of the pumpkin seeds planted before the day ends. The morning of day 58 is spent planting the rest of our seeds. I throw some of the items we have been keeping for no reason into our shipping bin, and I finally plant the last of our pumpkin seeds. The special orders board has been built in town. We can either collect 100 bones for Gunther, or we can collect 80 hardwood for Robin. I decide to go with Gunther's special order, but spoiler alert, I completely forgot about it. I donate some bone artifacts to the museum, ask Clint to crack open some geodes, and donate the resulting items to the museum. Day 59 begins with a visit to our bat cave to collect some fruit that we don't really need. But our apple tree has produced three apples, so I collect those. I milk my cows and receive a large milk. This is good, we need that for the community center. I head to Marnie's and buy a goat. I decide to name this goat after my favorite Grand Theft Auto character, Versetti. Looking back on this, I wish I had called the goat Leota instead, as in Ray Leota. He was genuinely such a fantastic actor. Willy gives us a copper pan, which means we can do some panning. I don't know if we'll do that at any point before the end of winter, to be honest, it's always too much hassle trying to find a panning spot. Actually, never mind, I found a panning spot. And we received 6 gold ore and an omni geode. Okay, maybe we will do some panning during this video. I buy some salads in the saloon, donate 3 apples and a large milk to the community center and head to the adventurers guild. The lava katana costs 25,000 gold. Right. Okay, I, I wanted to buy it, but I don't have the capacity for that. So instead, I use the item recovery service to get my obsidian edge sword back. I also collect a skeleton mask as a reward for defeating a certain number of skeletons. I don't know how many it was. I'm going to say 17,000. I feel like that's a good number to, to say. We're also not doing too bad when it comes to the monster eradication goals. I thought we'd be in a much worse position with those. I collect a hazelnut at the bus stop and immediately donate it to the community center, completing the fall foraging bundle. Marlin sends us our obsidian edge sword on day 60. I water the single vertical line of crops that aren't being watered by our sprinklers, still, and collect a pomegranate in our bat cave. This pomegranate is then donated. I take the bus to the desert and spend the rest of the day in the skull cavern. Our goal in the Skull Cavern is primarily to collect as many Omni Geodes as we can. It's time for us to donate a total of 60 items to the museum so we can unlock the sewers and meet Krobus. We make it down to floor 21 before the day ends. I'll get better at going through the Skull Caverns. At, at some point during this month, we're going to get to at least floor 50. I head to Clint's on day 61 and ask him to crack open our Geodes, and the items we receive are of course donated to the museum. We're going to be doing this quite a bit during fall. The traveling cart is still working against us. At this point, I'm starting to believe that the traveling cart is an undercover operative who has been given the mission of making sure we can't complete the community center. That's just the vibe I'm getting here. It's back to the Skull Cavern for the rest of the day where we do slightly better than we did yesterday. We receive some cactus seeds from a chest on floor 18. These aren't the seeds we're looking for. Things were going very well. We made it down to floor 34. Then we got knocked out. I was legitimately horrified when this happened. I was even more horrified when I saw that we lost our Omni Geodes. I make a beeline for the Adventures Guild and ask Merlin to retrieve those Omni Geodes. And he did it for free. Okay, maybe this wasn't such a bad day after all. We need money and our crops won't be ready for another few days, so I toss some items into the shipping bin at the end of the day. Mr. Key sends us 10,000 gold for reaching floor 25 in the Skull Cavern, and Marlin sends us our Omni Geodes on day 62. What a delightful start to the day. I sell some goods to Pierre, buy some wood and stone in Robins and ask her to upgrade our coop. But we can't afford it. So I ask Clint to open up our Geodes and make some donations to the museum. 
we're getting really close to that 60 item mark. Some items get thrown into the shipping bin, other items get sold to Clint and we return to Robins. I have decided that I want to upgrade my barn instead so I buy the wood and stone I need then I realize I don't have enough gold for the barn upgrade. I, I, I don't know what's happening to me, my brain cells have gone on vacation. I decide to go to sleep. Not a good day. Our cranberries are ready for harvest on day 63. Finally some good news. I head to the travelling cart and buy a garlic seed. This will come in handy when we get to Ginger Island. Or if we get to Ginger Island. Like I said, I believe the travelling cart is a malicious entity. Their left hand gives you what you want, their right hand stabs you in the back, that kind of thing. I made a seed maker and threw a piece of wheat into it to get wheat seeds. Again, we'll use this when we get to Ginger Island. After that round of dilly dallying, we head to Piers and sell our cranberries, then we finally ask Robin to upgrade our barn. I donate an eggplant to the community centre, purchase 25 coffees and salads in the saloon and head to the Skull Cavern for the rest of the day. Again, Omni Geodes are our main focus here, but I'll be very happy if we can get some Iridium Ore and maybe a Prismatic Shard too if we're lucky. Things go pretty well as I make bombs as often as I can to blow up big clusters of rocks. Not only does this help us find ladders, but we often get one or two Omni Geodes from doing this too. We get a dinosaur egg on floor 33, not just once, but twice, and it was very nice. We get a rabbit's foot on floor 48, which we need for the community center. We pass out on floor 56. You know what? I'm kind of proud of myself for that. I toss a dinosaur egg into the incubator in our coop on the morning of day 64. Then it's off to Clint's to crack open our geodes. This was a mistake. See, I only need to donate 4 or 5 items to the museum at the most to unlock the sewers. So we would have been better off trading those geodes for artifact troves in the desert. I donate the dinosaur egg and the one item we received from our omni geodes to the museum. We only need 3 more items at this point because we've donated a total of 57. Gus wants 2 dozen eggs. We can actually do that one pretty easily so we'll accept that. I head to the mines and spend the rest of the day collecting coal and iron ore. I want to make some more bombs which we'll use in the skull caverns at some point in the future. On day 65 I donate the rabbit's foot we picked up in the skull cavern. I ask Clint to crack open some frozen geodes and receive one item which we can donate to the museum. It's off to the skull caverns for the rest of the day once again. We get a prismatic shard on floor 37 so today is already a successful day. Things were looking a bit dodgy a short while later though so I used a warp totem to get back to the farm. I'm not taking any chances. We've got a prismatic shard in our inventory so if we get knocked out I guarantee we would have lost that. I would not have been happy about that. Dare I even say I would have been unhappy about that. Our corn is ready on day 66 so we harvest them. I head to Clint and ask him to open up one geode. That is because I didn't realize my inventory was already full. Now you may have noticed that it is Wednesday. Can you guess which shop I was heading towards? Yeah, it happened again. I donate 5 gold star corn to the community center, completing the quality crops bundle. I toss the eggs in my inventory into the fridge in the saloon and go back to Clint's to open up the rest of my geodes. Like I said, I really should have traded those for artifact troves because we got nothing we could donate to the museum from them. When I head back to my farm, I realize something important. I have been diversifying my interests for far too long. I have been taking on too many responsibilities and I have been trying to do too many things at once. So, here's the plan, alright? Here's what we're going to be focusing on for the next few weeks. The mines for coal and iron ore, the skull cavern for omni geodes, and the secret woods for hardwood. If we have any free time, we'll spend it clearing out space on our farm. We also need to purchase a pig and hopefully get red cabbage seeds from the traveling cart during the next week or two. Alright, let's continue. On day 67, I head to the mines to collect iron ore and coal so we can make bombs. I then head to the saloon and buy some coffee and salads. I sell a couple of diamonds to Clint, then I venture to the desert and exchange my prismatic shard for the galaxy sword. The rest of the day is spent in the Skull Cavern. See, we're sticking with our plan. Fall is going to be a good season for us. I mean, it has to be, because if it isn't then we're going to fail all of our goals, which isn't good at all. We find a prismatic shard on floor 50, so I believe we are back in our good luck era. 
Yeah, we got another prismatic shard on floor 65, so we are officially back in the good graces of Lady Luck and Father Fortune. I leave the Skull Cavern at around 1am and trade my Omni Geodes for two artifact troves and one desert warp totem. Day 68 begins with a cranberry harvest session. I also collect nine iridium bars that I've finished smelting. I sell our crops to Pierre, then I head to the traveling cart. Our luck is good, but not good enough. No red cabbage seeds. But I do buy a battery pack. I collect some hardwood in the secret woods, then I crack open my artifact troves in Clint's. I donate four items to the museum, including a prismatic shard, which means we have donated 60 items in total. Alright, we actually did it. Cool. Of course, we still have to get Krobus up to 10 hearts before the end of winter, but let's just enjoy this moment while we can. I was very tempted to sell a prismatic shard to Clint so we could get closer to being able to afford the iridium upgrade for a pickaxe, but I kept it. Not for any reason in particular, no, I'm just selfish. I do, however, return to Clint's a short time later and ask him to upgrade our watering can to gold quality. I was so excited about finally meeting Krobus tomorrow that I went straight to bed. Day 69 begins with a visit from Gunther who gives us the key to the sewers. Thank you, Gunther. I'm going to be completely honest, I can't see Gunther in Stardew Valley without thinking of Gunther from WWE. Like, for some reason, my brain sees them as the same person even though they look nothing alike. Or maybe they are the same person. I've never seen both of them in the same room. There's something for you to think about. Versetti has no milk right now. I complete the fall crops bundle in the community center and sell my crappie whoppies to Pierre. Our bank account is looking pretty tasty right now. I buy 200 pumpkin seeds, then I use the key Gunther gave us earlier to unlock the sewer. I meet Krobus for the first time. I'm happy. I buy a void egg and 10 void essence and I give Krobus a pumpkin which he loves. In Marnie's ranch I buy a sheep and call it Bailey. I also buy a pig and call it Champa. It's off to the secret woods to collect hardwood and I think I'm going to stop mentioning us collecting hardwood from now on. I plant our pumpkin seeds and that's it for today. Day 70 is a corn and pumpkin harvest day. You know, I'm actually glad I didn't get all of our pumpkin seeds planted on the first day of fall because having two pumpkin harvest days in a row makes me feel tremendously happy. I say hello to our animals and collect some eggs from our coop, then it's time for our daily visit to Krobus. Again, we give him a pumpkin and purchase 10 void essence. Some of you may be wondering why I keep buying these. In order for Krobus to move in with us, we need to give him the void ghost pendant. You can get this from the Desert Trader in exchange for 200 Void Essence. Monsters in the Skull Cavern can also drop the Pendant, but I don't want to take any chances, so I'm trying to get 200 Void Essence as soon as I can. The Traveling Cart isn't selling the Red Cap- Okay, look, I'm sure you get the point by now. I sell some items to Pierre, making sure to hold on to 20 Gold Star Pumpkins for Krobus. I purchase another 150 Pumpkin Seeds, then I ask Robin to upgrade her house. I plant our pumpkin seeds, then I try to go to sleep, but Louie has taken over the bed, so I just sit in a chair and wait for him to move. On day 71, I pay a visit to Krobus. I know it's only been like three days since I met him for the first time, but I feel like we're good friends now, so I think it's time to give him a nickname. For the rest of this video, I will be referring to him as Mr. K. I know that sounds formal, but it comes from a place of familiar affection. I throw my eggs into the fridge in the saloon, buy some coffee, collect my watering can from Clint and ask him to upgrade my pickaxe. We finally get a large goat milk on day 72. I wanted to donate this but we can't go into town because the Stardew Valley Fair is being set up. I did not know this at the time, but going to that fair would end up being the single worst choice I have ever made in my entire life. I scavenge my chest to find 9 items to use in our Grange display, then I head to the fair. Honestly, our Grange display isn't that bad, at all. You see that item in the top right? It's called Neptunite, and it's worth the same as a diamond in terms of its score during this little competition. I watch with bated breath as Lewis takes a gander at the stalls. Thankfully, we came in first place, so we receive 1,000 star tokens. I bet all 1,000 of these tokens on green, and I lose all of my tokens. Okay, I, I, I can see where this is going. I play the slingshot game and receive 144 tokens. I bet these tokens on green and I actually win this time. Alright, let's keep the momentum going. I bet 288 tokens this time on green again and I lose them all. Again. 
I very seriously considered leaving the festival at this point, but I stayed strong. I played the fishing game and received a delicious 492 tokens. Feeling on top of the world, I played the game again, receiving another 288 tokens. At this point I was feeling pretty good, so I bet all of my tokens on green and won. Now we've got 1560 tokens. I only bet 440 tokens this time, which was a good choice because I lost them. I play the slingshot game again, then I decide to go all in. 1274 tokens on green. The Wii lands on orange. Alright, listen, I'm done. I, like, I... I can't deal with this right now. Day 73 begins with a cranberry harvest. I really, really needed that after the kerfuffle that occurred yesterday. I almost tried to walk into Piers, but I realized it's Wednesday at the very last second, so I'm learning. In, in fact, let's be honest, this whole thing has been a learning experience for me. I've definitely said that before during this video, but hey, that just shows how committed I am to learning. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, let's just, let's just move on. I donate the large goat milk to the community center, unlocking the greenhouse. The wizard would like us to defeat a prismatic slime and bring him the prismatic jelly it drops. I collect my iridium pickaxe from Clint, and to be honest, I am very surprised I actually managed to fully upgrade my pickaxe. I make a mackie roll and a fried egg in her kitchen, toss her crops into the shipping bin, complete Gus's special order, purchase some food items in the saloon, and donate the mackie roll and fried egg to the community center. It's off to the mines to track down the prismatic slime. The plan is simple. Go down to floor 5, look for the prismatic slime, return to the surface, go back down to level 5, rinse and repeat until the prismatic slime appears. At approximately 1.30 in the morning, I am proud to announce that we have caught and compromised to a permanent end the prismatic slime. In slightly more embarrassing news, I passed out beside my bed. Gus sends us a mini fridge on day 74. Thank you, Gustavo. I make my way to the desert and purchase 20 beet seeds, 75 starfruit seeds, and 75 deluxe speed grow. I deliver the prismatic jelly to Rasmodius. Then it's time to set up our greenhouse. I made two iridium sprinklers, but I'm waiting for some gold bars to finish smelting, so, <laughs> smelting, <laughs> to finish smelting so I can make four more. In the meantime, I get the ground prepared for our starfruit and beet seeds. I also used the deluxe speed girl we bought earlier. I collect the gold bars, make four more iridium sprinklers and place them in the greenhouse. Some of you may be wondering why I planted beet seeds. That will be revealed in approximately six days. Rasmodius sends us the crafting recipe for monster musk on day 75. This is a big deal. If we make a monster musk and consume it, it will increase the amount of monsters that appear in the mines and the skull cavern. We have enough slime and bat wings to make three monster musks. So if we drink one and head to the skull cavern, more monsters will appear. Purple slimes, serpents and mummies have a chance to drop red cabbage seeds, so I think we could get those seeds by doing this. Right, never mind, the traveling cart has red cabbage seeds for sale, so we're good. I pay a visit to Mr. K and buy 10 void essence. Again, I think I'm going to stop mentioning the whole Void Essence thing, but rest assured, I will put everything I have into collecting 200 of them. I ask Clint to upgrade our hoe, then I head to the mines. I consume a Monster Musk and spend the rest of the day going through the mines, defeating the copious number of dust sprites that spawn on almost every floor. Monster-only floors are also beneficial right now because of how many slimes show up. This will help us with the monster eradication goals. I plant the red cabbage seed just before the day ends. A baby lizard has appeared on day 76. I decide to call it Peep. I took it easy today, I just cleared out some space on the farm. Our bat cave is filled to the brim on day 77, so I collect the fruit and sell it to Pier. Also, just in case anyone is wondering, I have been collecting hardwood every day for the last couple of weeks. We need 200 hardwood to repair Willie's boat once we finish the community center. And we need another 150 hardwood to upgrade our house. I give a pumpkin to Mr. K and throw some more items into our shipping bin. Again, today was a pretty laid back day as I just cleared out the farm some more. I decided to use bombs to take down some trees later that night and it actually worked pretty well. That might be the best way for us to clear out the farm from now on. Evelyn pays us a visit on day 78 and gives us the garden pot. That reminds me, hug your grandparents. Spend time with them. Have a cup of tea and a biscuit with them. Uh, anyway, I, uh, 
I harvest the cranberries and corn that have grown, toss a void egg into the incubator, and continue our quest to bankrupt Pier. I collect my hoe from Clint, then I ask him to upgrade it again. I do something that is long overdue, quite frankly. I ask Robin to build us a shed. I really hope we can get Mr. K to 10 hearts before winter ends. Like, like I'm genuinely going to be so upset if we can't do it. I also buy some coffee in the saloon. Shane sends us a plate of pepper poppers on day 79. Thank you, I guess. I, I haven't spoken to you since spring, but yeah, thank you. We really need our pig to produce a truffle for us. Or find the truffle. I know pigs don't actually make the truffles themselves, they just dig it up out of the ground. Alright, well our pig literally just found a truffle, so we're good. Our beets are ready for harvest, which means today just got a lot more exciting. I collect certain items from my chest, throw a battery pack into the power box in the tunnel, pick up Linus's basket, give Linus's basket, toss a rainbow shell into a box at the railroad, put 10 beets into the fridge in Lewis's house. Okay, that sentence was way too long. I'm out of breath. Let me just... Give me one second. Willie wants 100 pieces of bug meat, so we'll do that for him. I sell some items to Pierre, donate a truffle to the bounty board bundle, and check my fortune. The spirits are very displeased. This means we have the worst luck possible today. Alright, that kind of ruins some plans I had. I don't feel safe going to the Skull Cavern today after seeing that. I harvest a sweet gem berry and give it to the old Master Cannoli statue in the secret woods. I receive a star drop in return. After visiting Mr. K, I teleport to the desert and put a solar essence into the dragon skeleton's mouth. Day 80 is what I believe to be the final pumpkin harvest day. Hopefully it isn't, but we're harvesting a lot of pumpkins today, so I won't be too upset if it is the final one. Yeah, it, it happened again. I only have myself to blame, honestly. I need to start paying attention to what day it is. I head to the desert because I want to go into the casino in Sandy Shop, but I forgot to click the casino membership card, so I have to go all the way back to my farm. I pick up the card, pay another 500 gold to go to the desert again, and finally enter the casino. I spend my gold on 200 key coins and start spinning. I'm not going to waste your time here. Long story short, I lost all of my coins. It's back to the mines for the rest of the day to collect iron ore and defeat dust sprites. I blow up some more trees at the end of the day. Day 81 is another pumpkin harvest day. Sweet. We're doing really well in terms of our finances after selling our crops to Pier. I ask Robin to upgrade our shed and make some tree fertilizer. The hardwood we get from the secret woods is enough for what we need, but I want to speed up our hardwood collecting process. I plant some mahogany tree seeds and sprinkle some tree fertilizer on them. Allow me to bestow some knowledge on you all for a moment. A tree sapling has five growth stages. Every tree sapling will advance by one stage of growth each night if you put tree fertilizer on it. It then takes two more days for it to reach the final stage. However, when it comes to mahogany seeds, tree fertilizer results in a 60% chance of the mahogany seed advancing to the next stage each night. So, I reckon these seeds will be fully grown within 6 to 10 days. Our starfruit is ready on day 82. I forgot about this seed after we harvested the beets a few days ago, so this was a nice surprise. I buy a garlic at the traveling cart, harvest our corn, and spend the day going through the lower levels of the mines. Because we need bug meat for Willy's special order. Yeah, I'm surprised I remembered that special order, to be honest. Our final cranberry harvest session takes place on day 83. As well as this, our red cabbage has grown. I wanted to go to the community center, but the Spirits Eve festival is being set up. So I pay a visit to Mr. K and buy a star drop from him. I'm getting slightly nervous when it comes to getting him to 10 hearts. He's really close to 3 hearts now, and his birthday is the first of winter, so that'll bump him up to 6 hearts. He might even be close to 7 hearts at that point, actually. So what I need to do is make sure I talk to him every day during winter and give him 2 pumpkins every week. I could probably unlock the cinema and watch a movie with him too if I really need to. We'll see what happens. I spent some time lollygagging in the mines, collecting bug meat for Willy. At night time, I head to the Spirits E Festival and buy the Rare Crow and the Jack O' Lantern recipe. I also make my way through the maze and collect the Golden Pumpkin at the end. I drop off the 100 bug meat Willy asked for just before the day ends. Versetti, or goat, gave birth during the night. See, now I find this hard to believe because I only have one goat. 
so unless some sort of immaculate conception has occurred, I fail to see how this is possible. Regardless, I decide to call the baby goat AJ Styles. Please come back to WWE. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm serious. I miss him so much. I just want him to come back. Another animal has shown up on our farm on day 84. A void chicken has appeared. I call this chicken a tem. I give a pumpkin to Mr. K as is tradition. Then I take a look at our gold. I think we can make it to a total of 1 million gold. The main things we're going to be focusing on during winter are collecting the gold and walnuts on Ginger Island and getting Krobus to move in with us, so we should have plenty of time to plant star fruit and make money from that. So, we're good. All goes well, we should be able to complete all of our goals. I finally buy the last backpack upgrade. I completely forgot about this. I got so used to having two rows of inventory that it didn't even cross my mind to buy this upgrade until now. I purchase the catalogue and 200 cranberry seeds and I donate the red cabbage to the community centre. The only items we need now are a nautilus shell, a snow yam and a crocus. And they're all exclusive to winter so it's pretty much guaranteed that we're going to finish the community centre really soon. I hope I didn't just jinx it. Like I said before, I am a professional jinxer, so I may have just ruined everything by saying that. I head to Robin's and buy some crafting recipes for different flooring. I plant more mahogany seeds and sprinkle tree fertilizer on them, then I spend the rest of the day turning our shed into a storage area. It was going pretty well, but then I ran out of wood, so I went to Robin's and bought two and a half stacks of wood. It takes a lot of time and a lot of going back and forth between our shed and our chest, but we made some decent progress on it. This was a nice way to spend the last day of fall. I feel optimistic going into winter. Day 85, aka the first day of winter, begins with a quick trip to our storage shed to drop off some eggs. I bump into the shadow figure at the bus stop, then I pay a visit to Mr. K. But this visit isn't like the others. No, today is a very special occasion. It's his birthday. I give him a pumpkin which pushes him up to six hearts. Nice. Linus and Demetrius have special orders for us. I decide to accept the special order from Linus which requires us to fish trash out of the water. Next, it's donation time. I hand in an ancient seed and receive an ancient seed and the crafting recipe for ancient seeds as rewards. I collect my hoe from Clint, then I visit the beach to do some foraging. We get a snow yam straight away, which is perfect. We need that for the community center. Unfortunately, I didn't find a nautilus shell, but hey, at least we got one item. I return to the farm and turn another ancient seed I had into an ancient seed. Like a plantable ancient seed, basically I turned an artifact into a seed. I ask Pam to bring me to Kaloka Desert where I head into the casino. I wanted to buy some QI coins, but I accidentally used my beach warp totem. That was embarrassing. After that little kerfuffle, I decide to ask Robin to build a new pond on her farm. I pick up a crocus outside the community center before heading inside and donating said crocus and the snow yam we acquired at the beach. The only item we need now is the nautilus shell. I once again head to the desert and venture inside the casino where I actually successfully purchase QI coins this time. Key coins, sorry I said it wrong, my bad. This day is already way too long so I'm going to keep this part as short as I can. I wanted to get 3 star drop symbols so we'd receive 250,000 coins. Long story short, I didn't get 3 star drop symbols. Just for the sake of clarity I spent 14 minutes trying to do this. That is 14 minutes of my life I will never get back. I fill the greenhouse with cranberry seeds to make sure we still have a steady income this month. I haven't forgotten about our goal to earn a total of 1 million gold, don't you worry about that. I spent some time working on our storage shed, then I warped to the beach for some reason. Like, I, I genuinely don't know why I did that. Any whomst, the Junimos repaired a bridge to the quarry during the night. For the first day is almost 3 minutes long. The morning of day 86 is spent working on our storage area. I am fully aware that I still have yet to achieve any of our goals, but having a tidy storage area makes my soul feel at peace. Completing our goals would also make my soul feel at peace now that I think about it. I'm tremendously confused. I break some rocks in the quarry area, then I make my way through the quarry mine and collect the golden scythe at the end. 
I was about to walk all the way back to the entrance when I remembered you can interact with the statue at the end to teleport back to the entrance. I'm actually surprised I remember that. Bit of bad news, there is still a distinct lack of nautilus shells at the beach. I throw a sturgeon into her pond on day 87, then I chop down her mahogany trees and end up with 41 hardwood. Not too shabby. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about me going to the secret woods to collect hardwood anymore, but I wanted to mention it this one time just in case anyone is wondering where the extra hardwood came from. In the words of Professor Farnsworth from Futurama, Good news everyone, I found a nautilus shell at the beach. I buy some coal from Clint before donating the shell to the community center. We have finally completed every bundle. More importantly, we have completed our first goal. This rejuvenated my spirits. All I need to do is keep the momentum going and we should complete all of our goals before the end of winter. Things are looking good, which is normally a bad sign for me, but I'm going to be optimistic. I make 30 something bombs and use them to take down a good portion of the trees that are still on our farm. I spend the rest of the day chopping down the remaining trees and getting rid of any stone and fiber on the farm. This is what our farm looks like right now. It looks pretty empty, I know, but I'll try to make it look at least a bit aesthetically pleasing before the end of winter. Lewis sends us a letter on day 88 thanking us for completing the bounty board bundles. Reading that letter really warmed my heart. But what made me feel even better was realizing that this earned us two full hearts with every villager who we cannot date which means Krobus is now at 8 hearts. Sweet. The community center has officially been restored, which is also sweet. I sell some eggs to Pierre, then something peculiar happens. Shane walks into the abandoned Georgia Mart. I, I don't think that's supposed to happen. I don't know how that happened. I sell some gems and two iridium bars to Clinty Winty, then I ask Robin to upgrade our house. It cost 50,000 gold and 150 hardwood, but it is worth it. We need that upgrade in order for Krobus to move in with us. At least I think we need that upgrade. E even if we didn't need it, it's all good. I wanted to upgrade our house anyway. I plop the Stardew Valley Hero Trophy at the top of her storage shed. Just in case anybody doesn't know, you get this trophy for completing the community center. Before the day ends, I pick up all of the sprinklers on our farm. Half of the cranberries in our greenhouse are ready for harvest on day 89. I sell them to Pierre, donate some artifacts to the museum, then I donate 200 hardwood, 5 iridium bars and 5 battery packs to Willy so he can repair the boat. I buy some coffee and salads in the saloon, then I do some fishing off floor 100 of the mines to complete Linus's special order. At the bathhouse area I meet the wizard and begin his quest. I completely forgot this was a thing. I throw the garbage I got from fishing into the dumpster to complete Linus's order, then I talk to Krobus and ask him to open the entrance to the mutant bug lair. I make my way through the area, collecting the dark talisman at the end. Robin and Willy repair the boat during the night. On day 90, Linus is relaxing in the lake, during winter. Like I said in a previous video, Linus is an interesting critter. I head to the witch's swamp and do some fishing to collect two void salmon and avoid mayonnaise. I give the mayo to the goblin henchman, collect the wizard's ink and return to the wizard's tower to give it to him. We have now unlocked the shop in his tower. We can purchase Junimo huts, the gold clock and the obelisks. I still don't feel comfortable saying that word, I feel like I'm going to mispronounce it a lot so I'm just going to... Magical towers, alright? That's what we're going to refer to those as from now on. We are nowhere close to being able to afford any of them right now though, so that is not very chill. What is very chill however, is I went to Willy's shop and used his boat to get to Ginger Island. I immediately head to the forest and collect two golden walnuts. I give one to the parrot, then I spend the rest of the day in the volcano dungeon. I struggled a bit with this, but we had pretty easy access to magma caps. This is a forage item which gives a ton of energy and health when eaten. My goal here was to make it to the end of the Volcano Dungeon, aka Floor 10. I made it to Floor 9, then I passed out right in front of the entrance to Floor 10. I was absolutely heartbroken when this happened. More cranberries are ready on Day 91. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, I won't mention harvesting these cranberries anymore unless it's for an important reason. What could that important reason possibly be? Keep watching to find out. Mmm, actually no, I don't I don't like doing that. Alright, spoiler alert, and I legitimately mean spoiler alert here, this is big. 
skip forward by about 30 seconds if you don't want to have a pretty big event and this playthrough spoil for you. Alright, if you're still listening, I'm going to assume you want to hear it. We end up collecting 100 golden walnuts and unlocking Mr. Key's walnut room. He gives us a quest near the end of winter that requires us to bring him 100 different items of different colors. So 100 red items, 100 blue items, 100 yellow items, yada yada yada. The red item we bring him is the cranberries that we harvested in our greenhouse. So there you go. After giving Krobus slash Mr. K slash my best friend a pumpkin, we reach nine hearts with him. Sensational. Next, it is time for me to redeem myself for yesterday's hullabaloo in the volcano dungeon. This time will be different. I'm not just ready. I'm prepared. I don't know what I was doing wrong yesterday, but this actually ended up being really easy. Which I am very grateful for, because if I failed again today, I would have cried. I collect the two golden walnuts and the prismatic shard at the end of the volcano. Next, it is time to collect some more golden walnuts. At around 7pm, I spend some walnuts to open up the farm area of the island. I immediately get to work on planting our crops. The important thing to note here is we planted melon, garlic and wheat seeds. There is a frog in the cave beside our farmhouse here that will give us a total of 15 golden walnuts for growing these three crops. So I really want to get that done, as you can imagine. Robin has a special order for us on day 92. She would like us to collect 1000 pieces of wood. We do need wood, so this is a win-win. Willie's shop is locked today, which means we can't go to Ginger Island. That is unfortunate. The reason why it's closed is because the Festival of Ice takes place today. I take a gander at the traveling cart. I don't know if I already bought the rare crow it has for sale, but I buy it anyway just to be safe. The fishing competition begins and I take a walk. Listen, I'm going to say this as clearly as I possibly can. I will never, ever allow myself to win this competition. Willie should win this competition every single time. I will not hear anybody out on this. Willie is a gentleman and deserves his moment in the spotlight. Think about it. He gives you a fishing rod for free, he gives you a copper pan for free which allows you to go panning, and he brings you to Ginger Island. Admittedly, that last one isn't free, you have to give him 1000 gold every time, but my point still stands. Willie does so much for the farmer, so the least I can do is make sure he wins this competition. A void chicken has been welcomed into the family on day 93. I decide to call this chicken, Scallywag. Yeah, I'm running out of ideas for names. I collect an amethyst, a ruby, an emerald, a topaz, and an aquamarine out of a chest and head to Ginger Island. I head to the forest where a bird drops a topaz. This is really good timing. I'm going to try to explain this next part as clearly as I can, so please bear with me for a moment. That topaz we picked up is part of a puzzle. Because we found it in the forest, which is on the right side of the island, it gets placed on the podium on the right. As for the remaining three podiums, normally you would come back to the island on a rainy day, find another bird in a different part of the island, and place the gemma drops on the corresponding podium. But I am under a significant time constraint here. I cannot afford to be dilly-dallying like that. So instead, I place the gems I brought with me on the podiums in the hopes that I can guess the correct layout. It takes around a minute, but I actually managed to do it. I spend 20 golden walnuts to unlock the farmhouse before the day ends. I begin day 94 by planting some more seeds on our island farm. In a perfect world, I would be planting starfruit seeds here right now, but perfection is a cruel mistress, and I am lazy. So a random assortment of seeds will do for now. I head back to Pelican Town and ask Clint to crack open a golden coconut, which provides us with a golden walnut. I purchase enough coal and iron ore to make a single bomb, then it's back to Ginger Island to open up the dig site. I break all of the rocks here because they can drop artifacts that we can donate to the island office when we free Professor Snail from the cave he's trapped inside of. Speaking of, I use the bomb we made to do exactly that. I return to the island farm and plant some taro roots, then I return to Pelican Town and finally find the shadow figure that we saw on the first day of winter. I forgot about them. I really hope they didn't stay in that bush for the last nine days just waiting for me to show up. If they did, then that might just be the longest game of hide and seek I've ever played in my life. There were quite a few artifact spots at the bus stop, so I dug them all up and found like four books. That was kind of a waste of time. On day 95, I spend a significant amount of time in the forest chopping down trees for Robin's special order. 
The good news is I collected over 1,000 pieces of wood, completing that special order. The bad news is there are now like four trees remaining in the forest, which probably isn't a good thing. I'll replant all of them at some point, I promise. I toss a sturgeon row into the preserve jar I have so that it will turn into caviar in a few days' time. We have finally reached 10 hearts with Krobus on day 96. That is fantastic news, but we haven't finished our goal yet. We still need to get him to move in with us. I head to the desert and I walk around for a while. I don't know what I was doing here. That's happened a few times actually, now that I think about it. Wait, nope, it turns out I just forgot to bring the 200 void essence with me, so I went back to our farm, collected those, and then went to Robin's to add the two extra rooms to our house. I also asked her to upgrade our coop. Then I went to the desert and exchanged my void essence for the void ghost pendant. I give this pendant to Krobus, who accepts the invitation to move into our house. And they were roommates. On day 97, the spirits are somewhat mildly perturbed, which means we have bad luck for the day. Yeah, I'm not dealing with that, I'm going straight to sleep. Day 98 is a hardwood collection day. I chop down all of our mahogany trees and receive at least two pieces of hardwood. Okay, no, that's not funny, I don't know why I said that. We actually got around 160 pieces of hardwood from this. I make a ton of wood fences and start the process of beautifying our farm. And by that I mean I just place fences down to mark different areas. It worked out pretty well though. I've got desig... des... desig... Uh, I can't... give me one second. Designated. I've got designated areas for our coop and barn, our ponds, our crops we'll be planting next year, our greenhouse and tree farm section, and our shed and tree farm section. And that was all I did today. I head to Robins on day 99 and ask her to build a stable. Except I couldn't do that because I forgot to take away the four fences beside her house. I return to Robins a short while later and move our coop, barn and shed to their designated areas and ask her to build that stable. When I talked to Krobus, he said, You're a strange one to want to live with a creature like me. You're a strange one. I've heard that multiple times during the last month alone. Why does everybody say that to me? What's going on? Caroline would like us to grow and ship 100 taro roots for a special order, which I accept. After a bit of a hiatus from Ginger Island, I finally return. I dig up an artifact spot and receive two golden coconuts. Cool. The wheat and garlic are fully grown, but the melon isn't, so I still need to wait for that before I can get the 15 golden walnuts. We do get several walnuts for harvesting the other crops, though. I also get two walnuts by breaking muscle nodes. That puts us at a total of 53 golden walnuts collected. That's actually not too bad, in my opinion. All of the crops we harvested here get thrown into our shipping bin. I plant even more seeds before the day ends. Day 100 begins with a trip to the dig site. It's business as usual here. I break the rocks in the hopes of finding artifacts we can donate. I also do some panning to get the fossilized tail. I return to Pelican Town and ask Clint to crack open our golden coconuts. Never mind, he's not there. I head to the saloon to buy... Never mind, Gus isn't there. What is going on today? I head to the desert and buy 200 beet seeds. I plant these on Ginger Island. I head to the island office and donate three artifacts, then I make my way to the night market and spend the rest of the day fishing in the submarine. On day 101, I crack open our golden coconuts and receive a banana tree sapling and some pineapple seeds. I do a bit of fishing at the Ginger Island docks, then I plant our pineapple seeds and our banana tree sapling. I spend the rest of the day fishing. I receive a golden walnut for harvesting a cauliflower on day one. This, this, wait, 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 wait. This is like 500 words for one day. How did I manage to? Th All right, let's just let's just get through this. All right, here we go. I receive a golden walnut for harvesting a cauliflower on day 102, which is nice. Our melon has also fully grown, which is even nicer. Between this, the wheat, and the garlic, we receive a total of 15 golden walnuts. I got another golden walnut when I harvested the melons, so I believe we have just witnessed what is referred to as a double whammy. I decided to have the resort built, which means the villagers can now visit the island. I head to the island office and answer two survey questions so I can get another two walnuts. I answered the first question correctly. I accidentally picked the wrong answer for the second question, so we have to come back tomorrow to answer it again. 
I know the answer though, I don't understand why I can't just answer it now and get my golden walnut. Why do I have to wait? Why do I have to come back tomorrow? This anyway, I buy 150 coal and 100 iron ore from Clint, make 10 seed makers and 25 bombs, and check my mail for the first time in a couple of days. Mayor Lewis tells us about the feast of the Winter Star Festival. The person we can give a gift to is Maru. We can give her a gold bar, so it'll be grand. I buy some coffee from Gus, then I head to Ginger Island and set up my seed makers. You may have noticed that I have 11 seed makers and not 10. That is because I made 10 and brought the one we received from the community center with me too. You see that? I'm utilizing all of the resources available to me. A at least I think I am, I don't know anymore. Look, I'll be honest, I didn't think I'd make it this far. I don't know what I'm doing. I made a plan for spring and that went well, but I've just been winging it ever since. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm legitimately surprised things have gone as well as they have. But I'm not complaining. Alright, we're doing well, so let's just keep going. In rather unfortunate news, it was also at this point that I realized there is no way I'm going to be able to complete Caroline's special order. Like, there is genuinely a 0% probability that I'll be able to grow and ship 100 tower roots within the next 10 days or so. It's just not happening. But you have to take the good with the bad and all that. I spend the rest of the day in the volcano dungeon collecting golden walnuts. You may notice that coffee and triple shot espressos will appear in my inventory from time to time. That is because I found the hot java ring in a chest in the volcano dungeon. When you have this equipped, every monster you defeat has a 25% chance of dropping a coffee. If they don't drop a coffee, they have a 10% chance of dropping a triple shot espresso. On day 103, I find out I have collected a total of 82 gold and walnuts. I donate a mummified bat to the field office and answer the second question correctly this time to earn two more walnuts. I spend most of the day going through the volcano dungeon again, then I go back to check our progress once more. We are now at 90 golden walnuts. I find a mummified frog in the forest on day 104. I also found a few journal scraps that show the locations of walnuts, so I make good use of those to collect a pearl and two golden walnuts. I donate the frog to the office receiving another walnut. I have said the word walnut way too many times already. I apologize. Day 105 is a big harvest day on our island farm. I throw everything into our shipping bin, then I head to the southeast side of the island to collect a golden walnut. And another golden walnut. And a third golden walnut. I play the Simon Says game to get another three golden walnuts. Then I unlock the island's fast travel system. Looking back on this, I now realize I did not use it a single time between now and the end of winter. I head back to our farm in Pelican Town and throw some items I was keeping on Ginger Island into my storage shed. I then use a warp totem to get back to Ginger Island, collect more items from my chest, and warp back to the farm. On day 106, a notification lets us know that we have officially earned a total of 1 million gold. That's 3 of our 4 goals completed. All we have to do now is unlock Mr. Key's walnut room. I head to Robbins and ask her to build a second pond on her farm, then it's time for another special order. I decide to choose Emily's order. She wants an amethyst, an emerald, a jade, a ruby, and a topaz. I have a good few of all of those in my storage shed, so this will be an easy one. It's off the Ginger Island where I spend about 20 seconds in the volcano dungeon, then I got scared and left. I make my way to Leo's treehouse and ask the parrot for a hint as to where a golden walnut is hidden. Buried near bones. I know exactly where that is because I've gotten that exact same hint before. To be honest, I'm surprised I missed this one, but at least we got it now. I head to Mr. Key's walnut room to check my progress, but something else happens. Instead of telling me how many walnuts I've collected, the door opens and I head inside. We did it. We actually did it. We made it into the walnut room. I take a look at the special orders board in this room. I decide to go with the prismatic range order. I also check how much progress we've made so far. 25%. Uh, okay, that's, that's a bit lower than I was expecting. Look, I think the important thing here is that we made it into the walnut room, right? We did good. We achieved all of our goals. Let's just ignore that 25%. It doesn't exist. It's not canon anymore, all right? We're ignoring it. On the morning of day 107, I start smelting copper ore. I want to get an oak resin farm set up, so we need as many tappers as we can get our hands on. While our furnaces are working away, I start planting oak, maple, and pine tree saplings beside our greenhouse. 
I also exclusively plant oak tree saplings down by our shed. I spent some time placing stone flooring on our farm. I'm basically decorating this farm the same way I decorate the farm every single time. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I also end up making a total of 25 tappers. Mayor Lewis sends us a letter on day 108, reminding us about the Feast of the Winter Star Festival that takes place tomorrow. I forgot about that, thank you for the reminder. I decide to call my horse Harry Styles. Get it, like Harry Styles, but Harry because horses like hey, um, I'm sorry. I place my seed makers in the greenhouse and put the two ancient fruit I harvested into them. We get two ancient seeds from this, so I plant them. I head to Willie's where I decide to buy the iridium rod. Then I fish until we've got a total of five seaweed because I want to buy another pond. Back on our farm, I toss a midnight squid into the second pond. I only did this so we can get our hands on some squid ink. Once we've got a couple of those, I'll replace it with a different fish. The witch drops by our farm and adds a void chicken to her coop. But that's not all. On the screen that shows how much gold we earned from the items we shipped, Santa Claus shows up. Isn't that pretty rare? Like, aren't both of those things pretty rare? How do we get two of them in one night? That's pretty neat in my opinion. I throw some gold ore into a furnace on day 109. I collect the gold bar when it's ready, then I head to the Feast of the Winter Star. I give the gold bar to Maru, which she accepts gracefully. Great, 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 graciously. I've made that mistake before, actually. Then Leah gives us a present. Ten Deluxe Speed Grow. That's actually a fairly decent present. Thank you. I ask Robin to build the third pond on our farm on day 110. I was on my way to Clint's when I bumped into him on the bridge. That's fine, I'll just cry myself to sleep tonight, I suppose. I scavenge my storage shed for items I can use for Mr. Key's special order. I buy 100 Georgia Colas in the saloon which covers the 100 blue items. I head to the community center and give Emily all of the gems she requested as part of her special order. Except, I messed up. Clint gave us a quest to give Emily an amethyst. Emily also requested an amethyst as part of her special order. When I gave Emily said amethyst, it completed Clint's quest instead of her special order. I quickly run back to my farm, pick up another amethyst and give it to her. I head to the mines, drink a coffee, consume a monster musk and spend the rest of the day collecting bug meat and copper ore. This will cover the purple and orange items needed for Mr. Key's special order. It goes very well and I leave the mines with everything I need. Emily sends us a sewing machine on day 111 as a thank you for completing her special order. I head to Ginger Island where a very special cranberry harvest takes place. You remember I said I wouldn't mention harvesting cranberries unless it's for an important reason? Well, there is a very important reason for this one. We had everything we needed for Mr. Key's special order except 100 red items. So these cranberries are going to be donated to Mr. Key. I also harvest the taro roots that have grown, and yeah, there was no way I was going to be able to complete Caroline's special order to grow and ship 100 of these. That's kind of disappointing, because the reward for completing that special order is the crafting recipe for the solar panel. Solar panels produce battery packs during sunny weather. That would have been incredibly useful. I complete Mr. Key's special order and receive 35 key gems. I spend these gems on the key to the town and 60 magic bait. The key to the town lets us enter all of the buildings in Pelican Town at any time. Magic Bait allows us to catch any fish from a specific water source regardless of the weather, season or time. For example, if we use Magic Bait while we're fishing at the beach during winter, we can catch a puffer fish. Whereas normally you can only catch a puffer fish at the beach during summer. I spent some time fishing at the mountain lake, of course using the Magic Bait. Some bubbles popped up while I was here, so that made things even easier. After a while, I moved down to the river by Penny's trailer. Then I finally go down to the beach to finish our fishing adventure for the day. We have a bit of a kerfuffle. I have caught so many different types of fish that I have no more space in my inventory. I eat two chubs, catch two more fish, and throw all of the fish I caught today in my shipping bin. Between our crops and our fish, we made around 15,000 gold. I was hoping for a bit more than that, but it all adds up. I begin day 112 by placing tappers on all of our oak trees and throwing a blue discus into our pond. 
I also place three tappers on three of the trees by the greenhouse. That's almost a tongue twister. I decide to treat my animals to some hay, two heaters, and some ornamental hay bales. I should have done this at the beginning of winter, but I forgot. Sorry. I also pick up Mira Lewis's shorts. I want to wear these. And I will. As soon as I can figure out how to operate the sewing machine. I must be doing something wrong because I can't turn these shorts into shorts that I can actually wear. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go check the Stardew Valley wiki and find out what I have to do. Right, so it turns out I need a gold bar. I say hi to Louie and wait for the gold ore to be smelted. While I'm waiting for that, I pay a visit to Ginger Island and head into the cove where I catch a stingray. That's all I wanted to do here, so I head back to the farm and wait for the gold bar to be ready. I collect it and combine it with Lewis's shorts to make the trimmed lucky purple shorts. I, I take my pants off and replace them with my new shorts. That shouldn't be funny, but it is. I now feel complete. I spend the rest of the day changing the wallpaper in the house just to spice things up a bit. With that done, I sit down for a moment to acknowledge that this is the end of our first year in Stardew Valley. It was pretty stressful, I won't lie, but it was a lot of fun too. I head to sleep feeling very happy with how things went. I begin day 113 by taking a moment to gather my surroundings. It has been quite a while since I played on this farm since the previous day, so I was a bit discombobulated for a moment. I wish I could say I immediately jumped right back into being a professional Stardew Valley athlete, but that simply isn't true. You will see as we get further into spring that I had no idea what I was doing at times. Any whomst, Kent has arrived back in Pelican Town, which is always nice to see. The first thing on the agenda is to clear our farm of any debris that has appeared. I head into my storage shed and collect 18 sprinklers. I'll be honest, I thought I had a lot more sprinklers than that. The good news is the cranberries in our greenhouse are ready for harvest, so I was very happy to see that. Next up is a trip to Piers to sell the cranberries and purchase 400 potato seeds along with 5 of every other spring seed. The rest of the day is spent planting the seeds I bought. I also throw some iridium ore and gold ore into furnaces and throw a diamond into a crystallarium. On day 114, I make a grand total of two iridium sprinklers and plant some more potato seeds. Then it's off to the Skull Cavern for the rest of the day. This was probably a terrible idea considering I was still getting back into the swing of things. In fact, this should have gone really, really, and I cannot stress this enough, really poorly. Thankfully though, I actually managed to avoid being knocked out. Also, I collected quite a bit of iridium ore. Also, also, I made it to floor 78 before passing out. Also, 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 I reached level 10 in combat. I'm not going to lie to you, I am very happy with how today went. It might not seem like a big deal, but then again, it's the small things in life that matter. I decide to do some foraging on the morning of day 115. I don't actually need any of these forage items, I just like walking through the forest. I decided it was time to replace the straw hat I won during the egg hunt last year. I purchase a daisy from the hat mouse and place it in my hair. I feel absolutely sensational right now. I ask Clint to crack open my omni geodes and purchase 200 copper ore. I used these copper ore to make more furnaces. Looking back on this, this was definitely a waste of money. But if there is one thing you need to know about me, it's that I am the opposite of smart. Dare I even say I am unsmart. I collect some magic bait from a chest and accept a special order from the wizard. He wants us to bring him ectoplasm. I purchase two crab pots from Willy, officially bankrupting myself, and set the crab pots up at the beach. Now it is time for me to conquer an old rival of mine, the crimson fish. Under normal circumstances, you can only catch this fish during summer. But I have magic bait, which means we can catch it any time. Full transparency, I failed miserably for quite some time. But I didn't give up. I kept pushing forward. Each and every time I failed to catch it, every time a different fish popped up, I just felt more and more motivated to catch this beast of a fish. And that is exactly what I ended up doing. I am feeling very oozy right now. I might have to stop saying that phrase actually, considering I feel a deep sense of genuine sadness every time I think about what happened with Roman Reigns and the Usos. I've, I've, I've actually just hurt my own feelings with that one. 
our next stop is the mines where we can catch the stonefish. It took me quite a while, but I did end up catching this fish. This will not be the last time I say that sentence. Some good news on day 116, our gold and iridium empire is thriving. Also, two ancient fruit are ready for harvest in the greenhouse. My plan here is to keep throwing them at the seed makers to hopefully get hundreds of ancient fruit seeds over time. I go through my chest to find items that are needed for the shipping collection. I do need to pay more attention to that whole shipping thing because I've got maybe half of it done at this point. I head into the sewers with the intent of catching another legendary fish, the mutant carp. Thankfully, this one was nowhere near as bad as the crimson fish. I managed to catch this one without too much hassle. I keep the fishing train going and head into the mutant bug lair where I catch the slime jack. Finally, to end the day, I head to the mines where I go ghost hunting in an attempt to get ectoplasm. Just in case anyone has forgotten, we need to give ectoplasm to the wizard to complete a special order. This plan did not go the way I wanted it to. As in, I passed out without getting any ectoplasm. But that's okay, we still have time to get it done. I purchase a rare seed from the traveling cart on the morning of day 117. It's off to Ginger Island where I immediately make two discoveries. Number one, our cranberries, cactus fruit, pineapples and blueberries are ready for harvest. Number two, there is a ton of sprinklers here that are not being used. I completely forgot these were here. This would have been really nice to know back on day 113. I could have planted all of the potato seeds I bought on that day if I knew these sprinklers were here. I pick up the sprinklers that aren't being used and I accept a special order from Mr. Key to give him four prismatic shards. This shouldn't be too difficult. I am almost certain I saw three prismatic shards in her shed and in a chest in the farmhouse, so this was a good quest for us to get. I check out the fortune teller TV show and we have the worst possible luck for the day. That's not good. That's not good at all. Rather than go to the skull cavern, I plant the rest of the potato seeds I have instead. Our potatoes are ready to harvest on day 118. As an Irishman, I can tell you that nothing makes me happier than staring up at the ceiling at midnight and listening to Harry Styles. That wasn't what you expected me to say, was it? No, no, you thought I was going to talk about potatoes and how they make me happy, huh? Anyway, I gave a pumpkin to Krobus and received a strange bun and a star drop in return. Sweet. What is not sweet is we have bad luck again today. I sell my crappie wappies to Pierre and harvest the cranberries in our greenhouse. I must say, I am so incredibly grateful that I planted cranberry seeds. No joke, right? I know I've said this before, but I actually mean this unironically. Harvesting these cranberries gives me a serotonin boost every single time. I head to my good pal Clint and ask him to upgrade my axe. I buy cooking recipes in the saloon along with as many pizzas as I can afford. Then it's back to the mines in pursuit of the wizard's ectoplasm. I spend a few minutes in here trying to get ectoplasm. Then I make a discovery. I already have the crafting recipe for Monster Musk. Literally the only reason why I wanted to complete the wizard special order was because I thought I would be receiving that crafting recipe as a reward. I haven't just wasted my time. I have wasted your time. I apologize. It will probably happen again, but I do apologize. We have good luck on day 119, which already puts me in a good mood. Oak Resin is ready to collect too, which is always nice to see. I purchase a rare seed and a battery pack from the traveling cart, then I trade my jade for staircases in the desert. I use the staircases to immediately get down to floor 17, then I begin making my way through the skull caverns. I find a dark cowboy hat on floor 51, then I pass out on floor 55. You know what? I think I'm getting better at going through the skull cavern. I'm feeling pretty chuffed right now. It is back to the Skull Cavern on day 120. It was going well, very well. In fact, dare I even say I was absolutely flourishing. That is, until I got distracted by my phone and was knocked out. The good news is I didn't really lose anything important. I think I'm most upset about losing my salads, so that could have gone a lot worse. With vengeance on my mind, I head to Clint's on day 121, collect my gold axe and ask Clinty Winty to upgrade my hoe. I wanted to go to the Skull Cavern, but Pam didn't show up, so that was very disappointing. Very disappointing indeed. I spend the rest of the day chopping down trees because I need wood, and I also felt very lazy. So it was a win-win. 
I continue my quest to bankrupt Pierre on day 122, then to the surprise of absolutely nobody I'm sure, it's off to the Skull Cavern again. It was going very well until I got knocked out. This time however, it was entirely my fault. I simply was not good enough today. I only lost bug meat though, so it looks like the game felt bad for me and decided to take it easy on me, which I am extremely grateful for. Concerned Ape, if you're watching, thank you for taking pity on me sir. Day 123 is a big potato harvest day. That is absolutely sterling. I take a look at the progress I've made on the monster eradication goals. I'm really close to completing the first page. In even more good news, the cranberries are ready for harvest again. I make a monster musk, then I head to the mines. I really want to get that first page of monster eradication goals complete. So the rest of day 123 as well as days 124 through 129 are spent in the mines completing that first page. I begin day 130 by tending to our crab pots. We need to get things like shrimp, mussels and crabs from them for the fishing collection, so I bought more during the previous few days. I deliver 4 prismatic shards to Mr. Key and use all but 10 of my key gems to buy magic bait. I want to catch a Dorado fish with the magic bait because it's one of the 10-ish fish I still need to catch. I probably have less than 10 fish left to get for the fishing collection, but I feel like that's a solid estimate. It took so much time for a Dorado to finally appear, but thankfully it eventually did, so we can cross that one off the list. After that, it's off to the beach for some more fishing. I caught a puffer fish, then I realized my inventory was full. So I decided to head home and get some sleep. I reached level 10 in fishing too, which is really good news. Day 131 begins and ends at the beach. My goal here was to catch an octopus and a squid. I literally spent the entire day here. Unfortunately, a squid did not show up, but I did manage to catch an octopus before passing out. It's off the floor 100 of the mines to catch the lava eel on day 132. It takes a while because I keep getting trash, but I do eventually hook a lava eel. This was a slightly tricky one to catch, but I am literally the greatest fisherman who has ever lived, so it was always guaranteed that I would be able to catch it. That was a lie. Next up is a trip to the desert to catch the scorpion carp. This fish has always been the bane of my existence. Like I literally cannot describe how much misery this fish has caused me in the past. But I am a whole different person now. So catching the scorpion carp was actually fairly easy this time. Which I am eternally grateful for because if I struggled with this one, I probably would not have made this video. You know the phrase, big brain moment? Like if someone does something clever or says something smart, you might call them big brain? Yeah, I did the opposite of that. I wanted to buy more magic bait, but I accidentally bought 10 key seasoning instead. Not my proudest moment. I accept the danger in the deep quest. We only have two days to complete it, so I definitely won't get it done but it does give me a chance to collect radioactive ore. I head straight to the mines where I spend the rest of the day. I collect two radioactive ore and make it to floor 19 before passing out. I head straight to the mines on day 133. All I'm focused on here is collecting as much radioactive ore as I can. I do this until around 1pm, then I leave and head to the saloon. I buy 10 pizzas, eat 3 of them and sit down for a while. It is during this little moment of peace and quiet that I realize pretty much all I have done so far during spring is go fishing and go to the Skull Cavern in the mines. These aren't exactly the most exciting things, but it did help us make some good progress on our goals, so I think it was worth it. Hopefully summer will have a larger variety of activities every day. I head to Clint's and ask him to upgrade my axe, then I decide it is time to catch the legend fish. I'm not even going to waste your time here. I failed. And that's an understatement. I got absolutely annihilated by this absolute behemoth of a fish. I legitimately did not stand a chance against it. But I do have a game plan. I will return tomorrow with food that boosts my fishing skill. I am going to catch this fish tomorrow. I have to. On day 134, we have another cranberry harvest. Normally by now I would have said something like, I won't mention harvesting these cranberries anymore but I very much enjoy harvesting them and would like to continue sharing this lovely experience with you all. Pam has a quest for us. She would like to receive 12 bottles of potato juice. We can do that for her, we just need to make a few kegs first. I head to the mountains and attempt to catch the legend fish. Again, I'm not going to waste your time. I didn't end up catching it. 
I am so ashamed of myself. I needed a pick-me-up after that little kerfuffle, so I head to the Adventurers Guild and take a look at the monster eradication goals again. We're pretty close to completing the second page of goals, so that provided me with a nice serotonin boost, I've already said that. That provided me with a nice dopamine boost, there you go. Actually, I, I, I've I definitely said that one before too, multiple times in fact. Y you know, I, it, it, it made me happy, alright, that's what I'm trying to get across here. I head to Clint's on the morning of day 135 and collect my axe, purchase 400 pieces of wood from Robin and 25 potato seeds from Pierre. I also buy 25 speed grow and 25 deluxe speed grow. Yeah, I, I messed up. I bought the wrong speed grow at first. Ignore that. Don't worry about it. It's a non-factor. It was retconned and never happened. Blim blam out the window. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm, look, I didn't mean to buy the original speed grow is what I'm trying to say here. Let's move on. I plant 12 potato seeds in the greenhouse, make 28 kegs and place these kegs in the greenhouse. Hopefully the potatoes and the resulting potato juice will be ready before the time limit for Pam's special order ends. The rest of the day, as well as days 136 through 139, are spent in the Skull Caverns completing all but one of the remaining monster eradication goals. All we have to do now is complete the Magma Sprite goal. So we'll go to the Volcano Dungeon at some point and get that done. Also, we had a Cauliflower Harvest during that time, so that provided a very tasty boost to our bank account. On day 140, I have an announcement. I am not afraid to admit when I have done something foolish, and that is exactly what has occurred. I was convinced I lost my axe during the last three days because I couldn't find it in any chest on my farm. Like, I got to the point where I genuinely thought I would have to go through the rest of this playthrough without an axe. It turns out it was in the chest in the greenhouse the entire time. I was on my way to the mountains because the legend fish appears on the 28th day of spring, so I wouldn't need magic bait to catch it today. The problem is... It's not raining, and it has to be raining for the legend to show up today. That threw me for a loop. I was planning on spending the whole day trying to catch the legend, so I had no idea what to do with myself at this point. In the end, I decided to go fishing in the fountain outside the community center so I could get the trash can. Then I collected the Junimo plushie from the bush at the playground. Then I just sat down on a bench beside my two prized possessions. And that's it for spring. Like I said earlier in the season, I spent almost the entirety of my time in the mines, in the Skull Cavern, or fishing. But I still had a good time. It was a nice way to get back into the swing of things. However, I will be sure to diversify my interests and spice things up a bit in summer. Speaking of summer... The first day of summer, aka day 141, begins with us accepting a special order from Demetrius. All we have to do for this one is catch 20 ocean fish, which isn't too bad at all. And we will receive the crafting recipe for the computer as a reward so it's worth it. I head to the desert and buy as many starfruit seeds as I can. We really need to start making a lot more money this season. I spend the rest of the day planting all of these seeds. Also, Bailey gave birth to a sheep. I call this sheep Buttercup. On day 142, I place bait into the crab pots at the river. We are very, very close to completing the fishing collection at this point. But it is going to take a lot of effort to catch the remaining fish, as you will see as this season goes on. The entirety of today is spent fishing at the beach to complete Demetrius' special order. Demetrius sends us the crafting recipe for the computer on day 143. I head to Robbins and ask her to build a second shed on the farm. I'm not entirely sure what I will put in the shed yet, but I'm leaning towards kegs. I head to Willie's shop because I want to go to Ginger Island, but I can't afford a ticket. Things are bad, I, I need to look over my accounts and see what I can do to improve my financial situation. I decide to sell a couple of cooked dishes to Pierre, which gives me just enough gold to be able to afford a ticket. In the walnut room, I accept a special order to find 100 each of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple items. This is probably my favorite key quest. It's a really handy one to get done. After going through my chests on day 144, all I need is 87 copper and 91 Georgia colas for Mr. Key's special order. I head straight to the mines to collect the copper ore I need, which thankfully doesn't take long at all. Then it's off to the saloon to purchase the Georgia colas I need. Finally, I deliver all of the items to Mr. Key, bringing us up to a total of 37 key gems. I use these to purchase 140 magic bait. 
The potato juice is ready to collect in our greenhouse, so I pick them up and bring them to Pam. Right after this, I collect the items that have appeared in the crab pots. Now all we need to do is catch three more fish. Day 145 begins with our quest to catch the first of those three fish. The glacier fish. I will be completely honest here, I was absolutely dreading catching this fish. This fish has always been the biggest thorn in my side. It's the reason why I get nervous anytime I set the goal of completing the fishing collection. I took a break from fishing and did a quick jog around the area to hype myself up. I can do this. I will do this. I must do this. The glacier fish will not defeat me again. I cast my rod into the water and hook the fish. Game on. I put every ounce of passion and dedication I had in my body into catching this fish. Failure was no longer an option, nay, failure was no longer a word in my vocabulary. And so, it is with a sense of pride and accomplishment that I announce I was indeed able to catch the glacier fish. I feel so happy right now, but there ain't no rest for the wicked. With one fish down, it's off to the mountain to catch the second fish. The legend. As you have all seen in this video, I have already failed to catch this fish many, many times so far. But this time, this time things are different. This time there is a voice telling me that I can do this. That voice is motivating me and keeping my spirits up. And it is thanks to this voice that I managed to finally catch the legend. Thank you to that voice. Two down, one more to go. Next stop, the beach. Our final target is the squid. Catching the fish is actually the easy part. The hard part is actually hooking the fish in the first place. For whatever reason, the squid has completely avoided me any and every time I've gone fishing at the beach. I was convinced that I would have to come back here tomorrow to catch the squid until a miracle happened. I caught a fish. And it ended up being the squid. And with that, the fishing collection is complete. Today has been an absolutely sensational day. I'm on a roll right now, so I decide to go to Ginger Island and enter the Volcano Dungeon. I want to keep the ball rolling and defeat some magma sprites in order to complete the final monster eradication goal. I realize pretty soon into this adventure that I have forgotten to bring my watering can with me. I need that. So I head back to Pelican Town and pass out beside the bus stop. Willy sends us a star drop on day 146 as a reward for completing the fishing collection. Nice. It's off to Robins to ask her to build a third shed on our farm, then we return to the Volcano Dungeon to continue defeating magma sprites. The rest of the day, as well as days 147 through 150, are spent at the Volcano Dungeon to complete the final monster eradication goal. I don't really like skipping through days like this, but sometimes it's unavoidable. I wish I could say it won't happen again, but realistically it's going to happen another two or three times before the end of this video, I reckon. The Luau takes place on day 151. I throw an Iridium quality super cucumber into the soup, which gets the best reaction from the governor. Our starfruit is ready for harvest on day 152. This is absolutely marvelous news, I've been waiting so long for this moment. As I collect each and every piece of starfruit, I finally discover what the term inner peace truly means. Also, the good thing about buying the key to the town is you can buy seeds from Pierre as early as 8.30am. We have a total of 330,000 gold after selling our starfruit to Pierre, so I warp to the desert and purchase 400 more starfruit seeds. The rest of the day is spent planting these seeds. I head to Clint's on day 153 and ask him to upgrade my hoe. Then it's off to the Skull Caverns. I really want to make some more progress on the museum collection, so as much as I don't like doing this, it's time for another little time skip. The rest of today, as well as days 154 through 157, are spent going through the Skull Caverns, collecting as many Omni Geodes as I possibly can. Every Omni Geode I have at the end of this little Skull Cavern adventure will be traded for artifact troves. On day 158, I head to Clinty Winty and ask him to break open all of my artifact troves, geodes, and frozen geodes. I get a good few artifacts and a mineral from these that can be donated to the museum, so that is exactly what I do. We're not finished with the museum collection quite yet, but we are pretty close, I would say. I return to Clinty Poo. <laughs> I don't know why I call him these things. I return to Clinty Poo and ask him to upgrade my watering can. I spend the rest of the day clearing out debris on the farm, trying to win key coins in the casino, purchasing hardwood fences and placing these fences around the farm. 
I have some good news on day 159. I have placed almost all of the fences I needed to place on the farm. We just need around 100 more for the bottom section of the farm and we will be thriving. I pay a visit to the walnut room and take a look at the special orders Mr. Key has for us. They are absolutely vile. I cannot stress this enough, there is no way I will ever voluntarily attempt to do either of these special orders. I'm not strong enough to complete them. I'm also very lazy, so it would just be a bad time all round. I need a pick-me-up after seeing that absolutely diabolical display of tomfoolery from Mr. Key. So I spend the rest of the day taking everything out of the random chests on the farm and bringing them into the storage shed. This continues on day 160 as I finish clearing out the chests in the farmhouse. I also pick up the furnaces beside the house and place them along with some new ones I made into the second shed. Next on the agenda is to fill up the third shed with as many kegs as I have. This is something I wanted to do earlier, like the beginning of year two earlier, but it completely slipped my mind until now. I ask Robin to build yet another shed on day 161. I will more than likely put mayonnaise machines and cheese presses into this shed. I spend the rest of the day in the casino winning key coins so I can buy more hardwood fences in the future. I head to the quarry on day 162 where I chop down every tree and break every rock. Then I plant tree saplings while also using tree fertilizer. We're going to need a lot of wood in the future so I'll come back every 5 or 6 days to chop down the trees and replant them. We have a starfruit harvest on day 163. I throw some of the starfruit into the kegs in our shed collect my iridium watering can from Clint, and ask him to upgrade my trash can. I buy 339 starfruit seeds from Sandy, then I finally pick up all of the eggs that have been accumulating in the coop. Robin has a special order for us. She would like 80 pieces of hardwood, so we will take care of that over the next few days. It's off to Ginger Island for the rest of the day to place all of the iridium sprinklers I have and hoe the ground to prepare it for tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow... On day 164, I plant all of the starfruit seeds I have. This should make us around 200, maybe 300,000 gold when it's time to harvest them all. It's off the sandy shop to purchase another 250 starfruit seeds, 100 or so of which I plant on Ginger Island. I head into the walnut room and accept the Danger in the Deep special order. Completing this special order has just become my number one priority. I don't actually need to complete it to achieve any of my goals, I just want to prove to myself that I can do it. It will probably be difficult, but I'm going to prepare for it as much as I can. I head to the saloon and buy 50 pizzas. And that's it for the preparation. It's off to the mines for the rest of the day where I make it down to floor 17 before I pass out. It's right back to the mines on day 165. You should probably get used to hearing me say that for the next couple of days, by the way. I put everything I had into the special order. The bad news is I got knocked out in the mines and lost 39 pizzas, which really ruined the vibe. So it's off to the saloon to buy another 50 pizzas. On day 166, I head back to the mines, as you may have guessed. After making it down to floor 55, I head home and use a large portion of the stone I have to make 21 staircases. Also, Bailey gave birth to a baby sheep, so I call it Sunshine. I purchase a full stack of stone from Robin on day 167 and use it to make 10 staircases, giving us a total of 31. Then, once again, it is off to the mines to continue our adventure. I use the staircases to make it down to floor 88 almost immediately. So we are well on our way to reaching floor 120 and completing the special order on time. I decide to put absolutely everything I have into this, blazing through floor after floor after floor. A monster-only floor threatened to slow down my progress, but I had enough stone to make a staircase, so I was able to skip that one. It was off to the races after that, as I reached floor 110 at around 10.30pm, then floor 115 at midnight. Finally, a well-placed mega bomb on floor 119 revealed the ladder and I arrived at my destination. Floor 120. Mr. Key's special order has been completed. We can come back here in the future and activate the shrine on this floor to swap between the normal mines and these mines. I place mayonnaise machines, cheese presses, preserve jars and oil makers into a shed on day 168. There are a couple of artisan goods I still need to throw into my shipping bin like truffle oil. And we'll make good money from selling cheese, mayonnaise, etc. So, you know, not to toot my own horn here, but I think this was a fairly decent choice. Maybe. 
now that I think about it, I could have just made more kegs and put them in the shed, so I don't actually know how decent of a choice this really was. But, ah, sure, look it. I'll take all the gold I can get at this point. Just to be safe, I buy 25 of each summer seed. We'll need these crops for cooking recipes later in the future. Like, much later in the future. I should have done this at the end of spring too, like buying the seeds. But I could purchase Piers missing stock list in the walnut room during fall or winter, and that let me buy all of the seeds at any time, so everything will be okay. I ask Robin to upgrade one of our sheds, then it's time for the dance of the Moonlight Jellies Festival. I said this before, I will say it again. This is, without a doubt, my favourite festival in the entire game. I love the atmosphere, the lighting, the beach, the music. It's all perfect, and I will forever hold this festival near and dear to my heart. And with that, our second summer has come to an end. Day 169, the first day of fall. I start the season by purchasing as many cranberry seeds as I can. Clint wants us to defeat 50 dust sprites in the mines, so we'll take care of that as soon as we can. And by that I mean right now. I make my way through the mines, demolishing every dust sprite I see. Just before midnight I complete the special order and receive 6,000 gold. Clint sends us the crafting recipe for the geode crusher on day 170. This is very good. The sooner we unlock all of the crafting recipes, the better. I head to the walnut room and purchase Pierre's missing stock list. I give Pierre's missing stock list to Pierre, of course. Now we can purchase all of the seeds during any season. The rest of the day is spent planting all of the cranberry seeds I have. On day 171, I want to show you all something I have been doing for a few weeks now. Digging up the ground in the mountain area. I also do it in other areas, but anyway, the reason why I do this is because you can get artifacts by doing it. Speaking of, we are really close to finishing the museum collection. Like, really, really close. I head to Clint's and collect my copper trash can and ask him to crack open the geodes I have with me. Then it's off to the Skull Caverns because we need Omni Geodes, which means another timescape is on the agenda. So it is with a slightly heavy heart, I know, wait. <laughs> I'm surprised that is the first time I've said the word slightly like that in a video. I do it so often in real life. It is with a slightly heavy heart, I announced that the rest of the day, as well as days 172 through 177, are spent in the Skull Cavern. The goal here, of course, being to collect as many Omni Geodes as I can. Hopefully this will be the last time I have to do this. I'll only be going back to the Skull Cavern in the future to get Iridium Ore. On day 178, things are looking really good for us. We have 17 artifact troves, and we only have 5 artifacts left to donate. I head into Clint's and ask him to crack the artifact troves open. Almost immediately we get the Bone Flute. That is a really good start. Then we get the Elvish Jewelry, followed by the Dried Starfish. The fourth one we need is the Ancient Sword, which we also pick up. Unfortunately, we didn't get the fifth and final artifact we need, so I make my way back to the Skull Cavern. Nah, just kidding. The final artifact we need can be acquired by digging up the ground in the desert. I do this and receive a strange doll. This strange doll gets donated to the museum, which means we have fully completed the museum collection. It has been a long journey, but we made it. We actually made it. We have donated every artifact and mineral. I am so happy right now I can't even describe it. I receive a star drop for doing this. I ask Robin to upgrade another one of her sheds. Now it is finally time to show one of the many, many cutscenes in this game. I do not know why I haven't shown a cutscene in such a long time, but you know. You know. There you go. Any whomst, we have the option of either inviting Linus to live on the farm with us, or saying we're just happy Linus is doing well. Telling Linus we're happy he's doing well rewards us with a full fringe apart, so it's always worth picking that one. My voice is going, this is bad. Day 179 is Cranberry Harvest Day. I make sure to fully appreciate this harvest as what I'm about to do next is more than likely going to lead to me becoming very upset for a while. It is time to collect the remaining golden walnuts. The first step in this journey is to complete the field office donations. We only need two more artifacts for this, so it shouldn't take too long. Right? Wrong. I head to the dig site and do some panning to try to get the first artifact. I do not receive this artifact. 
With a heavy heart, I make my way to the Ginger Island farm with the intention of acquiring the second artifact. To get this, we simply need to dig up artifact spots. I'm not even going to pretend that I'm optimistic here. I can tell you for a fact that the second artifact is going to take such a long time to find. I use a rain totem before I head to bed. On day 180, I break a muscle node and receive a golden walnut. That's actually a pretty good start to the day. I'm already feeling a lot better. Okay, no, I'm, I'm lying. I don't feel better. In fact, I, I actually feel worse because that means I have just used up all of my luck, which means it's going to take even longer to find the two artifacts. I place five flute blocks down near the mermaid to complete a puzzle and receive five more golden walnuts. I head to the dig site where I can't do any panning, then I head back to the farm and just go to sleep. This is incredibly upsetting. I, I, I was not mentally prepared for this to happen. I head straight to the dig site on day 181 where I thankfully get the fossilized tail. That is one of the two artifacts we need. That is the good news. The bad news is I have always, always struggled to find that last artifact. No matter how many artifact spots I dig up, it always takes so long for it to appear. It's been that way in basically every playthrough. Like, no joke, if I was doing any other goal right now, I would say something like, I'm going to be optimistic here, I know I can get this done soon. But I just can't say that for this situation, I would be lying if I did. Days 182 and 183 are spent looking for artifact spots before we head to the Stardew Valley Fair on day 184. We all know what happened at last year's Stardew Valley Fair, I don't even want to talk about it. But this year is going to be different, because I now have disposable income. I place 9 items into my Grange display and end up coming in first place, which means I receive 1000 star tokens. Then I immediately purchase almost 2000 more tokens for around 100,000 gold. Look, I know that's a lot of gold, but I'm not going through what I went through last year, alright? That still haunts my nightmares. I use my tokens to purchase a rare crow and the final star drop I needed. Today has been a good day, and I am very grateful for that. Some more good news on day 185 as our starfruit wine is ready for collection. I add more kegs to this shed before going back to Ginger Island. I don't like being here anymore, I just want that last artifact. You know what, I'm going to be fully honest. At this point I started struggling when it came to writing the script for this video. Like, all I'm doing is searching for an artifact spot. But I will do my best to ensure that the next few days are at least halfway entertaining. I dig up an artifact spot on day 186 and I receive three Omni Geodes. That is not what I want, but that is okay, because I can be incredibly dedicated when I want to be. I am 100%, no actually, 101% committed to getting that artifact. Also our starfruit is ready for harvest, so you know, the fact that I was about to make like 300,000 gold made me feel better about everything, so we're vibing right now, we're good. On day 187, I finally, finally, still do not find the artifact. I use a warp totem to get back to the farm in Pelican Town and collect all of the seeds I have for my storage shed. I plant a yam, artichoke, red cabbage and bok choy seed in the greenhouse because I need to ship those for the shipping collection goal. I have a very sad announcement to make on day 188. I have decided to sell Butters the cow. I just felt like he didn't suit the vibe here on the farm and okay, no, the, the truth is I needed space in the barn so I could throw an ostrich egg into an incubator when I get one. Butters did nothing wrong, I'm the problem. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem, it's me. I harvest three sweet gem berries which isn't actually a big deal at all now that I think about it. I don't know why I mentioned that. I make three tea saplings and finally collect all of the rewards that have been sitting in the museum. Then it's back to Ginger Island. Yay. I plant the three tea saplings because I need tea leaves and green tea for the shipping collection. I head to Leo's treehouse on day 189 to ask the parrot for a hint about where I can find golden walnuts. The parrot says to help the man in the tent. Which of course refers to donating artifacts to the field office. So that doesn't exactly do much for us right now unfortunately. Once again, I use a warp totem to get back to the farm where a cranberry harvesting sesh takes place. Next, I visit the dwarf and purchase a rare crow. Then I make my way to the casino and buy another rare crow and as many hardwood fences as I can. 
I ask Robin to add a cellar to the house and spend the rest of the day placing hardwood fences in the lower half of the farm. We receive the crafting recipe for the deluxe gear crow on day 190 as a reward for collecting all of the rare crows. Over on Ginger Island, I of course do not find the artifact I need. This is actually heartbreaking. It's the same story on day 191. It's not all bad though. Even though my soul is being torn apart right now, I still make time to chop down trees, get some ores in the mine, harvest any crops that are ready, yada yada yada. So I'm still making good use of my time despite this whole kerfuffle. I accept a special order from Mr. Key on day 192. He wants us to ship 100,000 gold worth of freshly cooked items. I purchase 700 coffees in the saloon, turn them into triple shot espressos and throw them into the shipping bin to complete the special order. I also completely forgot about the quest we can get from Birdie. How did it take me this long to remember this is a thing? I actually can't believe I haven't done this yet. I take the memento Birdie gave us and give it to Kent who gives us gourmet tomato salt. I give this tomato salt to Gus who gives us a Stardew Valley rose. And that's it for today. I collect a ton of starfruit wine on day 193 so I'm back to feeling pretty good. Dare I even say I am feeling really good. I sell this wine to Pierre and give the Stardew Valley Rose to Sandy who gives us an advanced TV remote. I give this to George who gives us an arctic shard. I give this to the wizard who gives us a wriggling worm. Finally I give the worm to Willy who gives us the pirate's locket. I turn some coffees I purchased into triple shot espressos and search for an artifact spot. I do not find one. Also because it is raining Birdie is not outside which means I can't give her the pirate's locket today. Sometimes I can't tell whether this game loves me or hates me. Maybe it's both. It's probably but it's definitely both now that I think about it. On day 194 I find an artifact. Unfortunately it is not the one I need. I do give the pirate's locket to Birdie and complete her quest though. We receive 5 golden walnuts for this. Sweet. On day 195 I still have not gotten the artifact I need. I am tremendously upset right now. Day 196, the final day of fall. I didn't find the artifact today either. I decide to plant 4 or 5 of each seed I have just to be prepared for the cooking recipes when I make them in the future. Alright, let's be real here. The last 10 or so days of this season have basically been me talking about how I couldn't get the last artifact I need. I want to make it up to you all. So, here is a dramatic retelling of the events of this season. Once upon a time, a little hummingbird lived in a magical kingdom called Pelican Town. The hummingbird was happy there. It had a nice cozy nest in a big beautiful forest. Food was plentiful. The area was peaceful. The hummingbird had friends, many friends. It loved each and every one of them. But one day, the hummingbird grew restless. It wanted to explore a new area to take on a new challenge. The hummingbird heard about a treasure buried deep in the sands in a place called Ginger Island. And so the hummingbird took flight. It flew and flew and flew. The hummingbird became exhausted but pushed on determined to reach its destination. Finally, it landed on the sandy shores of Ginger Island. The hummingbird worked tirelessly, day and night, day in and day out. But try as it might, it could not find the treasure it was searching for. The hummingbird was heartbroken. It had left its magical kingdom for one reason and one reason only. And it had failed. But then the hummingbird realized something. Failure is not the end, but rather the starting point of a future victory. And so, the hummingbird's current chapter may be over, but its story has only truly just begun. Right, so I would like to make a quick announcement as we begin day 197. I am implementing a new rule. From now on, I can't specifically mention looking for the artifact. If I find it, I will mention it, but other than that, I won't talk about it. Any whomst, Mr. Key would like four prismatic shards. This is a handy special order, so I tend to choose it when it pops up. We have a starfruit harvest, which means our bank account is going to look absolutely delicious really soon. 
I purchase the teleportation tower that lets me warp back to Pelican Town from the Ginger Island farm, throw starfruit into the kegs and plant some winter seeds. Gunther would like us to bring him 100 pieces of bone so we'll power through that at some point. I head to the wizard's tower on day 198 and purchase the earth and water obelisks. It's off to the desert to purchase starfruit seeds and some cactus fruit. I'm not entirely sure why I bought the cactus fruit to be completely honest with you. And also that's it for today. On day 199 I head to the sewer and reset my foraging perks. Now we can choose different perks when we go to sleep tonight. For some reason I completely forgot about the abandoned Georgia Mart bundle until now. The good news is that it won't be too difficult to complete this one because of how late in the game we're tackling it. I head to the volcano dungeon and make it to floor 5 where I purchase a cooking recipe and a crafting recipe. When I head to sleep I choose the gatherer perk which gives us a chance to receive two of any forage item we pick up. I also pick the perk that guarantees iridium quality forage. I head to Robins on day 200 and ask her to upgrade one of her sheds. Except I don't do that because I can't afford it. That was humbling. Also I need to make a change to the format of this video. We have reached a point where I just don't have enough interesting things to talk about each day. So from now on I will talk about what I did each week instead of each day. From now until the end of day 203 I throw a mango into the shipping bin, harvest winter forage, plant more winter seeds and head to the mines to collect the bones Gunther asked for. I used a monster musk while I did this so it greatly sped up the process. I watched Krobus's 14 heart cutscene for the very first time. A sea monster sort of picks up Krobus and gives him a ride in the water, I, it's, I don't know how to explain, it's like a carnival ride I guess. I, I don't really know what else to say about this one. But I really like this cutscene, it was, it was cute. I also head to Robins and ask her to upgrade one of her sheds. And this time I actually had enough gold to afford it. Finally I place mini fridges in the kitchen to prepare for when I start making all of the cooking recipes. The period of days 204 through 210 begins with me accepting a special order from Caroline. She wants us to grow and ship 100 pineapples. The reward for this is the solar panel crafting recipe. We need this crafting recipe so it is very 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 important that we complete this order. I plant all of the pineapple seeds I have along with the Lux Speed Grow. Unless something goes terribly wrong we should reach 100 pineapples after we harvest them for the second time. Our starfruit wine is ready which is always a BEA beautiful sight. I donate the items needed for the Georgia Mart bundle completing it and unlocking the theater. I chop down some of the trees at the quarry. This is something I'll be doing quite often from now on, even more so than I used to. This is because I really want to fill another shed up with kegs to speed up the money making process. I dig up an artifact spot on Ginger Island and finally receive the snake vertebrae. I am so happy that's out of the way. I head to the field office, donate the snake vertebrae and realize I have made a terrible mistake. I did not need the fossilized tail. I need the fossilized skull. This is a development I did not see coming. I am not happy about this. But thankfully it's really easy to get the fossilized skull. I bring my golden coconuts to Clint, ask him to crack them open and receive the skull. I donate it to the field office, finally completing the collection. In return I receive the crafting recipe for the ostrich incubator. I head to Leo's house and ask the parrot for hints on where the remaining three golden walnuts are. The parrot refuses to tell me anything. Alright, this, this could be bad, like, like really bad. But I do have two ideas on where we could get the final three walnuts. I head to the cave where you can play the Simon Says game, but it turns out I have already completed this. Okay, I'm, I'm getting a little anxious here, not gonna lie. In order to calm my nerves, I head back home and start making all of the cooking recipes I have unlocked up to this point. I take a break from this to buy rhubarb and beet seeds from Sandy, purchase the tropical curry recipe from Gus and plant the rhubarb and beet seeds. I also buy jazz seeds and deluxe speed grow from Pierre and plant these too. I head to the pirate cove where I play a game of darts three times to receive three golden walnuts. And with that we have collected all 130 golden walnuts. I shouldn't be too proud of this considering I collected over 100 of them during the first year but still. I am genuinely over the moon right now. 
Now, all we have to do before the end of winter is throw an ostrich egg, tea leaves and green tea into the shipping bin and that is all four goals completed. I harvest starfruit, purchase the workbench and set up a little workstation in the cellar. I start throwing the ingredients needed for crafting recipes into a chest. Crafting every item is something I want to get out of the way as soon as possible. During days 211 through 218, I harvest winter forage and of course replant the winter seeds. I originally planned on putting the ostrich egg I have into the incubator, but like a restaurant worker who has just handed in their two weeks notice, I'm tired of waiting. So I throw the ostrich egg into the shipping bin. I purchase around 800 wood and stone from Robin, which will be used for the crafting recipes. I wanted to buy coal from Clint, but he left his shop right as I got there. You know, I've seen people say Marnie is very unreliable and is never at home when they need to purchase something from her, but Clint is so much worse for me. It genuinely feels like he does something that really inconveniences me every single playthrough. I do eventually end up getting the coal from him though, so I forgive him. We can be friends again. For now, until he inevitably does something to upset me again in a future playthrough. I get started on making the crafting recipes. And by that I mean I make almost every single crafting recipe available to us right now. So all we really need to do after making the two or three we still have left to craft is unlock the solar panel and mini obelisk recipes. And purchase the hopper recipe from Mr. Key. I plant garlic seeds on Ginger Island because I need garlic for a crafting recipe. Also, I really should have mentioned this a bit sooner, but I've been putting quite a bit of effort into our friendships this year. I've done my best to give every villager a birthday present, so it won't take as long to reach maximum friendship with every villager next year. I harvest our final batch of winter forage. There was time to plant winter seeds again before the end of the year, but I decided to sell the majority of this forage instead of turning them into winter seeds. Our first pineapple harvest takes place, and I really hope I'm not jinxing it when I say this, but... I think we're guaranteed to complete Caroline's special order when we harvest the pineapples for the second time. Speaking of harvest, it's time to collect our starfruit, starfruit wine, and oak resin. I buy 750 copper and iron ore as well as 300 coal from Clint. Then I head to the sewer and reset my farming perks. I purchase 25 of each cooking product because I honestly cannot be bothered going back to piers again in the future. I'm sick of being in a shop at this point. I cook a bruschetta, which means we have officially cooked every dish we can at this point. I need to unlock 5 more recipes, I think, and then we're done with that. I get started on smelting all of the copper and iron ore and choose the wrong farming perks when I go to sleep. I wanted the perk that gives you a 40% bonus when you sell artisan goods like wine. Days 219 through 224 are the final days of winter. I begin by smelting the remaining iron ore. Just in case anybody is curious, the copper and iron ore will be used to make kegs. The wizard is looking for ectoplasm. Yeah, you remember when I accepted this special order a while ago but didn't do it because I thought the reward was the crafting recipe from Monster Musk? I was wrong. The reward for this special order is the crafting recipe for the mini obelisk which I still need to get. I buy back 5 crystal fruit from Pierre and head into the mines after consuming a Monster Musk. I fully expected to spend the rest of winter trying to get the ectoplasm. I was very, very wrong. Almost immediately, I defeated the ghost and it dropped the ectoplasm. I bring it to the wizard and complete his order. Alright, I guess that's done. Nice. I head to the sewer because I have to reset my farming perks again thanks to my little blunder. I harvest tea leaves, put a few kegs into a shed, throw two tea leaves into them and throw the remaining tea leaf into the shipping bin. I choose the artisan perk this time. I craft the mini obelisk, collect the green tea from the kegs and throw them into the shipping bin too. And with that, we have fully completed the shipping collection. That is the fourth and final goal we set for the second year completed. Mr. Key wants us to give out 50 love gifts in one week. That sounds like a beautiful way to spend the last few days of winter, so it's time to become Santa Claus for a while. And it'll help with our friendships, so it's a win-win. For the longest time, I hated having to give gifts to the villagers and talk to them and just the whole general process of increasing my friendship with them. Like, I would have to hype myself up and really motivate myself to do it. But I've sort of been enjoying it during the last two or three playthroughs I've done. It's actually relaxing going around town and giving them gifts. So I'm really happy we got that special order from Mr. Key. 
and we'll get 40 key gems for completing it, so that's a nice bonus. I purchase 50 coffees while I'm in the saloon, place more kegs in the second shed and fill them with starfruit. I head to the Feast of the Winter Star, and to be honest with you all, I have no idea who I have to give a gift to. Lewis did send me a letter telling me who it is, but I didn't pay attention to it at all, so I'm very confused. I talked to as many villagers as I had to until I eventually got the option to give Demetrius a gift. I play it safe and give him a prismatic shard which he loves. Then Pam gives me a bottle of wine. Thank you, Pamela. With that lovely festival out of the way, it's back to handing out gifts to the residents of Pelican Town. I take a quick break from this to buy five and a half stacks of wood from Robin. Then I give a poppy seed muffin to Leah to complete the special order, earning us 40 key gems. I make 127 kegs and fill this shed with them, and put starfruit inside the kegs. I harvest 4 pineapples in the greenhouse, buy more speed growth from Pierre, and harvest our pineapples for the second time. As I'm throwing them into the shipping bin, I am almost certain that we've shipped enough to complete Caroline's special order, but we'll know for sure on the final day of winter. I head to the walnut room and purchase the hopper crafting recipe for 50 key gems. I also plant all of the ancient fruit seeds that I've gotten from seed makers up to this point. The plan is to turn any and all ancient fruit we harvest in year 3 into ancient fruit wine. On the final day of our second year, Caroline sends us the crafting recipe for the solar panel. This, along with the hopper recipe, were the final two recipes I needed. I craft both of these items, which means we have just crafted every item in the game. I collect some starfruit wine and sell it to Pierre. And I think that is a good time to say goodbye to our second year. That was honestly a lot of fun. It, it did take me a couple of days in-game to get back into the swing of things after I took a short break before starting year 2. But I'm pretty happy with what I achieved this year. I hope you all enjoyed watching my little adventure. But let's not dilly-dally for too long. Let's finish this playthrough, once and for all. We get a cutscene with Grandpa at the beginning of our third year. He is very happy with the progress we have made so far. All four candles at Grandpa's shrine are lit up, so we are given the Statue of Perfection as a reward. At this point in the video, all I have left to do to achieve perfection is finish reaching maximum hearts with every villager, buy the gold clock and the island and desert obelisks, and cook four more dishes. All four of the recipes for these dishes are given to us by villagers as we increase our friendship with them. I don't really see the point in dragging this out and trying to go into a ton of detail like I normally do, so days 225 to... Uh... Hold on, I think I need a calculator for this one. Alright, days 225 through 357 are spent working on these final tasks. The main things I do during this period of time are harvest cranberries, give gifts to the villagers, harvest ancient fruit, throw ancient fruit into seed makers to get more ancient seeds, purchase deluxe speed grow and fill up the entirety of the ginger island farm with ancient fruit seeds. Any and all ancient fruit we harvest are thrown into our kegs. One thing I want to specifically mention is the dwarf and what happened on their birthday. I meant to give them a ruby but accidentally gave them a triple shot espresso. This one mistake just ensured that the dwarf will be the last person we reach max friendship with. I purchase the furniture catalogue from Robin and finally decorate my house to cheer myself up. It's pretty similar to the way I normally decorate my house in every playthrough, but I have made a few changes. Overall, I am pretty happy with how it turned out. I like the vibe of my house. Dare I even say I believe it is aesthetically pleasing. As the season of fall begins, I decide to start beautifying the farm. This took a bit longer than I thought it would, mainly because of how much wood, stone and weeds there was. But after clearing all of that stuff off the farm, it was just a case of putting grass everywhere. I sell most of our ancient fruit wine and the starfruit wine I kept to Pierre, bringing us up to 2 million gold. I head to the wizard's tower and purchase the desert obelisk and the island obelisk. Also, I have some good news. I have managed to time it perfectly so the ancient fruit on the Pelican Town farm, on the Ginger Island farm, and in the greenhouse will all be ready to harvest on the same day every time. Wait, no, no it won't, I messed up. The bottom row of ancient fruit in the greenhouse needs one or two more days before it's ready. As I mentioned earlier, the dwarf is now the only person I need to achieve max friendship with. 
But the good news is we are very close to doing that, which I'm very grateful for because in the clip on the screen right now, it is day 287. So we've spent a long, long time on our friendships. Also, some more good news. I waited a couple of days and now all of the ancient fruit we have planted everywhere will be ready on the same day every single time. I gave the dwarf an aqua marine not just once but twice and it was very, very nice. I cooked the final four dishes and head to Ginger Island where a visit to the walnut room reveals that we have achieved 90% completion. All we have to do now is earn 10 million gold and purchase the gold clock. Before I skip ahead to that, I would first like to show you all my farm and house just in case anybody wants to see them. Again, I'm pretty happy with how both of them turned out. I love their aura, you know I feel a deep sense of comfort when I look at these two pictures. Also, I just noticed I never put any fish in the fish tank in our house. I totally meant to do that. I, I definitely didn't just forget to put any fish into it. Okay, no, seriously, that's actually annoying me. I can't believe I never filled up the fish tank. Anyway, I collect all of the ancient fruit wine that is ready in our first keg shed, along with the ancient fruit wine and ancient fruit I had in a chest in that same shed. Then I do the exact same thing in our second keg shed. I head to Pierre and sell everything to him, bringing us up to around 9.8 million gold. I have made a severe miscalculation. I really did think that would bring us up to 10 million gold. Oh no. I run to Ginger Island and throw everything I kept in the chest there into the shipping bin. I also head back home, collect all of the cooked dishes I've made and throw them into the shipping bin too. This earns us 177,000 gold. We almost have enough, we just need 46,000 more gold. Luckily, the ancient fruit in our greenhouse is ready for harvest, so I collect them and sell them to Pierre, which brings us up to the magical number. I head to the wizard's tower and finally purchase the gold clock. I place it beside the coop. I visit the walnut room where the perfection tracker confirms we have achieved 100% completion. On day 358, wow, that took a lot of time. Uh, on day 358, I make my way to the summit where the final cutscene in the game plays. I was expecting Krobus to be there, so you can imagine how disappointed I was when I saw Lewis waiting for us instead. But that is not important. What is important is we have finally completed this playthrough. It's been over a year in real life since I have achieved perfection without using mods, so I'm feeling sensational right now. I mean, yeah, it did take me 358 days to do it. Just to put that in perspective, that means I achieved perfection on the 22nd day of spring in year 4. That's not very fast, I'll be honest. But still, I'm just happy that it's done and dusted. This whole playthrough was a lot of fun. It was challenging. Very challenging, don't get me wrong. But it was nice playing through the game without using any mods. It takes me back to simpler times. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that playthrough with no mods. It's time now to do a complete 180 and focus on a playthrough that involved a massive expansion mod. I am of course referring to the Stardew Valley Expanded playthrough. The Stardew Valley Expanded mod adds new villagers, new items, new areas, new fish and so much more to the game. The goal of this playthrough is of course to achieve perfection. But I did set goals for the first year just to keep me on track and make sure I kept making progress. These goals are the following. Complete the community center, earn a total of 1 million gold, and upgrade all of our tools to iridium quality. Also, to keep things fresh, I decided to use three more mods alongside the expanded mod. First, we have the better mixed seeds mod. This mod allows any crop to grow from mixed seeds. Mod number two is the Georgia clearance bin. This mod adds a mystery box to Georgia Mart. We can buy random items from this box every day. And finally, we have the Shop Overhaul mod. This mod is pretty simple, it adds more items to the shops in Pelican Town. So, for example, Robin will now sell kegs and Clint will sell battery packs. With all of that out of the way, let's get started with the very first day of spring. Before the first day officially begins, I would like to show you all my outfit. Now you're probably saying to yourself, wow, that is delightfully formal. And that is very true. I dress this way because I'm always ready for business. Funny business. 
I spend some time clearing out space on the farm for any crops we will be planting today, then I make a chest and put most of the items in our inventory into it. I head to the saloon and buy a coffee, then go and meet Sophia, one of the new Stardew Valley expanded villagers. I head into the big forest area known as West Cindersap Forest. For the rest of this playthrough I'll be calling it the Big Forest. I find multiple ancient sword artifacts as well as a forest sword. The forest sword is a great find, it'll help us out quite a bit when we head into the mines. At the top left of the big forest I find a maple syrup. I do not know who this belongs to but it's mine now. Finders keepers, you snooze you lose, yada yada yada. I head back to my farm, collect my 15 parsnip seeds and plant them along with all of the mixed seeds we have just before the day ends. I also throw quite a few of the items we collected into the shipping bin. On the morning of day 2 we start the unfortunate process of having to water our crops. I already really really want to get sprinklers. I head into town and take a look at the help wanted board. Sophia is looking for a sardine so we will happily oblige her. I take a look at the new items Pierre is selling. Basic sprinklers, scarecrows, coffee beans, ancient seeds, spring seeds. So many options. In the end I decide to buy 50 mixed seeds. Next on the agenda is a trip to the museum to donate the ancient sword I found yesterday and collect a 250 gold reward for doing this. We visit Willy to collect our fishing rod. It feels weird not calling him King William but that was a different playthrough. We need to look towards the future and keep things fresh. I take a look at Willy's shop and he's selling pretty much what you would expect him to sell. Dishes that increase your fishing level, beach forage and items that you can get from crab pots. I spend a bit of time fishing at the beach to catch a sardine for Sophia. With that out of the way I head to the Blue Moon Vineyard and give the sardine to Sophia. I receive 120 gold for this putting us at a nice even 1000 gold. Completing her quest also gave us enough friendship points to view her first cutscene. She gives us a quality sprinkler in this cutscene. For free I might add. This immediately establishes Sophia as my favourite new villager. Back on our farm I get to work on clearing out some more space for the new seeds we bought today. It takes a while and I ate 3 or 4 different pieces of spring forage but we do manage to get all of our mixed seeds planted and watered. I decide to spend the rest of the day taking a nice long walk through the big forest. It turns out there is a door behind the spot where we found the maple syrup yesterday. I, I, I think we did actually steal someone's maple syrup so that, that might be an issue in the future. It's raining on day 3 so we don't have to water our seeds which is very very nice. I buy the training rod from Willy and spend a while fishing at the beach. I take a quick break to sell the fish I caught, then I head to Piers to sell my forage. But his shop is closed. Because it's Wednesday. I have spent almost 600 hours playing this game, how do I keep making this mistake? I return to the beach where I spend the rest of the day fishing. We could have tried to catch catfish because it was raining but I wanted to enjoy my fishing experience for a while before we start going for the more difficult fish. Also we got a diamond and a treasure chest which gave a nice boost to our gold. On day 4 it's back to watering our seeds. Once again I really really want to get sprinklers, like I cannot emphasize this enough, I need sprinklers, I'm not built for this. The better mixed seeds mod is definitely working though because I'm seeing quite a few crops that I don't recognize. I decide to buy the backpack upgrade in piers for 2000 gold, then I buy the seeds for spring crops as well as 36 mixed seeds. I honestly don't know if the crops they produce are going to sell for a lot of gold. But I get really excited seeing all of the new crops pop up when I plant the mixed seeds so either way I'm happy. I return to our farm and chop down some trees then head to the area with a dilapidated shed. I clear away most of the fibre that has taken over the area then I talk to Olivia for the first time. I don't know why but she looks really familiar for some reason. That's going to bother me for a while. I give a dandelion to Sophia as a way of saying thank you for the sprinkler she gave us then I head into the forest and... Nope, get that video off the screen. This is a new playthrough, alright we need to keep things fresh. The big forest has officially become my new happy place. I do not know why but I immediately feel relaxed as soon as I go in here. I enter an old farmhouse and find an ancient doll on the floor that we can donate to the museum. Full disclosure, I played Stardew Valley Expanded around a year ago I believe, so I know who lives in this house. I won't spoil it though just in case anyone doesn't know and wants to wait until we are introduced to them to find out. Also, at least one big update was released for this mod during the time I didn't play it so there will definitely be quite a few new things for me to discover. On the morning of day 5 it is time to adopt a dog. 
I decide to name it after the greatest professional wrestler of all time, Hornswoggle. Our parsnips are ready, so I harvest them before watering the remaining crops. I head into town and watch the cutscene where Lewis shows us the community center and give a gift to Linus. I decide to check out the Adventurers Guild and Marlin is selling quite a few really interesting items. Slime eggs, the Iridium band and some artifacts. I spend the rest of the day in the mines. It goes pretty well and I manage to get to floor 18 before I pass out. Day 6 of course begins with the watering of our crops. I think I'm going to stop saying that from now on. Not just to save time, but also because I get more and more upset every time I watch how much time I spend watering crops every morning. I do have some good news though. I finally made a scarecrow. But one isn't enough. I need two. I chop down some trees to get more wood, make another scarecrow and place both of them down. I have decided to call these two scarecrows Jay and Mark. As in one is called Jay and the other is called Mark. I'm like, they, like I didn't just call both, like they're not, uh, look, uh, I plant the seeds I bought on day 4 which leads to me becoming exhausted. I end up eating a field snack and the forage I was saving which I am not happy about at all. With our crops watered I head into town and accept a quest to bring 20 copper ore to Clint. I spend the rest of the day in the mines where I make it to floor 19. A piece of kale and a tulip are ready for harvest on day 7. I know this isn't a lot but it's the little things in life that matter the most. I give a four leaf clover to Sophia to which she responds with, can I help you? Bit rude. Willie wants a catfish, so I accept the quest even though it's unlikely that we'll be able to get one in time. Then I made a mistake. I accidentally gave Alex and Pamela a quartz instead of an earth crystal. They were not very pleased with me. I did sort of make up for this though because I gave an amethyst to Abigail. Clint is next up on our list of gift recipients. I really want to stay on top of her friendships, so I'm going to go out of my way to talk to as many villagers and give as many gifts as I can every single day. I head to the community center and read the scroll. It reminds me of the script for my 100 days videos. Complete mumbo jumbo that eventually somehow makes sense. I spend the rest of the day in the mines where I finally make a past floor 20. I leave the mines just before 2am to throw some copper ore into the furnaces I set up there. Some more crops are ready for harvest on day 8, which is always nice to see. I take the items I have for the community center and the museum out of a chest and head to the wizard's tower to learn how to read the scroll in the community center. Then it's off to the community center to donate everything we have, followed by a trip to the museum to do the same thing there. We receive an ancient seed, the recipe for ancient seeds, and 9 cauliflower seeds as rewards. Then it's off to the beach to do a bit of fishing. You may be wondering why I'm still using the training rod on day 8. That is because I accidentally threw my fishing rod into the trash on day 2 so we're stuck with the training rod until Willy's shop opens up tomorrow. It's off to the mines at the end of the day where we manage to reach level 25. I start day 9 by planting our cauliflower seeds and ancient fruit seeds after harvesting the crops that have grown. I throw these crops into the shipping bin then chop down some trees to clear out some more space. We have been dilly dallying for too long. Pretty soon we're going to plant even more seeds and really improve our mixed seed empire. I head to Pierre's shop where I talk to Lewis to complete a quest he gave us to defeat four slimes and talk to everybody else in the shop. I donate a couple of items to the community center which includes the final spring forage item we needed to complete the spring forage bundle. I decide to take a leisurely stroll around the big forest for most of the day collecting all of the forage I come across. There are two benefits to doing this. The first is a lot of the villagers like dandelions and daffodils, so they make good presents at the start of the game. The second reason is because I feel a deep and profound sense of belonging when I enter the big forest. It feels like home to me. Back on my farm, I am faced with the consequences of not watering my crops this morning. That consequence being, I cannot tell the difference between the ones I have watered and the ones I have not watered. I make a few torches to brighten up the place, which slightly helps, but lesson learned. Don't wait until night time to water your crops. Day 10 is a strawberry harvest day. I mean I only harvested 5 strawberries but it, it's something. I considered not showing this next event but I think it just proves that the whole scallywag thing isn't a joke alright I, I am a bit lackadaisical at times. Once again I forgot that Piers is closed on Wednesdays. With a heavy heart I walk all the way back to my farm to throw my crops and forage items into my shipping bin. Then I head to Willy's shop and buy the bamboo fishing rod. I do some fishing at the beach, then head up to the mountain lake to catch the fish that you can only catch in spring. 
I take a quick detour to the river beside Penny's home to catch a bream, then it's back to the mountain lake for the rest of the day. I head to Clint's on day 11 and ask him to upgrade my pickaxe, which locks us out of the mines for two days. A cutscene plays where we spend some time with Dusty the dog. The addition of Dusty might be my favourite thing about the Stardew Valley expanded mod so far. I give a gift to Linus, then spend the rest of the day at the mountain lake. I want to make sure we catch all of the fish we can in spring, and this includes the legend fish. So we need to work on increasing our fishing level as much as we can. Day 12 is a rainy day, which is truly a sight for sore eyes. Also, I cannot express just how excited I get every single time our mixed seeds start growing and I see all of the different crops pop up. I head to Evelyn's house and give gifts to the family. At this point, I might stop mentioning giving gifts to the villagers, but rest assured, I will not forget about any of them. I pay a visit to Sophia's house to take a look at the items she sells. The aged Blue Moon wine costs 28,000 gold, which means that at some point, I'm going to buy 100 bottles of these and drink all of them for no reason. The rest of the day is spent fishing with a focus on catfish, shad, and eels. The egg festival takes place on day 13. This is the part where a lot of people would buy a ton of strawberry seeds, but we don't follow the meta here. Also, we, we can't follow the meta because we just don't have enough gold r right now, but look, it, it sounds better if I say I'm not following the meta, you know, it makes it seem like I'm standing out. Okay, look, look, move on, move on, it does, not important. The egg hunt begins and I immediately walk into a chair, then I walk into Olivia and Victor. That was not a good start. I get a bit distracted near the end, but I manage to collect the nine eggs just in time, which means we have won the egg hunt. For this, we are rewarded with a straw hat. I feel complete when I put on the straw hat. My chakras have truly been unblocked. I really hope I'm pronouncing that word correctly. Day 14 is a big harvest day. Three of the crops I collected are completely new to me. One of them is called Salal Berries and gives you 70 energy when you eat it. This will be very handy when we're going through the mines. I head to Piers and sell my crops. It is at this point that I realize the Georgia veggie is worth over 1100 gold. That makes me happy. I head to the mountain area where Lewis tells us that one of the villagers, Susan, has been separated from the rest of the town because there's a big boulder in the way. If it's the same as Vanilla Stardew Valley, then the boulder should be removed around the third day of summer and we'll be able to meet Susan. I head to the mines and collect five copper bars from my chest, collect my copper pickaxe from Clint and ask him to upgrade my watering can. Also, it turns out that Leah loves Salal Berries, but that isn't very important because we're a whole different person now and we will not be romancing Leah in this playthrough. I finally check out the clearance bin in Georgia Mart. I don't buy anything, but I can definitely see how it could be useful if we're missing certain crops in the future. I buy a salad and two coffees in the saloon, drink a coffee, then head into the mines. Our Salal Berries, coffee and copper pickaxe make it a lot easier and we manage to get down to level 35 before the day ends. I've also been making sure that I keep my furnaces working away while we're in the mines. Andy, who is one of the new villagers in the Stardew Valley Expanded mod, visits us on day 15. He lets us know that the crows have been eating his crops. Thank you for the heads up, Andrew. You know what? I think this could be the start of a beautiful new friendship. Yeah, Andy sent us three strawberry seeds in the mail. He is officially my best friend now. The good news train keeps on rolling as several crops are ready for harvest. Among these crops are six Georgia veggies and a few more Salal berries. I really do apologize if I'm pronouncing Salal wrong by the way. The wizard is looking for a catfish. Thankfully we just need to bring him a catfish, we don't actually have to catch a new one for this quest. I sell most of my crops to Pierre but I keep three of the Georgia veggies. I have big plans for these three vegetables. I head to Robins and buy four kegs and two preserve jars. Please do keep in mind that we can only do this because we have the shop overhaul mod installed. You can't buy these from Robin in Vanilla Stardew Valley. It's off to the mines for the rest of the day where we make it down to the frozen layer. I set up my kegs and preserve jars on day 16. I throw my three Georgia veggies into the kegs along with five coffee beans and I throw a couple of strawberries into the preserve jars. I head to Piers where I buy 75 mixed seeds, then I give a catfish to the wizard to complete his quest. Next I watch a cutscene where Sophia and Scarlet have a little conversation. After Scarlet leaves, Sophia asks me if I heard anything that they were talking about. Technically my farmer wasn't there for the start of the conversation and I was probably wearing headphones when I did walk by so I'm going to say that I didn't hear anything. 
I collect my watering can from Clint, then I buy the fiberglass rod from Willie. I spend the rest of the day fishing at the Shearwater Bridge. The fish here are a bit of a step up from the fish we've caught so far, but we are more than ready to deal with them. And besides, Andy loves butterfish and Sophia loves puppyfish. Both of those fish can only be caught here, so we need to get used to fishing here. One of the biggest benefits of the Better Mixed Seeds mod reveals itself on day 17. We pretty much have easy access to coffee thanks to the coffee beans that have grown. I was on my way to donate items to the community center when I saw that Shane was looking for a frozen tear. He was walking past me as I accepted the quest, so I decided to give him the one I had in my inventory. I donate the items I have on me to the community center, making good progress on the fishing bundles and the boiler room bundles. We received 20 speed grow for completing the spring crops bundle, so I head back to my farm and sprinkle it on some of my crops. I head to Clint's and ask him to upgrade my axe. I've seen a few big logs around the place, so I want to break those and see if I can unlock any new areas for doing that. The clearance bin is selling mixed seeds for 1 gold each, so I buy all 15 of them, then I head to the mines where I make it to level 67 before I pass out. We get the good news combo on day 18 as it is a rainy day and more of our crops are ready for harvest. After that, I watch a cutscene with Olivia and Victor. Why does Olivia look so familiar? This is really starting to annoy me. Her earrings are really cool though, I have to say that. I know I said I wouldn't be talking about giving gifts anymore, but there is too much footage of me giving gifts today, so here you go. It's off to the mines for the rest of the day, where we managed to make it down to level 80. We're making good progress thanks to the berries, giving us 70 energy every time we eat one. The harvest is bountiful on day 19, which is good. Our coffee is ready, which is great, and our strawberry jelly is also ready, which is marvellous. I head to the community center to donate some more items, and I donate some items to the museum before collecting my axe from Clint. I buy a bear at the saloon because Shane's birthday is coming up, then I head into the big forest and find Jazz. She got lost in there, so we bring her back to Marnie. At the traveling cart, I decide to buy a coconut because I don't know how long it's going to take before we get to Calico Desert. I go to break the log blocking the entrance to the secret woods, but it turns out our copper axe isn't strong enough to break it. I promise I'm not terrible at this game, that was just a bit of a whimsical moment on my part, I, I did that on purpose, I totally knew that we wouldn't be able to break the log. As is tradition, it's back to the mines for the rest of the day. I collect the fire quartz and some gold ore on level 82 which is fantastic. All we need to complete the boiler room in the community center is a fire quartz and a gold bar. I continue making my way through the mines, barely making it to floor 85 before the day ends. We reach level 5 in mining, so I choose the Geologist perk, which gives us a chance to get two of any gems we find. I collect two Georgia Veggie Juices and one Kale Juice on day 20. I was certain that I put three Georgia Veggies into the keg, so I have no idea where that other Georgia Veggie went. Any whomst, I sell most of my crops and the juices to Pierre, which brings us up to over 9,000 gold. I buy four quality sprinklers, give Shane a little present for his birthday, and hit the jackpot with the clearance bin. Strawberry seeds are being sold for 1 gold each, so I buy all 10 of them. I donate a fire quartz and a gold bar to the community center, completing the boiler room. I head to the Adventurers Guild and officially join the Adventurers Guild. Th that, that can't be right, did I make a typo on the script? No, no I did not. Okay, Marlin Shop is called the Adventurers Guild and the group he's part of is also called the Adventurers Guild. Well, if it's not broken, then don't fix it I suppose. I like that mentality. I collect 5 iron bars from my chest in the mines, crack open some omni geodes at Clint's, ask him to upgrade my axe and donate some items to the museum. Back on the farm I place the quality sprinklers we bought and plant all of our seeds. I donate a coconut to the community center, then to end the day I head to the mountain lake to do some fishing. Also the Junimos repaired the minecart during the night and we reached level 5 in farming. Demetrius visits us on day 21. As always, I decide to go for the fruit bats over the mushrooms. A little bit of a kerfuffle is occurring in Pelican Town as Andy has just been told about new regulations being introduced in the town. These regulations will result in him losing more money than he already is. Everybody in the immediate vicinity is flabbergasted when Andy starts to yell. I do not like watching this. Andy isn't just my neighbor. He's my friend. I will find some way to cheer him up in the future. We watch another cutscene after this, this one features Leah. She has been growing green beans in the community garden. 
She also kindly gives us one of these, which is very nice of her. Sebastian wants a sunfish for... Uh, alrighty then. I sell some crops to Pierre to get a bit of gold, then I donate a good few items to the museum and receive a starfruit seed as a reward. We bump into the wizard in the big forest. I hope you're all ready for some lore about the whole magical aspect of Pelican Town. By moving to Pelican Town, the wizard also made a pledge to defend its citizens. To do this, he has set up a barrier around the town to keep all of the monsters out. A witch by the name of Camil Camila? Camilla? Ca look, I, I, look I, I think it's common knowledge now that I mispronounce things quite a bit, so let's just call her Camilla and, and get it over with. If I mispronounce it, please let me know and correct me on that one, please. A witch by the name of Kamala lives in Castle Village, and the barrier she has set up there is the largest magical barrier in the world. That is all very interesting stuff, but you know what's even more interesting? Me going to the mines for the rest of the day and making it down to floor 95 at 1.50am. We need 5 gold star parsnips for the community center, so on day 22 I head into piers and buy 50 parsnip seeds. I head to Clint's and collect my axe, chop down the two big logs in front of Grandpa's old shed and take a look inside. It isn't in the best state, but I'm sure we'll find some way to fix it up and make it look absolutely sterling at some point in the future. I break the log that blocks the way to the secret woods for real this time and head inside. I was caught completely off guard when I saw that the entire secret woods had been changed. I spent some time walking around and collecting hardwood, then I spent some time fishing so we can catch the wood skip and the grass carp. I head into the big forest and chop down a log at the top of the area, but it turns out it just leads to the secret woods. Which I suppose is still a nice little discovery. On day 23, I make my way through the mines and collect the star drop on floor 100. I keep the momentum going and make it to level 106, then I pass out. The bad news is, something not that chill happened today. I accidentally threw 50 gold ore into my shipping bin. The flower dance takes place on day 24. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough gold to buy the rare crow, which sucks, but I was able to buy the tub of flowers recipe. And then it was decision time. Shane, Sophia, and Olivia are willing to dance with us. I would love it if we could dance with all three of them, but alas, we can only choose one. I was feeling very overwhelmed at this point, and I could feel my right leg begin to bounce up and down nervously. This feeling of uncertainty grew stronger as I talked to Olivia. I, I just realized, I just figured it out. I just, I, I know who she reminds me of. It's Snow White from The Wolf Among Us. I, I knew she looked familiar. I, okay, I've gone completely off script here, by the way. I'm supposed to be talking about how I stood beside Leah and Elliot to harness the knowledge of my previous farmer, but that, look, not important. Olivia looks so much like Snow White. All right, okay, back on track. Let's get back on track. I decided to dance with Sophia when I talked to her and she said she was only here for the cake. That resonated with me at... Snow White, huh? How about that? Uh, th that... That resonated with me as there have been many, many, many times when I've gone to an event simply to feast upon the complimentary cake they provided. We also reached level 6 in farming, which means we can now start with crafting quality sprinklers instead of buying them from Pierre. On day 25, I make a beeline for the mines. I spend almost the entire day in there, reaching the bottom floor at around 8.30pm. A beautiful sight awaits me when I exit the mines as some fresh gold bars and refined quartz are ready for collection. I craft 9 quality sprinklers and head back to my farm where I place them down. I will admit that I place them a bit haphazardly, but that is okay. We can move them around in summer if we need to. Snow White! The best way to describe how I'm feeling right now is imagine you're playing Call of Duty and someone throws a flashbang at you and you don't have tactical mask equipped. I am stunned. I ended up going back to- Ah, uh, Okay, I, I want to romance her now. I want to give her the bouquet and like marry her, but okay. I ended up going back to the mines and making another four quality sprinklers which I place on my farm. Mir Lewis visits us on day 26. He tells us that Pierre and Sophia had a lot of things in their shipping bin this morning. That's crazy, Lewis, but I don't remember asking. Lewis then tells us he is. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That was very. That was very rude of me. I'm sorry. I take it back. Lewis then tells us he is very happy with the progress we have been making here on the honorary Oost farm. Thank you, Lewis. 
I donate a few items to the museum, then I had to Peary the platypus and sell my crops and forage items. Sophia isn't doing too well today, unfortunately. We can say one of two things to her. We can either ask how she is doing, or we can demand that she tells us why she was in the hospital. Yeah, there's no way I can pick that second option. We can then ask Sophia if she would like to either get food or pet Dusty the dog with us. This is the most difficult choice I have ever had to make. I spent almost a full minute trying to decide. In the end, I closed my eyes and clicked randomly, which resulted in us going to the saloon for some food. When Sophia ordered her food, she said, please. I cannot stress how much I love it when people do this. Sophia and Andy are both my best friends now. Gus then told us that the food is on the house, so he can be our best friend too, the more the merrier, I suppose. I donate five gold quality parsnips and a purple mushroom to the community center, purchase a rear seat at the traveling cart and pay a visit to Leah. She was trying to figure out how she can sell the art pieces she makes, so I suggested that she sells her art online. Up next is a conversation with Jody, Caroline and Olivia. The conversation turns to the topic of vineyards and Olivia asks us if we've considered making wine. Well, have I got news for you, Snow White? I'm already making wine. Olivia is very happy to hear this and says she'll talk to Lewis about buying several bottles of the wine we ship. Snow White, I, c I can't get over this. Stardew Valley and The Wolf Among Us are my two favorite games. This is so cool. Anyway, I collect some fruit from my bat cave and donate a good few items to the community center. We get a charcoal kin for completing the construction bundle. That is neat. I decide to spend the rest of the day fishing in the mines. Day 27 begins with a visit to the museum so we can donate some of the items we have. I crack open some geodes in Clint's shop, donate all of them except the fairy stone, crack open the rest of my geodes and donate the final few items we receive. The reason why I kept the fairy stone is because I want to put it in a crystallarium when we get one. As the sun sets on the peaceful town of Pelican, I go for a nice long walk in the big forest. I pass out in the secret woods at 2am. We reached level 5 in foraging, so I chose the gatherer perk, which gives us a chance to receive two of any forage items we pick up. Day 28 is the final day of spring, and it is also a big harvest day for us. I am especially interested in seeing how much the Georgia berry sells for after the Georgia veggies sold for over 1,000 gold each. I head to Piers and sell every crop besides our Salal berries, earning around 13,000 gold. It looks like Georgia berries sell for around 700 gold each, which is very nice. I decide to buy five of each spring crop seed just in case we've made a happy little accident and have forgotten one of them. I head to Willie's and buy a trap bobber and a fish stew which increases our fishing level by three. I leave his shop, then I turn around and go right back inside to buy the iridium rod. I forgot you can only equip things like the trap bobber to the iridium rod. I head to the traveling cart and buy a winter route, then I bump into Sophia. She wasn't very happy. I collect Robin's axe, then I head into Sophia's house. I don't want to barge into her bedroom, so instead I knock on her door. That's my way of saying, hello, I'm here now. She initially wants us to leave, but then she asks us to stay with her. It turns out she's been through some difficult times, but despite that, she's doing her best to stay strong and be around the people she loves. Her character is so well written, I'm about to fall in love with a video game character, I can't believe it. Next, it is time for us to prove ourselves. I eat my fish stew and stand at the edge of the mountain lake. With passion in my heart and adrenaline in my soul, I cast my rod into the river. For a while, we catch carps, bullheads and frogs, but these are not important. They are not our target. Our target is the legend. I can feel the fear, the nerves, the doubt all creeping into my body, but I refuse to let them take over. Here I stand, unbroken and unfazed. And then, it happens. I hook the legend fish. My hands began to shake as I knew that my toughest battle yet had just begun. That's not a joke by the way, my hands genuinely started to shake during this. I knew that I couldn't just give 100% here. I have to give 101%. I need to go beyond my capabilities as a human being and achieve something I should not be able to achieve. I need to defeat an opponent I should not be able to defeat. And against all odds, I do exactly that. I catch the legend fish. I head home and toss the legend into my shipping bin along with all of the fish I've kept up to this point along with some crops and forage items. I head to the saloon and spend the final night of spring with the villagers of Pelican Town. 
I also buy five Grampleton orange chickens before heading home and going to sleep. Day 29, the first day of summer. Alright, no messing around, let's get down to business. We took it easy during spring, you know we eased into this playthrough and we didn't get as much done as we could have. And that is, quite frankly, probably for the better to be honest. I feel like we would get completely overwhelmed if we went all in from the very start because of how much content there is in Stardew Valley Expanded. Look, the point I'm trying to make is we're just here to have fun, you know we're here to have a bit of a giggle and have a jolly experience. Anyway, the wizard has a little quest for us. He wants us to defeat a ghost. These help wanted quests are our best friend right now. They're really making sure we don't fall behind on becoming good friends with the villagers. I buy five of each summer crop in piers and sell our one ancient fruit. Back on our farm, I spent some time clearing out space for the new crops we bought before heading to Robin's and asking her to build a silo on our farm. I buy four iridium sprinklers and piers along with 10 sunflower seeds and 100 mixed seeds. I manage to get most of our seeds planted before the end of the day and the crop fairy pays us a visit during the night. I start day 30 by planting around 50 more of our mixed seeds. I won't lie, I sort of regret picking the forest farm for two reasons. Reason number one, there is not as much space to plant crops here compared to the original farm. And reason number two, this farm is going to be a nightmare for me to decorate. I'm going to have to come up with a game plan and drastically change the way I operate. Some of our melons and poppies are ready for harvest, thanks to the crop fairy, so we harvest those, then head to the community center to donate some items. I spend the rest of the day fishing at the beach. Susan visits us for the first time on day 31. It's not Susan, it's Shushan. If you don't get that reference, I would highly recommend watching the Johnny English movies. Brilliant series of movies. Uh, and then it finally happens. We get a letter from Mayor Lewis asking us to find his purple shorts and give them to him. I felt delightfully devilish when I read this letter. I have devious intentions when it comes to his purple shorts. Okay, that sounded that sounded a lot weird. And okay, okay, look, okay, it, it's not weird. Okay, I probably you, you'll see what I mean. You'll, okay, the, okay, let's just move on very quickly. I okay. We take a trip to the big forest to do some foraging. Then it's off to Marnie's where we collect Lewis's purple shorts. I very stealthily make my way past Lewis and Marnie. The last thing I want is for them to see that I'm in possession of Lewis's underwear. Lewis has gained the ability to teleport as a cutscene with himself and Morris plays when I leave Marnie's. Morris and Lewis seem to be having a lover's quarrel. I'll be honest, I don't actually know what they were talking about because I was too busy thinking of what I could do with Lewis's shorts. Okay, again, I know how that sounds. I'm, I'm probably going to put them on display at some point, alright? That's my big plan. Alright, let's get back. Let's, 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 fo okay, look, let's just focus on what we're, it's off to the community center to complete the exorgy, uh, oh. <sighs> You know what? I'm leaving all of that in. Alright, this is going to be a learning experience for me. In about three months time, I'll look back on this video, I'll watch it, and I'll say to myself, what was I thinking? Just the entire time, what on earth was I thinking? I'm so glad I'm much better at making videos now. I've learned from my past mistakes. So there you go. It's off to the community center to complete the exotic foraging and the summer foraging bundles. Robin pays us a visit later in the day and brings us to grandpa's old shed. It turns out she can repair it. We just have to pay her a visit later on to see what materials she needs to do this. I sell some Georgia berries to Pierre on day 32, then it's straight off to Robin's. She tells us that all she needs to repair the shed is 150 hardwood, 600 stone, 50 iron bars, and 20 battery packs. Now, getting those items for other people might be difficult, but for us, it's going to be light work. Alright, we are professional Stardew Valley athletes here. The rest of day 32, as well as days 33 and 34, are spent collecting iron ore, stone, and coal in the mines, collecting hardwood, and fishing. We also have fantastic luck at the traveling cart as we buy winter seeds, a periwinkle, honey, red cabbage seeds, and a rear seed. On day 35, I do some foraging at the beach and also do some fishing there. I'm trying to make sure we catch all of the fish we can during this first year because, truth be told, the fishing in this game fills me with an immense amount of anxiety. 
so I want to catch all of the fish we can as soon as we can. Next it is community center time. We finish off multiple fishing bundles and the artisan bundle which is simply exquisite and we donate some items to the bounty board bundles. Then because it's raining I decide to go fishing at the river so we can catch a walleye. We caught shads, we got treasure chests, we caught multiple bream, we caught a pike and green algae. We even took a break from fishing to set up our crab pots that we got from completing a fishing bundle. We then caught even more bream. We did not, however, catch a single walleye. Because you cannot catch a walleye during summer. Walleye only show up during fall and winter. Of course, I only realized this at the end of the day, not my proudest moment. We did reach level 8 in farming today though, so, you know, take the good with the bad and all that. Even more good news on day 36, as many of our crops are ready, including our ancient fruit and Georgia berries. I head to piers where a nice little cutscene plays, all of the farmers in town were there, which was a very nice moment. I sell my crops to Pier, then visit Robins and ask her to build a shed on my farm. At this point, I would like to emphasize that my farm is very much a work in progress. It looks disgustingly unorganized at the minute, but we will remedy that in the future. I buy 5 acorns, maple seeds and pine cones as well as 20 tree fertilizer, then buy 20 eggplant seeds from the clearance bin at Georgia Mart. Clint needs iridium ore and coal from us so he can get rid of the big boulder at the mountain area. Yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon, I'm sorry Clint. Clint is selling some cool items though. Bars, geodes, battery packs, lightning rods and crystallariums. But we don't buy anything, we don't really need any of that right now. Instead, we head to the mines and collect some iron bars and refined quartz, then we head back to the farm and make 15 lightning rods so we can collect batteries the next time there's a storm. I buy two more iridium sprinklers and 46 melon seeds, set up the lightning rods on our farm and plant our new seeds. Gus visits us on day 37 to give us the mini jukebox. This is why Gus is one of my favorite villagers. Aside from being an all-around good person, he also gives us my favorite item in the game. From now on, I'm only going to talk about harvesting crops when we get something new, which happens to be right now. We got a taro root. This is pretty interesting because it means that ginger island crops can grow from mixed seeds during summer. So we'll probably get a pineapple at some point during this season. I donate a single item to the museum, then I spend the rest of the day chopping down trees in the big forest. At this point, I'm going to have to get a tattoo on my hand that says Piers is closed on Wednesdays. I throw some crappie whoppies into the shipping bin on day 38, not just once, but twice, and it was very, very nice. Then I spend the rest of the day fishing. Between selling our crops, the fish we caught today, and some of the fish I've kept up to this point, we made a delicious 31,000 gold. Day 39 is the day of the luau. I spent some time talking to the villagers, mainly the new ones like Sophia, Victor, and Olivia. But I also talked to Abigail, who says she prefers looking out at the ocean over talking to everybody. I agree and stand beside her for a while. I throw a gold quality sturgeon into the soup which gets the best reaction from the governor. This also earns us 120 friendship points with the villagers. Mother sends us a lovely pink cake on day 40 which was very nice of her. I give it to Olivia who... hold on. What did Olivia just say? I might have to marry Olivia just for saying the word exquisite. Maybe. I'm either going to marry her or Sophia. Or Sebastian or Maru, or Abigail, or Victor, I, I don't know, I'm probably going to fall in love with any new villagers we meet in the future too, so we'll, we'll just see what happens. I sell some crops to Pier, then visit Sophia, who is tending to the casks in her cellar. She says her parents made them, but then she gets upset. We head upstairs where Sophia tells us that on the fourth day of fall, her parents were involved in a car accident. Gus and Lewis had tears in their eyes as they knocked on the door of Sophia's home and told her the news. Listen, I'm a very cynical person, as you all know, which is why I was very surprised when I got a bit choked up during this cutscene. Sophia asks us to help her decorate her parents' room tomorrow, which we immediately agree to. I buy 15 fall seeds, 5 kale and 2 bok choys in Georgia Mart. Then it's off to Piers to buy 6 iridium sprinklers, 100 melon seeds, a seed maker and 25 mixed seeds. I have been talking about this day for way too long already, so it's time for a quickfire round. 
I head to Robbins and ask her to build a coop, ask Clint to upgrade my pickaxe, buy a nautilus shell from the travelling cart, feel extremely disappointed when Marnie isn't home, and plant all of the seeds we bought today. Day 41 is a rainy day, which is good because the storm will cause our lightning rods to produce battery packs. But it's bad because the mini jukebox doesn't work in the rain. For the next couple of weeks, I will be putting around half of the ancient fruit and Georgia berries we harvest into the seed maker. The goal is to get as many of those seeds as we can to put them into our greenhouse when we unlock it. Next, it's off to Sophia's to help her decorate her parents' room. She says she's going to send us something really special in the mail tomorrow to thank us for helping her. I really, really hope it's a Ferrari. I would start wearing leather jackets and sunglasses and even change my name to Lil Rari. I set up a little tree farm, making sure to use tree fertilizer, then I spend the rest of the day frolicking in the big forest. Sophia sends us a bottle of aged Blue Moon wine on day 42. We are now faced with a moral dilemma. Do we sell this bottle of wine for 10,000 gold, or do we hold on to it? If someone gave it to us randomly, then I would sell it straight away, no hesitation. But I just don't feel comfortable selling it, considering Sophia gave it to us for helping her. I think Stardew Valley is actively making me a better person. We harvest our red cabbage, which is a huge relief. I thought a crow ate it for a moment. We get another Sophia cutscene where she's walking around town, talking to the other villagers and looking happier than she has ever been. This game is going to make me cry, it, it's going to make me go back to my sensitive era. Sophia pets Dusty the dog which is unironically heartwarming. The cutscene ends with Sophia inviting us to read manga with her. I head into Caroline's sunroom for the first time which means she will send us the recipe for tea saplings tomorrow. I'm not going to make a lot of tea saplings though. I'll probably make one to throw into a shipping bin and another to plant so we can get tea leaves and make green tea. I collect my pickaxe from Clint and buy a nautilus shell from the travelling cart, then I spend some time clearing out some of the grass and stone on the farm. I donate some items to the community centre, then I spend 5500 gold on the cooking recipe for the Big Bark Burger. I head to the beach and use 300 wood to repair the broken bridge, do some foraging at the tide pool area and try to catch the legendary crimson fish. For some reason I was more nervous when it came to catching this fish than the legend. Turns out there was no need to worry though because I was able to catch it first try. We also reached level 9 in farming so we can start making iridium sprinklers if we can get our hands on some iridium bars. Caroline sends us the recipe for tea saplings on day 43 which is a marvellous way to start the day. We sell our crops to Pier and at the risk of sounding like a broken record I don't think I'll mention selling crops to Pier anymore. I donate a blueberry to the community centre completing the summer crops bundle. Then we visit Maru who is having trouble with a project she is working on. She wants her help solving two equations. The first question was very easy to figure out. I simply took the 0.5 and put it into its less commonly known form, a half. I then took this half and applied it to the number 4. Half of 4 is 2. There is only one answer that contains the number 2 so I picked that one and it was correct. I'll be honest, I had no idea where to start with the second question. But then I started thinking outside the box. The answer to the first question was 2. This is the second question, ergo the answer to this one must contain a 2, ergo the answer is 0.24 ATM. I buy 10 bee houses and 10 kegs from Robin along with a full stack of wood and 150 stone and I ask her to build a barn on my farm. I buy another 50 melon seeds and 50 mixed seeds from Pierre, then spend the rest of the day setting up my kegs and planting my melon seeds. I place my bee houses down on day 44, but then Hornswoggle immediately runs into them and I feel really bad so I pick them back up. We actually ended up harvesting a couple of pineapples today, which was pretty cool, and I set up my bee houses by our silo and tree farm. I head to Willy's and buy three crab pots and some bait, collect my other three crab pots from the river and place all three down at the beach. And that's it for today. I donate some crops to the community centre on day 45, then I embarrass myself again and throw my crops into my shipping bin. I used every ounce of self-control in my body to refrain from selling the wine Sophia gave us, then I went to Georgia Mart and bought 50 corn seeds along with 10 winter seeds from the clearance bin. I head to Shearwater Bridge where Victor talks about how much he likes bridges. That reminds me actually. You want to hear one of my favourite jokes? Alright, a construction worker was asked by his manager to build a suspension bridge. 
The worker agrees and spends around a week working on it. He finishes building it and he shows it to his manager. His manager says, you've done a terrible job. That bridge looks like it's about to collapse within the next five minutes. The worker nods his head and says, I know, but can't you feel it? The manager is tremendously confused and says, feel what? The construction worker looks his manager in the eyes and says, the suspense. See, the manager asked him to build a suspension bridge, so the worker built a a bridge that makes you feel suspense. Yeah, let's just move on. I spend the rest of the day fishing at Shearwater Bridge so we can get some more gold. At first, we were mainly catching pike, butterfish, and rainbow trout, but then I caught a puppy fish. Then another puppy fish. Three in a row. Make that four in a row. Did I say four? I meant to say five in a row. Wait, no, that's a, that's a butterfish. Between our crops and our fish, we earned 24,000 gold today. I decided to sell my crimson fish too, but I forgot to sell the puppy fish I caught for some reason. Emily sends us some wool on day 46, which is nice. We need that for the community center. I complete one of the bounty board bundles and donate the aforementioned piece of wool. Then I head to the mines and collect some copper and iron bars. I buy 11 battery packs from Clint, do some foraging at the beach, and head back to my farm and make 15 tappers which I put on my trees. I head to Robbins to donate the items needed to repair Grandpa's shed when I realized that we were supposed to bring these items to the shed, not Robin's house. I head down there and throw the iron bars, hardwood, battery packs, and stone into the chest contained within it. I spend the rest of the day collecting hardwood in the secret woods. Day 47 is off to a good start as Robin lets us know that the shed will be fully repaired tomorrow. I head to Marnie's and buy four chickens for our coop. Please welcome Jay, Jimmy, Solo and Roman to the family. I also buy four cows for our barn. These four cows are Balor, Rhea, Damien and Dominic. I also head to Robin's and ask her to build a pond on our farm. We reached level 10 in farming today, so I picked the Agriculturalist perk, which makes our crops grow 10% faster. This perk is more beneficial to us right now, but we will swap to the Artisan perk in the future. On day 48, I grab all of our ancient seeds and Georgia berry seeds and head over to our new shed. There's a ton of space on the bottom floor, so we will probably fill that up with kegs, preserve jars and furnaces for a good while before we transition to filling it up entirely with kegs. I buy three iridium sprinklers from Pier, then head back to my farm and grab our eggplant, fall and winter seeds as well as an iridium sprinkler that wasn't being used and head to the greenhouse in the top floor of our shed. I spend the rest of the day planting all of the seeds I brought with me. The Georgia berry seeds are a bit tricky to work with because we can't walk through them. So we planted them on the inner section and planted our other seeds around them. I start day 49 by throwing a puppy fish into our pond, then I ask Robin to upgrade the shed on our farm. The rest of day 49, along with days 50 and 51, are spent going through the mines. We primarily focus on collecting iron and coal. I also get started on turning our upgraded shed into a storage area at the end of day 51. We had a nice little sale on that same day too, as we made around 13,000 gold from the items we shipped. On day 52, it's back to chopping down trees for a while, then we make our way to Robin's to put our coop and barn next to each other. I buy 25 chests for our storage area, chop down more trees in the backwoods, and spend the rest of the day working on the storage area. I know this was a short day, but the quicker we get organized, the better. And I hate having random chests filled with random items, so this really helped to soothe my soul. On day 53, I am regretting not buying more melon seeds because they're a big reason why we earned so much gold when we sold our crops to Pier. I head to the community center and buy all of the bundles in the vault room, which means we'll be able to start going to the desert tomorrow. I head to the Adventurers Guild and buy the Lava Katana for 25,000 gold. Was this worth it? I, I, I don't know. Probably not, but the Lava Katana is a lot better than our Obsidian Edge Sword. I collect my iron bars from the mines and buy some coal from Clint. I use these iron bars and coal to make a total of 255 explosive ammo. I head to our greenhouse in Grandpa's shed to harvest the eggplants that have grown and the Juno was repaired a bus during the night. We're off to the desert on day 54. I do some foraging, exchange 6 Omni Geodes for 2 desert warp totems and head into the Skull Caverns. Our main goal today is to make it past level 25. 
Doing so results in Mr. Blue sending you 10,000 gold in the mail, which we really need right now. We do pretty well with our slingshot and explosive ammo. Level 18 was pretty scary because of how many pepper rexes there were, but we did get two dinosaur eggs from them. I'm still getting used to using the slingshot, but we're, you know, we're, we're, do, we're getting there, you know, like we're not doing too bad. I managed to make it down to level 53 just before we pass out. The first thing I do on day 55 is use the money we got from selling our crops to buy the second backpack upgrade. This was long overdue, I have no idea why I didn't buy it sooner. Our melon wine is ready, and after harvesting the rest of our crops, I head to Clint's and ask him to upgrade our pickaxe. Next on the agenda is another trip to Piers where I make a neat little discovery. The monster fruit sells for around 1600 gold each. That is the most expensive crop we have sold so far. I head to Robins and ask her to build a second shed on our farm, then I watch a cutscene featuring Olivia. She talks to us about wine and music. I love music. I have no opinion on wine, so overall I enjoy this conversation. Mr. Blue sends us 10,000 gold on day 56, which I am very grateful for. I harvest the fall and winter forage that has grown in our greenhouse, then I head to the community center to complete the quality crops bundle and the fall foraging bundle. Also, the last item we need for the winter foraging bundle is the winter crocus, but the desert trader has winter seeds in stock on Saturdays, so we'll get those as soon as we can. I donate a good few items to the museum and collect the Dwarvish Translation Guide and 9 pumpkin seeds from the rewards available to us. I'll come back for the rest of our rewards at some point in the future. As it is the final day of summer, the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies is being held at the beach. We skedaddle straight there as the sun sets and spend some time talking to the usual suspects. I really wish there was a way to have the beach look like this every night. It is very peaceful here. As the jellyfish approach the beach, I can't help but feel that the crab pots I left here are slightly ruining the vibes, but that's okay. Nothing, and I mean nothing, can ruin this festival for me. On day 57, we keep up the trend of buying 5 of each crop. We also treat ourselves to 200 pumpkin seeds. We collect our gold pickaxe from Clinty Winty, then it's off to the Skull Cavern for the rest of the day. We actually do pretty well here. We make it down to floor 49 where a pile of iridium ore is waiting for us. Not a bad end to the day. On day 58, we get to work on planting all of the seeds we bought yesterday. It takes pretty much the entire day, but we manage to get everything planted and watered. I also put a jade into a crystallarium, so we're going to collect those as often as we can so we can trade them for staircases at some point in the future. I throw the winter forage I got last season into a seed maker so we can start getting more winter seeds. If all goes well, we could finish off the community center during fall. Or maybe we won't. I, I, I don't know yet. Either way, we plant our winter seeds in the greenhouse in Grandpa's old shed and collect the eggplants that have grown, then we collect some bars from our furnaces in the mines. To end the day, I put the machines we have into our shed. On the morning of day 59, I plant the last few pumpkin seeds we have along with some mixed seeds. The special orders board has been built in the town center, which is nice. I'm actually excited to see what special orders have been added with the expanded mod. For now, we accept Linus's quest to fish trash out of the water because it will give us the crafting recipe for fiber seeds. I throw my tools into a chest outside the museum before cracking open all of our geodes and clints. We manage to get a prismatic shard out of our last omni geode, which is simply exquisite. I donate all of the minerals and artifacts we have to the museum, except the prismatic shard, of course. I have much bigger plans for that. I plant my two rare seeds in the greenhouse, throw our remaining minerals into the shipping bin, and use the desert warp totem to get to Calico Desert. I do a bit of foraging before exchanging our prismatic shard for the galaxy sword, but I'm not done yet. I buy some beet seeds from Sandy and plant them in our greenhouse too. This may seem like a bit of an odd maneuver, but it will make sense very soon. Gunther visits us on day 60 and thanks us for donating so many items to the museum. This is normally the cutscene where we receive the key to the sewers, but that doesn't happen here. We watch another cutscene after this where we see Marlin entering the sewers. So I'm assuming this means we get the key to the sewers from Marlin instead of Gunther. Next it's off to Robins to buy some wood and stone and to ask her to upgrade our barn. 
Today is truly the most social day we've had so far, as we see yet another cutscene with Marlin. He congratulates us on obtaining the Galaxy Sword. We can now buy the other Galaxy weapons from him. We will probably buy the Galaxy Hammer at some point in the future, but we're good for now. Also, Marlin won't tell us about the sewers yet, so I guess we need to get his friendship up or something. I head to level 100 of the mines and do some fishing to complete Linus' special order. Here's a tip, if you want an easy way to catch all of the trash needed for a special order, just go fishing here. You're almost guaranteed to get a special order done in no time. We throw the trash into the dumpster, then it's time to catch our third legendary fish, the angler fish. This is probably the easiest legendary fish to catch. Of course, every legendary fish is very easy for me to catch considering I am a professional Stardew Valley athlete as I said before. Gunther sends us 40,000 gold on day 61. I assume this is a reward for donating 60 items to the museum seeing as he didn't give us the key to the sewers. Linus sends us the recipe to make fiber seeds too so this is already a fantastic day. I decide to spend the day fishing so we can make some good progress on catching the fall fish as soon as we can. On day 62, we continue our quest to bankrupt Pierre, then it's off to Clint's to ask him to upgrade our pickaxe. I also drop off the iridium ore and coal he wanted us to get for his quest. I become a victim of my own success as I injure myself while clearing the way to the dwarf's home. The dwarf is selling some nice things, mainly a few artifacts along with different gems. So if we ever want to spend 16,000 gold on a prismatic shard, then we know where to go. I start chopping down trees, then I become incredibly lazy and head to Robin's where I instead buy the wood I need and ask her to upgrade my coop. Marlin then decides that over the course of the last two days, we have done enough to earn his trust and he brings us to the sewers to meet Krobus for the first time. He also gives us the key to the sewers, so that answers the question of how do we unlock the sewers. Krobus' shop is interesting. They are selling some artifacts along with different types of mushrooms. I decide to buy a void egg, then it is fishing time. There are two fish we want to catch here. One is the fourth legendary fish, the mutant carp. Like the angler, this one isn't too bad at all and we catch it on the first try. We've actually managed to catch all of the legendary fish first try so far, which, I mean, look, if I can do it, then anybody can do it, alright? You just have to believe in yourself. If you fight for your dreams, then your dreams will fight for you. I stole that quote, by the way. Daniel Bryan, or Brian Danielson, as he's known now in AEW. Uh, yeah, he, he said that when he came out of retirement in 2018, but no joke. No joke, alright? I, I genuinely think that is one of the most inspiring things that has ever been said by anybody. Anyway, we also caught the radioactive bass, which is actually a really good fish to have. If you throw this fish into a fish pond, there is a chance it will produce radioactive ore, and then as the fish pond fills up, it could produce a radioactive bar. I am still stuck in fishing mode, so I decide to catch a midnight carp just before the day ends. Strawberry seeds are being sold for 1 gold each in the Georgia clearance bin on day 63, so I buy all 15 of them. I head to the mines and buy 5 mega bombs, 15 normal bombs, and 2 miners treats from the dwarf, then I make my way up to the mountain area. The boulder is gone thanks to Clint making a bomb with the iridium ore and coal we gave him so we can go to the summit. Normally you can only go here when you achieve perfection, so technically we're, we're done. Yeah, we're finished. We've made it to the summit. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good... Okay, no, no, we're, we're not. We still have plenty to do. I'm just having a bit of a giggle. I'm sorry. Let's move on to the next day. Our best friend Pierre sends us over 4,000 gold on day 64 as a thank you for us buying things from him. I throw a dinosaur egg into the incubator in our coop, then I throw a battery pack into the box in the tunnel. After that, I harvest our beets and our winter forage that have grown in the greenhouse. I collect my iridium pickaxe from Clint and ask Robin to build another pond on our farm. I throw a rainbow shell into the box at the old train station, I think is what it is. Accept a special order from Robin to collect 80 hardwood and put 10 beets into the fridge in Lewis's house. I then use a desert warp totem to get to the desert, of course. I put a solar essence into the mouth of the old skeleton thingy to complete Mr. Blue's quest. This means we can now enter his casino in the back of Sandy's shop. Day 65 is spent entirely in the Skull Cavern. 
first we use a warp totem to get to the desert as soon as we can. Then we make our way through the mines with unparalleled levels of pure, unadulterated, ruthless aggression. This ends up paying off as we make it to level 104 at around 1am. This was also a really nice floor with a good bit of iridium and gold ore to end the day with. Day 66 starts in a wonderful way as our ancient fruit and Georgia berry wine is ready for collection. I throw a radioactive bass into our fish pond, ask Clint to upgrade our watering can and spend the rest of the day chopping down trees. I begin day 67 by purchasing 200 pumpkin seeds. Then it's off to Robins to ask her to upgrade our coop. Next on the agenda is a trip to Marnie's to buy some more animals for our farm. Please welcome Kofi, Xavier and E, the ducks, to the family. I visit the casino for the first time and buy 300 coins. I then lose all of my coins, so I have to buy 300 more. We almost lost these ones too, but we managed to get 3 parsnips which rewarded us with 500. We got a couple hundred more, then we had some really good luck and got 8000. We were sort of stuck in limbo for a while in the sense that we would lose a couple hundred, then win around a thousand, then lose some more. And then, it happened. We received 250,000 for getting 3 star drops. I use my coins to buy 500 hardwood fences, 105 farm warp totems, a rare crow, a top hat, a new bed and a statue of treasure. I do not know what this statue does, but it looks pretty neat. I return to our farm and place our scarecrow and put the hat on it. I spend the rest of the day clearing out debris on our farm. I finally buy the bouquet on day 68, but I have no idea who to give it to. I head to Clint's and pick up our watering can, and that's it for today. Our pumpkins are ready on day 69, which makes this a sensational day already. I drop 80 hardwood off at Robin's house and use our newfound fortune to fund the upgrading of our barn. I also buy 20 kegs and 20 preserve jars. I plant another 200 pumpkin seeds on our farm and put some pumpkins into the kegs in our shed. I then take the kegs and preserve jars we purchased earlier today into Grandpa's shed and fill them up with pumpkins. At the end of the day, we have a nice little conversation with Olivia in the saloon. She lets us know that if we ever need something to eat, we can stop by her house and she will make something for us. We order the Red Moon drink, which also ends up being Olivia's favorite drink. I kind of want to give the bouquet to Olivia, but at the same time, I kind of want to give it to Sophia and Victor, and Shane, and Maru, and Abigail, and, and, and probably like three more NPCs we'll meet in the future, so I, I think I'm going to hold off on giving it to someone for now. On day 70, I make quite the discovery. The statue of treasure we bought from the casino produces an artifact trove every day. I like that. Olivia sends us five bottles of wine in the mail. I like that too. We also harvest a monster mushroom. I do not know exactly what this is, but it looks like something out of Super Mario, so it's cool, I guess. I harvest the Georgia berries that have finally grown in a greenhouse and sell everything to Pierre, earning us 27 million gold. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. That, no, we, we got like 50,000 gold. I don't know why I, that wasn't even funny. I'm going to move on. I donate some items to the community center, fully completing the remaining fishing bundles. I also donate a crocus to finish off the final bundle in the crafts room along with the fall crops bundle. This means all we have left is the animal bundle and the bounty board bundles. I buy 20 fiber seeds and an apple tree sapling in the clearance bin at Georgia Mart and head to Marnie's to buy some rabbits. I am delighted to announce that John, Wheeler, Claudio and Brian have been added to our coop. As well as this, Bray, Luke, Braun and Eric the goats have been added to our barn. I buy 10 cheese presses and 10 mayonnaise machines as well as 2 big eggs, a duck egg and a large milk. Looking back on this, the eggs and milk were a waste of money because I had all of those things ready to collect in my coop and barn, but it is what it is. I buy an artichoke and a rare crow at the traveling cart, and then I accidentally place our apple tree sapling in our greenhouse. It's not really a big deal, but it's very clearly out of place. So as soon as we harvest the apple we need from it, we're going to get rid of it. It's messing with my vibrations. Something peculiar is occurring at the fountain. Caroline simply sighs and says, 
Pierre when I talk to her. Pierre then says, Not now, Farmer Bride Pisces. I do not know what is going on. Perhaps they are having a lover's quarrel, much like the one that occurred between Lewis and Morris some time ago. Regardless of the reason, I don't really care, mainly because Pierre speaking to me in that tone really hurt me. So I have decided to put him on my list of enemies. I donate some items to the community center, fully completing the animal bundle and unlocking the greenhouse on our farm. I head to Robins on day 71 to move some of our buildings around and ask her to build the third pond on our farm. I'll probably throw a sturgeon into this pond because the row it produces can be put into a preserve jar to make caviar. I also buy all of the crafting recipes she has for sale just to get that out of the way. The Stardew Valley Fair takes place on day 72. I set up my Grange display and talk to the villagers. Just in case you're wondering, I do have the Seasonal Outfits mod installed for both Vanilla Stardew and Stardew Valley Expanded. I will have both of these mods linked in the description, so if you're interested, you can find them there. Haley tells us about the fortune teller and says that the fortune teller told her something interesting. She does not say what that something interesting is, though. That is very annoying. We end up coming first in the Grange Display competition, earning 1000 tokens. I decide to talk to the fortune teller myself. She sees a vision of Demetrius' birthday. He thought everybody forgot about it, but then we showed up with a nice gift. Don't worry, Demetrius, I've got your back. Next, she tells us that it seems I will be leaving more than a few heartbroken. This one hurt. That is not my intention, I just can't decide who to marry, so... I, I don't know what to do, okay, I might just not marry anybody. Well, well, actually, I, I have to marry someone because one of the star drops you get is given to you after you marry someone and get them to 12 and a half hearts. So we kind of have, we, I, I don't, let's just move on, all right? Her final vision is something dreadful bearing down on us, but we are more than ready to face it. I've gotten this one every time I've talked to the fortune teller, so that's not very interesting anymore. I play the slingshot game and earn 210 star tokens. Then I bet all of my star tokens on orange. The wheel lands on green and I lose all of them. I play the fishing minigame and earn a lovely 420 star tokens. Then I play it again and earn another 564 star tokens. I decide to bet all of these tokens on green and we win which doubles our tokens. Just to be on the safe side I only bet 900 tokens and thankfully we win again which gives us just enough star tokens to buy the star drop and the rare crow. The star drop reminds me of my favourite thing. Water. Water is the drink of champions, and I am happy to guzzle it. I, I, I don't, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Look, I have one brain cell left, and it's in the shape of a heart emoji. On day seventy-three, I harvest the ancient fruit in our greenhouse in Grandpa's shed. After throwing the ancient fruit into our preserve jars, we accept a special order from Marlin. Marlin wants thirty cherry bombs, twenty normal bombs, and ten mega bombs. So, it's off to the mines for the rest of the day to collect all of the gold ore we need for this. On day 74, I throw a sturgeon into my pond. I think that will be the last pond we build on our farm, for a while at least. I really need to get an auto grabber and put it into my coop. We collect our pumpkin juice and harvest our Georgia berries which we throw into the kegs. I buy more kegs and preserve jars from Robin and I ask her to upgrade our shed. I head to the Adventurer's Guild and deliver the items Marlin requested yesterday as part of his special order. Then it's back to Grandpa's shed to place the kegs and preserve jars we bought. On the morning of day 75, I head to Clint's and buy 30 Omni Geodes. I crack them all open and ask Clint to upgrade my axe. I donate the items we received from our Omni Geodes to the museum, then I become absolutely mesmerized by the chicken that is walking into the museum. It goes inside and stands beside Jazz. I don't know why I found this so interesting. Up next is a cutscene where Marilyn gives the bombs we made to an adventurer called Jadu. Jadu says that I have impeccable craftsmanship. Someone used the word impeccable in a comment on one of my videos and I said I was going to start using that word, but it looks like Jadu got there before me. Has he been reading the comments on my videos too? As a reward for completing Marlin's special order, we can now buy decorations in the shop. A baby lizard has appeared in our coop on day 76. I decide to call this baby lizard Gargano. 
I buy a pig from Marnie, whom I lovingly named Jaden. Our ancient fruit jelly is ready in Grandpa's shed, so I collect it, then it's off to the community center to donate a rabbit's foot and a pomegranate. On day 77, I pick up all of the furnaces, kegs, and other machines in my shed, then I put the furnaces back down along with the mayonnaise machines and cheese presses. I buy two heaters and an auto grabber for Marnie, along with 10 cheese presses, 10 mayonnaise machines, and 100 straw floors. I buy 6 iridium sprinklers and 31 ancient seeds from Pierre, then I head to Grandpa's shed to place the kegs and preserve jars we gathered this morning. I plant our ancient seeds in this greenhouse, then I plant our coffee beans and Georgia berry seeds in the greenhouse on our farm. Our goal with the greenhouse on our farm is to fill it up completely with Georgia berries and coffee beans. The wizard has a special order for us on day 78. He would like some prismatic jelly. We accept the special order, collect our gold axe from Clint, and donate a duck feather and a sea urchin to the community center. I head to the mines to see if we can find a prismatic slime. I was fully expecting this to take multiple days. So you can imagine my surprise when we managed to find a prismatic slime in a relatively short amount of time. I head to the quarry and break a few rocks, not sure why I decided to mention that, then I head to the wizard's tower to bring him the prismatic jelly. On day 79 I am reminded of how much I used to enjoy collecting cheese and mayonnaise from the machines. It is very relaxing to me for some reason. Our Georgia berries are ready for harvest, so I collect them all and throw most of them into the seed makers. I do this until we have 68 Georgia berry seeds. Pierre was definitely horrified when he saw us walking into his shop, knowing he was about to hand out thousands of gold for items he probably won't be able to sell. I decide to buy 75 ancient seeds before heading to our greenhouse and planting our Georgia berry seeds. Day 80 is a pumpkin harvest day. As well as this, a sweet gem berry has grown on the other side of our farm. I harvest the ancient fruit and two sweet gem berries from our greenhouse, plant some of the ancient seeds we bought yesterday, and genuinely consider buying a Georgia membership. I am sick and tired of dealing with peers being closed on Wednesday. Granted, if we just complete the community center, his shop won't be closed on Wednesdays anymore, but I'm, I'm just very frustrated, alright? I ask Robin to upgrade my house because I am in tremendous need of a pick-me-up. I head to Clint's to crack open some artifact troves and we don't get much but we do get a golden pumpkin which is cool. I donate one item to the museum then I give a sweet gem berry to the old master cannoli statue and receive a star drop in return. Linus sends us a Mackie roll on day 81 which was very kind of him as we need this for the community center. Next we buy three more pigs for our barn. Cyrus, Alexis, and the Chaz will hopefully feel right at home on our farm. I buy 10 cheese presses, mayonnaise machines, and looms along with an auto grabber, then I head into the sewers and buy a star drop from Krobus. I head to Clint's and buy 30 Omni Geodes and ask him to upgrade our watering can before heading to the community center to donate the Mackey roll that Linus gave us this morning. I buy the triple shot espresso recipe and collect our pickled corn and Georgia berry wine to finish off the day. I decide to take off my hat on day 82 and start showing off my incredible head of hair. However, this action took a lot out of me, so I decided to be very lazy and spend the entire day foraging in the big forest. Our house has been upgraded on day 83, so now that we have access to the kitchen, I make a fried egg for the community center. However, something not that chill has happened. Our void egg is ready to hatch, but our coop is full, which means we need to build another coop on our farm just for this void chicken. So I head to Robins and ask her to build a brand new coop for this chicken. I wanted to go into town, but the Spirits Eve festival was being set up. I put some more kegs and preserve jars into Grandpa's shed and filled them up with Georgia berries, then I head to the casino. It turns out I can buy the Statue of Treasure again, which makes me think you can buy one statue each day. So we'll definitely be coming back here at least a couple of times every week. The artifact troves we get from them will really help us with the museum collection. I buy the rare crow and the jack-o'-lantern recipe at the festival and I talk to the villagers. Sophia says she went into the maze but she gave up and left. Because she was hungry. It is taking every single bit of self-control I have to not give that woman the bouquet. I make my way through the maze, collecting the golden pumpkin at the end. It was actually more difficult to make my way back out of the maze than it was to complete it and get the pumpkin. 
Day 84 is the final day of fall. I head to Marnie's where I get outsmarted by a chicken who successfully blocks me from talking to Marnie for a solid 30 seconds. I decide to buy a truffle before heading to the casino to buy another statue of treasure. It's off the Clint's where I collect my water and cannon by 30 more Omni Geodes. I'm not entirely sure what I'll do with these. Either I'll have Clint crack them all open for the last 3 minerals I need or I'll just I'll, I'll eat them. I donate the truffle to the community center which means all we need now is 3 apples. I run into Marlin in the mountain area who invites us to join the next meeting himself and the wizard will have. They will be talking about the new members of the Adventurers Guild. I immediately say yes. I want to know more about the Adventurers Guild and, and the wizard and Marlin. G- give me all of the lore, please. We visit Abigail at the end of the day, who shows us her spirit board, aka her Ouija board. The board spells out I heart bright, but before I can finish the sentence, Abigail knocks the board to the floor. Just in case anybody has forgotten, my farmer's name is Bright Pisces. So the board is saying that Abigail likes our farmer. I do not know why. I have negative riz. Being seen with me is a detriment to your public image. I, 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 I actively decrease the value of anybody I spend time with. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's it. Fall is over. I, I, I don't know why I decided to roast myself for the end of the season. Um, let's just move on. Let's, I, I, will, uh, I will see you all in winter. Day 85 is the first day of winter. It begins with a visit from Abigail who basically tells us that she likes our farmer. I've said it before, I'll say it again, I will probably say it many more times in the future. I am struggling immensely when it comes to deciding who to marry. We run into the shadow guy at the bus stop so we track him down and receive the magnifying glass. This is very good. Now we can collect secret notes. I buy 10 strawberry seeds from the Georgia clearance bin, then I spend the rest of the day redesigning the farm. We have a bit of a kerfuffle on day 86. The void egg in our incubator is still ready to hatch. I thought it would have hatched automatically when we had a second coop built, but it has not. I need to brainstorm here, I'll, I'll figure out a way to fix this eventually. I harvest the coffee beans that are ready in our greenhouse and replant them. Unfortunately, I had to take away two of our Georgia berries so we could get to one row of coffee beans. Many different types of jelly, pickles, wines, and aged rows are ready in Grandpa's shed, so I collect all of them. Also, our total earnings says we have reached over 1 million gold, so we, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we completed that goal. My apologies for not realizing that sooner. It's off the piers where we sell our artisan goods and buy 200 winter seeds. Once again, the rest of the day is spent working on our farm. Our ancient wine and corn juice are ready on day 87. After collecting those, we head upstairs to our greenhouse and harvest the Georgia berries and ancient fruit that have grown. Then we toss those into our kegs and preserve jars. I buy two void eggs from Krobus. One of these will get tossed into our shipping bin. The other will be turned into void mayonnaise which will also be thrown into the shipping bin. A trip to Robbins is up next where we purchase 20 kegs and preserve jars along with some tree fertilizer. Those kegs and preserve jars get thrown into a greenhouse so we can make coffee and Georgia berry jelly. The rest of the day is spent decorating the far- ah, you get, you get the point. I am over the moon to announce that on day 88, I solved our little issue involving the void egg. I moved John into the new coop we built. Our void egg finally hashed and added a void chicken to the coop. I decided to call this chicken, Jeff Winger. I then moved this chicken to the new coop and moved John back to the original coop. Next, we watch a cutscene where Krobus is playing with a little green Junimo. I buy a heater and some hay from Marnie, then I talk to Krobus about the Junimo we saw. The Junimo showed their little village to Krobus. Krobus was very happy about this because he's not welcome in most villages or towns. Krobus deserves so much better. Willie would like us to fetch 100 pieces of bug meat, so we'll take care of that at some point. I crack open some artifact troves at Clint's and ask him to upgrade our hoe, then I donate the artifacts we received to the museum. Next up is a trip to the desert where we buy a statue of fortune and a warp totem so we can immediately go back home after this. Surprise, surprise, the rest of the day is spent decorating the farm. On day 89, we officially start our coffee empire. 
this was long overdue, we really should have done this sooner. The faster movement is almost a necessity now because of how big Pelican Town is. We spend the rest of the day in the mines collecting bug meat for Willy's Quest. The pond containing our radioactive bass has produced a radioactive ore on day 90 which is pretty neat. I collect my copper hole from Clint, then I turn around and immediately ask him to upgrade it again. Once again, the rest of the day is spent collecting bug meat in the mines. Our winter forage is ready to collect on day 91. Like I said before though, we aren't going to use these to make tea saplings. We don't really need the money right now, and we can use the Georgia berries and ancient fruit in our greenhouse to get any money we need in the future anyway. The rest of the day is spent fishing. We collect our Georgia berry jelly and wine on day 92. Our Georgia berries are also ready for harvest, so we collect those. I'm pretty sure I said I wasn't going to talk about us harvesting crops anymore, so I apologize for mentioning it here. Now that I think about it, I, I have definitely mentioned it a couple of times before this too, so m my bad, alright, this one's on me, it won't happen again. Anyway, we toss our fruit and artisan goods into our shipping bin because I've got some big plans for winter that require a bit of gold. I head to the Festival of Ice and spend some time talking to the villagers, then we begin the fishing competition. I tried so hard to win this competition. Like I really, really put my all into it. I, ca I can't even begin to describe how much I wanted to win this competition, but alas, I guess I just didn't try hard enough. We made over 180,000 gold from the items we shipped, which is sensational. I decide to start making triple shot espressos on day 93. It takes three coffees to make one triple shot espresso, but it's worth it. A normal coffee gives you plus one speed for one minute and 23 seconds. A triple shot espresso gives you plus one speed for four minutes and 12 seconds. So if my math is correct, then the speed boost you get from one triple shot espresso lasts three seconds longer than the speed boost you would get from drinking the three normal coffees you use to make it. I, I, I don't know why I'm saying all of this. It's not interesting and I highly doubt this is going to change the way anybody plays the game. I, I'm sorry for wasting your time. Anyway, moving on. Demetrius would like us to catch river fish for a special order. I crack open some artifact troves and omni geodes and clints and ask him to upgrade our hole for the third time. I donate a few items to the museum, collect the five warp totems from our rewards and use one to get back to our farm. And then I head to the desert and exchange omni geodes for desert warp totems. On day 94 I feel a deep and profound sense of satisfaction as I collect our Georgia berry and ancient fruit wines. This feeling of satisfaction was so strong, in fact, that I didn't do anything else for the rest of the day. I ask Clint to upgrade our hoe for the final time on day 95. But before we go any further, we need to have a little discussion regarding one of our goals. Basically, I completely forgot that you can upgrade your trash can. An upgraded trash can gives you back a percentage of the gold that the item you throw into your trash can is worth. I'll put a picture on the screen with these percentages just to hopefully make things clearer. But basically, what I'm wondering is, should the trash can be included in our goal to fully upgrade all of our tools? On the one hand, I want to include it because there's plenty of time left to fully upgrade it. But on the other hand, I, I don't trust Clint. Like, I know for a fact that at some point we're going to walk into his shop and he won't be there. So I'm slightly nervous about potentially failing the goal because of that. But we're going to take a risk. I officially declare that we must upgrade our trash can in order to achieve that goal. Any whomst, the rest of the day is spent fishing. Look, I'll be honest, I did nothing on days 96 and 97, so we're just going to skip to day 98. I collect two apples from a chest along with all of the jade we have and head to Grandpa's shed to collect Georgia berries. More importantly, our apple tree has finally grown, giving us the final apple we need for the community center. I head right there and donate them, completing the final bundle. I was very happy about this. I head to the Adventurer's Guild where we meet a new character, Alicia. She is an archer. Marlin asked her to help him fight some slimes in the mines. She was originally from Castle Village, but she currently resides in my heart. I, I cannot even begin to describe how much it hurts knowing that I can't marry her. I buy two Iridium Bands from Marlin and buy 75 Mega Bombs and 5 Lollipops from the Dwarf. I pay a visit to Georgia Mart and I think me completing the community center today has temporarily messed up the Georgia clearance bin because I can't see what's on sale. 
I buy a battery pack from the traveling cart, then I warp to the desert and trade my jade for 33 staircases. On day 99, I immediately use a desert warp totem. I consume a lollipop and use the 33 staircases to get down to level 29 of the Skull Cavern. Yeah, I, I messed up a few times, let's just ignore that. At around 9pm I make it down to level 97. I jump down a hole which takes us to level 100 where we meet Mr. Blue. I completely forgot that he appears on level 100. He congratulates us for making it down this far, but he's not too happy about us using staircases. But in my defense, I am very lazy and I just want to get as much Iridium Ore as I can. We make it down to level 127 before we pass out. This was an absolutely marvelous floor. We collected over 200 Iridium Ore, so in my eyes, this was a very successful Skull Cavern run. Also, I need to make a ton of spicy eel when I get the chance. We got a really nice speed boost when we ate one of those on top of the triple shot espresso that we drank. The community center has officially been restored on day 100, so we have completed that goal. The wizard has a special order for us. He wants us to collect ectoplasm. I'm gonna keep going with these special orders, and I'll only mention them in the future if we get one that really rustles my jimmies. I collect my Iridium Axe from Clint and ask him to upgrade our watering can. Yeah, we have plenty of time left to fully upgrade our watering can, so things are looking really good for us. Willy shows us his dilapidated boat. I donate the battery packs and Iridium bars needed to repair the boat, but I didn't bring enough hardwood. One of the paintings that will be sold at the night market looks a lot like Abigail's original model. I'm pretty sure it's actually a painting of the mermaid, but that's still pretty cool. I return to Willy's shop a short time later with the rest of their hardwood and donate the 200 needed to repair the boat. Next, it is time to speedrun the wizard's quest. We meet the wizard at the bathhouse area, ask Krobus to open the door to the mutant bugler, collect the dark talisman, buy a farm and mountain warp totem from Krobus, warp to our farm, collect the void mayonnaise, warp to the mountain area, use the dark talisman to open the door to the witch's swamp, Give the Void Mayonnaise to the Goblin Henchman, collect the Wizard's Ink, and bring it to the Wizard, completing his quest. I head to the Night Market where I was going to buy the painting of the Mermaid, but Sophia said she might buy it, so I left it there just in case she decided to buy it. The rest of the night is spent fishing in the submarine. We visit the Wizard on day 101. He teaches us how to use magic. We can now use the Shrine of Illusions to change our appearance. In the southeast of the big forest, I find the entrance to an area known as Sprite Spring. Two sprites live here, Angelica and Klaus. We swim across the lake here and find a bunch of winter forage. This is a nice area. I wish you could set up a little house here. Just to the south of the house owned by the Hat Mouse, I find the entrance to the Junimo Woods. I won't lie, I got lost here once. Or, or twice. A, f a few times, okay, many times, ma oh, yeah, I got lost here many times, I'm not gonna lie. I found an Iridium Meteor, so I broke that, then I finally made it to the Junomahut area. I assume this is the village Krobus was talking about? The Junomos here are selling a ton of items. Ancient seeds, rare seeds, wild seeds, artifacts, the legendary fish, magic bait. We don't buy anything, but we will definitely come back here in the future. Lewis sends us a letter on day 102 to let us know that the person we will be giving a Christmas present to is Victor. Victor loves battery packs, so I'm happy with getting him. Next, we watch a cutscene where Claire arrives at Georgia Mart to start her shift. Except the Georgia Mart has been abandoned. Nobody told her. I feel really bad for her. I'm, I'm going to try to get the cinema built as soon as I can because I assume she'll end up working there if we do that. I collect my watering can from Clint and ask him to upgrade our trash can. Willie's shop is full of crabs for some reason. Gus joins us and offers to take them off Willie's hands. He then tells us he'll be having a sale on crab cakes for the next few days. If you don't have access to coffee, then I would highly recommend buying as many of those crab cakes as you can. They give plus one speed for 16 minutes and 47 seconds, which is basically an entire day. Next, it is finally time to go to Ginger Island. We collect a golden walnut and give it to a parrot so we can talk to Leo. But that isn't why we're here. The real reason we're here is because we need to make it all the way through the volcano. We've got a galaxy sword, triple shot espressos, cheese and a fully upgraded watering can and pickaxe, so this wasn't too difficult at all. 
We make it to the end of the volcano at around midnight where we meet Lance. Why does this mod have so many attractive characters? The wizard pays us a visit on the morning of day 103. He wants us to meet him at his tower later on. This is the reason why I went through the volcano yesterday. Also, Lance visits us and gives us his schedule. Basically, we can see where he is at all times. I'm not gonna lie, I, I feel like Joe Goldberg now. You know, Lance has me feeling like... Also, also, Scarlet, Sophia's friend, visits us and lets us know that she has started working for Andy and Susan. We can visit Scarlet and Grappleton too if we use the railroad at the bathhouse area. A training montage of sorts plays when we enter the wizard's tower. We have learned how to make teleportation runes. The wizard also talks to us about Angelica and Klaus. It turns out, Angelica is the crop fairy. We meet the wizard in the backwoods behind our farm where he sets up our nexus. This is basically the area where we can set up teleportation stations to go to different areas on the map. There are seven teleportation stations that can be added here. The wizard immediately adds the first, allowing us to teleport to the wizard's tower. I head to the Sprite Spring where Angelica adds the area to our nexus. Next we head to the Adventurer's Guild where Marlin adds this area to our nexus. We also agree to help Gunther explore the mines tomorrow morning. Finally we go to the Junimo Woods where a Junimo called Peaches adds this area to our nexus too. So now we've got four locations at our nexus. The Wizard's Tower, Junomo Woods, Sprite Spring, and the Adventurer's Guild. On day 104, I head to Clint's and ask him to upgrade our trash can for the second time. I spend the rest of the day fishing to collect some of the fish in the new areas we've unlocked. We also help Gunther go through the mines and add our farm to our nexus. On day 105, Gunther sends us 20,000 gold in the mail for helping him in the mines. Our nexus is looking pretty nice, we've got 5 of the 7 teleportation stations unlocked. A beautiful sight awaits us in Grandpa's shed, as many jellies and wines are ready. Once again, the rest of the day is spent fishing. Shane sends us a letter on day 106 to let us know that he took some of the items that were left in the Georgia Mart when it was abandoned. We can now buy these items from him. Basically, the Georgia clearance bin has been moved to Marnie's ranch. I wanted to sell my artisan goods to Pierre, but the 22nd day of every season is community day, so every villager is going to the community center today. That is lovely, but I really wish Pierre would have bought my stuff before he left his shop. This put me in an absolutely terrible mood, so I did what I do every time I feel upset. I went to sleep. I did throw my artisan goods into the shipping bin, and we received over 260,000 gold, so that cheered me up. I perform my daily ritual of collecting several artifact troves to start day 107, then I head to the desert and buy 600 starfruit seeds. I buy two iridium sprinklers from Pierre, toss my items into a chest, collect my trash can from Clint, and crack open many, many, many artifact troves. The only item we received that we can donate is the chicken statue. At this point I just need to dig up artifact spots around the town to get the last few artifacts we need. I also need 3 more minerals but I'll get those in the future. I head back to the farm and pick up 5 gold bars, then I return to Clint's and ask him to upgrade our trash can. I spend the rest of the day planting as many starfruit seeds as I can in our greenhouse. On day 108, I must say that our coffee bean and Georgia Berry greenhouse looks absolutely sterling. I make my way to the railroad by the bathhouse and use it to pay a visit to Grampleton. This is where Scarlet lives. There isn't really much to do here besides talk to Scarlet, go inside her house and talk to her father Trayvon and her stepfather Hank. Being able to visit Grampleton and talk to Scarlet and her parents is completely new to me. This wasn't in the game when I played the Stardew Valley Expanded mod last year. I'm going to work on increasing my friendship with her as much as I can because I really want to see her cutscenes. I think she could easily become my favourite villager. I head back to Pelican Town and ask Robin to upgrade my house, then I spend the rest of the day digging up artifact spots. The Feast of the Winter Star takes place on day 109. Olivia was the first person to say Merry Christmas to me, so she's my favourite villager once again. Sophia was with Dusty the dog when I went over to her and talked to her. The first thing she said was, who is a good boy? 
you are. Now I know that she was saying this to Dusty, but I genuinely thought she was saying this to me at first and I couldn't stop laughing. So, Sophia is now my favourite villager because of the giggle I had when this happened. Something strange happened after this though. I tried to give Victor his Christmas present, but it didn't give me the option. I talked to pretty much everybody at the festival and it turns out Andy is the person I have to give a gift to. Listen, I am a very particular person, alright? I am terrible at dealing with an unexpected change of plans. Like no joke, as soon as something happens that I wasn't ready for, my brain cells go on vacation and I just don't know what to do. So this, this was a problem for me. I only had a battery pack and goat cheese with me. Luckily Andy ended up liking the goat cheese so that could have gone a lot worse. I sell some fruit, jelly and wine to Pierre on day 110, then it's off to Willy's shop to buy a lead bobber and five fish stews. I head to Clint's to collect my gold trash can and ask him to upgrade it for the final time, but he isn't there. Yeah, of course he isn't. I, I literally said this would happen. I knew this was going to happen. So we, we failed our goal to fully upgrade all of our tools. Thank you so much for that, Clint. You are a star. As if things couldn't get any worse, it is now time for me to do something I have been avoiding since the beginning of winter. It is time for us to catch the glacier fish. The fish stew adds a plus 3 bonus to our fishing skill. Despite that, we fail to catch the glacier fish on our first try. It then completely embarrasses us on our second attempt. And our third attempt. And our fourth. And our fifth. I was legitimately considering giving up at this point and waiting until winter in year 2 to try to catch it again, but I stuck with it. And I'm glad I did, because through some divine intervention, we actually managed to catch it. That took so much out of me that I decided to go home and go straight to bed. I decided to take away my tree farm on day 111. We need space for a new shed and I don't really need any more maple syrup, oak resin or pine tar. I buy 20 kegs from Robin, ask her to build us a shed, collect our gold trash can from Clint and ask him to break open our geodes. It takes some time but we get the first mineral we need, then the second mineral, then the third and final mineral. I ask Clint to upgrade our trash can for the final time. Technically we have fully upgraded all of our tools but the trash can won't be ready to collect until the first day of spring so I'm gonna say we failed this goal. I donate the three minerals to the museum and that's the end of the day. I'm kinda disappointed we failed probably the easiest of our three goals. We, we were really close, you know we, we almost had it but it is what it is. I made the executive decision to take it really easy on day 112. All I did was collect the jelly and wine that was ready in Grandpa's shed. I felt it was only right that we spend the final day of our first year in Pelican Town at the summit. When I made it to the top of the mountain, Leah was there. I stood beside her, taking in the beautiful view in front of us as the sun set on Stardew Valley. And that is the end of our first year in Stardew Valley Expanded. Let's take a quick look at how we did with our goals. We had three of them. The first was to complete the community center. We were able to get this done in the middle of winter. I was hoping we would have been able to do this around the end of fall, but better late than never. You know, we, we got it done. It is what it is. Our second goal was to earn a total of 1 million gold. We were able to do this, but I'll be honest, the Better Mixed Seeds mod definitely helped us out a bit with this one. Regardless, that's two goals completed. The final goal was to upgrade all of our tools to Iridium quality. We were really close to achieving this one, but we failed. I, I don't even blame Clint for this one though, this one's on me. I should have paid more attention during the last few days. So we completed two goals and failed one goal, which I'm happy with. It, it could have been worse, could have been better could have been a lot better but it could have been worse so I'm happy. As for our second year I have another three goals in mind. Our first goal will be to complete the shipping collection, the second will be to complete the fishing collection and the third and final goal will be to reach maximum friendship with everybody. There might be somebody watching this video right now that has played through Stardew Valley Expanded and they might be saying to themselves yeah, one of those goals is impossible, like like you literally cannot complete the fishing collection until year 3 or something like that. And if that's the case, 
if I have actually set a goal that on a technical level I literally cannot complete during year two, then I'll, I'll burn that bridge when I get to it. And that is officially the end of our first year in Stardew Valley Expanded. I am fully aware of the fact that at the beginning of this segment I said that pretty much word for word, but I, I think you know by now that I tend to ramble a lot of my videos, I repeat myself a lot. Okay, you know what? I will see you all in spring. Day 113 is the first day of her second year. It begins with a visit from Kent, who has just arrived back in Pelican Town. I meet Lewis at the old community garden in the east of town. He says we can use this garden to grow crops. This was very kind of him. I will admit, however, that I completely forgot about this and didn't go back here for the rest of spring. My bad. I buy 400 Deluxe Speed Grow and 400 Mixed Seeds and Pears, then I visit Robin and add the two extra rooms to our house. I also buy 20 kegs. I return to Piers to buy some grass starter. We're mainly going to be focusing on the layout of our farm this month, so I'll be using this grass to decorate it. I head back to the farm and plant our mixed seeds. On day 114, we have a conversation with Andy outside the abandoned farmhouse. It turns out it used to belong to two friends of his. I collect their wines and jams from the greenhouse and pick up the starfruit seeds I left there. I sell the wine and jam to Pierre and buy some iridium sprinklers, scarecrows, deluxe speed grow and mixed seeds from Pierre. As is tradition, I purchase 20 kegs from Robin. Then I collect my iridium trash can from Clint. We're a bit late, but we have finally, officially, fully upgraded all of our tools. I make my way to Ginger Island and spend the day clearing out all of the wood, stone and weeds and plant their seeds. Day 115 is a big collection day. I really need to pick up our cheese and mayo more often. And I need to keep all of these machines working more frequently too. I want to have the most efficient farm that anybody has ever seen by the end of the second year. I ask Robin to upgrade her shed, then I head to Ginger Island where I spend the rest of the day in the Volcano Dungeon. I want to unlock Mr. Key's Walnut Room this month, so we're going to be spending a good bit of time on Ginger Island. I'm pretty sure I mentioned previously that I was going to refer to Mr. Key as Mr. Blue. I've changed my mind on that. Uh, it's, it's Mr. Key, it's not Mr. Blue anymore. Day 116 is a small harvest day as various crops have grown. The only reason I'm pointing this out is because I basically ignore the crops that are growing on this farm during spring. I don't know why I did that to be honest. But our greenhouse is a different story altogether. Our Georgia berries are ready for harvest and a few Georgia berry jams are also ready for collection. I purchase even more Deluxe Speed Grow and Mixed Seeds and Pears, and I think you know the drill by now. I'm not going to specifically mention me buying Deluxe Speed Grow or Mixed Seeds anymore. It's off to Ginger Island once again to clear out some more space for the planting of more seeds. Wheat and garlic have appeared from Mixed Seeds, so I make sure to plant the melon seeds so we can get 15 Golden Walnuts in the future. On day 117, I make 33 kegs, which brings us up to a total of 53, thanks to the 20 I had in the chest beside my house. I've definitely got more kegs in different chests, but I just don't know where they are. I buy another 20 kegs from Robin, giving us a total of 73. I also buy 150 oak resin, 30 copper bars, and 20 iron bars. We now have 114 kegs. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. I'm going to be honest, I completely forget if I said I won't talk about harvesting the ancient fruit and Georgia berries in Grandpa's shed anymore. I've said I won't mention certain things so many times that I've lost track of what I'm not allowed to talk about anymore. I get to work on placing the kegs inside her shed. I completely messed up the layout the first time I put them down, so I had to do it again. This looks much better, but I don't have enough kegs to fill up the entire shed. I fill these kegs with ancient fruit and Georgia berries before the day ends. On day 118, I decide it's time to complete the museum collection. I collect the artifacts I kept in my chest, donate them, and nothing happens. I'm missing something. Alright, well, I suppose this was bound to happen. Nothing can ever be easy, huh? It took me about a minute, but I realized we don't have a prismatic shard in our museum collection. I collect one from my storage shed and donate it to the museum. Once again, nothing happens. Of course. I'm going to do some detective work and see if I can figure out what I'm missing. I collect a jade from a crystallarium and I realize that this is what we haven't donated to the museum. 
That does make a lot of sense, though. I kept my first jade so I could put it in the crystallarium, then I kept any more jades I found so I could trade them in for staircases. On day 119, I donate the jade and finally complete the museum collection. I receive a star drop for doing so. I believe we only need two more star drops now. One for catching all of the fish, and another for getting somebody to 12 and a half hearts. So we either need to marry someone or ask someone to be our roommate. I will sort that out at a later date. Not right now, I'm not ready for that. I purchase a stamina capsule and a sports drink from Harvey because we need to throw these into our shipping bin as part of the shipping collection. Then it's off to Ginger Island where I find a mummified frog in the forest. The rest of the day is spent here, collecting golden walnuts and golden coconuts. I head to Robins on day 120 to buy some wood and fibre and ask her to build another shed for us. I ask Clint to crack open a golden coconut and we receive a golden walnut. I buy some copper ore and use it along with the wood and fibre we have to make 5 flute blocks. I fish up a golden walnut and use our 20 golden walnuts to unlock the island resort. I then collect one golden walnut, then another, then a third walnut to the east of the island resort. I collect a fourth walnut by fishing and I catch a stingray. I meet Birdie so I can start a quest. Except I'm not going to start it today, no I have very important business to tend to. I head to the pirate cove and play a game of darts three times to receive another three golden walnuts. Just a heads up, I say golden walnuts a lot during spring. like. I got to the point where the words golden walnut lost all meaning for me. On day 121, I am very happy to announce that we do indeed have a wheat, a garlic and a melon growing on our farm. In fact, they're not just growing, they're fully grown. This means we can talk to the frog in the cave and show him these three crops. I do this and receive 15 golden walnuts for my troubles. I give Kent the war memento to start Birdie's quest. I drop by our farm to collect a bomb, then I buy some cooking products and the wallpaper catalog from Pierre. I give the gourmet tomato salt to Gus, give the Stardew Valley Rose to Sandy, give the advanced TV remote to George, give the Arctic Shard to the wizard, and give a Wrigley Worm to Willy. Willy gives us the pirate's locket. Now all we have to do is give this item to Birdie. I head to Willy's shop so I can go to Ginger Island, but it's closed. It takes... So much effort to produce a smile these days. I am in tremendous need of some dopamine, so on day 122, I ask Robin to upgrade her shed. Just in case anybody is curious, I'm still making sure I give gifts to the villagers as often as I can. I really want to stay on top of our friendships to make sure we get everyone to maximum hearts by the end of winter. I use our five flute blocks to complete a puzzle and earn five golden walnuts. Our star fruit are ready for harvest, which helps us earn another 4 or 5 golden walnuts. I'm not sure exactly how many it was, I'm, I'm starting to lose my mind a bit when it comes to these walnuts, honestly. If I'm being completely transparent, I hate having to collect all 130 golden walnuts. It's, it's absolutely the worst part of achieving perfection for me. It's not, like, extremely difficult or anything like that. There's just so many small things you need to do to get them all. Anyway, rant over, let's get back to business. We have collected 82 golden walnuts so far, which is good. I've spent so much time focusing on them during the last few days that I would have been incredibly upset if we had less than 70. A bird drops an emerald in the forest. This is perfect. It makes it slightly easier to guess where the remaining gems go on the remaining podiums that are part of this puzzle. I talked about this during the 100 Days of Stardew Valley video I made recently, but normally you're supposed to collect these gems from birds in four different areas on the island. But I'm a bit impatient, so I just guess where the gems go. This pays off as we receive 5 golden walnuts. I open up the dig site, break open the bone nodes, do some panning and free Professor Snail from the cave he's trapped in. I collect some golden walnuts, then I correctly answer the two survey questions in the island field office to receive two golden walnuts. I donate the artifacts I have and I receive another two golden walnuts. I'm losing my mind with how much I've said golden walnut. I I make a quick stop in the Volcano Dungeon, where I collect another two, you know, you get the point. It's raining on day 123, which means Birdie isn't outside, so we can't talk to her and complete her quest. That's fine. Everything is fine. I play the Simon Says game to receive another three golden walnuts. I quickly unlock the island's fast travel system, then I make my way to Mr. Key's walnut room. We have finally collected 100 walnuts, giving us access to the room. 
Alright, this is good. I needed a pick-me-up after the kerfuffle that occurred this morning. The two special orders available to us are disgusting. Seriously, I would have taken anything else over these two. I decide to accept the order to find key beans and use them to grow and ship 500 key fruit. I decide to check how much progress we've made. 38%. You know what, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm going to make a prediction right now though. By the time winter is over, we'll be at 80% minimum. I spend the rest of the day fishing for gold and walnuts. Anytime I hook a fish, I immediately cancel it. To be quite honest, I don't know if I've already collected all five walnuts you can get from fishing. What I do know is I didn't get a single walnut from doing this, so it was kind of a waste of time. I collect a golden walnut on the morning of day 124, then I collect another one. I return to Pelican Town and enter our new shed. It's empty right now, but we're going to fill this bad boy with kegs as soon as we can. Our ancient fruit and Georgia Berry wine is ready in our first shed though, so that is absolutely sterling. The kegs and preserve jars in Grandpa's shed are also full of wine and jam, so today is a very good day. Our star fruit is also ready for harvest, and I was genuinely ready to cry at this point. That's how emotional I was. We received 400,000 gold from our wine and jam. That's actually quite a bit more than I was expecting. Things are looking good for us. The egg festival takes place on day 125. I'm going to be honest, I was not feeling it, so I went to sleep instead. It's time to visit Robin again on day 126, so I can buy four stacks of wood. I only just realized this cost me 200,000 gold. Was it worth it? Absolutely not, but I'm going to lie to myself and say it was worth it so I can feel just a tiny bit better about my spending habits. I purchase another 100 oak resin, giving us a total of 209. I ask Robin to build another shed for us, then it's off to Clint's to continue our shopping spree. I buy copper and iron bars, copper and iron ore, and coal. Then it's off to Ginger Island to complete Birdie's quest, except it's raining again, yeah, that's just typical. The rest of the day is spent smelting iron and copper ore. I believe it is time to let the cat out of the bag, as they say. The whole point of today was to get everything we need to make a ton of kegs. I fill the remaining spots in our keg shed and fill them all up with Georgia berries. I also get started on filling our second keg shed while I wait for the iron and copper ores to smelt in our furnaces. I also reorganized this shed to make it look a lot more like our keg sheds in terms of the layout. I end up making 58 kegs, then I throw our artisan goods into the shipping bin. If you pay close attention, you will notice I threw our oak resin into the shipping bin. I did not mean to do that. On day 127, I make some good progress on our second keg shed. And that's all I did today. On day 128, I have officially given up on trying to complete Mr. Key's special order to grow and ship 500 key fruit. All of the space in our two greenhouses and on our Ginger Island farm is taken up by different crops, so there's basically no way I can get that special order done. I throw some Georgia berries into our kegs, and then I throw some Georgia berries into our seed makers. I take a bit of a creative risk and plant more Georgia berry seeds in this greenhouse. I say creative risk because I can almost guarantee that I'm going to plant these incorrectly and not be able to harvest some of them. I buy ancient seeds and pears, throw Georgia berries into our kegs, and plant the ancient seeds. Day 129 is when I realize I threw over 100 oak resin into our shipping bin a few days ago. This hurt. Like this, this really, really hurt. A routine trip to Robins takes place next where I of course purchase kegs and ask her to upgrade her shed. Except I don't have enough gold. I'm upset. On Ginger Island, I receive a golden walnut when I break a muscle node, so that was like a good raindrop falling in a puddle of bad news. Basically what I'm saying is today isn't a good day. I do give the pirate's locket to Birdie and complete her quest, though. At this point, I decide to go all in on collecting golden walnuts. I'm not trying to collect all 130 of them, I just want to get to around 115 at the very least. We've got 109, so this shouldn't be too difficult. Except for the fact that it's me. I mean, if you've seen my other videos, you probably know that I can struggle with the most basic things at times. Let me put it this way. If fumbling was an Olympic sport, I would be a 10-time gold medal winner. So, with all of that being said, the rest of day 129, as well as days 130, 131, 132, 
and 133 are spent fishing, harvesting our star fruit, breaking bone nodes, digging up artifact spots, panning, donating any artifacts I find, talking to Lance, and going through the volcano dungeon. Day 134 is an ancient fruit harvest day. You'll notice the golden coconuts in our inventory. I'm hoping we get a fossilized skull from one of them when we ask Clint to crack them open. That artifact and one snake vertebrae is all I need to finish off the field office donations. I also got a golden walnut from a muscle node, so that was nice. I head to Clint's and he's not there. I, I honestly, at this point, honestly, I think Clint has a problem with me. This, this is a recurring thing, alright? This has happened in every single playthrough. Like, I'll go to Clint's because I have something important to do and he's just not there. Like, why does he hate me? Anyway, our keg shed is full of wine, so that is absolutely sensational. I fill these kegs up with ancient fruit and some star fruit. Our second keg shed is also full of wine. Is it just me, or has pretty much every day during spring so far been full of ups and downs? I don't think we've had a day that was all good or all bad. It's like the Stardew Valley universe can't decide whether I have bad luck or good luck, so it gives me both at the same time. Any whomst, I collect some artisan goods from our sort of miscellaneous machines shed, that was a tongue twister for me, and throw everything into our shipping bin. We earn almost 500,000 gold from this. Sweet. I head to Clint's on day 135 and purchase iron and copper ore and copper and iron bars. I had just made it back to the farm when I realized I forgot to ask him to crack open our golden coconuts. So I head back to Clint's and do exactly that. The good news is we received the fossilized skull. The bad news is we received two of them and a key bean. I only needed one of these three items. Like I said, good luck and bad luck at the same time. It's off to Ginger Island to donate the skull for which we receive six golden walnuts and a banana tree sapling. I plant the sapling then I begin the process of smelting our iron and copper ores. While the furnaces are working away, I begin clearing out the chests beside my house and putting everything into our storage shed. On day 136, I change the wallpaper and flooring in our storage shed. There's a glitch where the wallpaper and flooring of one shed will be transferred to another shed, and that is exactly what happened here. But I think it looks nice, so I'll leave it like that. One of the benefits of moving everything into the storage shed was I found 40 kegs I bought last year. I collect our ancient fruit and Georgia berries from a chest, place the 40 kegs into our second keg shed, and fill them all up. I give Lance a golden pumpkin, and I believe he is at two hearts now, which is good. This should unlock a cutscene with Marlin really soon. I head to the flower dance. Last year, I basically had to choose between Olivia and Sophia. I chose Olivia. This time I decide to dance with Sophia because I still have not forgotten about the bottle of aged Blue Moon wine she gave us last year. I'm a very sentimental person, what can I say? Marlin pays us a visit on day 137. He wants us to come to the Adventures Guild when we get the chance. I immediately head there and it's locked. That's a bit rude, honestly, like he knew we were coming here and he decided to lock the door. Alright, I see how it is. I collect some wine from Grandpa's shed, and listen, I, I don't know if I've said this before, but I'm not going to mention collecting wine or harvesting crops or anything like that anymore. So if you see my bank account increase by like 400,000 gold, you can just assume I sold a ton of wine or Georgia berries. In the same vein, if it looks like I have spent a ton of money, it was probably for the sake of making a ton of kegs. I return to the Adventurers Guild where Marlin says we can use his boat to travel to the Highlands, but first we need to give him various monster items. Slime, bat wings, solar essence, things like that. I ask Robin to upgrade our third shed, then I give Marlin the items he requested. Now I don't know about you, but I feel like we need a big moment to happen during spring. Something unexpected, something beautiful. So, Sophia has been given the bouquet. I mean, look, realistically, it was always going to be her. She has the best backstory out of any villager in Stardew Valley Expanded. In my opinion, of course. So, she wasn't just an option, she was the solution. Side note, I was listening to When the Night is Over by Lord Huron when I gave her the bouquet, so I, I got a bit emotional here, I, I won't lie to you. Marlin pays us a visit on day 138 to let us know we can now use his boat. I suspect we may be on the cusp of another big moment here. 
I head straight to the Adventurers Guild where Marlin says we'll be going to the Highlands. The Highlands is where Lance lives. I wanted to show this part of the cutscene because it's kind of beautiful. The river, the cliffs, the trees, I love that stuff. We... We are... I don't know why I said it like that. We arrive at our destination and waterfalls are floating in the air for some reason. We meet Lance and uh, yeah, I, I don't think those waterfalls are supposed to be there. Unless Lance has somehow managed to find decorative waterfalls that can float in the air, which... I mean, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if that was actually the case. He even has these waterfalls in his house, so yeah, maybe. But no, they're definitely just a graphical glitch. When the cutscene ends, we are teleported back to the Adventurers Guild. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is not where I want to be. I immediately head back to the Highlands and talk to Lance. He says that there are monsters here that will drop seeds for special crops. Lance would like us to give him the four crops these seeds produce. So I spend the rest of the day defeating monsters here so I can get those seeds. On day 139, we can send something west of Cindersap Forest. About time, I've been waiting for this since last spring. I collect all of my starfruit and head to the abandoned farmhouse where I find a Junimo scroll. I bump into the wizard a few moments later who says he can sense intense magic surrounding us. It turns out we have a Junimo scroll in our pocket. The wizard wants us to go to his tower so he can take a look at it. He can't understand it though, so he asks someone to visit us. Kamala arrives. Not going to lie, I was hoping it would be Alicia. But this is our first time meeting Kamala, so this is pretty cool. The wizard mentioned her when we met him in the forest last year. She protects an area called Castle Village. She is also in charge of the biggest magical barrier in the world. This barrier is used to keep monsters away from the citizens of Castle Village. So basically, she is the coolest person we have met so far. I return to the abandoned farmhouse and donate 200 starfruit, then it's off to Ginger Island to harvest all of the crops and start planting starfruit and Georgia berry seeds. On day 140, I would like to say something really quick. Regarding the crops Lance wants us to give him, we already have three of them thanks to our mixed seeds. Yeah, it turns out mixed seeds uh, produce these crops. We've got the slime berry, the void fruit, and the monster fruit. All we need is the monster mushroom and I've got the seed for it planted. So Lance will get his four crops pretty soon. I finish off planting as many Georgia berry and starfruit seeds as I can. I definitely said I won't mention planting seeds anymore, didn't I? Did I? I, I don't remember at this point. I've said... I won't say it, I, I probably will, I, I actually, I will say it again. You know the vibes, that's how, that's what I do. I just forget things, I don't know what I'm saying. And let's just move on. I buy cooking recipes from Gus at the Island Resort. Just before the day ends, I head to the Highlands and give the three crops we have to Lance. So spring was, uh, I, I don't even know what to say, to be honest. I, I feel like ups and downs doesn't even begin to describe it. It was, it was just a weird season. Uh, yeah, I will see you all in summer. Lance sends us 24 life elixirs on day 141. I probably won't use these, but I appreciate it all the same. I pay a visit to the old abandoned farmhouse. I head into the basement and meet a brand new character. Their name is Apples and they are a Junimo. They are also the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Except for Pedro Pascal in that meme where he's in the car and he's smiling at Nicolas Cage. Anyway, we can start giving gifts to apples tomorrow, so hopefully we can get them to 10 hearts before the end of winter. I spend the rest of the day in the cavern in the highlands. We can collect a ton of ores here and we can catch the gemfish, so it was definitely worth coming here. The entirety of day 142 is spent planting Georgia berry seeds on the left side of our farm. I really need to stop talking about me planting seeds, but that's literally all I did today, so I'll give myself some leeway with this one. On day 143, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is, I did indeed fill the left side of our farm with Georgia berry seeds. The bad news is, I did not do the same thing on the right side of our farm. I do collect a bunch of coffee from our third shed though, so that was good. I pay a visit to Apples and give them a starfruit. Then Apples helps us set up a teleportation station in their house. This means we can use our Nexus to teleport here. I purchased 10 tea leaves from Pierre. Not for any specific reason, I just like the color green. 
A cutscene with Clint plays next. It turns out he makes weapons for the members of the Adventures Guild. He also uses the it's not much but it's honest work meme, so I have developed a newfound admiration for Clint. The conversation ends with Clint saying, I know I'm a bit awkward sometimes, but thanks for stopping by. Yeah, me too. I head to Ginger Island and dig up an artifact spot. I was hoping we would get the snake vertebrae, but nope. Pretty much all of day 144 is spent in the volcano dungeon. At this point I really don't even know if I've collected all of the golden walnuts in here, but I do need to get more dragon tooth. Dragon teeth? Dragon tooth. You know what I'm talking about. Kamala pays us a visit on the morning of day 145 and immediately teleports us away. She takes us to her nexus and says she needs our help with something. She tells us to hold her hand. I'm nervous. She takes us to the continent of Galdora, a place beset by both miracles and curses. She then tells us that if we want the challenge, we can try to explore the area and defeat the monsters here. Finally, she sets up a teleportation station so we can get back here anytime we want. Not gonna lie, Kamala is a very cool character. She scares me, but she's cool. I continue my quest to become Apple's best friend by giving them starfruit, then I collect dewdrop berries at our nexus. I head to the abandoned Georgia Mart and complete the final bundle. I should have done this sooner, but at least it's out of the way now. The rest of the day is spent planting Georgia berries on the right side of our farm. The cinema is built during the night. I buy two cinema tickets on day 146 and give one to Lance. I really want to get him to 8 hearts as soon as I can, so he's going to be our cinema buddy for the next few weeks. I head to the cinema where I meet Claire. Sorry, actually, it's Asterix, Asterix, Claire, Asterix, Asterix. She and Asterix, Asterix, Martin, Asterix, Asterix are working here now. I give Martin a dog feather for his birthday, buy a star drop sorbet for... Did I pronounce that right? Sorbet? For Lance, and watch the movie with him. Once again, the rest of the day is spent in the volcano dungeon searching for more dragon tooth. On day 147, I realize just how good dewdrop berries are. Eating one of these berries and drinking a coffee gives us a total speed boost of plus 3. We're basically like Lightning McQueen now. Unfortunately, there are no artifact spots we can dig up here, so we still can't get the snake vertebrae. I trade 75 mussels for a mango tree sapling and dig up a golden walnut and an ostrich egg. I'm going to make what I believe will be a controversial decision. That ostrich egg is going into the shipping bin. I don't really need an ostrich on our farm, and we do need to ship an ostrich egg. I head to the highlands and give Lance the monster mushroom. That is the fourth and final monster crop he wanted as part of his quest. I also give him a dewdrop berry. Next I head to Galdora. I don't actually want to fight the monsters here, I just want to go fishing. It was difficult, like really really difficult because I kept getting chased by serpents and mummies but I eventually managed to find a relatively safe place to do some fishing. The rest of the day is spent here. I ask Robin to add a cellar to her house on day 148. I also buy the furniture catalogue so I can start decorating our house at a later date. Next I head to the beach and buy the mermaid's pendant. This of course will be given to Sophia but I want to make sure our house looks absolutely beautiful before I do that. I spend the rest of the day fighting monsters in the highlands. When it's raining the green mushroom monster will spawn. This monster can drop a green mushroom when we defeat it. We need to ship one of these and Lance loves them so it's pretty beneficial for me to get at least three of them. Also there is a pink treasure chest in the bottom right but I don't know how to get to it. Lance drops by our house on day 149 to let us know he left a reward for us in a chest in his house as a thank you for us giving him the monster crops. I head straight to the highlands, open up the chest and receive the diamond wand. When you hit an enemy with this weapon, they'll fly backwards. This could actually help us a lot when or if we go back to Galdora. I should have mentioned this before, but another name for Galdora is the Crimson Badlands. Or rather, the Crimson Badlands is an area within Galdora. I spend the rest of the day decorating the house. I'm happy with how it turned out, but I am especially proud of my souvenir room. I've got a golden pumpkin, a treasure chest, the aged blue moon wine Sophia sent us, Mary Lewis's shorts, and Robin's axe. I should probably give those last two back to their owners, but I, I, I don't want to. 
we still need to get the snake vertebrae, so on day 150, I head to Ginger Island where I don't find one, but I do harvest a lot of starfruit, so a win is a win. Up next is a cutscene with Sophia. She has decided to cosplay as a character from the Journey of the Prairie King game. She wants us to help her act out a scene. Bright Pisces and Sophia stand across from each other, their weapons drawn, a look of determination on their faces. This is the final showdown. A clash of the titans, so to speak. Sophia knocks her weapon out of her hands, putting us in quite the precarious position. She slowly walks towards us as we accept her fate. But then... We kiss. What a performance. I've got goosebumps. I feel like, uh... What's the last name? Jake from uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. In, in that scene where they're all singing the... Uh, Backstreet's Back... Uh, whatever, I don't know what I'm talking about. Point, it was good. I want it that way, you know, that scene where they're all singing that, that song. You, you know what I'm talking about. You probably know what I'm talking about. Let's just move on. I buy two movie tickets, then I head to Susan's house and give the mermaid's pendant to Sophia. She accepts the proposal. I know we didn't get the snake vertebrae this morning, but I'm going to go ahead and say that today was a completely good day despite that. I head to the Adventures Guild and ask Lance to go to the cinema with us. Inside the cinema, I purchase a jasmine tea for my best friend, play the crane game to win some decorations for the house, and watch the Journey of the Prairie King movie with Lance. Next, I give a starfruit to Apples, and they give me a sunflower. Thank you, Apples. Day 151 is the day of the luau. I throw a gold star starfruit into the soup, which gets us the best reaction from the governor. This also earns us some friendship points with the villagers, so that helps us out with our friendship goal. I quickly head to the mines and buy a rare crow from the dwarf before the day ends. The Zuzu City Rare Crow Society sends us a letter on day 152. They congratulate us on collecting all of their rare crows and give us the crafting recipe for the deluxe scarecrow. Over on Ginger Island, I still have not found the snake vertebrae. I accept a special order from Mr. Key to bring him four prismatic shards. I've still got quite a few of those, so this is a really easy special order. I spend the rest of the day in the Volcano Dungeon. At this point, I can tell you for a fact that we have collected all of the walnuts in here, so I really don't know why I decided to go back in here. Like, there was literally no reason for me to do this. Day 153 is our wedding day. I'll be honest, I am kind of surprised we got married. I remember spending pretty much the entirety of the first year not knowing who to marry, so I was almost convinced I would just ask Krobus or Apples to move in with us instead. But, like I said, Sophia is a really cool character, so this just made sense. I decided to spend the rest of the day fishing on Ginger Island to collect all of the fish that are needed for the fishing collection. I buy two movie tickets on day 154, then I give Apples a starfruit. They give us a piece of stone in return. I will treasure this piece of stone for the rest of my life. I spend some time exploring the highlands with Lance in a cutscene. He has activated a protection spell so the monsters leave us alone while we're exploring. I give him a green mushroom, then I try to give him a cinema ticket, but he doesn't feel like going to the cinema. Okay. I try to give Apples the cinema ticket, but it turns out we can't invite them to the cinema. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I decide to invite Susan to the cinema, but it turns out we are the person who doesn't feel like going to the cinema. My bad, that one's on me. I'm sorry, Lance. I thought you rejected my cinema invitation and I was actually really upset with you for a minute. That's my fault. My bad. I visit Apples on day 155 and they want to show me how they've decorated their home. Honestly, I think it looks sterling. I mean, yeah, they've pretty much just used starfruit to decorate their house, but it's all about perspective, you know? And they gave me three starfruit, so of course I'm going to say something nice about their home. I head to the Crimson Badlands and give Lance a golden pumpkin and invite him to the cinema. This time I actually do feel like going to the movies, so that's good. Like I said, I'm working as hard as I can to make sure I get Lance to 8 hearts as soon as I can. I really don't want to fall behind on any of the friendships I have left. Unfortunately, I still have not gotten the snake vertebrae on day 156, but I did harvest quite a few jojo berries, so that was something at least. You know what, I'm tired of talking about how I didn't find the snake vertebrae. So the rest of day 156 as well as days 157 and 158 are spent trying to get the snake vertebrae. I also make time to harvest the Georgia berries on our farm. Then a miracle happens. On the morning of day 159, I finally dig up a snake vertebrae. 
I donate this to the field office, fully completing the entire collection. I am feeling pretty happy with myself as I look at the items I have donated. I receive 3 golden walnuts and a mango tree sapling as rewards. I believe all we need to do now is get a banana and put it on a podium in the jungle to receive the final 3 golden walnuts. On day 160 I would like to show you all my souvenir room again. You may have noticed I have made a small change to the room. I took away the golden pumpkin and replaced it with the piece of stone apples gave us. I feel like it really complements the, uh, the vibe of the room, you know, I just love the aura it gives off. Uh, also, that's it for today. Day 161 is sort of a laid back day, but it's also a bit hectic too. The day of course begins with me giving a gift to Sophia. Then I decide it's time to complete the quests that various villagers have given us. I give an iron bar to Clint, give a green mushroom to Lance and spend the rest of the day giving items to the villagers to complete as many of these quests as I can. Day 162 is a really memorable day for one reason and one reason only. Almost every Georgia berry seed on our farm and in the greenhouse in Grandpa's shed is ready for harvest. This means we're guaranteed to get at least 150 to 200 Georgia berries every four days. Which means we will be the proud owner of the Georgia Berry Wine Emporium pretty soon. And by pretty soon, I mean we already are the proud owner of the Georgia Berry Wine Emporium. Anyway, all of the wine I collected today, along with the wine I kept from previous collections, and ancient fruit and Georgia berries get thrown into the shipping bin. I also throw some artisan goods like mayonnaise and cheese into the shipping bin. We make over 1.8 million gold from all of these items. I give Sophia a pearl on day 163 and she gives us a star drop. The only star drop we need now is the one you get for completing the fishing bundle. I head to the wizard's tower and purchase the earth obelisk, the water obelisk and the desert obelisk. I wasn't happy with where I placed them when I bought them so I immediately moved them up beside our house. We still need to get the island obelisk but I need 1 million gold and 10 bananas for that. I give Lance a golden pumpkin and invite him to the cinema once again. Thanks to us giving him golden pumpkins and green mushrooms, as well as inviting him to the cinema and buying him food he loves, we've made significant progress on his friendship. In fact, this might be the most amount of progress I've made on a villager's friendship in the least amount of time. I visit Ginger Island where I almost immediately get a cutscene involving Lance. He wants to bring us to the home of his guild so he can show the monster crops we gave him to everybody there. We jump into a teleportation station and head to a place called the Fable Reef. The first thing I notice about this place is that it contains a piece of forage I have not seen before. Which means it is one of the three items I still have left to ship. The other two items are the banana and the mango. Lance introduces us to the other members of the guild who welcome us with open arms. Back on Ginger Island, I collect a banana from our banana tree and throw it into the shipping bin. After harvesting some Georgia berries and ancient fruit, I take the banana back out of the shipping bin and run to the jungle. I place the banana on the podium and receive the final three golden walnuts. I am so glad that's over. I don't have to say the words golden walnut for the rest of this playthrough, so I am really happy right now. The wizard comes to see us on day 164 and lets us know we can use the teleportation station in his tower to go to the Fable Reef anytime we want. I make a beeline for the wizard's tower and immediately teleport there. I do a bit of foraging and collect the golden ocean flower. This is the piece of forage that I was talking about yesterday. I also do some fishing to catch the torpedo trout, then I enter the big adventures guild there and enter a bedroom. Jolene, the leader of the guild, enters the room and says I'm definitely the curious type. Basically, she said I'm very nosy. I thought I messed up, but then Jolene said I can sleep in this room whenever I want, so everything worked out well in the end. I collect two bananas on day 165. The rest of day 165, as well as days 166 and 167, are spent making as much coffee as I can for a special order Mr. Key gave us, giving Gus 24 eggs to complete a special order, harvesting Georgia berries, giving Leo a birthday present, buying around 500 coffees from Gus because I couldn't be bothered making any more coffee, turning all of the coffee I have into triple shot espressos, and throwing those triple shot espressos into the shipping bin. 
we made 100,000 gold from those triple shot espressos. Mr. Key's special order required us to ship 100,000 gold worth of freshly cooked items, so we completed that special order. The entirety of day 168 is basically a reward for all of the hard work we put in during summer. I collect the Georgia Berry, Starfruit and Ancient Fruit wine from all three of our sheds. Selling all of this wine, some Georgia Berries and Ancient Fruit will put us in a really good position heading into fall. Just before midnight I head to the beach for the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. Overall, I think this was a really good season. We made some good progress on our friendships with Lance and Apples in particular. We finished collecting all 130 golden walnuts, and we're almost finished with the shipping and fishing collections. So, hopefully we can keep the momentum going and make even more progress during fall. On day 169, I meet Kamala on the Shearwater Bridge. She still scares me, I can't lie, she's just too confident, you know, like I need her to be just a little bit more awkward around me. She reminds me of uh, Harvey Specter from a show called Suits, if anybody has seen that. And she keeps winking at me too, like I'm getting nervous just being around her, I don't like this. Anyway, she uses magic to make a new fish appear in the water here. Which is fantastic news. We only need one more fish to complete the fishing collection, so all we have to do is catch this new fish. Should be pretty easy, right? Wrong. I caught a salmon. I caught another salmon. I caught a tiger trout. I caught a third salmon. I caught a minau. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that last one. Hopefully it's pronounced minau anyway. I caught a butterfish. I caught basically every single fish you can catch here. I caught it. I got a bit frustrated so I went to Willie's and bought some bait, lead bobbers and dish of the seas. Then I returned to Shearwater Bridge committed to catching this new fish. Once again, I caught pretty much every fish you can catch here. And then, finally, I caught the new fish. The kitty fish. And that is the final fish we needed. We have officially completed our goal to complete the fishing collection. One goal down in our second year, two more goals left to go. Willie sends us a star drop for completing the fishing collection on day 170. Thank you, William. We are so close to being able to build the island obelisk, we just need one more banana and we're good to go. Also, I have decided to start selling any ancient fruit we harvest, and when our kegs are full, I will sell any Georgia fruit I harvest too. We do need to get 10 million gold eventually to purchase the gold clock, so I might as well get started on making progress on that now. Sophia makes us breakfast on day 171. She also wants to know if we can help her harvest the grapes in her vineyard and put them into kegs. We say yes, of course, not that I was given a choice. I basically had to agree to help her. But I would have said yes anyway, so it's all good. I make four monster musks, then I head to Sophia's home where a lovely cutscene plays. We see the process of harvesting the grapes and putting them into kegs. Afterwards, Sophia shares her family's secret grape fermentation method with us. Grapes are worth twice as much now. I was really hoping this would result in any type of wine being worth twice as much, but no. No, that's not what happened, so that was, that was disappointing. I spend the rest of the day in the mines. I've decided that I'm going to spend quite a bit of time this month trying to complete the monster eradication goals. We've already made some good progress on that whole thing, so it should only take a week or so at the most to finish it off. My first target is the slimes, which I managed to complete pretty quickly. I return to the surface and buy some bombs from the dwarf, then it's back to the mines. I complete the doggies goal near the end of the day. Day 172 is the anniversary of the car crash Sophia's parents were involved in. Anniversary isn't the right word to use here, it's, it sounds too happy, but I'm not entirely sure what else to call it. It's, it's a sad day alright, the vibes are not very good today. I was going to go to the mines to keep working on the monster eradication goals, but I decided to stay at the house all day because I don't want Sophia to be by herself today. That might be the saddest thing I've ever said. Uh, let's, let's just move on to the next day. I collect three desert warp totems and three farm warp totems from a chest on day 173. The farm warp totems make sense, but I have the desert obelisk, so I'm not entirely sure why I picked up all three of those warp totems. 
Look, my brain is fried. All right, during the last three weeks, I have written approximately 52 pages for the scripts of my Stardew Valley videos. I'm, if I'm being honest, I'm not well, all right? The good news is I finally got more bananas so I can build the island obelisk in the future. I warp to the desert and spend the rest of the day in the Skull Cavern. Just to be clear, I have been and will continue to use the monster musk while I'm working on the monster eradication goals. This is a dangerous thing to do in the Skull Cavern as it can result in you being completely swarmed by mummies and serpents. But I've got starfruit to keep my energy and health up so that makes it a bit easier. I made some decent progress on the monster eradication goals. You know, M-E-G, Meg. Alright, that's what I'm going to call the monster eradication goals from now on. I made some decent progress on the Meg today. Also, Sophia wants to have a baby. On day 174, Sophia tells us about the Zuzu City Comic Con and says she wants to go with us. It takes place in spring next year, which means no matter what happens, this playthrough is going to continue into year 3. Even if we somehow achieve perfection by the end of this year, I want to see what that Zuzu City Comic Con is all about, so we're going there, regardless. Once again, it's off to the Skull Cavern to continue working on the Meg for the rest of the day. I buy some more bombs on day 175, then I head to Ginger Island where our mango tree has finally grown and produced a mango. I toss the mango into our shipping bin, then I head to the Wizard's Tower and build the island obelisk on our farm. That is the fourth and final obelisk out of the way. In the Skull Cavern, I complete the Mummy Meg. So at this point, all I have left are rock crabs, pepper rexes, serpents, and magma sprites. One or two monster-only floors with pepper rexes should be more than enough to complete that one, so things are looking good. A notification pops up on day 176 to let us know we have unlocked the full shipment achievement. This means we have completed the shipping collection, so we only have one goal left, to reach max friendship with every villager. And I'm not really worried about that one to be honest. I have been giving birthday presents to every villager and making sure I continue to give gifts and talk to them as often as I can, so all goes well, we should complete that goal around the middle of winter, I reckon. I collect a banana and a mango from our ginger island farm and that was basically all I did today. Day 177 is spent in the volcano dungeon so I can defeat as many magma sprites as possible. Thankfully, all of the time I spent in here collecting gold and walnuts proved to be even more beneficial than I initially thought, as I managed to finish off the magma sprite goal before the end of the day. I'm not going to lie to you, literally all I did on day 178 was harvest Georgia berries and then go to sleep. Like I said before, my brain was empty at this point. All of the brain cells I had were in the shape of a starfruit. That is how much Stardew Valley content I have consumed during the last 3 weeks or so. But it's still a lot of fun, so those starfruit shaped brain cells can stay there for as long as they like. I spent some time in the forest playing with apples on day 179. As in apples the Junimo, not the... not the fruit. Then I bring a maple syrup into the secret woods and meet the bear. After that I head to the top right of the big forest. My voice just completely gave up there, let me try that one more time. After that I head to the top right of the big forest because this is where the bear's shop is located. I purchase two cooking recipes, then I head into town where Olivia is hosting a dinner with the cheese and wine I give to her as part of a special order. The good news is I gained friendship points with every villager in this cutscene. I wasn't paying too much attention, but I did see Kent there, which is good because he's one of the few villagers that I still haven't gotten to max friendship with yet. I buy a cooking recipe in Willy's, then I head to Robin's and ask her to build a new shed on her farm. This should be the final thing I have built on my farm. Aside from the gold clock, of course, but that'll happen at some point in the future. Probably during year 3, if I had to guess. I decide to spend the rest of the day putting all of the items I need for the cooking recipes into the fridge in my house. Unless I am very much mistaken, I think I have almost everything I need. I need 6 bear berries, but we can only get those in winter. I need a golden rod, which we can actually get at the summit of the mountain during this season, so I'll do that tomorrow. And I need squid ink so I'll throw a squid into one of my ponds tomorrow too. But other than that, I believe we have everything we need for the cooking recipes. On day 180, I manually remove all 10 sturgeons from my pond. I am pretty sure I could have just emptied the pond by clicking on it, but I, I, I don't have an excuse, I'm just not smart, like at all. I throw a midnight squid into the pond, purchase a cooking recipe and a golden pumpkin from Krobus, 
give him the golden pumpkin and head to the summit to collect the goldenrod flower I mentioned last night. I head to Galdora on day 181 and purchase two crafting recipes and three haste elixirs from Alicia. Next it's off to the desert to trade 10 iridium bars for the desert warp totem crafting recipe. That new shed I asked Robin to build by the way, that is where I will eventually put all of the items that are needed for the crafting recipes. There are two or three crafting recipes I still need to buy for Mr. Key, so I'll keep working away on a special orders to get the gems I need for them. As for every other crafting recipe, I think I have almost all of them, but I do know for a fact I don't have the solar panel crafting recipe. So I'm hoping Caroline gives us a special order pretty soon so we can get that crafting recipe as the reward. Honestly, I have to say I'm not sure how I feel about how close we are to achieving perfection. I didn't think I would be at the point where I was preparing to make every cooking recipe and every crafting recipe this soon. Like, I genuinely thought this would happen in summer of year 3 at the earliest, but, you know, what can you do? I'm, I'm going to make sure I still focus on our friendship goal because that is the last goal we have to complete in year 2, so... You know, if we achieve perfection on the final day of year 2, great. If not, then that's okay too. In fact, I think it's a good thing because it will give me an excuse to keep playing Stardew Valley Expanded, so it's a win-win. Alright, I'm gonna stop rambling now. Day 182 is a very boring day, so maybe I should have kept rambling, I don't know. Regardless, all I did today was harvest Georgia berries, collect Georgia berry wine, and visit Kamala and Galdora. We earned 1.5 million gold from our Georgia berries and Georgia berry wine, so that's very nice. I buy two movie tickets on day 183 and invite Krobus to the movies after giving him a pumpkin. I need to get him to 10 hearts of friendship so I can buy a cooking recipe from him. We're really close to that, so hopefully within the next few days I can get that recipe. Speaking of friendship, Apples is a bit of an interesting critter. They don't have a birthday, so we can't get three hearts by giving them a gift they love on their birthday. And I believe I mentioned before that we can't bring them to the cinema too. So all we can really do is talk to them every day and give them starfruit twice a week. I give Sandy a crocus for her birthday, then it's off to the Skull Cavern for the rest of the day where I complete the Rock Crab goal. Pretty soon afterwards, I also complete the Serpent goal. Mr. Key sends us a golden piggy bank on day 184 as a reward for earning a total of 10 million gold. I've never seen this before, so this is actually really cool. Yeah, I take that back. It turns out you can put money into the piggy bank, but you can't take it back out. It basically steals your money. What is this? Why is this a reward? It doesn't do anything good. You know, the way I see it, I have been conned, hoodwinked, bamboozled, flimflammed, had the wool pulled over my eyes even. I'm not happy about this at all. I was going to trade my jade for staircases, but the desert trader doesn't have those in their shop today, unfortunately. I use the staircases I made this morning in the hopes of getting to a monster-only floor. It doesn't work. Eventually, I get to the spiral floor that can take a while to get through, so I leave. It's off to the Stardew Valley Fair, where I set up my Grange display. Sophia wins quite a few star tokens with her Blue Moon Wine display, and I come in first place with my display. I already bought the Rare Crow and Star Drop last year, so I don't actually need these tokens. But I do like this festival, so I'm happy I came here. Well, I like this festival most of the time. If you've seen the 100 days of Stardew Valley video I made where I didn't use any mods, then you know what happened in that playthrough. It's back to the Skull Cavern on day 185. I find one Pepper Rex on floor 28, so hopefully that is a sign that good things are coming. Sure enough, that's exactly what it was as floor 41 ends up being a monster only floor. I complete the Pepper Rex Meg on this floor. And that is all of the Megs completed. I've been working away on Mr. Key's special orders, but I wanted to show the one I accepted on day 186. The mines in Pelican Town have been reset, so we need to get down to floor 120 all over again. I give a pumpkin to Krobus and a duck feather to Scarlet, then Apples pays us a visit. They invite us to a party they are throwing. The party doesn't go well, however. Apples tells us that the other Junimos aren't happy with Apples. They think Apples should not have moved into this abandoned farmhouse. This really upsets Apples. The bear was also invited to this party, but didn't show up, so that just made things worse. Apples says the party is cancelled and tells us to leave. But it turns out the bear was just late for the party because they fell asleep. Apples leaves the house and sees us talking to the bear and becomes a lot happier. 
that's good. If anyone deserves to be happy, it's apples. I spend the rest of the day in the mines getting started on Mr. Key's challenge. It goes relatively well as I make it down to floor 15. And there are monsters that drop squid ink when defeated, so that's a nice bonus. I buy some more bombs just before the day ends. The entirety of day 187 is spent in the mines. Thanks to our bombs, triple shot espressos and pizzas, we make it down to floor 52. Unfortunately, I get hit by a monster called the Putrid Ghost. When this happens, you can't eat or drink anything for 2 minutes. This is such a horrible debuff, like honestly, it basically prevents you from going any further during that time. I used staircases to get down to floor 55, then I just left the mines. Sophia gave birth to a baby boy during the night, so I decided to call him Turbulence. Day 188 is once again spent in the mines. I made it to floor 65, but again I was hit by a putrid ghost, so I can't eat anything for two more minutes. I was getting pretty frustrated at this point, but I did some research and found out that eating squid ink ravioli protects you from debuffs. So I head home, make a squid ink ravioli, wait for the nauseated debuff to go away and eat the ravioli. It works a charm and I speed run my way through the mines, making it down to floor 95. I give a rabbit's foot to Krobus on day 189 and buy the cooking recipe I needed from him. I buy even more bombs from the dwarf, drink a haste elixir and eat a miner's treat then run through the mines as fast as I can. This is the final day of Mr. Key's special order so I need to get to floor 120 today. My tactic is very simple but very effective. I use bombs to blow up as many rocks as I can to get a ladder as fast as I can. I ignore every enemy unless it's a monster only floor. As soon as my health bar turns yellow, I eat a pizza. This tactic pays off as I make it down to floor 120, completing Mr. Key's special order. From now on, we can use a shrine of floor 120 to go back to the original mines or keep them this way. The biggest benefit of keeping them this way is we can get radioactive ore. We also earn almost 1.4 million gold from the wine, Georgia berries and ancient fruit we shipped. Our bank account is looking pretty tasty right now. Krobus introduces us to other shadow figures on day 190. The leader says they no longer wish to fight us, they want peace. In order for this to happen though, we need to give Krobus 60 Void Souls. Void Souls can only be found in Galdora as far as I know, so that is exactly where I go. I buy some elixirs from Kamala, pick up the Burglar's Ring from the Adventurer's Guild and head back to Galdora. The Burglar Ring results in monsters dropping twice as much loot when defeated. My plan was to defeat monsters to get Void Souls, but it turns out they're basically a forage item too, so I can just run around the place picking them up. I reach the entrance to Castle Village, but we can't enter it because there's a barrier preventing us from going in. I'm fairly certain we'll be able to go in here the next time Stardew Valley Expanded is uh, updated though. Also, the Lightning Elixir I bought from Kamala gives us plus 8 speed. I need to buy these every time I see her. I explore the rest of the area and I find a place with a bunch of swords. Eventually I make it to a separate area with ghosts and mummies. I, I think, I'm not entirely sure what they are to be honest. Then I get knocked out. Oof. I only lost 4 items which isn't too bad. I did lose 2 void souls which isn't exactly the best news but I can ask Marilyn to recover them so it's all good. I also buy 5 gravity elixirs from Kamala. They basically increase our pickup range for items by a lot, so if we go back through the Skull Cavern again, they'll come in handy. I have made a discovery on day 191. Sophia has decided to place a chair in this room. Honestly though, it doesn't look bad at all. It just needs to be maneuvered into a different place. Now it looks perfect. I buy Pierre's missing stock list for Mr. Key and accept a special order to ship 100,000 gold worth of freshly cooked items. The rest of the day is spent fishing to catch fish for a special order Willy gave us. He wants us to catch 5 lionfish, 5 blue discus and 5 stingray. I begin day 192 by trying to catch the remaining lionfish I need. After catching 4 fish that were not lionfish, I leave Ginger Island. I head to Galdora where I purchased the hero elixir crafting recipe, 3 hero elixirs and the tempered galaxy sword and galaxy hammer. I spent over 1 million gold on these items, but I like shiny purple things so it had to be done. I spent some time running around collecting void souls. Also, the hero elixir is one of the best items I've ever used. 
I take significantly less damage after drinking it. After collecting 12 Void Souls, I leave and head to the Adventurers Guild where I ask Marlin to recover the two Void Souls I lost a couple of days ago. I give Pierre's missing stock list to Pierre and I purchase 250 Fairy Seeds. Again, I just, I like shiny purple things. The rest of the day is spent completing Willy's special order to catch those fish. On day 193, I decide to make all of the cooking recipes I can. At this point, I believe all I need to cook is the recipe that requires 6 beer berries. And the remaining recipes I can get by watching the Queen of Sauce TV show every Sunday. So unless I have made a massive mistake, or make a massive mistake in the future, we should have every recipe cooked on the final day of winter. I head to Galdora again, Alicia was there so I bought the elixir she was selling. Then I ran around the place collecting void souls. Eventually I come across a big long serpent looking monster. I initially ran away but then I decided that I need to prove just how powerful I am. I give it my all, putting every ounce of passion and courage I have into this battle. Then I got scared and left without defeating it. That was, uh, uh, that was, that was a bit of a humbling experience I must say. I buy 669 coffees in the saloon, give a rabbit's foot to Scarlet while she's walking through a wall, turn the coffees I bought into triple shot espressos and toss them into the shipping bin to complete Mr. Key's special order. I head to Robbins on day 194 and buy two stacks of wood and two stacks of stone. Then I head to Piers and buy tulip, jazz, poppy and spangle seeds. I've decided to start putting every item we need for the crafting recipes into the shed. I only need to buy one or two more crafting recipes for Mr. Key so we should have them around the end of the first week of winter. I still need to get the crafting recipe for the solar panel though so who knows how long it's going to take before we get that. I head to the bear shop and buy all of the honey, oak resin, pine tar and maple syrup that's being sold. I'm not taking any chances, I'm making sure I have absolutely everything I need for every crafting recipe. Day 195 is spoop day according to Sophia. Yeah, basically the Spirits E Festival takes place tonight. I wanted to buy garlic seeds and pears because I need 10 garlic for a crafting recipe but I can't go into town because the Spirits E Festival is being set up. So I toss the 3 garlic I have into seed makers and receive 5 garlic seeds. That is not enough unfortunately. I head to the Spirits E Festival where I make my way through the maze. This was difficult. Like actually difficult. It took a while but I finally made it to the end. Leo was already there. He spent so long in the jungle on Ginger Island that this maze was a walk in the park for him. The reward for reaching the end of this maze is 3 golden pumpkins. The bad news is I had to make my way back out of the maze after that. This was just as if not more difficult than making my way through the maze in the first place. I purchase 25 garlic seeds on day 196. I also buy 30 deluxe speed grow. I give Susan an ice cream for her birthday and plant the garlic seeds on Ginger Island. I already had speed grow planted here so there was no need to use the 30 speed grow I bought earlier. And that is pretty much the end of fall. I think it's safe to say we're in the end game now. All we need to do to achieve perfection is get 10 million gold so we can get the gold clock, reach max friendship with 5 or 6 more villagers, cook 4 or 5 more dishes and craft every item. We will definitely complete the cooking one and realistically we should be able to complete the friendship goal by the end of winter. When it comes to the crafting recipes, I have a feeling we're going to be in a position where we end up waiting 2 or 3 seasons for Caroline to give us a special order so we can get the solar panel recipe. I hope that doesn't happen, but I have mentally prepared myself for it. Alright, I'm prepared for the worst, as always. But as long as we keep selling our wine and Georgia berries, we should reach 10 million gold around the end of spring, I reckon. Any whomst, I will see you in winter. I have some bad news on day 197. Our Georgia berries cannot continue growing in winter so we have to say goodbye to them. I also want to give you all an update on our friendship goal. We are doing pretty well I would say. Susan and Kent are at 9 hearts, Scarlet and Martin are at 8 hearts, Apples is at 7 hearts and Gunther is at 6 hearts. But Gunther's birthday is on day 12 of winter so we can get around 3 hearts of friendship with him on that day. So things are looking really good in terms of our friendship goal. 
I head to the summit to collect beer berries, but then I realized they don't appear here. I give Scarlet a present, give Gunther a present, and give Kent a present and invite him to the cinema. Also, some incredible news, we have a special order from Caroline. This is fantastic. I was so worried we'd be waiting ages for this to show up, so I'm really happy about this. I need to ship 100 pineapples for this special order. I watch a movie with Kent, then I head to the secret woods where I pick up a beer berry. Then I realize you can dig up beer berries from artifact spots. We are having incredible luck today as I managed to dig up 5 beer berries. Add those to the one I collected at the beginning and we've got the 6 we need for the cooking recipe. I head back to my farm where I collect 1 pineapple seed from my miscellaneous seeds chest. But I also collect 19 more pineapple seeds from my ginger island items chest. I make my way to the island trader and exchange all of my magma caps for 18 more pineapple seeds. I plant these seeds with the Lux Speed Grow and I accept the Prismatic Range Display order from Mr. Key before the day ends. I cook the mixed berry pie on day 198. Gunther sends us a special gem that was found in Galdora as a way of thanking us for completing the museum collection. I donate a bunch of items to Mr. Key but we still have not finished his order. We need green items, blue items and two more red items. Our garlic is ready for harvest though so that's pretty nice. I head to Sandy shop and buy a full stack of starfruit seeds, purchase 100 fiber and robin shop, 2 spaghettis and 100 joja colas and a saloon. I make another stop in Piers to buy 500 deluxe speed grow then I donate the fiber, spaghettis and joja colas I bought to complete Mr. Key's special order. I plant our starfruit seeds to end the day. On day 199 I do something I should have done last season. I head to the sewer so I can change the farming perks I picked. When I go to sleep tonight I will choose the perk that gives us a 40% bonus to the gold we earn from selling wine. I give a present to Susan, then a present to Scarlet, then a present to Gunther. I'm not taking any chances with that friendship goal, I need to complete it. Like I said, at the end of the day I choose the perk that gives us a bonus to the gold we earn from selling wine. On day 200 I decide to start selling off some of the items I have. I throw some artisan goods and animal products into the shipping bin, then some more artisan goods. I head to the saloon and throw a duck mayonnaise into a box to get the pinky lemon statue. Then I throw a strange bun into the toy box in Vincent's room to get the Forogimon statue. It took me a while but I eventually found the final box and exchanged a super cucumber for the HMTGF statue. And by found, I mean I looked on Reddit and found a post where someone explained where the final box is. Alright, so I need to make a bit of a change to the format of this video. At this point, there's not much I can do every day, so I'm going to explain what I did each week instead of each day for the rest of winter. So for the remainder of days 197 through 203, I give apples a starfruit, collect void souls and Galdora. Learn how to cook a poppy seed muffin, make a poppy seed muffin, and give presents to Susan, Scarlet, and Gunther. I also collect around 400 Georgia Berry wine and fill our kegs with Georgia Berries. I won't be selling this wine yet though. I'm going to wait until the end of winter to sell all of the Georgia Berry wine I have. Days 204 through 210 are spent at the ice festival. I talk to the villagers and I participate in the fishing competition without actually participating in the fishing competition. I'm sure you all know how I feel about this competition by now. I harvest our first batch of pineapples along with the starfruit that has grown and give Gunther a birthday present. I learn how to make lobster bisque, actually no I don't, I already knew how to make it, never mind. I collect our Georgia Berry wine and refill the kegs with Georgia Berries. Days 211 through 217 are spent giving starfruit to apples, watching a cutscene where apples plays with a Junimo called Peaches, giving Martin a golden pumpkin, Harvesting our second batch of pineapples. Actually, I should probably mention now that I think about it. Uh, pineapple seeds are similar to strawberry seeds in the sense that they keep producing pineapples after you harvest them for the first time. You don't have to replant them or anything like that. I give a starfruit to apples, pushing them up to 10 hearts. And with that, we have finally achieved full friendship with every character. It took slightly longer than I was hoping, but I'm just glad that's out of the way. All I need to do now to achieve perfection is cook the last two recipes, craft all of the items, and get the gold clock. That sounds like a lot, but I did a good bit of preparation work, so hopefully we'll get those three things done pretty soon. 
I learn how to cook bruschetta and I of course make a bruschetta. Once again, I collect the Georgia Berry wine from our shed and refill our kegs. I visit Krobus and give him the 60 void souls the shadow figure leader asked for. During days 218 through 224, I harvest our third batch of pineapples. I throw all of these pineapples into the shipping bin, completing Caroline's special order. Caroline then sends us the crafting recipe for the solar panel in the mail. And that is the final crafting recipe I needed. I head to the Feast of the Winter Star Festival where I talk to the villagers, give an amethyst to Emily and receive a geode from Vincent. Krobus pays us a visit and asks us to come to the mines with him. A cutscene plays in the mines where we see the shadow figures using the void souls to bring back the shadow figures who we took out in the mines. I I'm not gonna lie, and I kinda don't wanna say this, but I'm gonna be honest with you. You're going to need a bit more than 60 void souls to do that. I reckon you need at least 200 of them if you're going to bring back all of the shadow figures I defeated. My bad, I, I didn't know this would be a thing. I'm happy you got your uh, friends and family back though, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. I head into our crafting shed and begin crafting all of the items. I managed to make almost every item, but I ran out of iridium bars, so I need to wait until they finish smelting. After collecting the iridium bars, I craft the iridium band ring. And with that, we have crafted every item in the game. I'm so glad that's over with. It's honestly nerve-wracking going through that because I'm always terrified I'm missing an item I can only get in like spring or something like that. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad that's over. I learn how to make shrimp cocktail. I go to cook it, but I'm missing a horseradish, so I run to my shed and collect one. Then I cook the shrimp cocktail, which thankfully is the last cooking recipe I needed to make. We are now a certified gourmet chef. I collect my Georgia Berry wine and refill the kegs with Georgia Berries, as you probably guessed. Then I throw all of my Georgia wines, starfruit, ancient fruit, Georgia Berries, bananas, and mangoes into the shipping bin. And that is the end of winter. I'm sorry about changing the format and going by week instead of by day, but I was genuinely running out of things to talk about. We did achieve all three of the goals we set for year two though, so I think this was a pretty successful year. All I need to do to achieve perfection is get the gold clock, so hopefully we'll have enough gold to do that by the end of the first week of spring in year three. In fact, let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into spring. Grandpa visits us on day 225. Well, not Grandpa himself, but like Grandpa's uh, spirit. I don't know how to explain. Anyways, Grandpa is very pleased with the progress we have made on the farm. We receive four candles, which is basically his way of saying, Ah, uh, yeah, good stuff, baby. I decide to start throwing some of the items in our storage shed into the shipping bin. We still need around 1.2 million gold for the gold clock, so I just really want to get that done at this point. I basically threw at least half of our gems, our forage items, artisan goods, animal products and crops into the shipping bin today. This gave us over 900,000 gold. That's good, but it's not enough. Day 226 is Comic Con Day. We meet Sophia and Scarlett at the bus stop and head to Zuzu City. Honestly, the environment in this cutscene is really cool. Like, I'm honestly tempted to use some of the screenshots I took as uh, wallpaper. We head to the convention, and honestly, this is, yeah, this is already my favorite cutscene in the entire game. I can't even imagine how much effort went into this entire cutscene. I mean, it is Sophia's 14 heart event, so it makes sense, but still, it's really cool. Scarlet goes off to get an autograph from somebody called Dubious Cherry, so I explore the convention with Sophia. First, we go to the food court, where there's a restaurant called Burger Queen. I like that. Next we head to the courtyard where Sophia takes a picture of the fairy cosplayer. Up next is a visit to the shop area where Sophia buys a fairy stone for 2000 gold. That might seem like a lot of gold, but keep in mind, both of us basically own two vineyards, so we're kinda rich, you know. We've got so much money that we literally don't know what to do with it. At the end of the convention, Sophia performs her little Journey of the Prairie King skit. We don't actually get to see it though, which is unfortunate, but this is still my favorite cutscene in the game. That whole thing was really cool. The wizard pays us a visit on day 227. He lets us know that somebody new is coming into Pelican Town tomorrow. Neat. Once again, I throw a ton of items into the shipping bin. 
We received just over 320,000 gold for these items, which is very good because around 90% of the items in our storage shed have gone into the shipping bin during the last two days, so that was all I had pretty much. I head to the wizard's tower on day 228 and meet the new character. Morgan is their name. They are the wizard's new apprentice. I thought I was the wizard's apprentice, but it's it's cool, it's it's fine, I don't, I'm, I don't care, it's whatever. I finally purchased the gold clock and place it right beside Grandpa's shrine. Because we have basically achieved perfection, I think it's time to show a picture of my farm. Because we're on the forest farm, I tried to keep the whole forest vibe going. So rather than a bunch of floorboards, I just used grass, trees and stone pathways to decorate the farm. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Now, I have a very special request to make. Please put yourself in my shoes for a moment. Imagine you have just spent the last 228 days putting every ounce of effort, passion, dedication and love into this playthrough. You have crafted every item, you've caught every fish, you've collected every star drop, you've shipped every item, you've cooked every meal and collected every golden walnut, you've spent hours on end giving gifts to the villagers and speaking to them, you've explored every inch of Stardew Valley and Ginger Island. You finally purchase the gold clock. You run to Mr. Key's walnut room expecting to be told you have achieved perfection, but instead you find out that you've only achieved 99% completion, because at the very last minute a new character arrived at Pelican Town. Yeah, we need to get Morgan to 10 hearts. Uh, I thought I was finished, I thought this playthrough was over. Alright, let's just, let's just get this out of the way. Days 229 through 259 are spent getting Morgan to 10 hearts. On the first day of this new adventure, I give Morgan a void mayonnaise and invite them to the cinema. There is a silver lining to this though. Your friendship with a villager stops decaying when you reach maximum hearts with them. So because we've maxed out our friendship with every other villager, we can focus completely on Morgan without losing friendship with anybody else. We can just talk to Morgan every day, bring them to the cinema once a week and buy them food they love there, and give them two gifts a week. The rest of each day will be spent sleeping to speed up the process. We do need to make sure we talk to Sophia every day though, because if you're married to someone, then their friendship will still decay even if you've reached maximum hearts with them. But that's not really a big deal. After just one day of giving Morgan a void mayonnaise, inviting them to the cinema and buying them food they love, they are already at one heart, so this shouldn't take too long. And Morgan arriving on a Friday works out very well because we can give them a gift today and on Saturday. Then the whole gift mechanic thing resets on Sunday so we can give them avoid mayonnaise on Sunday and Monday too. That's four days in a row where we can give them gifts. Also, because we're focusing exclusively on Morgan right now, I'm going to do something I have only done for Sophia and show all of Morgan's cutscenes. In their two heart cutscene, Morgan does an impression of the wizard. Something nice about Morgan's cutscenes is you can choose from different dialogue lines. If you basically say something nice, you get bonus friendship points, so that makes things even easier for us. In Morgan's four heart cutscene, we play hide and seek with them, Vincent and Jazz in the forest. We can see where Morgan is hiding, but we pretend not to see them. I did that because I'm just a very good person, you know, I'm just so nice. And we get bonus friendship points for doing that, so I kind of had to do it. Um, anyway. In Morgan's six heart cutscene, they tell us that sometimes they feel lonely here. It wasn't their choice to move to the wizard's tower and be his apprentice. The magic council basically decided that it had to be done because they believed Morgan had a special gift when it comes to magic. We tell Morgan they will be important to many people in the future, which cheers them up. In Morgan's eight heart cutscene, we show the wizard that we're able to turn an iron bar into a gold bar. This impressed the wizard. It also gives Morgan the motivation they needed to be able to do it themselves. Honestly, at this point, I'm, oh, I've said honestly so many times. Anyway, at this point, I'm actually glad we ended up having to get Morgan to 10 hearts. They're actually a really cool character. Thanks to our Silver Star Void Eggs, choosing the nice dialogue options and bringing them to the cinema and getting them the food they love, Morgan is at 9 hearts on the first day of summer. Also, Sophia wants to have another baby. One last Void Egg pushes Morgan up to 10 hearts on the seventh day of summer. Morgan drops by our house and tells us the wizard is giving them an important test in the forest today. They say they would like for us to be there. 
then they tried to teleport away, but they messed it up the first time. It was actually pretty funny, I'm not gonna lie. They do it successfully on the second attempt, though. I head to the forest where Morgan's Ten Heart cutscene plays. Morgan seems to have some special bond with the animals in the forest as different animals approach them. The wizard says that Morgan has passed the test. You know what, this was actually a really nice way to end the playthrough. I'm glad Morgan arrived in Stardew Valley. I head to Mr. Key's walnut room where the perfection tracker now says we have achieved 100% completion. This feels pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. On day 260, I make my way to the summit where Sophia is waiting. The final cutscene of the game plays. This is officially the end of her playthrough. I I'm feeling a bit emotional right now if I'm being honest. I have grown slightly attached to a few of the Stardew Valley Expanded characters, so it's going to feel weird not having them in the game in any future playthroughs. But this was really fun. I didn't achieve perfection in Stardew Valley Expanded when I played it around a year ago, so this is the first time I've actually made it all the way to the end. I do want to address something really quickly though. The Better Mixed Seeds mod basically carried me throughout this whole thing. Like, I, I did not realize how good that mod is. I did a bit of research and it turns out you can only unlock Georgia Berry seeds if you complete the Georgia route and reach 10 hearts with Morris. This seed itself also costs 6,500 gold, so I, I don't think we were supposed to have two greenhouses and two farms full of them during year two, but hey, what can you do? We just, we used it to our advantage. It is what it is. Other than that, I'm feeling kind of proud of myself for actually finishing this playthrough. With the expanded playthrough finished, let us now turn our attention to the loot boxes playthrough. Just to explain the whole loot boxes thing first, I am using a mod called Overworld Chess to add chess, or loot boxes, to the game. What this mod does is it spawns random loot boxes throughout the world of Stardew Valley. These loot boxes contain cooked dishes, fish, seeds, basically any item you can get in the game. These loot boxes will spawn in on the first day, then seven days later, a new batch of loot boxes will spawn in. This whole process repeats over and over again. Just like the Stardew Valley Expanded playthrough, I am using three other mods alongside the loot boxes mod. The first is the Mail Services mod. This mod allows us to send gifts to the villagers, send our tools to Clint to be upgraded, and send quest items to villagers using our mailbox. The second is the Part of the Community mod. Basically, this mod rewards us with bonus friendship points for doing certain things. This includes shipping an item, talking to a villager in front of other villagers, and giving gifts. Finally, we have the Automate mod. This mod makes it so if we place a chest beside a machine, it will take the relevant contents of that chest and place them inside the machine. For example, if we put a chest beside a furnace and put copper ore and coal into that chest, the ore and coal will automatically be placed into the furnace. The resulting copper bar will then automatically be placed into the chest. These mods will undoubtedly make the game so much easier, which means we need to set some pretty difficult goals for the first year. These goals are the following. Number one, complete the museum collection. Number two, complete the shipping collection. Number three, complete the fishing collection. And number four, achieve maximum friendship with every villager. This does not include Kent, as he only appears in year two. This does, however, include Leo, which means we really need to get the community center finished and unlock Ginger Island as soon as we can. At the end of the first year, I will come up with the goals for us to achieve during year two. Without any further ado, let us get started with day one of this adventure. Alright, day one of our adventure. I begin by clearing out some space on the farm, planting my parsnip seeds, and making a chest. The usual stuff, basically. But now, now things get exciting because it's time to open our first loot box. We get cranberries, two summer seeds, and a weapon we can use in the mines. Not a bad start at all. In our second loot box, we get an artifact, pickles, a horseradish, and amaranth seeds. I donate the artifact to the museum and receive 250 gold as a reward. Something I want to do as soon as I can is buy the backpack upgrade. Otherwise, I'm going to have to throw some items into the trash can. Or go back to the farm and put my items into a chest, which is going to take quite a bit of time. I donate another artifact and continue opening up the loot boxes in the main town area. We're mainly getting seeds and artifacts. 
We do get a lightning rod and the blackberry cobbler dish, which is really nice. I introduce myself to some of the villagers before heading back to the farm and emptying my inventory into a chest. I head to the beach where I find another loot box. I almost forgot about the beach, so I'm glad I went there because I got an artifact from that loot box. Next, it's time to visit the forest. I assume this is going to be the area where we find the most amount of loot boxes because of how big and open the area is. While this is very good, it does also mean that we're going to have to make multiple trips to the farm to empty our inventory in between opening all of these loot boxes. I have to say, finding a loot box makes me feel an unparalleled level of excitement. Like, I can't even describe how fun it is opening these up and seeing what's inside. And the fact that each chest gives us a bit of gold is a really nice bonus too. We're also getting quite a few items we need for the community center. Hopefully this will lead to us completing the community center around the beginning of fall if we're lucky. One thing that could potentially have a negative impact on us in the future though is the amount of time I spend looking for these loot boxes, collecting the items, emptying my inventory, yada yada yada. It's not too bad right now because there aren't many other things we can do this early in the game. But when the second week of spring begins, it might result in us having less time to go fishing or go to the mines or things like that. But anyway, I would say that was a very successful first day. I'm happy with how that went. Day 2 begins with a letter from Lewis. He tells us about the town's mail service. This is basically a way of introducing the mail service mod to the game. So now we can use our mailbox to send gifts to the villagers, complete quests, and ask Clint to upgrade our tools. Also, a little theory I have about the loot boxes. There are areas that we can't reach yet where loot boxes can spawn in. So I'm assuming that if we don't open these on the day they all spawn in, or if we miss any other loot boxes, they will spawn in different locations the following day. And maybe that will repeat until we found every loot box that appeared on the first day. We receive a void salmon and three artifacts from the first loot box we open. That is a lovely start. A green bean seed and another artifact are collected from the second loot box. Yeah, I think my theory about the loot boxes respawning if we don't find them is correct because there's more loot boxes in the town center now. Marnie would like us to give her a bream. That should be a really easy quest to complete. I head into Piers and buy the backpack upgrade. This is an absolute game changer. Okay, no. No, it isn't actually a game changer. But it does mean we won't have to go back to the farm and empty your inventory as much, which is nice. I introduce myself to more villagers, taking advantage of the part of the community mod. I donate my artifacts to the museum, then I visit Willy and receive the fishing rod. Like I said yesterday though, we are in a bit of a predicament now because we have to choose between continuing to search for loot boxes or using the rest of the day to fish. I decide to continue opening loot boxes and I am so glad I did because I found an ancient seed. This is a really good find. Once it grows, I'm going to get a seed maker and put it into it so we can get started on getting a ton of ancient seeds as soon as possible. I do a foraging run, then I open a loot box containing an artifact and a trout soup. Sweet. We also get a taro tuber, which you can ordinarily only get on Ginger Island. So that makes me wonder if we can get things like pineapples, bananas and mangoes too. Also, I have said loot box so many times already. I'm going to keep saying it for now, but if I feel like I'm saying it too much, then I'll use a different word or just not say anything. I, I don't know, I'll figure it out somehow, maybe. Back on the farm, I plant my green bean, cauliflower and potato seed. I'm not going to plant the ancient seed until I get a scarecrow though. I don't want to risk losing it. Finally, the rest of the day is spent fishing. I do want to catch the legend fish during spring, so fishing is going to be sort of a big part of spring. I begin day 3 by collecting some forage at the bus stop. Two reasons for this. Number 1, they can be used as gifts for the villagers. And number 2, we need them for the community center. I do another foraging run at the beach, then I find a sneaky little loot box that was hiding behind a tree. I receive cheese, which is good. That can be donated to the community center. I wanted to go into Piers, but of course his shop is closed. Because it is Wednesday. I really... Really wish his shop was open on Wednesdays at the beginning of the game. It's actually heartbreaking not being able to go in there. I chop down some trees and use my mailbox to give Marnie the bream she requested. Once again, the rest of the day is spent fishing. Also, I'm going to hold off on selling any fish I catch for a while. We don't really need the money right now. And I would like to save quite a few fish until we reach level 5 in fishing. 
That way we earn 25% more gold on the sale of fish. On day 4, I already really, really want to get sprinklers. I have a love-hate relationship with watering crops. It can be relaxing and I do enjoy it sometimes, but then other times it's a bit of an inconvenience to be honest. Clint wants us to bring him 20 copper ore so he can inspect them. The mines open up tomorrow so we can get that done then. I donate several artifacts to the museum and I must say, so far my favorite part of the whole loot boxes aspect is finding artifacts. It's going to make completing the museum collection so much easier. Hopefully. I will be so upset if I just jinxed it and it ends up taking me ages to donate everything to the museum. Also, for the first time in quite a while, I am actually collecting the rewards from the museum as they pop up. I already picked up the cauliflower seeds and now it is time to collect our melon seeds. I sell these melon seeds and the blackberry cobbler dish to Pierre and purchase 54 potato seeds. It's back to the farm to plant all of these seeds, then as you may have guessed, the rest of the day is spent fishing. I'm really trying to power through those fishing levels as fast as I can. Marnie shows up on our farm on day 5 and gives us the option to adopt a dog. I of course accept this offer and call the dog Jaden. While our new dog makes himself at home, I harvest the parsnips that have grown. I watch the cutscene where Lewis shows us the community center and take a look at the scroll inside the building which I cannot read yet. Then I head to the mines. I've got parsnips and chubs with me for energy and I have that weapon we found on the first day. And I already purchased the backpack upgrade so the first few floors were easy peasy lemon squeezy bro chachos. I'm, I'm, I'm never saying bro chacho again. Or maybe I will, I don't know at this point. Sometimes my own brain confuses me. Anyway, I continue breezing my way through the mines. I've also been making sure to return to the surface and put copper ore and coal into the chest beside the furnace. Because we are using the automate mod, the furnace will automatically smelt these ores and place copper bars into the chest. Floor 22 ends up being a monster only floor. Normally these are absolutely vile at the start of the game, but our weapon makes easy work of all of the enemies. I make it down to floor 25 before I decide to leave the mines. I do have some bad news to end the day with unfortunately though. We cannot use the mailbox to complete Clint's quest. We actually have to show him the copper ore in person. So we failed that quest basically, we didn't get it done on time, we can't do it. I chop down some trees before I go to sleep. I can already tell we're going to be making a lot of chests for the items we find, so getting wood is very important right now. I visit the wizard on day 6 and learn how to read the scroll that was in the community center. Sweet. Now we can start donating items. And boy oh boy do we have a lot of items to donate. I donate some minerals to the museum, collect some items from a chest and head to the community center where I complete the spring foraging bundle. I receive 30 spring seeds as a reward. I donate the rest of the items in my inventory to the various bundles, head home and collect more items and plant my spring seeds. Then it's back to the community center. It feels... So good being able to donate this many items this early in the game. I'm actually really excited to see how soon we can get the community center finished thanks to our loot boxes. More fishing is on the horizon as I continue trying to speed run my way to fishing level 9. Thankfully I do reach level 5 in fishing by the end of the day so I throw some of my fish and other items into the shipping bin to earn some gold. I send my pickaxe and 5 copper bars to Clint on day 7 using the mailbox so he can upgrade it. Just to be clear, I still have to pay the 2000 gold to have it upgraded. Also, I have some absolutely horrendous news. I have to water every single seed I have planted. But it's okay. This is still relaxing. Sort of. Okay, no, I'm lying. I'm struggling a lot. I'm actually in tremendous emotional pain. Anyway, I take a look at the traveling cart and I don't buy anything, so that would have been a waste of time. But, you know, they say greatness is a journey, not a destination. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's move on. The beautiful thing about the mailbox is it tells us if someone's birthday is today. So I send a parsnip to Lewis as a birthday gift. I also decide to take a risk and plant my ancient seed. I'll be honest, I am relying entirely on luck to protect that ancient seed until I make a scarecrow, so hopefully everything ends up being okay. I donate two items to the museum, then it's another day, another fishing session. I won't lie, I was already getting bored of fishing by this point, but I persevered. I can be extremely dedicated when I want to be. And this, 
this is one of those situations in which I give all of me. Yeah, basically I spent the whole day fishing. Day 8 is a rainy day which is very good for us. It means we don't have to spend the morning watering our crops. I send Sam a Georgia Cola in the mail. I'm going to use the mailbox as often as I can because I would love it if I could reach maximum friendship with every villager before the end of winter. I also give George a leak in person instead of using the mailbox. See? I'm not completely relying on that mod. I I'm, just, I'm just relying on it quite a bit. I spend all of my gold on more potato seeds, find the lost book, which always makes me feel just so incredibly happy, and plant the potato seeds. I think you all know the drill by now. We still haven't gotten our pickaxe back, so I spend the rest of the day fishing. But the good news is, this gave us the chance to catch some catfish, which are worth around 250 gold after we reached level 5 in fishing. Clint sends us our copper pickaxe on day 9. Perfect, now we can finally resume our adventures in the mines. I send George a leak and then I realize there's water dripping out of my mailbox. I guess my mailbox is leaking. Do you, do you, do you get it? Like, like, like leaking? Because, because there's a leak in, inside it, like the forage? Um, uh, some absolutely marvelous news as the loot boxes have spawned in again. I get a duck egg in the first one. Nice. I pick up a deluxe scarecrow in the second one. That is even nicer. Now our ancient seed will be safe. Normally you have to collect every rare crow in the game to unlock the deluxe scarecrow crafting recipe, so this was a really nice find. Something unfortunate did happen though. There is a chest in Marnie's ranch that we cannot get to. That is actually heartbreaking. For the most part, we continue finding forage items, crops and artifacts in the loot boxes. Which I can't really complain about. We can donate the artifacts to the museum and the crops and forage items to the community center, so this is really helping us out. One thing I am sort of nervous about is when we complete the community center and the museum, those items won't be of much use to us. But at the same time, they could still be used as gifts, so it might not be too big a deal. We'll see what happens. I donate some items to the community center, purchase the spring seeds I haven't planted yet, and 75 parsnip seeds. We need 5 gold star parsnips for the community center, so I want to get those as soon as possible. I plant my seeds, then I go searching for more loot. I find garlic seeds, which is another good find. You can't purchase garlic seeds from Pierre during the first year, so we got lucky with this one. We find a large milk, which can be donated to the community center, then I head to the saloon to use the part of the community mod to my advantage. I talk to all of the villagers in there, earning some tasty bonus friendship points. I head home and plant my ancient seed and garlic seed, then I complete the crab pot bundle in the community center for which I receive three crab pots. Finally, we are in dire need of some gold, so I throw some items into the shipping bin. On day 10, I watch a rerun of the Queen of Sauce TV show and learn how to make stir fry. From now on, I'm going to make sure I watch the show every Sunday so I don't miss any cooking recipes. Our potatoes are ready for harvest, which is simply delightful. What is not simply delightful is that I have to water the rest of the crops. I head to Piers. Oop, no, I don't. Never mind. I goofed. I am a certified goofy goober. I place my three crab pots at the river and place a chest beside them. I put bait into those chests so the bait will automatically be placed into the crab pots. Then it is off to the mines. I find myself on the dark floors, which, as some of you may know from watching my previous videos, I absolutely despise these floors. Luckily, I have a glow ring equipped, so it's not too bad. But going through these floors without a source of light is like fighting a dragon with a plastic fork. It's just not a good time. I eventually make my way to floor 41, where I call it a day. I am straight up not having a good time on day 11 as I water all of my seeds. The relaxing aspect of this activity has gone out the window. Slowly but surely, I am being defeated by a field of crops. It's off to the community center to donate some more items. Right now, my main focus is completing the boiler room so we can unlock the minecart system. So, it's off to the mines for the rest of the day. I make it down to floor 55 before I leave. I throw some items into the shipping bin which earned us almost 4,000 gold. It's off to the traveling cart on day 12 where I purchase a large egg, a coconut, red cabbage seeds and an artichoke. I donate some items to the museum, then I make a heartbreaking discovery. 
The chest beside our crab pots at the river is gone. This hurts. This really, really hurts. I make a few donations to the community center, resulting in us being one item away from completing the boiler room. All I need to do now is donate a gold bar. I return to the traveling cart to purchase a cauliflower. Truth be told, I do not know why I did that. I purchase five salads in the saloon, and I also have an answer as to why I bought the cauliflower. I wanted to donate it to the community center and complete the spring crops bundle. I received 20 speed grow for this. My plan is to use this speed grow on the strawberry seeds I'll buy in a couple of days so they grow quicker. Also, it is finally time to make some sprinklers. We can only make basic sprinklers at this point, but it's something at least. Because it is raining, I decide to spend the rest of the day fishing. Mainly for catfish because I want to get a bit more gold, but also to work on our fishing level. Our parsnips are ready for harvest on day 13. I also collect some unmilled rice that has grown. I place the sprinklers I crafted, then it's off to the town square for the egg festival. I purchase 33 strawberry seeds and use this as an opportunity to introduce myself to the remaining villagers. Now that we have talked to them all, all of their names are unlocked in the mail system so we can send everybody gifts. Next, it is time for the egg hunt. For this section, I would like to quote the man, the myth, the used car salesman, Paul Heyman, in order to describe exactly how I felt going into this competition. I have altered the quote slightly to make it more relevant to myself, but the point remains the same. I need to show up at the egg festival and be a neon Aries like never before. The greatest performance in the history of Neon Aries' Stardew Valley career. The most determined, the most ruthless, the most focused, a beast slayer, a conqueror of conquerors, the goat of all goats. So that they say at the end of the egg hunt, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between, your winner, the ultimate scallywag, the number one rapscallion, the reigning, defending, undisputed egg hunt champion, Neon Aries. This quote played on a loop in my mind during the egg hunt. And at the end of the egg hunt, I was indeed announced as the winner. I receive my beloved straw hat as a reward for winning. I make some more sprinklers and plant my strawberry seeds with speed grow. I also plant some spring seeds I made before the day ends. Our potatoes are ready for harvest on day 14. Also, real quick, I made a goof. If I was a McDonald's item, I would be the McGoofer on this day. I did not notice that the recaller mod I was using stopped working, so for the next couple of days the graphics will look slightly different. I do eventually realize my mistake and get the recaller mod working again though. I sell the potatoes and some forage items to Pierre and purchase another 100 parsnips. There are two reasons for this. Number one, I still need to reach level 6 in farming to unlock the quality sprinkler crafting recipe. Number two, I need one more gold star parsnip for the community center. Demetrius pays a visit to the farm and sets up the fruit bat cave on her farm. I send a salad to Haley for her birthday, then I plant and water most of my parsnip seeds. I head to the traveling cart where I briefly consider buying a rare seed, but I decide to hold off on it. I'm sure we'll have plenty of opportunities to buy one in the future. I spend the rest of the day in the mines. I donate a ghost fish and a fiddlehead fern to the community center on day 15. Then, once again, I spend the day in the mines. I really wanted to get to floor 80 as soon as possible so I could get gold ore, make a gold bar, donate it to the community center, and unlock the minecart system. Day 16 is the beginning of something beautiful. I just noticed salmon berries are growing on bushes, so that's going to be a great source of energy for us for the remainder of spring. I head into town and open my first loot box. I get kale seeds and a mayonnaise machine. Our second loot box contains a seed, a cheese press, a sword, and boots. Also, I'm not entirely sure how to approach describing the loot boxes at this point. Part of me wants to list every item I get, another part of me wants to only mention the rare items or anything cool we find, and another part of me wants to play footage of me opening each loot box while I ramble about something basically. If any of you have any ideas on which one I should do, or if you have an idea of your own, I would really appreciate the feedback on this. Also, it happened again. A loot box appeared in the ravine, so I can't get to it. That was very upsetting. Back on the farm, I empty my inventory into a chest and open another loot box. 
It contains a mineral which I can donate to the museum and a sunflower which I can donate to the community center. Marvelous. I make my way through the forest, collecting salmon berries and opening loot boxes. I also pick up Robin's lost axe while I'm there. It's back to watering a field full of crops on day 17. This will all be worth it when I unlock the crafting recipe for quality sprinklers. I used the mailbox to have Clint upgrade my pickaxe, then I spent some time sending gifts to the villagers. I purchase five coffees in the saloon, then I finally donate a gold bar to the community center. With that, the boiler room has been completed. One room down, five rooms left to go. I spend the rest of the day fishing. I've caught almost every fish that is exclusive to spring, I just needed to catch a couple more at the beach. So now at this point, the only spring fish we need to catch is the legend. Day 18 is parsnip harvest day which I am really excited about. I send a gold star parsnip to Pam for her birthday and sell almost all of them to Pierre. But I do make sure I keep 5 gold star parsnips for the community center. I purchase 5 blue jazz, kale and tulip seeds along with 111 potato seeds. I donate the parsnips and as is becoming tradition, I spend the rest of the day fishing. Clinty Winty sends us her pickaxe on day 19. I plant and water all of the seeds I bought yesterday which I'm very happy about but it also wiped out our energy. So instead of heading to the mines, I decide to go fishing again. I am so very glad I learned to love fishing again during my last playthrough or I would be so upset right now. Day 20 is a rainy day which I am extremely grateful for. I harvest some strawberries and spring forage, then it's back to the mines after a two day hiatus. Just like before, I'm going all in on the mines. I have never, ever been this focused on getting through the floors as fast as I possibly can. We're already down to floor 90, although that is in large part thanks to the items we've been getting from the loot boxes. But still, I am really happy we're this close to reaching the final floor of the mines. Some more strawberries and spring forage are ready for harvest on day 21. Just in case anybody is curious, I only had 20 speed grow so 20 strawberries grew faster than the rest. Hence there being a strawberry harvest both yesterday and today. I make a few donations to the museum, then it's off to the mines again. I also decided to sell quite a big portion of the fish I've been saving as well as a few other items. This added a tasty bit of gold to our bank account. On day 22, I finally make quality sprinklers. It felt so good placing these on the farm. The layout isn't perfect, but I can fix that in summer. So from now on, we should have quite a bit more free time in the mornings. I send a cauliflower to Jody in the mail to complete her quest, then I continue my quest to fill up the museum. In what ended up being an absolutely massive mistake, I buy around 150 potato seeds and pears. Why was this a massive mistake? Potatoes take 6 days to grow. It is currently the 22nd day of spring. There are 28 days in each season. In order for these potatoes to be ready before the end of spring, I would have to plant and water all of them before the end of today. Keyword, water. Did I end up watering them all? No. No I did not. Out of the 100-ish potato seeds I planted, I did not water a single one. This is without a doubt my single biggest goof so far. I felt like a massive dum-dum. On day 23, I take a moment to water like 12 crops. I gotta say, I was feeling really good at this point. Mainly because I hadn't realized I messed up with the potato seeds yet, but also because I didn't have to spend a couple minutes watering my seeds. I find a fossilized tail in a loot box. Nice, we'll need this when we get to Ginger Island, so we got really lucky here. I head to Willy's and finally purchase the fiberglass rod. I probably should have bought this sooner, but I've been chilling while fishing up to this point, so I didn't really see a reason to. And now it is time for some more loot boxes. I'm mainly picking up artifacts, fish and seeds here, which honestly I'm good with. It's always nice getting seeds we can plant in the coming seasons, we can sell the fish for money, and artifacts are always a great find. I get a mummified frog, which is another item we can use when we get to Ginger Island. Rather than going to the mines, I'm going to continue focusing, focusing, <laughs> focusing on getting to fishing level 9 for a while. We have a strawberry harvest on day 24. Then I spend the entire day fishing. I also sold a ton of items, including almost all of our fish. Our financial situation has just improved tenfold. 
Wait, no, it's not actually tenfold, is it? No, because it's not ten times as much as it... Is it? Wait, how much did I have? Wait, uh, we have a lot more money now is what I'm trying to get at. Day 25. We are approaching the end of spring now and I'm feeling pretty happy with how we've been doing. Aside from the potato seeds blunder, I think we've made some decent progress in our first season. Also, I did some more fishing. Can I just point out actually that if it doesn't rain before the end of spring, then all of this fishing was basically for nothing. You see, that will mean we won't be able to catch the legend fish. I'm going to be optimistic here though. I really, really do hope it rains soon. I harvest some potatoes on day 26. This was a very bittersweet moment. By this point, I had realized the other 100 or so potato seeds won't be ready on time. So while I was grateful for this harvest, it was very upsetting knowing that this would be our final potato harvest for spring. I go all in on the mines today. I begin on floor 105, making it to floor 113 at around 6.30 p.m. With only 7 floors remaining, I push forward, reaching floor 118 at 12.30 a.m. I collect a diamond and immediately go down a ladder. I was getting really nervous at this point, so I made 3 cherry bombs and threw them on the ground. The ladder was revealed and I went down it as fast as I could, finally making it to floor 120. I receive the skull key as a reward. Sweet. I, I say sweet a lot actually, now that I think about it. I've said it so many times already, I think. Anyway, we have managed to make it all the way through the mines before the end of spring. Not bad. Not bad at all. The good news keeps on coming as we receive almost 13,000 gold for the potatoes we shipped. I decide to spend day 27 clearing out some more space on the farm. I mainly focus on chopping down trees because I really need wood. Day 28, the final day of spring. I send my axe to Clint through the mail. I gotta say, the mail services mod is so handy. It's going to be slightly difficult going back to not using that mod when this playthrough is over. I purchase a radish and a rare seed from the traveling cart, then I spend the rest of the day fishing in the forest. Unfortunately, it still isn't raining, so the probability of us being able to catch the legend before the end of the year has just dropped significantly. But there's still a chance. If we can get our hands on magic bait, we can use it to catch the fish at any time. There's two ways we can get magic bait. The first requires us to make it to Ginger Island, collect 100 golden walnuts, unlock the walnut room, complete a quest for Mr. Key, and use the key gems we get as a reward to purchase magic bait. That is going to take a lot of effort. I don't know if I have that in me. The other way is to get magic bait in a loot box. This would be so much easier, but we're basically relying on getting lucky, so I don't know how realistic this method is. But anyway, that is the end of spring. I'm really enjoying the whole loot box aspect so far, and I'm excited to see what we get in future seasons. So, I will see you all in summer. Alright, day 29, the first day of summer. A new season full of opportunity. Let's make the most of it. I begin by clearing out my field of old crops in preparation for the new seeds that will be planted later on. Speaking of which, it's off to Piri the Platypus to buy 5 of each summer seed, 10 wheat seeds, 50 corn seeds, and around 200 melon seeds. The melon seeds will be our money maker, we need 10 wheat for the community center and we need 5 gold star melons and corn for the community center too. I return to the farm to plant all of my seeds. It takes quite a while but I manage to get everything except the corn seeds planted and watered. I spend the rest of the day in the mines collecting iron ore so we can make more quality sprinklers. Clint sends us our copper axe on day 30. Also, the mail services mod is officially a banger of a mod. Like I cannot emphasize this enough, this mod has made working on my friendships with the villagers so much easier. If the creator of this mod is watching this video, thank you. You have made my life so much better. Now it is time for a loot box opening. The first loot box contains an artifact and 16 pepper seeds. We're starting off well, that is delightful to see. Also, somebody has broken a loot box. If I catch the person that did this, I'm going to turn all of their socks inside out to slightly inconvenience them. I'm not playing around here. 
We are still able to pick up the items though, which I am very thankful for because one of those items is a Nautilus shell which we need for the community center. We get blueberry seeds and an artifact in the next loot box which has become somewhat of a trend so far. I head to the beach where a cutscene with Alex plays. I tried to watch this cutscene but I could not take my eyes off the loot box in the middle of the beach. So I ended up skipping the cutscene because I was way too excited. This one contained another ancient seed. I donate a mineral to the museum, then I receive Alex's bat. Ordinarily this isn't obtainable, so it's pretty cool that the mod adds items like this to the loot boxes. Next we receive a radioactive ore and another ancient seed. Again, this is a really good find. We need to ship a radioactive ore for the shipping collection, and ancient seeds are always welcome. Our good luck gets even better as we find a void egg. When I build a coop and upgrade it twice, I can put this egg into the incubator and a void chicken will hatch from it. I return to the farm to make yet another chest and empty my inventory. I also open a loot box on the farm which provides us with a bee house. We have been getting some really useful items today, I am over the moon with how this has gone. As always, we finish our loot box run with a trip around the forest. Again, we are getting really, really lucky here. I pick up a keg and red cabbage seeds almost immediately. I also get two wilted bouquets which I'm never going to use. In case anyone doesn't know, you can give the wilted bouquet to a villager in order to break up with them. That isn't something I'm ever going to do because I'm going to ask Krobus to be my roommate instead of romancing a villager. I am simply not interested in any of them. And Krobus is like really cool so it's, a, it's an easy choice to make really. Back on the farm I make quite a few more quality sprinklers and get to work on planting all of the seeds I can. This includes the 50 corn seeds I bought yesterday. I did not have time to water any of the new seeds but that's not really a big deal. At the beginning of day 31 I clear a path to a loot box on the farm. I receive amaranth seeds and a gold br 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 I'm, look, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that word, it's, it's a big light thingy, I don't know how, I can't say that word. Up at the train tracks I receive some forage items and a pepper. Again, I don't really mind getting things like these. I can give them to the villagers or just sell them eventually. I, I don't know why but I've kept like 95% of the items I've collected during this playthrough so far. I should probably sell them at some point. Anyway, I collect some fruit in the bat cave then it's off to the community center to donate a bunch of items. I cannot describe how good it feels being able to donate all of these items this early. I head back to the farm to throw some new items into the shipping bin, then it's off to the beach where I spend the rest of the day fishing. On day 32, I continue the fishing expedition. I begin in the forest, then I move up to the mountain lake. I've already missed the legend fish, so I really don't want to miss any other fish. I head to floor 20 of the mines where I catch a ghost fish and a stone fish, then I move down to floor 60 and catch the ice pip. Finally, it's off to floor 100 where I capture the lava eel. I'm gonna be honest, I did not think that would go as well as it did. We caught all of the fish you can catch in the mines without any hassle at all really. I am feeling absolutely sterling right now. I set up my crab pots at the town river again, hopefully nobody destroys the chest this time. Then I head to the saloon. Emily asks me if I believe in fate. Honestly, the answers you can give here are very extreme. I'm sort of in between the first two answers really. I think for the most part we definitely do have full control over our lives. But I also think that fate is a real thing. Like a beautiful thing too because... The way I view fate is like an entirely positive thing. Like have you ever had a moment where you thought to yourself, I have no idea how I got so lucky and ended up in this position. Like... For all intents and purposes, I should not be in this position right now where I've got this good thing or this amazing person in my life. Yeah, it's moments like that that make me believe that fate is real. Moments where something that you never could have imagined happening has happened. Like, against all odds, it has happened. It is real and it makes you the happiest you've ever been. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. I got a bit carried away there. My apologies. Let's move on. Day 33 is a day filled with monkey shines. I had no idea that was a word until someone in the comment section mentioned it. Shout out to that person because that is a phenomenal word, I love it so much already. I begin by harvesting some wheat which also provides us with hay. 
Ahead to the travelling cart where things we need for the shipping collection are being sold, but I'm not in a rush to get them, so I'll just save my money for now. I do purchase a common mushroom for the community centre, though. I chop down some trees, then I grab the chair from my house. I return to the forest and use this chair to get into the secret woods without breaking the log in front of the entrance. I did this to see if loot boxes can spawn in the secret woods, and it turns out they can. I did it for the sake of science, basically, that's, that's my excuse. I also used this as an opportunity to get some hardwood and catch the wood skip. I head to the beach and repair the broken bridge using 300 pieces of wood. This unlocks the tide pool area. There are three benefits associated with this. Number one, we can collect forage items here. Number two, the crimson fish can only be caught in this area. And number three, I assume loot boxes can spawn here, so now we can actually get to those in the future. I head to the saloon and talk to all of the villagers there, then I donate the wood skip to the community center. Our hot peppers are ready for harvest on day 34. I donate some artifacts to the museum, check on my crab pots, and ask Clint to crack open some geodes. I donate several items to the museum, receive 9 pumpkin seeds as a reward, and head to Willy's shop where I don't buy anything because he is not there. That is disappointing. I wanted to buy the lead bobber before I tried to catch the crimson fish. Regardless, I make my way over to the area the crimson fish spawns in and completely and utterly fail to catch it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That was one of the worst attempts I've ever made at catching a fish. I bump into William as I leave the beach and I can't stay mad at him. This is the first time he has ever let me down, so we're good. No hard feelings. It is what it is. I do a bit of fishing to catch a Dorado. I'm very happy about that, very happy indeed. On day 35, you will notice that my bank account is looking nice and juicy. That is because I finally convinced myself to sell some of the items I've been keeping. Not a lot though. I'm still working on fixing my habit of keeping literally everything I find, just in case I need it in the future. I head to Robbins and ask her to build a coop for us. After leaving Robbins, I turn around and go back into her shop purchase 50 wood and use it to make a chest. I buy some bait and two crab pots from Willy and set them up at the beach. And that's all I did today for some reason, I must have been feeling incredibly lazy. I harvest an ancient fruit and some poppies on day 36. I believe that is the first ancient fruit we have harvested which is always a big moment for me in every playthrough. I send a diamond to Gus for his birthday because, well, it's Gus. Like, he's just a really good person and deserves a nice birthday present, there's no other reason. I donate a chicken statue to the museum, then I spend the rest of the day in the mines collecting iron and gold ore. Gustavo visits us on day 37 and gives us the mini jukebox. I am absolutely elated right now, I love the mini jukebox so much. Our red cabbage is ready for harvest, which makes me even happier. Normally, I end up getting red cabbage seeds from the traveling cart around the end of fall and donate the red cabbage to the community center during winter, so this is a very nice change. I receive some lovely items from the loot boxes in the town center. Ginger, a seed maker, an oil maker, starfruit seeds, an artifact. And those four loot boxes were really, really close to each other too. I had a feeling summer was going to be a good season for us, but it has completely surpassed any and all expectations I had. And it's only the ninth day of summer too. There's still plenty of time left. I put an ancient fruit into a seed maker and continue opening loot boxes. I'm actually going to drive myself crazy with how often I say the word loot box, but I have to keep saying it. I have to commit to the bit. If I stop saying loot box, then I might as well end the playthrough right now because of how disappointed I will be in myself for not having the strength to keep saying it. I make a few donations to the community center, then I continue opening loot boxes. Okay, I... At this point, I would like to apologize if anyone is getting annoyed with me saying loot box over and over again, but I, I can't stop now. I get a radioactive stone in a loot box. I don't know what to do with this. I was hoping I would be able to place it on the ground and break it to get some radioactive ore, but nope. I just have a big lump of radioactive stone. I collect some roe, which is good. I need to ship that. Our final loot box of the day contains the fossilized leg, which will come in handy on Ginger Island. Day 38. I donate a bottle of wine to the community center and a dwarf scroll to the museum. That is three of the four scrolls donated. 
One more and we will be able to talk to the dwarf and become their friend. I ask Clint to crack open some geodes, make some more donations to the museum, and spend the rest of the day in the mines. As you may have guessed, I collected iron and gold ore. Our summer spangles are ready for harvest on day 39. I love these flowers, they're very pretty. Also, today is when the luau takes place. I add a gold star ice pip to the soup and spend some time interacting with the villagers. You know, because I care about them all just so much. It's, it's totally not because I'm just trying to get maximum hearts with everyone as soon as I can. Okay, okay, no, yeah, yeah it is, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. Anyway, uh, not important. The ice pip gets us the best reaction from the governor, which means we get even more friendship points with the villagers. Day 40 is hops, tomatoes and peppers collection day. It looks like our melons will be ready tomorrow too, so things are going pretty nicely for us, which is, you know, nice. I visit the traveling cart, purchase absolutely nothing, then go to bed so I can go to... <laughs> that, not, that's not even funny. Uh, then I go to bed so I can skip to tomorrow and harvest my melons. Speaking of, on day 41, I harvest my melons. It felt so good harvesting all of them. I need to buy more, like 500 more, at least. I donate a melon and five gold star melons to the community center, then I sell the rest to Pierre. I use our newfound fortune to purchase an apple tree sapling and 500 melon seeds. I love this game so much. When things go well, it's like having a constant stream of happiness flowing through my body. I ask Robin to upgrade the coop, donate a couple of items to the community center, plant my apple tree sapling and make quality sprinklers. I spend the rest of the day planting my melon seeds. Thankfully I managed to get all of them planted before the day ends. And because it's raining, I didn't even have to water them. I am having too much good luck right now. I'm suspicious. Normally that means bad things are about to happen, but you know what, I'm a different person now. I'm going to embrace this good luck and hope it continues. In fact, no. I'm not going to hope it continues. I know it's going to continue. I am manifesting it. I donate a blueberry to the community center on day 42. I purchase the iridium rod from Willy so I can attach the lead bobber to it. And now... It is vengeance time. The crimson fish embarrassed me the last time I tried to catch it, but this time, this time the exact same thing happened. Also, my first lead bobber was entirely used up, so I went to attach the second one to my fishing rod and it wasn't in my inventory. This was quite the kerfuffle. No need to panic though, because it turns out I put it into the chest beside my crab pots by mistake. What can I say? Once a scallywag, always a scallywag. I buy another lead bobber just to be safe and prepare for battle once more. To the surprise of absolutely everybody, including myself, I actually caught the Crimson Fish. If there was an award for the best Stardew Valley player of all time, I would not win it. But I feel like I would be one of the nominees. Actually, no I wouldn't. It took me like four in-game years to achieve perfection without mods. I... I, I don't know where I'm going with this. If I'm if I'm being completely honest, I've actually just hurt my own feelings. I feel pretty sad right now. Um. Uh. Yeah. I I throw a green bean and a blackberry into kegs before I uh, before I go to bed. Day forty three is spent clearing space on the farm. I can already tell I'm gonna end up using the few bombs I have to take down some trees at some point because I'm too lazy to chop them all down myself. Day forty four is loot box day. We get tea leaves in the first one. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, nice, we need that for the shipping collection. Also, I find pineapple seeds in another loot box. This takes some of the pressure off us because now we don't have to rely on finding them on Ginger Island in order to complete the shipping collection. Also, I've been thinking about how the items in the loot boxes might not be useful after we complete the community center and the museum. I believe what I'm going to do is, when I complete two of my goals, I will change the settings of the loot boxes. I will increase the maximum amount. Oh, I don't. I don't know if I can say those two words together. It like it might be physically impossible for me to do it. Let me. I'm gonna take it really slow, and we're gonna see what happens. I will increase the maximum amount of items. Oh, I did it in a loot box by one. Increase the amount of gold we get from each loot box, and increase the probability of getting a rare item just a little bit. This way, the loot boxes won't become useless, basically. With that being said, if I feel like we're getting too many good items or too much gold from loot boxes, then I'll tone it down. Basically, I'll try to keep it balanced throughout the entire playthrough. And I will do this every time we complete two goals. 
It's also extra incentive for us to complete our goals too, so I think it's a good idea all round. Our corn is ready for harvest on day 45. I also collect a star fruit and some blueberries. It's also at this point that I decide to stop keeping everything I've gathered so far. My mentality was I wanted to keep all of the items just in case I need them for crafting and cooking recipes next year. But there's really no need for me to worry about any of that right now. And we're missing out on a ton of gold by keeping these items, so I throw quite a few things into my shipping bin. I get a couple of slime jack fish and a deluxe scarecrow from a loot box which I'm happy about. I need to find another way of saying something made me happy. This playthrough is really testing my vocabulary, I won't lie. I donate a corn, a pepper and 5 gold star corn to the community center. The rest of the day as well as days 46 through 50 are spent in the mines collecting iron and gold ore and clearing out space on the farm. A few notable things did happen during that period of time. I used the gold I got from selling a bunch of items to purchase all of the bundles in the vault room. This means the desert is unlocked. That is exquisite news. Gunther pays a visit to the farm and gives us the key to the sewers as a reward for donating 60 items to the museum. Now we can meet Krobus and start increasing our friendship with him. Also, I finally interact with the dwarf for the first time. I purchased two crocuses from the traveling cart, one for the shipping bin and one for the community center. Finally, it is time to purchase some animals for our farm. Please welcome Gil Thunder and Hawk the chickens and Bon the duck. I also ask Robin to build a barn for us. Alright, we are back to normal on day 51. More importantly, it is loot box time. I'm going to be honest, I have nothing left to ramble about while I open these loot boxes. I'm sure I'll have new topics to talk about during fall, but for now my head is empty and my brain cells have gone on vacation. The trend of receiving artifacts, fish and seeds continues with the odd piece of furniture thrown in every once in a while. I do get another tea leaf which I can throw into a keg to make green tea so this was a successful run. I also get some ginger which is another good pickup. I finally watch Caroline's two heart cutscene which means she will send us the crafting recipe for tea saplings tomorrow morning. I get an orange in a loot box. I don't know why, but I found that funny when it happened. This was a really interesting one though. I got a spookfish, a snake skull which will be useful on Ginger Island, and a slime ball. I can't do anything with the slime ball as far as I know, but it's still a cool find. Our final loot box of summer gives us a grape starter, a hot pepper, and two anchovies. Anchovies? Anchovies? I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, any whomst, we get our first eggs on day 52. I did not mean to make that sound. Um, yeah, we get our first eggs on day 52, so this is my favorite day so far because of that. I donate several items to the museum, ask Clint to crack open some geodes, donate more items to the museum, ask Clint to crack open more geodes, donate more items, ask Clint to open more geodes and donate one more item to the museum. I am so glad I said all of that without messing up. I did not want to have to record me saying that again. Pierre's shop is still closed on Wednesdays, just a quick update for you all in case anyone has forgotten, I know I certainly did. I donate a poppy, a maple syrup and a pomegranate to the community center, then I plant my ancient seeds. I head into the forest and put wooden paths to connect some trees to a chest after placing tappers on the trees. Now the oak resin that is produced by these trees will automatically go into the chest. Just in case anybody wants to do this, you need to have the generic mod config menu mod installed. Say that three times fast. I'll have a link to this mod in the description. Scroll to the bottom of the settings menu and you will see an option called mod options. Click on this option, then click on automate at the top of the list. Under the enabled connectors heading, you can select what flooring or paths can be used to connect things to a chest. I really hope that made sense. Also, I realized that the trees in the forest are pine trees, so I moved the tappers and chest to the bus stop so I can get oak resin from the two oak trees here. All of our melons are ready for harvest on day 53. Collecting all of them took a bit of time, but it was so incredibly satisfying. I sell every crop in my inventory to Pierre and purchase 25 wheat seeds. I need more wheat for the community center. I buy the final backpack upgrade and ask Robin to upgrade our coop for the final time. I plant the wheat seeds, visit Sandy in the desert, purchase 5 beet and rhubarb seeds, and enter the skull caverns. I used to be terrible at going through this place, but I've done it so many times in the last few playthroughs that I am officially at the point where I am not terrible at it. 
With enough practice, I believe I can eventually become alright at going through the Skull Cavern. A void chicken has appeared in our coop on day 54. I call it Jeff. In a perfect world, that is the name I would give to my pet giraffe in Stardew Valley, but alas, there are no giraffes in Stardew Valley. That is deeply upsetting. I decide to connect the maple tree at the bus stop to the chest so I can get maple syrup as well as the two oak resin. I watch a cutscene that shows a bunch of crabs in Willy's shop. Gus shows up and says he'll take care of the crabs. Gus then tells us that he'll be having a special offer on crab cakes for the next few days. I do a bit of fishing and catch the red snapper. Then I purchase two lead bobbers and run to the saloon where I buy 50 crab cakes. Eating one of these gives you a plus one speed boost for basically the entire day, so it's worth buying a good few of them when they're on sale. I head to the sewers because I want to catch our second legendary fish, the mutant carp. It took so long for this fish to show up, like a really, really long time. But thankfully, it eventually did. I rendezvous with my friends in the saloon at the end of the night. I ask Robin to upgrade our barn on day 55. Then I spend 10,000 gold on grass starter. I did not realize it would cost that much. I regret that purchase. Francis the rabbit has joined our family. Let's all give him a warm welcome. And of course, we can't forget about Lovejoy the cow either. To end the day, I head to the desert where I catch a sandfish and the scorpion carp. Day 56. The final day of summer. The first thing I do is harvest the wheat that has grown. I also harvest a pineapple. Today is already a sensational day just because of that. I donate 10 wheat to the community center and purchase a battery pack and red cabbage seeds from the traveling cart. Before summer ends, I want to give you all an update on the progress we have made in certain areas. First, we have the shipping collection. The loot boxes have really helped with this. There are quite a few items here that we wouldn't have gotten and been able to ship if we hadn't found them in loot boxes. A lot of the things we still have to ship are forage items, crops, and animal products. I am a bit worried about the radioactive bar and the banana. For the radioactive bar, I need to unlock Mr. Key's walnut room and hope we get the quest that changes the mines or the skull caverns so we can get access to radioactive ore in either of those two locations. For the banana, I need to unlock the island trader, collect 5 dragon teeth in the volcano dungeon, swap the dragon teeth for a banana tree sapling, and plant the sapling. Banana trees take 28 days to grow, so we need to get to Ginger Island by the middle of fall at the latest if we want to make sure we get a banana before the end of the year. Next we have the fishing collection. There's not much to say about this one. It isn't really affected by the loot boxes because finding a fish in a loot box does not add it to the collection. We still need to physically catch every fish. But we are doing pretty well. Like I said at the end of spring though, we do need to catch the legend fish after we missed it during spring, but we are good for everything else. In terms of the museum collection, this is the area that was affected by the loot boxes the most in my opinion. We're already pretty close to completing this collection thanks to all of the minerals and artifacts we found in loot boxes. I'm gonna go on record and say that we are 100% going to complete this collection before the end of winter, maybe even before the end of fall, we'll see. In terms of the community center, we need a large goat milk or a piece of wool. Either one will do here because we only have to donate one more item to complete this bundle. Once our barn has been upgraded, I will buy a goat and that will take care of this one. We need a pumpkin and an eggplant which we can easily get in fall. That also applies to the hazelnut. We need one more fish, the tiger trout. Again, this is something we can get in fall. For the truffle, all I have to do is upgrade my barn one more time and purchase a pig, so that's really handy. If I upgrade my house, I'll have access to the kitchen and I will be able to make a fried egg and a mackie roll. I planted an apple tree sapling during summer, so we'll get the three apples we need during fall. The tappers I set up will give me an oak resin in a few days, and I've got a rabbit, so that covers the rabbit's foot. Finally, I also have a duck, so that's the duck feather sorted. So I would say things are looking really good for us right now. I know we've only just finished summer, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that the loot boxes do have quite a big effect on a playthrough. I kinda saw that coming, but I didn't think it would be this good. Anyway, summer was a fantastic season for us. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens during fall. Day 57, the first day of fall. 
We begin with a little corn harvest, which is a nice way to start a new season. I pick up some eggs in the coop, one of which is a void egg. I toss this void egg into the mayonnaise machine to make void mayonnaise, then I plant some ancient seeds. I head to Piers and purchase 5 of each fall seed and 687 pumpkin seeds. I do a bit of fishing at the river and catch the tiger trout. Then I move up to the area behind Georgia Mart for some more fishing. A legendary fish called the angler appears in this location. This is probably the easiest legendary fish to catch, so that's very nice for us. I return to Pier and sell my corn, then I spend the rest of the day planting the seeds I bought. It took the entire day, but I got almost everything planted. I didn't get everything watered, but just like last season, that's not a big deal. I plant the remaining seeds on the morning of day 58. It's raining too, which means I don't have to water these ones. I open my first loot box and receive a mineral and a furnace. You know what? I will gratefully accept that furnace. The wizard would like some ectoplasm, so we will get that for him in the near future. The next four items we receive from loot boxes are a moral, an oyster, a yam seed, and a ruby. Next, I get a suit of armor and a sandfish. I have so many decorations, I really need to start using them. We pick up a radioactive ore, sweet. A stone owl and some boots are added to our inventory, followed by a duck mayonnaise. I pick up a hazelnut for the community center and donate that, and the tiger trout. Every fishing bundle has now been completed. Also, the crafts room has been completed. I catch a walleye at the river, then I take a walk through the forest where the remaining loot boxes provide us with fish, a blue jazz, a winter root, and a coral. Finally, I catch a midnight carp before the day ends. I collect an oak resin on day 59, then I donate some items to the museum, and I donate the oak resin to the community center. Also, I accidentally skipped the cutscene where Willy gives us the copper pan, so I'm going to reenact that scene. Ahem. <clears throat> All right, Willie. How how are you? How are you getting on? Uh, not too bad yourself. I'm feeling good, thank you. H how are you? Ah, uh, sure. I I can't complain. Anyway, listen. Here is a copper pan. Oh, yeah. Cheers, mate. Sound. No bother, man. You can use <laughs> you can use that to collect some treasure from water sources. Oh, sweet. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, go away now. Stop talking to me. Good luck. Go on away now. Go on away. Go on. Good luck now. Go on. Go on away. I head into the mines where I get an ectoplasm almost immediately. That took a lot less time than I thought it would. I'll bring it to the wizard and that will be his special order completed. I do a bit of fishing at the beach to catch some more fall fish. The wizard sends us the crafting recipe for the mini obelisk on day 60 as a reward for completing his special order. Also, Linus sends us a Mackey roll. This is actually really good timing, I can bring this to the community center. I do want to point out though that Linus said, and I quote, The mountain lake has been kind to me lately. I would like to share my good fortune with you. Did he find this Mackie roll in the lake? I mean, if, if so, if he actually did that, he is the single greatest forager that has ever lived. I donate the Mackie roll, then I buy a new goat for our farm. I call them Mellow. Then I went to sleep. Yeah, it was, it was one of those lazy days again. All right, day 61. We begin with a corn harvest. The bok choys are also ready. I take a look at the traveling cart hoping to find a truffle, but it's not being sold, which is a little upsetting to be honest with you. I sell my corn to Pierre, then I ask Clint to crack open our geodes. We're now at the point where it'll be more beneficial for us to trade our omni geodes for artifact troves in the desert and crack them open instead. So I'm going to try to get a solid 15 to 20 artifact troves during the next couple of weeks. Some more fishing is on the agenda as I catch a sea cucumber, I give Elliot a crab cake for his birthday, then I throw the items I've collected today into the shipping bin. As well as this, I throw some other items into the shipping bin too. Quite a few items actually. I pick up a piece of wool in the coop and deliver it to the community center. I pick up a duck feather on day 62. I also arrive at Robin's way too early so I just kinda stand outside awkwardly and just wait for her shop to open. I must admit, my time management skills are astronomically poor. I finally enter her shop and watch a cutscene in which Robin gives us the crafting recipes for the flute block and the drum block. I also ask her to upgrade our barn. As soon as it's finished, I'm going to buy a pig because we really, really need to get a truffle as soon as we can for the community center. 
I donate a duck feather, purchase a pail from Marnie, and milk my cow. I'm gonna be honest here, I was really excited for our next round of loot boxes, so the rest of today, as well as day 63 and 64, were spent clearing out the farm and doing basically nothing else. On day 65, I pick up all of the items that have accumulated in the coop. I need quite a few of these for the shipping collection, so that was a lovely start to the day. Our cranberries, amaranth and eggplants have grown, so I harvest those, then I open the first loot box. We get kale, an egg and a bean starter. I also found a loot box that was hiding behind the barn. If there's one thing that I've learned from this playthrough so far, it's that I really need to pay close attention to my surroundings or I'm guaranteed to miss a few loot boxes. Also, I think the game has caught on to the fact that I love using lead bobbers while I'm fishing because I got one in a loot box. Coral, garlic and an egg are found in the next loot box, followed by another egg, a mineral, yam seeds, spring seeds, a plum and a common mushroom. I take a quick break from loot box hunting to accept a quest from Demetrius. He wants us to catch 10 tiger trout. That's actually a nice and easy quest. Back to loot boxes now and we pick up another furnace in this one. Also, I feel really happy when I find more than one of a crop or a flower in a loot box. It's such a beautiful sight every time. I pick up Hyper Speed Grow, which is an item you can normally only get in the later stages of the game, so that is stupendous. It's off to the beach now, where we find one loot box in the main area, but there isn't one in the tide pool area, unfortunately. Some more oak resin is ready, so I collect that, then I sprinkle the Hyper Speed Grow on the rear seed I planted. We get a slime ball in the first loot box we open in the forest, followed by a spookfish in the next loot box. I like the design of that fish, so I'm always happy when I see it. Sam's old guitar makes an appearance for the second time, I believe. Yeah, we got this in a loot box in summer too. I should clarify, it's a weapon. Unfortunately, it isn't of much use to us at this point though. I do a lap around the forest to find the remaining loot boxes, and I must say, I love this routine. I always feel so relaxed walking around this forest, you know, my soul feels at peace. So the fact that I can open loot boxes while I'm doing it just makes it even better. To finish off the day, I donate a rabbit's foot to the community center along with an eggplant. Day 66. I visit Robin's first thing in the morning and ask her to upgrade her house so I can make a fried egg. Now I have some absolutely heartbreaking news for you all. Somebody has destroyed our chest at the bus stop. At this point, I'm starting to wonder if some of these villagers simply do not like me. But that doesn't make too much sense because I've been giving everyone gifts every week and birthday presents and doing quests for them and talking to them. I've basically been doing everything I can for them. They're being a bit ungrateful, in my opinion. Anyway, with our barn upgraded, I head to Marnie's and ask her to add a pig to our farm. I call this pig Big B. I decide to spend the rest of the day fishing. I want to catch tiger trout for Demetrius' quest. I did the same thing on day 67. I also went around talking to the villagers. Not to increase my friendship with them though, no, not at all. You see, I was investigating the case of a destroyed chest. I wanted to get to the bottom of things and find out who was doing it. I came to the conclusion that literally nobody in this town can be trusted except for Gus, Willy, Marnie, Krobus and the Dwarf. Everybody else has been added to my list of enemies. Some pumpkins are ready for harvest on day 68, along with our fairy roses and yams. I purchase a rare crow and a beet at the traveling cart, sell most of my crops to Pierre, buy back some gold star pumpkins for Krobus, and donate a pumpkin to the community center. The pantry room has been fully completed, which means we have unlocked the greenhouse. That's good. In fact, I would say it is very good. But I am getting really nervous about the truffle. I need to complete the community center and unlock Ginger Island before the end of fall if I want to have a chance of getting a banana and completing the shipping collection. So we might be in a little bit of trouble depending on how long it takes us to get this truffle. I send my pickaxe to Clint so he can upgrade it and that's it for today. Day 69 is a beautiful day. I collect a piece of wool which I need for the shipping collection and I plant red cabbage, rhubarb and beet seeds in the greenhouse, also for shipping purposes. With our house upgraded, I cook a fried egg, then I get to work on harvesting all of the pumpkins that have grown. Also, our apple tree has produced its first apple. Beautiful stuff. That means we'll have the three apples we need on day 71. I sell my crops to Pierre, which bumps us up to almost 300,000 gold. I purchase a full stack of pumpkin seeds, donate the fried egg, ask Robin to build a pond on the farm, and begin planting all of the pumpkin seeds I bought. 
Unsurprisingly, I do not get all of them planted before the day ends. Clint sends us her pickaxe on day 70. I plant the rest of the pumpkin seeds, then I send my axe to Clint so he can upgrade that too. After all of the gold I've given to Clint, I really, really hope he doesn't do something to ruin our day in this playthrough. He does it every time though, so my hopes are not high. I head to the Adventurer's Guild where I sell my Obsidian Edge sword and purchase the Lava Katana. I also purchase 250 explosive ammo which I can use with my slingshot to get through the Skull Caverns quicker in the future. On day 71, I collect the two apples I need from her tree. I give the dwarf a present and purchase 50 mega bombs from him. I ask Robin to build a second pond on her farm, throw a sturgeon into the first pond and head to the Skull Caverns. I'm mainly focusing on collecting Omni Geodes here. If I get something like a Prismatic Shard or a good bit of Iridium Ore, then I won't complain, obviously. But Omni Geodes are our main priority right now. Clinty Winty sends us our axe on day 72. More importantly though, it's everyone's favorite time of the week. It is loot box time. We get a gold bar, nice, that's a good start, followed by a baked fish. In an unfortunate turn of events though, we cannot open any more loot boxes today because it's time for the Stardew Valley Fair. I set up my Grange display and I think it looks pretty decent. We come in first place and receive a delicious 1000 star tokens. I make sure to collect my items from the Grange display, then I bet 999 tokens on green. I spin the wheel and it actually lands on green. I am shocked, honestly. I know the wheel is, like, rigged to land on green more than orange, but I've always had terrible luck with this wheel. Case in point, right now I bet 800 tokens on green and it lands on orange. That is unfortunate. Instead of continuing to lose my tokens on the wheel, I play the slingshot game over and over again until I reach around 2,500 tokens. Then again. Then one more time. Finally, I use my tokens to buy a rare crow and a star drop. With the Stardew Valley Fair over and done with, I donate three apples to the community center before going to sleep. Now, all I need is a truffle. Evelyn drops by the farm on day 73 and gives us the garden pot. I would like to add Evelyn to the list of villagers that I actually trust. She should have been there from the beginning, that's my bad. That one's on me. Next, it's time to resume our loot box collecting adventure. Our first one gives us a void egg and two normal eggs. I really do wish we got this at the start of the playthrough, they would have come in handy then. But I can still sell these now so it's all good. Our second loot box contains an artifact and three different seeds followed by a mineral and a loom at the beach. We don't have a loom actually now that I think about it so that's a useful item for us. I accept Willy's special order to collect 100 pieces of bug meat then I get some spaghetti in a loot box. Something really cool happened next. I found a golden walnut in a loot box. This is extremely interesting. I really wasn't expecting to find this in that loot box. It makes me wonder if we can get key gems in loot boxes too. I assume we can, so hopefully we get some soon and maybe we'll get some more walnuts too. Maybe? Hopefully? Please? I really would like that. I head to the mines where I spend the rest of the day collecting bug meat for Willy's special order. I ask Clint to upgrade my axe on day 74, then I do a quick lap around the forest to see if any more loot boxes have appeared. I did not find any. Oh well. It's back to the mines to continue working on Willy's special order. On day 75, our pig still has not found a truffle. Look, I really don't mean to sound impatient here, but I really, really need that truffle. So give me one soon, please, like really soon, like, like tomorrow soon. I throw a slime jack fish into the second pond and collect some milk from our cow and goat before clearing out the coop. I really need to pick up an item called the auto grabber. It'll collect everything for us so we won't have to milk our animals and clean up the coop. I head to Robins and ask her to build a shed. I'll put all of the chests on the farm into this at some point, probably during winter though because there's quite a few things I still have to do before the end of this season. Once again, it is off to the mines to finish collecting bug meat. Clint returns our axe to us on day 76, so I sent him my hoe so he can upgrade that too. A sweet gem berry is ready for harvest. Normally I would bring the first sweet gem berry I get to the old Master Cannoli statue in the secret woods. You can get a star drop by doing this. But because one of our goals for the first year is to complete the shipping collection, it's going to go into the shipping bin instead. I chop down the big log in front of the entrance to the secret woods, then I pick up a chanterelle. 
I'm glad I finally did this because now I can stop using my chair to get into the secret woods every time I go to collect hardwood. I purchase 50 salads in the saloon, then it's time for an adventure through the Skull Caverns. Again, our main goal here is to collect Omni Geodes and to hopefully get a dinosaur egg from a Pepper Rex. I collect some Slime Jack Row from a pond on day 77. I also still have not gotten a truffle. This is concerning at this point. Our red cabbage is ready though, so I can toss that into the shipping bin. Once again, it's off to the Skull Caverns. I was doing pretty well until I got knocked out. Yeah, yeah, this one is on me. I, I wasn't paying attention at all, and I paid the price for it. I didn't lose any Omni Geodes, so I'm still counting this as a victory, but I was a bit embarrassed about the whole situation, so I, I made my way home and just went to sleep. Clint sends us our hoe on day 78. I immediately send it back to him to be upgraded again. Big B, I'm not playing games anymore. I need that truffle. I'm not, like, I'm not joking. This is serious. Give me that truffle. Any whomst, as you may have guessed, it is back to the Skull Caverns for yet another Omni Geode collection run. I'm spending quite a bit of time in here, but it will all be worth it when I trade my Omni Geodes for artifact troves. Fantastic news as our pig finally gives us a truffle on day 79. I feel so relieved right now. I was legitimately starting to think I wasn't going to get a truffle before the end of fall. I, I actually feel over the moon right now. I get some pretty cool stuff in our first loot box. I am especially pleased with the Arrowhead artifact because that's something I haven't donated to the museum yet. The second loot box yields 4 deluxe speed grow. Sweet. While footage of me opening loot boxes and accepting a special order from the wizard plays, I would like to talk about my plan for Ginger Island. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The last couple of days of fall are going to be very stressful. Like I said during summer, it takes 28 days for a banana tree to grow so I need to have a banana tree planted before the final day of fall ends. My plan is simple, but there is very little room for error with this one. We cannot afford to make any mistakes. I need to get to Ginger Island, collect 10 golden walnuts to unlock the west side of the island, collect another 20 golden walnuts to unlock the island farmhouse, and collect a final 10 walnuts to unlock the island trader. I also need to collect 5 dragon tooth in the volcano dungeon. So basically, I need to collect 40 golden walnuts in total, and 5 dragon tooth. That's going to be tough, really tough, no doubt about that, but I'm going to be really optimistic here. I can do it. Well, I, I have to do it, really, because if I don't, then I'll fail the goal to complete the shipping collection, which wouldn't be good, I would actually start crying if that happened. I donate the truffle to fully complete the community center, then I head into the mines in search of a prismatic slime. I managed to find one and defeat it at the very last minute. Like, literally very last minute too. It was 1.50am when I defeated it and obtained the prismatic jelly. On day 80, Mayor Lewis sends us a letter thanking us for completing the bulletin board bundles. This is always a fantastic letter to receive because it means we've also received two full hearts of friendship with the villagers. At this point, it's basically set in stone that we're going to reach maximum friendship with everybody. Except Leo. We basically have all of winter to get him from 0 friendship hearts to 10. That's going to be really difficult, if not impossible for me. I'm not feeling confident about that friendship goal anymore. In fact, I think we might fail it. I toss a dinosaur egg into the incubator in the coop, harvest the rhubarb that has grown, and send my watering can to Clint. Next up is a pumpkin harvest. There are so many pumpkins on the farm. My serotonin levels are going through the roof right now. I head to the desert and exchange the Omni Geodes I've collected so far for artifact troves. Then I watch the cutscene showing the grand reopening of the community center. It feels good to have completed it before winter, but all I'm focused on right now is getting to Ginger Island as quickly as possible. I sell my crops to Pierre, bumping our bank account up to a tasty 300,000-ish gold. I head to Clint's to ask him to crack open my artifact troves, but he won't do it, because he's upgrading my watering can. I completely forgot that was a thing. You know what? This is my fault. Clint actually didn't do anything wrong in this situation. Surprisingly enough, it wasn't on him. It's on me. I donate some artifacts to the museum, give the prismatic jelly to the wizard, and collect some items in the forest. It looks like somebody broke the loot box these were in, but we were still able to get them off the floor, thankfully. Next up is a trip to the secret woods to collect hardwood. I can't remember how much hardwood I have in total, so I'm really hoping this will get us to the magical number of 200 so we can repair the boat tomorrow. I also find a loot box in the secret woods. 
even as we approach the end of fall, I still get really excited every time I open one of these things. Day 81 is another pumpkin harvest day. There's not as many as there was yesterday, but it's still nice to get some more. I chop down all of the logs on the farm to get more hardwood. By the end of this chopping session, I have around 140, but I'm sure I have more hardwood in one of the many, many, many chests on the farm. Another trip to the secret woods is on the table for, you guessed it, more hardwood. After finding some more hardwood in the chest, I've said hardwood quite a few times today, I apologize, I have a grand total of 196. We need 200 to repair the boat. This is not good. I sell my pumpkins to Pierre and head to Clint's to crack open my geodes, except I can't and I already made this mistake. Yesterday, in fact. Th that's actually kind of embarrassing that I made this mistake two days in a row. I donate the iridium bars and battery packs needed for the boat repair, but like I said, we don't have enough hardwood, unfortunately. I was so upset by this that I went to sleep. Clint sends us our watering can on day 82. I also found a log on my farm. This was here the entire time, which means I could have chopped it down and donated the hardwood yesterday. I'm not going to focus on that though, because if I do, I'll get really upset. So instead, I'm going to look at the positive in this situation. Now we have enough hardwood for the boat repair. I head to Clint's to finally have my artifact troves opened up, but he isn't there. You know what, I'm just going to move on. I'm not even going to give him any attention in this situation. I'm going to pretend this didn't happen. I don't care for Clint anymore. He doesn't exist in my mind. I bring the hardwood to Willie's shop, then I head to the saloon. The boat will be repaired tomorrow, so I have two days to collect 40 golden walnuts and 5 dragon tooth. I buy 100 coffees and 50 salads in preparation of the challenge I will be facing tomorrow. I toss a wheat, a melon, and a garlic into seed makers to get their respective seeds. These will be used on Ginger Island. I also make five flute blocks, which will also be used on Ginger Island. The final item on the agenda for today is purchasing 150 mega bombs from the dwarf. Day 83. The boat has been repaired so we can finally get to Ginger Island. Except we can't go into town because the Spirits Eve Festival is being set up. But it's okay. You see, going through town to get to Willy's shop was plan A. Now, it's time for plan B. I make a beach warp totem and use it to teleport to the beach. I head into Willy's and finally travel to Ginger Island. Alright, no messing around. Let's get down to brass tacks. It is of vital importance that I make zero mistakes during the next two days. I need to do this absolutely flawlessly. Complete and utter precision and efficiency. I collect a walnut in the forest, then I guess where every gem involved in the puzzle goes. This does take a bit of time, but I do get it correct and receive five golden walnuts. I hit the tree in Leo's treehouse with my axe to receive another, then I talk to the parrot to unlock the northern section of the island. Along the way to the volcano, I make sure to grab every walnut I come across. I am using every single neuron in my brain right now, every brain cell has been activated and is working in complete unison. Armed with my mega bombs, salads, coffees and crab cakes, I power my way through the volcano dungeon. I avoid most of the enemies besides a monster called the Lava Lurk. These monsters can drop a dragon tooth when defeated, so I make sure to take care of them every time I see them. Using mega bombs to blow up rocks gives us a few walnuts. The crab cakes combined with coffee also gives us a plus two speed boost. I find the skeleton area, I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, but basically there's a good chance of getting at least one dragon tooth here, which is exactly what I get in this situation. I'm under quite a bit of pressure here, but the thing is... Pressure creates diamonds. I'm not calling myself a diamond. That's really arrogant. I would never do that. What I will say is that I'm making my way through the dungeon quite quickly, which I'm very thankful for. I've also collected a good few walnuts along the way. At almost 11pm, I reach the end of the dungeon. I collect two more walnuts here, bringing us up to a total of 21, and I receive a prismatic shard. I believe this is my third prismatic shard. I think I got two more during my adventures in the Skull Caverns. I will have to double check that though when I have more time in the future. I unlock the west side of the island and collect a few more walnuts before I pass out. At the end of the day, I currently have 16 walnuts. So tomorrow I need to collect 14 more and get 3 more dragon tooth. I'm quite happy with how today went honestly, that takes a bit of pressure off of us. But make no mistake about it, tomorrow is still going to be pretty stressful. But we can do it. I know we can. Day 84, the final day of fall. I turn my coffees into triple shot espressos and immediately head to Ginger Island. 
I crack open muscle nodes to receive two golden walnuts, collect one in the shipwreck, collect one hidden in the sand, then another in the sand. I collect one from a bush, dig up another hidden one, defeat a group of tiger slimes, find a walnut in a bush, dig one up, find another in a bush, dig another up, and find one more in a bush to bring us up to a total of 30 golden walnuts. I spend 20 to unlock the farmhouse, then another 10 to unlock the island trader. Honestly, that was the hard part, so at this point I started to relax a bit. I head to the volcano dungeon where I obtain the dragon tooths, dragon teeth? This has happened before, I'm not sure what exactly the plural is. I'm gonna say dragon teeth. At this point I have all the dragon teeth I need, so I am feeling absolutely magnificent right now. At 8pm I head to the island trader and purchase a banana tree sapling. I plant it on my farm and I breathe a massive sigh of relief. I head home and stand on my front porch as I take in the final night of fall. That was a very eventful season, we'll say. Considering everything that happened, I'm... Yeah, I I'm pretty happy with how it went. I would say we're in a really good position heading into winter. So, I will see you all then. Day 85, the first day of winter. The game has changed. We can no longer plant any crops here on our farm in Stardew Valley. We can plant winter seeds to get winter forage, but that's about it. I clear out the coop and I am very happy with the amount of items we have just picked up. All of these items get thrown into the shipping bin. I meet the shadow guy at the bus stop. I track him down to the bush beside the community center and receive the magnifying glass. Now that we have acquired this, we can start collecting secret notes. I head to Sandy Shop in the desert and purchase 100 beet seeds. I will plant these seeds on Ginger Island. You can collect 5 golden walnuts by harvesting crops on the farm there, hence why I purchased these seeds. I pick up some quality sprinklers on the farm, accept a special order from Gus to bring him 24 eggs, and head to Ginger Island. I clear out some space on the farm here and plant the beet seeds along with a garlic seed, a melon seed, and a wheat seed. Just before the day ends, I decide I want to give Krobus a gold star pumpkin for his birthday. I accidentally toss this pumpkin into a keg. I retrieve a second pumpkin and accidentally complete a quest from Caroline to give her a pumpkin. Third time is the charm as I finally manage to give Krobus a pumpkin on my third attempt. I send my watering can to Clint on day 86. Next, it's time for our first loot box opening of winter. We receive a blue discus, a mineral, a common mushroom, and an apricot in our first loot box. We get ginger ale in our second loot box. Drinking this gives a boost to our luck, so this should come in handy at some point in the future. Next, we get honey. That's it, just, just plain old honey. I take a quick break from loot box opening to start the wizard's quest before receiving eggplant parmesan, a salmon, and a melon seed. A pair of boots, a slime ball, and a basic log are next. That's another furniture item I will probably never use. Corn seeds, a uh, brazier... Oh, this happened in a previous season as well. I can't pronounce this. Brazier, I believe. Brazier? Brazier. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. An artifact, a lamppost, a mineral, a carp, more fish, and a green bean are added to our inventory. I make a stop in the saloon to drop off some eggs for Gus, not enough to complete his special order, but still quite a few. We receive milk, a blueberry, unmilled rice, a parsnip, two oysters, more boots, a pepper, a fish, mayonnaise, another apricot, another lamppost, squid ink ravioli, a fiddlehead fern, a parsnip, a flamingo, and a mayonnaise machine. I spend some time fishing at the river where I catch a perch and a lingcod. I head to the sewers and ask Krobus to unlock the entrance to the mutant bug lair. I catch the slime jack, open the chest at the end of the area and receive the dark talisman. This is the item that unlocks the entrance to the next area we need to go to as part of the wizard's quest. I head to the wizard's tower because for some reason I thought the item I had to give him was the dark talisman. This is not the case. I have just wasted quite a bit of time. I want to end the day on a positive note rather than that little oopsie, so I head to the beach where I catch a squid and dig up the ground. This provides us with some winter forage. I make some winter seeds on the morning of day 87. I plant these, then I continue with the wizard's quest. I catch a void salmon in the witch's swamp, followed by a void mayonnaise. I give this void mayonnaise to the goblin henchman, enter the witch's hut, and collect the wizard's ink. 
I deliver the wizard's ink to the wizard, of course, completing his quest. Now we can purchase obelisks, the gold clock, and Junimo huts for our farm in his tower. Next on the agenda is a trip to Ginger Island. I catch a lionfish, then I open a loot box and receive two minerals, a spring seed, and a scythe. This is the first time I've seen a tool in a loot box. Does that mean we can get iridium tools in these? Hopefully we can get some if that's possible. It would be really cool to get an iridium axe or an iridium watering can, for example. We would save money and we wouldn't have to use 5 iridium bars upgrading that tool. I catch a blue discus, open another loot box, then yet another loot box. And that is it for today. Clint sends our watering can back to us on day 88. I finally ask Robin to add a silo to the farm. It's a bit late, but I'm glad I remembered to pick this up in winter. Now we can make sure our animals will have plenty of hay to keep them fed during this season. I ask Clint to crack open some artifact troves and geodes, donate a good few items to the museum and purchase a star drop from Krobus. I purchase four trout soups from Willy, catch the glacier fish and send a duck feather to Leo. I purchase a rare seed from the traveling cart on day 89. I plant it in the greenhouse, then it's off to Ginger Island. I acquire a golden walnut, then I leave the island and make my way to the Skull Caverns instead. We've almost completed the museum collection at this point, so there's going to be a heavy focus on obtaining geodes during the next week or two. I also picked up an autograbber in a chest here. Sweet. I begin day 90 by placing the autograbber in the coop. I place a chest beside the autograbber so everything that it collects will be placed inside the chest. I ask Robin to build a shed on our farm. Just like pretty much every other Stardew Valley playthrough I've done, we're going to have at least two fully upgraded sheds full of kegs. The wine we produce in these sheds will help us raise enough gold to purchase the more expensive items we need to achieve perfection. I purchased 10 stacks of wood which will almost exclusively be used to make kegs in the future, but I do use some of it to make around 40 tappers. I also make some tree fertilizer. I head to the quarry and use bombs to clear the area out. Not only does this free up a ton of space here, but it also gives us quite a few secret notes. I plant all of the acorns I have, making sure to sprinkle fertilizer on them as I do. Finally, I connect the first few rows of trees to the nearby chest. When they're fully grown and I put tappers on them, all of the oak resin they produce will automatically go into that chest. Day 91 is spent in the Skull Caverns. I won't lie, I'm really beginning to love the Skull Caverns. It's actually pretty satisfying making my way through the floors now. I dig up an artifact on day 92. Clint wants us to defeat 50 bats, which is a nice and easy special order. I wanted to go to Ginger Island, but the Festival of Ice takes place today, so Willy's shop is closed, unfortunately. Pam, proving she is a beacon of dedication and commitment, is still willing to drive us to the desert. So I head there and dig up another artifact. It's off to the Festival of Ice for the rest of the day. I pick up a pumpkin soup from the traveling cart because it gives us some bonus luck when we eat it. As always, I do not allow myself to win the fishing competition. This victory is reserved exclusively for Willy. It would legitimately upset me so much if Lewis did not announce him as the winner. I find some fish and a flamingo and a loot box on day 93. I head into Clint's and crack open some geodes and artifact troves. I make a couple of donations to the museum, then it's back to the farm to open some more loot boxes. It feels like every time I get a baked fish in a loot box, it's the only item in that loot box. Interesting. It's off to the beach where I pick up a seed maker, a cockle, a sunflower, an anchovy, and a winter root. It's ginger island time now as I show the wheat, melon, and garlic I grew to the frog in the cave on our farm. This earns us 15 golden walnuts. I go home to pick up my flute blocks, then I return to Ginger Island and pay 20 golden walnuts to have the island resort built. I fish up a walnut from a little pond, dig up another walnut, dig up two artifact troves, and use my flute blocks to complete the mermaid's puzzle, earning another 5 walnuts. I dig up a walnut in the pirate cove, catch a stingray, and harvest the beets that have grown on our farm. This rewards us with another 5 walnuts. I get a chair, two shad, and a loom in a loot box, then I dig up yet another golden walnut and a pearl. I get cranberry seeds and a banana pudding in a loot box, and I think at this point it's safe to say that it's absolutely worth exploring Ginger Island for loot boxes. I unlock the bridge to the dig site area, free Professor Snail, and use bombs to break the rocks in this area. 
I donate two items to the field office, open another loot box, then I dig up another walnut along with an ostrich egg. I collect a few more walnuts before the day ends. The words golden walnut and loot box are going to haunt my nightmares. I cannot believe how many times I've said these words today alone. I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry that you all have to listen to me say those words so many times. I toss the ostrich egg into the shipping bin on day 94. Then I open another loot box. Also, I have collected a total of 80 walnuts at this point. I have a few ideas on how we can get more, so I think it's time for a little golden walnut hunting session. I collect one from a bush, earn two more by answering two questions at the field office, earn another two by donating some items in the same place, go fishing at the dig site to pick up the fossilized spine and try to get a golden coconut from a tree. I had no luck with this, unfortunately. I dig up a snake vertebrae on day 95, then I return to Pelican Town where I visit the quarry and put tappers on the oak trees that have grown. I harvest the winter forage that has appeared, make some more winter seeds and plant all of them. A dinosaur egg has hatched, so I call our new baby dinosaur Feppa. Yeah, I accidentally clicked on the default name it gave us. I didn't actually want to call it that, but oh well, what can you do? I deliver some eggs to Gus, bringing us up to a total of 24, which is what he asked for. Someone has destroyed a loot box again, shocker. I get trout soup, a coconut, a dagger, a pair of shoes, a chanterelle, a leek, some decorative items, a cactus fruit, and Sam's old guitar. I now have three of Sam's old guitars. It's getting a bit weird at this point. Also, how many guitars does Sam need? Why has he thrown away three of his old guitars? Why did he need three in the first place? Are there more broken guitars? Where am I? Who am I? Why am I? It's off to the mines for the rest of the day to collect frozen geodes and defeat bats for Clint's special order. I managed to get a golden coconut on day 96, then I complete the Simon Says game in a cave to earn three golden walnuts. I spend the rest of the day fishing for, of course, more golden walnuts. Day 97. We have now collected a total of 91 golden walnuts. We're almost there, we're actually so close now. I dig up a walnut, donate two items to the field office, make a monster musk, buy two heaters and a good bit of hay from Marnie, and crack open a golden coconut to receive a golden walnut. The rest of the day is spent in the mines collecting frozen geodes and finishing off Clint's special order. Clint sends us the crafting recipe for the geode crusher on the morning of day 98. Also, Gus sends us the mini fridge for completing his special order. I break a muscle node on Ginger Island and receive a golden walnut, then it's off to the volcano dungeon. I use my watering can to make a bridge to the left side of the entrance area, then I go through a door leading to two hidden golden walnuts. I spend the majority of the day going through the volcano, defeating monsters and breaking rocks to collect more golden walnuts. I do make time to visit the pirate cave at the end of the day though. I play a game of darts three times to earn three more walnuts. Also, I managed to play a perfect game. Basically, for this game of darts, you need to score 301 points. A perfect game requires you to earn 60 points five times in a row, then earn one more point. I actually got pretty nervous during this for some reason, but I managed to do it. Honestly, that might be what I'm most proud of achieving during this entire playthrough so far. I gain access to Mr. Key's walnut room on day 99. I accept his quest to bring him four prismatic shards. All of the time I've spent in the skull caverns and in the mines has given us a plentiful amount of prismatic shards, so I don't mind giving them away for this quest. I purchase some bait, trout soups and lead bobbers from Willy, then I pay somebody to teleport me back to the farm. After collecting my geodes, I accept an order from Caroline. She wants us to grow and ship 100 pineapples. That is not happening and I do not know why I accepted that quest. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love to complete that quest because the reward is the crafting recipe for the solar panel, but we don't have enough time to grow that many pineapples. I crack open my geodes and I don't receive a ghost crystal or a lunarite, which I believe are the final two minerals I need to donate to the museum. I deliver four prismatic shards to Mr. Key, completing his order and earning 40 key gems. I use these gems to purchase 100 magic bait. Now it is time to do something I wasn't able to do during spring. It is time to catch the legend. Like I said at the end of spring, magic bait allows us to catch the legend during any season. 
So, armed with nothing but sheer willpower, I failed to catch the legend. This is going to be rough. Day 100 starts in a delightful way as our beloved loot boxes have appeared again. The first one is actually really good. A solar essence, a topaz and a phoenix ring. As far as I know, when you get knocked out while wearing this ring, you get back half of your maximum health when you wake up. It also can only be found in chests in the volcano dungeon. Our second chest gives us a mineral, an oyster, an egg, two sardines and a common mushroom. While footage of me opening loot boxes plays, I want to say something about my plan for the next batch of loot boxes next week. At this point, we're really close to completing the museum collection and catching every fish. Those are two of our goals. I said before that when I complete two goals, I will adjust the settings of the loot boxes as a reward. We should have both of these goals completed at some point next week, so we're finally going to see what happens when the amount of loot boxes that appear is increased. As well as this, we'll see what happens when the amount of gold we get is increased and the chance of finding a rare item is increased. I am very excited, to say the least. Also, I apologize if these rambles while I'm opening loot boxes aren't your thing. I've tried to find a good balance of me listing out every item I get and doing these rambles, so hopefully the whole loot boxes aspect is still enjoyable for you to watch. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out so far, but you know, there's always room for improvement, so we'll see how things go. But for now, I'm going to stick with a mix of rambling and listing every item I get. It's off to the night market for the rest of the day where I enter the submarine and do some fishing to catch the blobfish, the midnight squid and the spookfish. The only fish that remains for us to catch is of course, the legend. I turned some coffees I bought in the saloon last night into triple shot espressos on day 101. I harvest the winter forage that has grown and use them and some other winter forage I had to make winter seeds which I plant in water. Then it's off to the mountain lake where I once again fail to catch the legend. Look at how many nautilus shells there are at the beach on day 102. Look, I know it's not really a big deal, but I needed something nice after that failed attempt at catching the legend yesterday, so I'm like, this means the world to me right now. I use my remaining key gems to buy 20 more magic bait, just in case, along with 10 key seasoning. I purchase lead bobbers and a couple of trap bobbers from Willy, then I use the key seasoning I bought to make a gold star seafoam pudding. This gives us a plus 5 to our fishing skill. I eat this, equip a trap bobber to my fishing rod and prepare for the biggest challenge of this playthrough so far. I caught the legend first try. I really do not understand this game sometimes. I have struggled so much. I have failed to catch the legend so many times before this. Then I eat a seafoam pudding and use a trap bobber and I catch it with no trouble at all. I do not understand. I'm not going to lie though, I am really proud of myself right now. Not only have we caught the legend, we've also completed the fishing collection which means that one of our four goals for this year has been completed. After purchasing some mega bombs from the dwarf, I head into the mines where I of course collect frozen geodes. I also spent day 103 collecting frozen geodes. Also on day 103, Willy sends us a star drop for completing the fishing collection. It's kind of funny to me how Willy says in his letter that it's been passed down through his family for a thousand years. Then he finally gives it to someone outside his family and we eat it. I, I would be a bit annoyed about that if I was Willy. I head to Clint's on day 104 and finally receive the ghost crystal. Once again, I purchase mega bombs from the dwarf and spend the rest of the day as well as day 105 collecting frozen geodes. On day 106, I enter Clint's shop, crack open my geodes and receive lunarite. I donate this to the museum and nothing happens because I forgot to take the dinosaur egg with me. I could have just gone back to my farm and collected it from the chest it was in, but I was so annoyed with myself that I just went to sleep instead. Our winter forage is ready for harvest on day 107. You know, it's been fun harvesting this forage and turning them into seeds, but I'm afraid this is our final harvesting session for winter. I donate a dinosaur egg to the museum, fully completing the collection. I earn a star drop as a reward. But that is not the only reward we receive, no, you see that's our second goal completed which means it's time to improve the quality of the loot boxes. The results of this will be seen when we open them tomorrow. In the meantime, I accept an order from Mr. Key which requires us to basically catch all five legendary fish again. 
I may have accepted his order, but I'm not going to do it. I'm staying well away from fishing, for a while at least. I use 5 walnuts to unlock the mailbox outside our Ginger Island farmhouse, then I use another 20 to have the warp tower built. This allows us to teleport back to Pelican Town from Ginger Island. Alright, let's not waste any time. Day 108 is loot box day. Our first one contains squid ink ravioli, an artifact for the island field office, a fish, and a statue. Green tea and an artifact are found in the second loot box, followed by a sword, two copper bars, another statue, a pepper, a cheese press, a bean hot pot, an eel, and a plant. All of these loot boxes were located on the farm too. It feels like we're already getting more loot boxes and more items. But we're not necessarily getting any rare items. That could change though, so we'll see what happens with the rest of the loot boxes. I get a thorns ring in the loot box, which is a good find. There was a keg in that same loot box too. I will say, it almost feels like we're back on day one with how quickly our inventory is filling up. I know that might sound like a complaint, but honestly it makes me pretty happy. It's nice getting a ton of items. This does mean, however, that I won't be able to list every item I receive because I would be here for a long, long, long time if I did that now that there's more items in every loot box. I get a tuna in a loot box. That's it. It feels like I'm getting a ton of cooked dishes now, which I certainly will not complain about. I also found a pair of genie shoes, so of course I'm going to wear them for the rest of this playthrough. It's been a while since I've seen a deluxe scarecrow, so I was very pleased to get one in a loot box. Meanwhile, the loom has slowly been making more and more appearances. Opening all of these loot boxes has made me so excited to see what happens when I complete another two goals. Especially when it comes to increasing the chance of getting a rare item. Will we get an iridium axe? 10 prismatic shards? A sweet gem berry? Multiple key gems? Who knows? That does pose the question of how many goals do I set for the second year? I was originally planning on setting 4 goals, but the more goals we have, the more goals we can complete. The more goals we complete, the more times we can adjust the settings of our loot boxes. I will give it some thought and list my goals for the second year at the end of winter. Also, look at this little sneaky loot box. I went through the bushy area to collect a hidden golden walnut and found a loot box here. That really surprised me. Some bad news now, as even on Ginger Island, our loot boxes are not safe. Another has been broken. This is always a very sad moment. Day 109 is a very laid back day, which I am pretty grateful for, because honestly hunting all of those loot boxes yesterday took a lot out of me. I head to the feast of the Winter Star Festival and give a summer spangle to Caroline. Jody then gives me a purple mushroom. Thanks. On day 110, I have once again made the error of going to Robin's too early. At this point, I fear this is a habit I will not be able to break. Instead of waiting, I head to the mines and do some fishing to collect trash. I accepted a special order from Linus to put 20 pieces of trash into a bin, and this is one of the easiest ways to get that trash. On day 111, Linus is... um... Uh, I... 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 I don't know. I actually don't know how to describe this. Let's just move on. Um... I head to Robin's. You will notice the time at the top right. It happened. Why? Like, okay, I get it. You want to go for a swim, but during winter, like, it has to be freezing. Why? Why would you? I asked Robin to upgrade one of her sheds. Um, that's what I did. That's the entire. I'm really confused. Why did Linus do that? All right, day 112. Let's forget about yesterday and focus entirely on today, the final day of our first year. Look at that. We made it. Well done, us. I collect the oak resin that has been deposited in the chest at the quarry, collect a banana from our banana tree, and throw it into the shipping bin. I have now officially not completed my goal to do the entire shipping collection. You will notice two blank spaces in the screenshots on the screen right now. One is for the banana, which we have just taken care of. The other is for the radioactive bar. I do not have a radioactive bar. I also do not have enough radioactive ore to make a radioactive bar right now. This means we have failed our goal to complete the shipping collection. Sad times. But that is not all. I also reached maximum friendship with every villager. Except Leo. 
He's at like two hearts, so I, I failed that goal too. So overall, we failed two goals and completed two goals for our first year. You know what? I'm not too disappointed by that. It sucks, yeah, that we failed those goals, but we got really close, so I'm happy with how far we've gotten. Now, let's talk about our goals for year two. I have decided to set another four goals. Number one, craft every item. Number two, cook every recipe. Number three, ask Krobus to be our roommate. And number four, earn a total of 10 million gold. These goals should keep us on track and help us make steady progress throughout year two. Of course, I also want to complete the two goals I failed this year. Also, at the end of this playthrough, I'm going to make some really big changes to the loot box settings and see how wild things get with them. Any whomst, I hope you have enjoyed watching the first year unfold. I will see you all in year two. Day 113. The first day of our second year begins with a visit from Kent who has just returned to Pelican Town. Now we have to get him and Leo to maximum hearts. But still I suppose that's not too bad. I clear the farm of some debris that has appeared, mainly fiber and grass. I don't mind though, it's honestly pretty satisfying getting rid of this stuff with the scythe. I purchase just over 500 cauliflower seeds from Pierre, then I spend the rest of the day planting all of them. I'm hoping to have at least 200,000 gold by the end of spring so we can plant a ton of starfruit seeds at the beginning of summer. So we shall be planting quite a few cauliflower seeds this season. I accept a quest from Robin to collect and deliver 80 hardwood to her on day 114. The reward for this special order is that a new bed will be added to her shop. We don't get a crafting recipe so it's not really important for us to complete this one. I sell some pumpkin seeds to Pierre and use the gold I receive to purchase a ticket to Ginger Island. I clean up the farm here, then I accept a special order from Mr. Key to deliver four prismatic shards to him. I don't like giving prismatic shards away at this point, but there are still quite a few things I need to purchase from his shop, so this has to be done unfortunately. Just before I head to bed, I talk to Birdie to start her quest. Day 115 is the first loot box opening session of year 2. How very exciting! The first loot box gives us five rainbow trout, a lamp post, and an oyster. This is followed by another rainbow trout, a tea sapling, boots, nine blueberries, a mineral, and a cooked dish. I am in desperate need of some gold, so I throw a few items into the shipping bin, then I receive a wilted bouquet and a keg from a loot box. Kegs are probably the item I want the most at this point, so I'm very happy about this. Next, I receive a void essence, an artifact, a tropical curry, a mineral, an eggplant, an artifact, pancakes, two decorative items, and another artifact. I spot a deluxe scarecrow and other items on the ground outside Willie's shop, so I quickly scoop them up. I decide to check the tide pool area, and I'm glad I did, because I found a loot box that contains a soul sapper ring, a lobster, and a parsnip soup. It's while I'm collecting these loot boxes that I realize how much this is going to help us with the cooking and crafting recipes. We have received so many items that are needed for these various recipes, so I think the whole process of crafting every item and cooking every dish is going to be a lot more convenient than it normally is. Which is especially good news for us because both of those are goals I set for year two. It is also at this point that I wish I installed the mod that adds a third backpack upgrade to the game. We could really do with the extra inventory space right about now. But, you know, live and learn. And it does add a bit of a challenge element to the playthrough, so I suppose it's not all bad. Once again, the game has decided to taunt me by spawning a loot box in a place I cannot reach. It's actually kind of funny when this happens now, I'm not even annoyed by it anymore. I find Harvey's mallet in a loot box. Just like Alex's bat and Sam's old guitar, it is another weapon that you can't normally obtain. Speaking of Sam's old guitar, I receive another one in a loot box. I purchase some coffees from Gus, then I finish the day by doing a lap around the forest, opening loot boxes as I do. Now that I've realized just how many of these items will help us with the various recipes, I can't help but smile every time I get even the most basic of items like a void essence or a garlic or any crop really. All in all, I would say this was a very successful day of loot box opening. I quickly harvest a sweet gem berry in the greenhouse before passing out. 
On day 116, I turn my coffees into triple shot espressos, then I give the memento birdie gave us to Kent. I pick up some items on the beach on Ginger Island, then I open up a loot box. I receive Haley's Iron. These unobtainable weapons would have been nice to get at the start of the game, but I can still treat them as like collector items at this point. I might dedicate a room in my house to displaying all of the weapons I get. I plant some ancient seeds, then I open up another loot box, followed by, you guessed it, another loot box. I receive a pair of boots, which I will happily add to my shoe collection, and a rusty sword, which I will kind of unhappily add to my weapon collection, I guess. Nothing against the rusty sword, it just pales in comparison to Haley's iron. I receive a snake vertebrae, pick up some items from the ground, and give the gourmet tomato salt to Gus, who gives us a Stardew Valley rose in return. I buy 500 cauliflower seeds, then I spot a loot box inside Pierre's shop. I somehow didn't see this when I walked in. I'm not sure how I managed to do that. I spend the rest of the day planting most of the cauliflower seeds I purchased. I plant a few more cauliflower seeds on the morning of day 117. I pay a visit to Clint, who isn't there, shocker. I sell some items to Pierre and find some loot boxes in the desert. It honestly never crossed my mind to check for loot boxes in this location. Unless I am terribly mistaken, I think this is the first time I've actually opened the loot box here. I give the Stardew Valley Rose to Sandy, who gives us the advanced TV remote. I spend the rest of the day in the Skull Caverns. I pay a visit to Robin's shop on day 118, where I purchase some wood. I was going to use this wood to have a shed upgraded, but I can no longer afford to upgrade this shed after buying the wood. So instead, I just ask Robin to build a brand new shed on the farm. I give the TV remote to George, receive an arctic shard, sell some salads to Pierre, and use the gold I get from that to purchase a workbench from Robin. I give the arctic shard to the wizard and receive a worm. Once again, it's back to Pierre's to sell more salads. I head to Ginger Island where I collect three bananas and realize I forgot to give the worm to Willy. I sell even more salads to Pierre so I can afford another ticket to Ginger Island, give the worm to William, receive the pirate's locket, and give it to Birdie, completing her quest. She rewards us with golden walnuts and the crafting recipe for fairy dust. I deliver four prismatic shards to Mr. Key and use the key gems I receive as a reward to purchase nothing. I want to buy Pierre's missing stock list so Pierre will start selling every seed during any season. I need 50 gems for this so I'm going to save up until I can afford it. I find a loot box in the jungle and place a banana on a podium to receive three more golden walnuts. I collect some oak resin on day 119 and add more kegs to the keg shed. I'm also making sure to send gifts to both Leo and Kent. I would like to reach maximum friendship with both of them as soon as I can. Next stop is the Adventurer's Guild. I'm pretty close to completing the remaining monster eradication goals, so I spend the rest of the day as well as days 120 and 121 inside the mines working on them. Also, the old abandoned Georgia Mart has been struck by lightning. Interesting. Day 122 is another loot box day. I won't lie, at this point I genuinely considered adding the mod I talked about earlier that adds another backpack upgrade to the game. But I stayed strong. I am an absolute beacon of willpower and perseverance. That and I'm too lazy to add the mod at this point, so it just wasn't happening. Another thought I had that's related to the whole loot boxes thing is a mod that lets you view all of the items you have stored in chests from one menu. For example, we have around 40 chests on the farm with random items in them. This mod would allow us to see every item in these chests and take items from these chests without actually going through any of them. It would make things a lot more convenient for us to say the least. But like I said, I do like that there is a bit of a challenge attached to the whole loot box thing in terms of managing all of the items we get and sorting our inventory. And again, I'm very lazy, so I can't be bothered adding another mod at this point. At the end of the day, I donate four items to the final bundle in the abandoned Georgia Mart. I ask Robin to upgrade our shed on day 123. I also purchase two mini fridges. I spend some time cutting grass to add more hay to the silo, gotta keep our animals happy, then I spend the remainder of the day chopping down trees for wood. I already have quite a bit of wood, but I'm always happy to get more. Day 124 is Cauliflower Harvest Day. Our bank account has been in complete shambles for the last few days, so I am very happy about this. I sell all of my cauliflower to Pierre and purchase another 500 cauliflower seeds. 
I also realized that I accepted a special order to harvest and ship 100 cauliflower, so selling all of the cauliflower I had wasn't exactly the smartest choice I've made. But we will be able to buy back our cauliflower at a later date, so it's all good. Over on Ginger Island, I finally received the quest that changes the Skull Caverns. This means I can get radioactive ore. We will also receive 40 key gems if we reach floor 100, so I really want to complete this quest. I head to the saloon and buy some coffees and salads, turn my coffees into triple shot espressos and purchase some mega bombs from the dwarf and some explosive ammo from Marlin. Once again, I have to sell some salads to Pierre in order to be able to afford a bus ticket to the desert. Once I get to the desert, I trade 10 iridium bars for the desert warp totem crafting recipe, make some staircases and craft the desert warp totem. I spend the rest of the day planting my cauliflower seeds. I immediately warp to the desert on day 125. I'm taking absolutely zero chances here, I really want to reach floor 100 in the Skull Caverns. There are two reasons for this. Number one is I of course want to complete Mr. Key's quest. And number two, I haven't actually landed on floor 100 yet in this playthrough. This means I haven't watched the cutscene where Mr. Key gives us a drink that boosts our maximum health by 25 points. I want that. Thanks to a combination of the staircases, salads, explosive ammo, and bombs, I eventually make it to floor 100. This wasn't easy, I'll be honest, but it also could have been a lot worse. I mean, I have spent quite a bit of time in the Skull Cavern, so I would have been just a little bit upset with myself if I hadn't made it to floor 100. But I did, so I received the boost to my maximum health along with 40 key gems. What an absolutely marvelous day. On day 126, I finally get started on cleaning up the storage situation. I'm sure at least a couple of you have seen all of the chests on my farm and thought to yourselves, Wow, I really hope he cleans up his farm soon. I actually cannot believe how many random chests full of random items he has just scattered around the farm. Well, rest assured, I will put my entire being into making this storage shed look good. That being said, I do take a quick break to harvest some cauliflower. That was kind of poor timing, actually, now that I think about it. Maybe I'm not putting my entire being into making a nice storage shed. It's more like 95% of my being. Anyway, I toss a radioactive bar into the shipping bin, which means the shipping collection has finally been completed. That is one of the goals we failed during our first year done and dusted. Nice. I head to the desert and trade Void Essence for the Void Ghost Pendant. I give this to Krobus, asking him to be our roommate. And with that, we have completed our goal to have Krobus move in with us. But, that is also another two goals completed, which means I can improve the settings of the loot boxes for the second time. I buy back 77 cauliflower, which combined with the cauliflower I harvested today, will result in us shipping more than enough to complete the special order to ship 100 cauliflower. I spend the rest of the day continuing to work on the storage shed. I can indeed confirm the shipping collection has been completed on day 127, which is a lovely sight. More cauliflower is ready for harvest, which is even more lovely. Again, the rest of the day is spent organizing all of our items. I also quickly accept an order from Robin to collect 1,000 pieces of stone. Surprise, surprise, day 128 is spent working on the shed. Some fantastic news as day 129 is loot box day. My favorite time of the week. The amount of gold we get, the chance of getting rare items, and the overall quality of the items we get has been improved, so I'm very excited to see what we get here. It might be placebo effect, but I feel like I'm already seeing a difference, especially when it comes to the amount of an item we get. As in, we're getting multiple of the same cooking dish or multiple fish. I also get a star fruit in the loot box, which to me is evidence that we're well on the way to getting some high tier crops and items. Maybe we'll see a sweet gem berry or an ancient fruit soon. I also find a golden walnut in a loot box. Achieving perfection requires you to collect 130 golden walnuts, so finding these in the loot boxes is actually helping us a ton. It gives us a bit of leeway when it comes to finding all of the walnuts. Let's say I've received 4 of the 5 walnuts you get from fishing. I could spend more time fishing to get that one remaining walnut, or I could just say, well, I've got a golden walnut from a loot box, so I can just leave the fishing one alone. I don't actually need it anymore. That's a really nice bonus that I hadn't considered before. Also, the amount of gold we're getting is sort of hit or miss now. Sometimes my gold will increase by 300 or so when I open a loot box, then I'll open a different loot box and receive around 2000 gold. 
so by the time I complete the remaining goals and adjust the settings, I could be getting around four or 5,000 gold from each loot box, which would be very nice. I take a break from opening loot boxes to collect some oak resin and ask Robin to upgrade our house. Also, a loot box appeared right beside the shipping bin on Ginger Island. Every time I tried to open it, I opened the shipping bin menu instead. This was actually kind of funny to me, so I didn't mind not being able to get that one. Actually, saying that, with my luck, I guarantee there was a prismatic shard or a golden walnut or both in that loot box. Oh well, I guess we'll never know. I purchased Pierre's missing stock list and the key to the town for Mr. Key. Just in case anybody does not know, the key to the town allows us to enter any building regardless of the time. For example, Pierre's shop normally opens at 9am, but with this key we can enter his shop before then. It's more for convenience and saving a bit of time than anything else. I collect two artifacts for the field office from a chest, open a few more loot boxes but don't get anything interesting, and donate the two artifacts. The island field office collection has been fully completed. I receive nine golden walnuts, a mango tree sapling, and a banana tree sapling as rewards. I purchase some salads and coffees in the saloon along with some mega bombs from the dwarf before the day ends. A mini cauliflower harvesting session takes place on day 130. Oh, also, Gus was on Ginger Island yesterday, so I purchased the tropical curry cooking recipe from him, as well as a gold star bottle of mango wine. I donate the mango wine to finish off the final bundle. The abandoned Georgia Mart will be replaced with a theater overnight. I give Pierre's missing stock list to Pierre and sell my cauliflower. I also found a loot box inside the shop again. Then I head to the desert where I open some loot boxes here. Now that I know they spawn here, I'll be sure to check this place out every week. The rest of the day, as well as days 131 and 132, are spent in the Skull Caverns, working on the monster eradication goals. On day 133, I've decided to start putting all of the ingredients needed for cooking recipes into the mini fridges I have. I want to get an idea of how many items I still need to collect for these recipes. The answer? Very few items, actually. I purchase the seeds of the crops I still need for these recipes from Pierre along with the flower seeds that I will need for a crafting recipe. In the secret woods, I give a sweet gem berry to the old Master Cannoli statue in exchange for a star drop. Then I plant all of the seeds I bought earlier today. You will notice I purchased 25 garlic seeds. That is because we will need 10 garlic to craft an item in the future. I am happy to announce on day 134 that once the crops have grown, we will have every item we need for the cooking recipes. That is absolutely tremendous news. The day gets even better as many, many, many cauliflowers are ready for harvest. I decide to toss around 200 of these into kegs to make cauliflower juice. I sell the rest of my cauliflower to Pierre. Next stop is Robin's, where I ask her to add two new rooms to her house, completely free of charge, I might add, which is very kind of her. I also ask her to upgrade the third shed on the farm. Next, I set up a crafting station in her house. The workbench lets us craft things using the items in any chest beside it. So, I get to work on gathering all of the items I need for the crafting recipes and putting them into the chests around the workbench. Similar to the cooking recipes, I already have almost every item needed for these recipes. I will be entirely honest and say that this is in large part thanks to the loot boxes. There are at least a few items I would not have right now if I hadn't found them in loot boxes. Our garlic and bok choy are ready for harvest on day 135. I gotta say, bok choy? One of the coolest names I've ever heard for a vegetable. Anyway, I plant some mahogany tree seeds and sprinkle fertilizer on them. I need quite a bit of hardwood for crafting recipes, so I want to make sure these grow as quickly as possible. Next on the agenda is a trip to the desert where I do a bit of foraging, then I accept a special order from Gunther. He wants us to collect 100 bones. The reward for this is a crafting recipe, so of course I accept it. I pick up a clam at the beach and some bananas on Ginger Island. I also collect some cinder shards and dragon teeth from a chest. I accept an order from Mr. Key to bring him 100 each of different colored items. I dig up a golden walnut and collect another walnut from a bush. I open some loot boxes on the Ginger Island farm on day 136. Look, I'm gonna be completely honest here, I don't know how to make this entertaining anymore. 
I've run out of things to ramble about that are actually related to the playthrough, and, and there's too many items in each loot box to list them all. I could start rambling about random things, but if there's one thing you need to know about me, it's that when I start rambling about something, I do not know when to close my mouth. It's, it's a bit of a problem, really. Like, I really want to be mysterious and cool, but I simply do not know how to stop talking. Any whomst, I head to the flower festival where I purchase the tub of flowers crafting recipe and a rare crow. Then I decide to dance with... nobody. Yeah, you see, my dancing skills are so good that I have actually been banned from participating in the flower dance. A apparently I would make all the other villagers look terrible, so Mayor Lewis said I just have to watch everyone else dance. Fair enough. When I return home, I take all of the items I need to purchase the obelisks in the wizard's tower and put them into a chest. I still need a few more dragon teeth, bananas and clams, but other than that, I'm all good. I begin day 137 by putting a battery into a box in the tunnel beside the bus stop and placing a rainbow shell into a box near the bathhouse. I put 10 beets into the fridge in Mira Lewis's house, purchase 74 Georgia Colas in the saloon, collect some bananas from a chest on Ginger Island, and drop off some items in Mr. Key's walnut room. I believe I only need to drop off 34 more red items to complete his order. I make a desert warp totem, teleport to the desert, and put a solar essence into the mouth of the dragon skeleton. And that is it for today. I collect cauliflower juice from kegs on day 138 and find the casino membership card just outside our house. Just to clarify, this card appears here after you delivered the battery, rainbow shell, beets and solar essence to the places I delivered them yesterday. I sell my cauliflower juice to Pierre, purchase 34 spaghettis and 75 coffees from Gus, turn my coffees into triple shot espressos as always, and deliver the spaghetti to Mr. Key, completing his order and earning 40 key gems. I use these gems to purchase the Heavy Tapper and Deluxe Fertilizer crafting recipes, then I spend the rest of the day as well as day 139 going through the Volcano Dungeon. The purpose of this was to collect Dragon Teeth and work on the Monster Eradication Goals. Artichokes, Yams, Red Cabbage, Fairy Roses and Taro Roots are ready on day 140. I toss these into a mini fridge, collect a couple of oak resin at the bus stop, collect quite a bit more oak resin at the quarry, and purchase two movie tickets. I give one of these tickets to Kent. In the theater, I buy popcorn for him and watch a movie called The Brave Little Sapling, which Kent seems to enjoy. The theater will help us reach Max's friendship with Kent and Leo even quicker, so I'm very happy it has been unlocked. I harvest some pineapples and ancient fruit on Ginger Island and place them into a chest beside seed makers to get pineapple and ancient fruit seeds. I head to Robin's shop and purchase all of the crafting recipes she has for sale, collect my seeds from the seed maker chest and plant them in the greenhouse. Now that I've taken everything I need for the crafting and cooking recipes and the obelisks and put them into chests, I can safely begin selling pretty much everything else I have. This also means that when I open loot boxes in the future, I can sell all of the items I get from them. I will be holding on to the items I need to make kegs though, so copper and iron bars, oak resin and wood. And I will also make sure I keep items I can give to Kent and Leo as gifts. But other than that, we're about to start making a ton of gold. And with that, I think it's time to say goodbye to our second spring. I'm gonna be honest, I achieved a lot more than I expected to achieve this season. We got a ton of prep work done in terms of the crafting and cooking recipes, our friendships with Leo and Kent are looking pretty good, and overall I would say we are well on our way to achieving perfection. I look forward to seeing what happens in summer. Day 141 I start by heading to the sewers and purchasing two crafting recipes. And now I'm going to completely change the format of this video. At this point, the only things I have left to do to achieve perfection are the following. Build the four obelisks and the golden clock. Finish off the slime and Dougie's monster eradication goals. Get Kent and Leo to maximum friendship. Level up my foraging skill one more time. Obtain one more star drop by getting Krobus to 12 and a half hearts. Unlock a couple more crafting and cooking recipes and find three more golden walnuts. So, to avoid a situation where I talk about a bunch of things that aren't really important, or at least more so than I normally do, which is quite a bit, I'm going to talk about what I did each week instead of each day. 
With that out of the way, days 141 through 147 are spent accepting a special order to once again bring Mr. Key a bunch of different coloured items. I also harvest ancient fruit, buy back some ancient fruit that I sold and toss the ancient fruit into seed makers. I purchase star fruit seeds from Sandy and plant them on the farm. I open up some loot boxes and from this point forward I won't be showing me opening them all up. Instead, I will put all of the items I receive from them into chess and show them all at the end of each season. Also, here is a quick update on the greenhouse. It is almost entirely filled with ancient fruit seeds. There's also a few corn seeds and pineapple seeds which I will replace with ancient fruit seeds in the future. Finally, I spend quite a bit of time working on the remaining monster eradication goals. During days 148 through 154, I received the final star drop I needed from Krobus, which honestly wasn't difficult at all. We're able to give Krobus a gift every day because he's a roommate, which greatly speeds up the whole process. I finish off the monster eradication goals by defeating the final doggy I needed. I'm always really happy to cross this one off the list. I spend some time in the volcano dungeon where I use golden walnuts to unlock the shortcut to the shop and I purchase a cooking and crafting recipe from the dwarf here. Once again, I open up some loot boxes, collect oak resin from the quarry, and harvest starfruit. I toss some of the starfruit into the keg shed and sell the rest of them to Pierre. I ask Robin to add a cellar to the house, purchase two cinema tickets, buy some coffees in the saloon and some starfruit seeds from Sandy, and watch the Journey of the Prairie King movie with Kent. I plant the starfruit seeds, collect more oak resin, and begin filling up a second shed with kegs. I also get started on creating an ancient fruit empire on the Ginger Island farm. Here is a bit of a progress update on how the farm looks to begin days 155 through 161. It's not much, but it's honest work. I actually cannot believe I referenced that meme in 2023. What am I doing? I exchange some golden walnuts for key gems and once again I accept the different colored item special order from Mr. Key. We have also finally received a special order from Caroline. Completing her special order will reward us with the solar panel crafting recipe. I've put a ton of work into collecting as many pineapple seeds as possible so I am absolutely positively prepared for this special order. There is one small problem though. Caroline wants us to grow and ship 100 taro roots, not 100 pineapples. That is a bit of a curveball to say the least, but there is no way I'm going to allow myself to miss out on that crafting recipe. I collect some key seasoning from a chest and I use it to make a gold star lucky lunch. Eating this will give a nice boost to our luck. I collect some star fruit from a keg shed, sell it to Pierre and buy deluxe speed grow. I head to Ginger Island and exchange bone fragments for 36 taro tubers, bringing us up to a total of 43, which I plant with the Deluxe Speed Grow. The plan is to harvest all of the taro roots when they're ready and put them into seed makers. I will then plant all of the seeds we get from these seed makers. I sell some items to Pierre, and actually I don't think I need to say I sold things to Pierre anymore unless I make like a couple hundred thousand gold from it. So you won't have to listen to me say that anymore. I head to the casino where I eat my lucky lunch to boost our luck and spend quite a bit of time using the slot machines. Eventually I earn 8900 key coins so I spend some gold to bring us up to a total of 10,000. I use these to purchase the alien rare crow. I plant more ancient fruit seeds on Ginger Island, buy a rare crow from the dwarf and collect one rare crow and a skeleton statue from the rewards available to us at the museum. I didn't mean to pick up the skeleton statue, there's there's actually a second rare crow in the museum, that's, that's what I actually wanted to pick up, not the skeleton statue. I return a short while later to collect the aforementioned second rare crow. Then I start opening up loot boxes, actually why am I mentioning this, I already said I'm just going to show every item I get at the end of the season, there's no reason for me to mention this anymore, I apologize. That, that was just a bit of a lackadaisical moment on my part. I collect some starfruit wine, plant some summer forage seeds, and harvest the first batch of taro roots that have grown. I toss these into a seed maker and plant the resulting 26 taro tubers. Another starfruit seed shopping spree is on the agenda, along with the routine acquisition of Deluxe Speed Grow. I plant the starfruit seeds on Ginger Island. I watch a movie with Kent, harvest some taro roots, toss them into a seed maker, and use bombs to break the rocks at the dig site. The goal here is of course to obtain more bone fragments. 
I've already got some bone fragments with me that I obtained from defeating skeletons, so I take my alarmingly sized collection of bones to the island trader. I exchanged these for another 42 taro tubers which I plant on the ginger island farm. I make sure to put them close to the river so they grow faster. Alright, we're almost at the end of summer, nice. Days 162 through 168 are spent harvesting starfruit, purchasing the final three crafting recipes you can get from Mr. Key along with Mr. Key's hat for some reason, harvesting summer forage, watching a movie with Kent, I really want to get this friendship goal out of the way, and sending a duck feather to Leo for his birthday which results in us reaching maximum friendship with him. Now only Kent remains. I harvest all of the tower roots that have grown along with a ton of star fruit, throw the tower roots into the shipping bin, harvest even more star fruit and toss them into keg shed number 1 and keg shed number 2. I visit Robin and buy a couple stacks of wood, then I head to Clint so I can get copper ore and coal. I receive the crafting recipe for the solar panel, collect oak resin and cook almost every recipe I have unlocked so far. I retrieve a few ingredients I need from the chest where I've kept all of the loot box items I've received during summer and make a few more dishes. I then repeat this process for the crafting recipes, making every item I've unlocked so far. I buy tomato seeds because I need them for a couple of cooking recipes along with some extra cooking ingredients just to be on the safe side. I finish off the season by planting my tomato seeds. Also, I was going to show footage of me opening every chest I store the loot box items in, but that footage is like 2 minutes long. So, in the spirit of saving time, I am instead going to put screenshots of the items I received on the screen. I will have 3 separate groups of screenshots and I'll show each group on the screen for like 10 seconds maybe? But of course, do feel free to pause the video if you need more time to look at them. I'll still be here, waiting patiently. Also, a handy feature of the automate mod is that I can use wood pathways to connect the chest to the shipping bin. Every item that can be thrown into the shipping bin will automatically be deposited into it. That is very handy, very handy indeed. I receive around 71,000 gold for the items I got in loot boxes. I thought I'd get around 100,000 gold at least, but you know, not every loot box can be a winner. Moving on to the season of fall now as we begin days 169 through 175. I collect starfruit wine from a keg shed, not just once but twice, and it was very, very nice. Also, some fantastic news as I realize I have learned the recipe for roasted hazelnuts on the last day of summer. This is perfect timing as Kent loves roasted hazelnuts. Not only that, but we only need three hazelnuts to make the dish, and hazelnuts are a fall forage item. I decide to reset my foraging perk as I want to choose the perk that gives us a chance to collect two of any forage item we pick up. It's movie time once again, Kent is receiving the royalty treatment today as I get a star drop sorbet for him. Unfortunately Kent isn't the biggest fan of the movie that is playing this month. This means we won't get any friendship points for the movie aspect but we will still get the bonus 50 friendship points for getting him the snacks he loves. I sell my starfruit wine to Pier and choose the foraging perk I mentioned earlier. Deluxe Speed Grow has quickly become my new favorite item in the game. I collect the fruit in the bat cave and plant the fall forage seeds I made. A mini ancient fruit harvesting session takes place and I gotta say, our ancient fruit empire is really coming along nicely now thanks to the planting of more seeds. I've decided to plant ancient fruit seeds on the farm in Pelican Town as well as on the Ginger Island farm. This will help us get even more ancient fruit seeds. And ancient fruit has now been added to the growing list of words that I have said way too many times during this playthrough. I use the fall forage I harvested along with the forage I kept in a chest to make more fall seeds which I plant. The goal is to max out our foraging skill by the end of fall. I have been dilly dallying for far too long when it comes to that. More ancient fruit is ready, delicious. I stand on my farm for a few seconds, not entirely sure what I was doing here. I collect more wine, sell it to Pierre, I cannot emphasize how much I enjoy using the Lux Speed Grow and present a magnificent dish of roasted hazelnuts to Kent. Moving on to days 176 through 182, I begin by harvesting the fall forage that has grown. I use that forage along with the forage I had in the chest to make more fall seeds which I of course plant again. Good news as the tomatoes in the greenhouse are ready along with a few ancient fruit which I toss into kegs. 
I make a fruit salad and a fish stew, and with that, I have cooked every recipe I've unlocked at this point. I give roasted hazelnuts to Kent, maxing out his friendship. That also means I have achieved the goal I set for the first year to reach maximum friendship with every villager. I head to the wizard's tower and have him build the island obelisk on our farm. I decided to get that one first because I'm going to be going back and forth between our ginger island farm and the pelican town farm quite a bit for the rest of this playthrough. I harvest a colossal amount of ancient fruit. Uh, you know, actually I take that back, it's not a colossal amount, not yet anyway. I'm still waiting for the rest of the ancient fruit to grow. I harvest some fall forage, collect oak resin from the quarry, actually, yeah, I, I don't need to mention collecting oak resin anymore, it's it's kind of a given that I'm going to collect it every Sunday in order to keep making kegs. I There's a lot of things I don't need to mention anymore, I'm wasting so much of your time, I'm sorry, I really am, but I can't help it. Um, I learn how to make blackberry cobbler and I immediately make a blackberry cobbler just to get it out of the way. I fill the remaining spaces in the keg shed, harvest ancient fruit, and plant fall seeds. For the duration of days 183 through 187, I fill up the kegs, and for the final time, I harvest fall forage. We have finally reached level 10 in foraging. At this point, all I need to do in terms of the goals we set is to earn a total of 10 million gold, craft 2 more items, and cook 5 more dishes. In terms of achieving perfection, I also need to craft the two items and cook the five dishes for that, as well as buy the golden clock and build the three remaining obelisks on our farm. Once again, it is time to change the format of this video, only slightly though. We have very little to do at this point, so for the remainder of fall as well as the entirety of winter, I will only be talking about the important things that happened during those periods of time. With that being said, during days 188 to 196, I learned how to cook crab cakes, make a crab cake, keep my kegs fully stocked with ancient fruit, ask Robin to build a third shed on her farm, and attend the Spirits Eve Festival where I buy the last rare crow I need and the jack-o'-lantern crafting recipe. Immediately following the festival, I return home and make a jack-o'-lantern. Then, on the final day of fall, I learn how to make Fiddlehead Risotto, cook the dish, unlock the crafting recipe for the Deluxe Scarecrow, and craft it. That was the final item I needed to craft. Also, this time I'm actually going to let the footage of me going through the items I got from loot boxes play instead of just showing screenshots of the items. Primarily because I do want to talk about a few things before fall ends. Firstly, just to go back to the topic of crafting recipes. Crafting every item was one of our goals, which means that that is the sixth goal we have completed. So, it is time once again to improve the settings of the loot boxes. Our final two goals are to earn 10 million gold and cook every dish. The cooking every dish goal. You unlock the final recipe on the last day of winter in year two, so that is the earliest we will be able to complete all of our goals and improve the loot box settings for the fourth time. As for earning a total of 10 million gold, I do think it's possible for us to achieve that before the end of winter. The Ginger Island farm is covered in ancient fruit, so we basically have an unlimited supply of those for our kegs. Speaking of kegs, I already have two sheds full of kegs, but I also asked Robin to build a third shed on the farm. That's basically our safety net. You'll see after I finish showing off the loot box items that one of the things I do during this final day of fall is I fill up the new shed. It isn't upgraded yet, so we can still add more in the future, which again, you know, that's just a way of really trying to ensure that I do reach that 10 million gold mark by the end of winter. I gotta say, I'm really excited about this playthrough ending. Not in like a, oh I can't wait for this playthrough to be over, I'm sick of it type of way, but rather I'm just excited to see how winter and maybe even year 3 go? Maybe? Will I even have to go into year 3? Or will I do the impossible? Will I finally achieve perfection in one of my playthroughs on day 224? No. I'm sorry for the spoiler, but no, it's me, that's not happening. As much as I enjoy playing Stardew Valley, and as many hours as I've spent playing this game, which happens to be like 880 something hours at this point, uh, yeah, the, the last thing I have to do in every playthrough is build the golden clock. That won't be any different here, I already know for a fact I'm going to have to go into year 3 to get the gold I need for it. But honestly, that doesn't bother me, you know, like I've said, I've had a lot of fun with this playthrough, so I don't mind going even further with it and spending more time on this. 
I assume the footage of me going through the items has ended, so let's move on. For the remainder of the final day of fall, I fill up the new shed with kegs, connect the chest to the shipping bin, and take a moment to bask in the glory of our ancient fruit farm. I collect ancient fruit wine from our first and second sheds, sell all of it to Pierre, pick up some items on the ground in his shop, continue my mission to single-handedly keep the saloon in business by buying copious amounts of coffee, and build the earth and ocean obelisks. Also, look, I know my farm is still a mess, believe me, I'm well aware of it. I promise, it will look absolutely sterling by the end of this playthrough. I earned 55,000 gold from the loot box items this month. I will be completely honest and say that I didn't open all of the loot boxes this time, hence the lower amount of gold. Days 197 through 224. It's time to talk about winter. I head to the sewer and reset my farming perks. I want to choose the perk that gives a 40% bonus to the amount of gold we get from selling artisan goods. This is important for us because wine is an artisan good. I get to work on cleaning up the farm in preparation for the decorating I'll be doing soon. I head to sleep and choose the wrong perk. What's even worse is I never went back to the sewers to reset the perks and get that 40% bonus. I am the opposite of smart sometimes. The loot box opening adventure begins. Again, I won't be showing me opening up loot boxes outside of this little segment here. I'll just show all of the items I get at the end of winter. It is incredibly satisfying harvesting all of this ancient fruit. I am genuinely over the moon with how much ancient fruit we have growing here. I learn how to make a poppy seed muffin and I cook it, of course. Real quick, I would like to thank Robin for allowing us to buy wood from her. I've already spent so much time chopping down trees, I would actually cry if I couldn't buy wood. Also, I, I guess I would like to say thank you to Clint for selling iron and, and copper ore. Yeah, he, he does tend to try to sabotage me at least once during every playthrough, but... I, I mean, he is helping us to make the copper and iron bars we need for kegs, so I, I guess I'm grateful or whatever. I learn how to make bruschetta, and as always, I also cook the dish. I collect ancient fruit wine from one, two, three sheds, and I take the ancient fruit I was keeping in one, two, three sheds. I sell all of these items to Pierre, which pushes us up to total earnings of 10.2 million gold. That is the third goal we set for year two, and our seventh goal overall completed. The only goal we have left is to cook every dish. I head to the Wizard's Tower and build the fourth and final obelisk, the Desert Obelisk. Oh, also, I asked Robin to upgrade our third shed. The reason why I didn't show that is because I didn't want to spoil how the farm looks. But don't worry, I will reveal the farm in all its glory really soon. I learn how to make shrimp cocktail and cook it. And with that, the final goal has been completed. Nice. But we're not done yet. No, see, we still need to achieve perfection. All we have to do for that is buy the golden clock. It does cost 10 million gold, but at the same time, we can earn that gold pretty easily by continuing to make and sell ancient fruit wine. Also, as it is the final day of winter, I'm going to show screenshots of the items I found in loot boxes during this season on the screen. Again, feel free to pause the video if you need more time to look at the pictures. I've also decided not to sell these items. Instead, I'm going to keep them here so I can compare them to the items we get from the loot boxes we open in spring of year 3. I also mentioned that we completed our 8th and final goal. That means the loot boxes will be even better in year 3. Also, also, you can't actually see me do it because these are screenshots, but I took the wedding ring and a beanie out of the chest here. I head to Emily's house and use her sewing machine to dye my pants black. I retrieve a pair of crystal shoes from a chest and return to the sewing machine where I use a piece of cloth and a geode to make a grey hoodie. It looks good, but not great. It just doesn't have that level of sterlingness that I'm looking for. Is sterlingness a word? Well, it is now, I suppose. I return once more and combine a field snack with a piece of cloth to make a denim jacket. That is what I'm looking for. Now I feel completely at peace with myself. No, but in all seriousness, I do actually really like this outfit. The denim jacket looks pretty nice, especially when it's paired with the crystal shoes. Also, I have an announcement. Behold, trash can. I have also decided to put the wedding ring I mentioned earlier into a chest beside the trash can. 
it just felt natural to me to put these two beautiful items beside each other. And that is the end of winter and the end of our second year. All that is left for us to do now is to build the golden clock. Let's just get right to it. Days 225 to 252, aka all of spring in year 3, begin with a visit from Grandpa. He is very happy with the progress we have made here on Pay to Win Farm. I clear out the wood, fibre and rocks that have appeared on the farm, then I buy two stacks of grass starter. These will be used to make the farm look more aesthetically pleasing. I would like to give you all a sneak peek of the items we have gotten from our first round of loot box opening. You will notice we have received 54 largemouth bass and 36 cookies among other items. I feel like I may have made the loot boxes just a little bit too good at this point, so I definitely won't be selling any of these items. Just in case anybody is curious, here is the settings I used for the loot boxes after I completed 6 goals. And here is the settings I'm using now. It's safe to say the quality of the items in the loot boxes have absolutely increased too, as I'm starting to get things like legendary fish in them now. Any whomst, all of spring is spent harvesting ancient fruit and throwing them into kegs, along with the typical loot box opening sessions every week. On the final day of spring, I collect all of the ancient fruit and ancient fruit wine from one, two, three chests. I sell everything to Pierre, which brings me up to over 10 million gold. I head to the wizard's tower and finally purchase the golden clock which I place in the center of the farm. As always, here is a look at all of the items I received from loot boxes during the last four weeks. Now that we have essentially reached the end of the playthrough, I would like to give you all my final definitive thoughts on the loot boxes. First of all, they added a brand new level of fun to the game for me. I was pretty much always excited when it came time to hunt them down and open up all of the loot boxes every week. Especially in the early stages of the game when each loot box had the potential to help us with the community center and the museum collection. But even after completing both of those, it was still nice to consistently receive items that I could, uh, you know, give to villagers or use them in crafting or cooking recipes. I do remember being worried that the loot boxes would eventually be useless, but I was completely wrong about that. They provided us with some kind of benefit the entire time. Being able to get golden walnuts for them was a very nice bonus too. I probably don't even need to say this, but the loot boxes absolutely made the game easier. If I was short on gold, I could sell the items I got. I always had items I could give to the villagers as gifts, I completed some bundles in the community center with less stress than normal. The museum collection was a lot more convenient, to say the least. Overall, the loot boxes made quite a few aspects of the game a lot more convenient, if not just downright easier. I would definitely recommend downloading the Overworld Chess mod and giving this a try if you ever get bored of playing the game normally. On day 253, a couple of notifications pop up letting us know that we have achieved perfection. I'm ready to head to the summit and watch the final cutscene, but before I do, I would like to show you all some screenshots. First we have the storage shed. It's nothing fancy, but I think it looks okay. And it kept our farm tidy because I wasn't throwing my items into random chests on the farm. We also have one of the three keg sheds. I was able to fill the shed entirely with kegs because of the automate mod. What I did was put ancient fruit into the chest, which would then be put into the kegs. The wine that was produced would go right back into the chest. We have our greenhouse, which again, nothing fancy, I just have a ton of ancient fruit growing here. It's the same story with the Ginger Island farm, or as I called it, the Ancient Fruit Empire. This is really what helped us earn 10 million gold. We have our house. If you've seen my previous playthroughs, then I'm sure this looks familiar. I pretty much decorate my house like this every single time. Finally, we have the farm. I really do think this is the nicest looking farm I have ever made. I am so happy with how it turned out. Forget about achieving perfection. This right here is what I'm most proud of. I could happily look at this picture for hours. Now, let's have a bit of fun with the loot boxes one last time. I have doubled the values I last used for the loot boxes because I'm curious as to what kind of effect that will have on them. The first loot box I open gives us over 5 million gold and thousands of items. This repeats with every loot box I open. This is incredibly satisfying, I could happily spend the entire day just opening these up. But I think it's time for us to say goodbye to the loot boxes. 
I head to the summit where the final cutscene in the game plays. And that is the end of our journey. And so we have arrived at the final playthrough in this video, the easy mode playthrough. The goal for this one is simple, we must achieve perfection within 112 days, aka 1 year. There are a couple of things I want to mention before we get started. The first and most important thing is, easy mode is not an official mode in the game, as in you can't do it without using mods. I wanted to start with that because it is bad news for some people who don't have access to these mods. I start with Iridium Tools, the Iridium Fishing Rod, the Tractor from the Tractor mod, both Backpack Upgrades and Elliot's Pencil. I will also be using the Automate mod. I do have the Shop Overhaul mod installed, but I don't know if I will actually use this mod. That will be decided at some point during Spring. Also, I will be starting on the first day of Spring in Year 2, so I can get access to all of the cooking recipes by the end of Winter. This also allows me to meet Kent and get him to maximum friendship hearts. Basically, this makes it possible for us to actually achieve perfection within 112 days. Finally, I'm going to show footage of me getting everything set up. Just in case anybody wants to play on easy mode themselves, here is how you do it. Alright, let's get started with preparing for the playthrough. The first step is to use the CJB items menu mod to give us Iridium tools and the Iridium fishing rod. And Elliot's pencil, of course. This doesn't actually help us at all, I just kinda added it in for the meme. The next step is to use the CJB Cheats menu mod to give us enough gold to purchase the two backpack upgrades. In regards to the tractor, I don't need to get Robin to build it for us, I can just press the backspace key and it will appear beside me. Here are the settings I will be using for the tractor just in case anybody is interested. I was having problems with Willy's shop the first few times I tried to get everything set up. It seems like if you skip straight to year 2, you will be locked out of his shop. So to get around this, I head to Willy's and watch the cutscene where he gives us the fishing rod. Now his shop is open. The final step is to use the cheats menu to set the date to the final day of winter in year 1. When we wake up tomorrow, it will be the first day of spring in year 2. And that covers everything I think, so let's get started. Day 1 begins with a visit from Kent. He introduces himself to us, but more importantly, he adds himself to the list of villagers we can give gifts to. Marnie drops by next, accompanied by a dog. She wants to know if we will adopt the dog. The day I reject her offer is the day I realize I am no longer capable of having emotions. Of course, I adopt the dog. I lovingly name it Cheese in honor of the world-famous cheese expert James May, also known for his time on a show called Top Gear. But his work in the world of cheese is more important in my opinion. I grab the box of parsnip seeds Mayor Lewis also kindly left for us and get to work on clearing the farm. Surprisingly enough, I don't use the tractor immediately. No, you see I want to be able to say that I at least planted something without using the tractor. Granted, I am using Iridium tools, so that isn't exactly something to brag about, but look, it's nearly Christmas, alright, so... If you all let me have this one small victory, then I will consider it a collective present from all of you to me. Do we have a deal? I use the tractor to chop down some trees, and I make a chest where I deposit the goods I've acquired along with some tools. Because we are starting in year 2, we have some mail to read. The first letter notifies us that the cost of raw materials at Robin and Clint's shops have increased. That is not exactly the best news for us to get on our first day, but we have the tractor, so I think we'll be okay in this area. Next up is a load of gibberish, quite frankly, from the Georgia Corporation. Long story short, the mine is now open. That's it, that's the entire letter, that's all they should have said. I watch a cutscene where Lewis shows us the community center. Once a hive of hustle and or bustle, it is now but a mere reminder of what the town once was. If only somebody could repair the community center, maybe a sense of solidarity could be brought back to the residents of Pelican Town once again. We shall return to the community center later and see what we can do. The special orders board has been built in the town center. Just in case anybody does not know what this is, it's a board and you can use it to accept special orders. I visit the bulletin board, not to be confused with the aforementioned special orders board, where I see that Marnie is looking to receive a flounder. 
I'm going to accept this quest because I want to help Marnie. Uh, okay, no, it's actually because completing quests gives us friendship points for the villager we help. Alright, alright, no, I'm lying. It's really because we get money for completing these quests. And to quote CM Punk, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money. At the special orders board, not to be confused with the bulletin board, Robin has two special orders for us. I choose her order to collect 1,000 pieces of stone in one week. There are a couple of reasons for this. Number one, the reward for completing this special order is a crafting recipe for a stone chest. Number two, we get to keep the stone we gather. And number three, the tractor will make it laughably easy to complete this one. I head to the mines where Marilyn gives us the rusty sword. I head into the mines and magically pull the tractor out of my pocket. I am immediately reminded of why I had so much fun during the original Easy Mode playthrough. It is so incredibly satisfying breaking rocks this way. It's almost like going up to a vending machine that dispenses dopamine every single time you press the button. And the best part about it? It's free. Another fantastic benefit of the tractor is the effect it has on floors that are full of monsters. Normally going through one of these floors with the rusty sword takes all of the neurons in my body away and replaces them with sad face emojis. But the tractor trivializes this whole process and turns those sad faces into happy faces. Not only are we collecting a ton of stone, we're also getting copper ore, geodes, coal and various gems. I open a chest on floor 20 and receive the steel small sword. This is a very nice upgrade. I almost feel bad for the monsters we will encounter now that I am equipped with this sword. One of the monsters I defeat drops an ancient seed. At this point, one of the slimes could drag me off the tractor, steal it and use it to destroy my house and I would not mind at all. I would still be way too happy about getting the ancient seed to even care about that. I make it to floor 40 at around 8pm. The goal is to reach floor 80 by the end of the day. I'm sure other people could make it to floor 120, aka the bottom of the mines by the end of the first day with the tractor, but uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not good enough to do that. That reminds me actually, a YouTuber and streamer called Habu made a 100 days video where they started on day 1 of year 2 and achieved perfection on the final day of year 2. I would highly recommend checking that video out if you get the chance. Not only is it interesting and entertaining, but it's also very impressive that Habu managed to do that. I will have the link to that video in the description of this one. I obtain the bone sword from a skeleton which increases our power even more. I manage to make it to floor 79 but unfortunately I pass out before I can make it to floor 80. I missed out on my goal by one single floor. You know what? I'm happy with that, I think that's pretty good all things considered. I managed to level up my mining and combat skills a bit today too. Clint pays us a visit on the morning of day 2. He gives us the crafting recipe for the furnace. I make 10 furnaces, place them down beside my house, place a chest beside them and toss my coal, copper and iron ores into the chest. Like I said, I am using the automate mod so the furnaces will smelt the ores by themselves. Robin sends us the crafting recipe for the stone chest as a way of rewarding us for completing her challenge to collect 1000 pieces of stone. I don't think she knows I used a tractor to do this and I would like to keep it that way. I would be so upset if she took the crafting recipe away from me after finding out I used a bit of a scallywag method to obtain the stone. I head to the beach where I do a bit of fishing. I catch a flounder and give it to Marnie to complete the quest she gave us. I buy a deluxe speed grow, donate some items to the museum and collect the three rewards available to me. An ancient seed, the crafting recipe for ancient seeds and nine cauliflower seeds. I go into Clint's shop, throw my items into a chest and ask him to break open the various geodes I obtained yesterday. I donate the items I receive from this to the museum, then I return to the general store to buy one of each spring seed that I don't have yet. Just to clarify, we can buy garlic seeds and deluxe speed grow because we started in year 2. I plant my seeds, then I return to the mines to continue our mission to reach floor 120. Right now, I'm not too concerned with collecting things like gold ore and breaking every rock. I just want to get through the mines as fast as I can. I receive the Obsidian Edge Sword on floor 90, followed by a Star Drop on floor 100. While the boost it gives to our maximum energy is very nice, the only thing that will actually require us to use energy is fishing because of a beautiful vehicle known as the Tractor. 
At around 1am I uncover a ladder and make it down to the final floor. I obtain the skull key. This key is used to open the door to the skull caverns, an area we will hopefully reach in the very near future. We need to defeat 10 green slimes to gain access to Marilyn's shop, so I spend the short remainder of the night working on this. I reach level 5 in mining and I choose the perk that gives us extra ores. Mother has decided to send us 500 gold on day 3. What an absolutely marvelous gift to receive. I am feeling tremendously lazy today, so I decide to use the tractor to water my seeds. Next, I decide to do a bit of landscaping on the farm. And by landscaping, I mean I completely destroyed every tree and stone on the farm. If there is one thing I cannot stand, it is feeling like my farm is cluttered. I simply do not like the vibe that it produces. Also, chopping down trees gives you foraging XP, so this was a win-win. Here is a look at Robin's shop with the shop overhaul mod installed. Like I said in the intro, I'm not going to buy anything that is added by this mod yet. I will wait and see how spring goes before I make a decision on what to do. I do, however, ask Robin to add a silo to the farm. This way, when I get rid of the grass on my farm, it will add hay to the silo. Also, look at Cheese sleeping by the furnaces. He's such a sleepy boy. I do a little foraging run and already we're getting gold star daffodils. These will be excellent gifts for the villagers. Clint would like us to bring him 35 copper ores. We get to keep the ores after he inspects them, which is very good for us. The general store is closed on Wednesdays. Thank you for inconveniencing me, sir. I talk to Elliot on the beach and pick up some clams. I make my way to the forest where I use the tractor to decimate the local tree population. The log that blocks the entrance to the secret woods has been removed, so we now have access to this area too. I genuinely cannot even begin to describe how satisfying this is. And, like I said, we also get foraging XP for doing this, as well as things like wood, mixed seeds, and fiber. I make sure to replant some trees after my escapades. I also plant some tree seeds on the farm. I want to make sure I have a steady supply of wood throughout the entire year. I plant a rice chute beside the little pond and toss a few items into the shipping bin. I'm going to be making a very conscious effort to ship every item as soon as possible. It's off to the mines for the rest of the night where I utilize my trusty tractor to get the copper ore Clint asked for. I've got a little bit of time left at the end of the night, so I quickly plant the mixed seeds I have. I reach level 5 in foraging, so I choose the perk that gives us a chance to get two of any forage item we pick up. Mr. William would like us to catch three carp on day four. That's not a bad quest at all, I will happily accept that one. It is Ken's birthday, so I give him a gold star daffodil. You know what? Kenny. I will now be referring to Kent as Kenny. For no reason other than Kent reminds me of Kenny from the Walking Dead games. I present the copper ore to Clint, completing his quest. I have been very productive so far, I am feeling pretty proud of myself, I must say. I buy as many potato seeds as I can, then I spend the rest of the day fishing. Some bubbles pop up, which is very fortunate because bubbles make fish appear quicker, I think. I'm not entirely sure, I don't really know the whole bubbles lore if I'm being honest, I don't know how these work. Day 5 begins with the harvesting of parsnips. While I may not be the biggest parsnip fan in the world, carrots are infinitely superior in my humble opinion, I still hold them in high regard as they were the first crop I ever harvested in this beautiful little game. The rest of the day is spent fishing. It is raining, which means we have the opportunity to get catfish and shad. I want to get both for the fishing collection, of course, but I am primarily focusing on catfish as they sell for a pretty penny. I make a scarecrow on day 6 and plop it down in front of the ancient seed I planted. Not only will this ensure the safety of the seed, it also prevents a scenario in which I have to throw hands with a crow who has decided that my ancient seed would make for a tasty snack. Now that the silo has been built, I can safely convert the grass on the farm to hay. William wants us to catch four anchovy. As much as it pains me to do this, I'm going to pass on this quest. I have big plans for the very near future, and they do not involve fishing. They involve the mines. I spend the rest of the day in this location, collecting gold ore, gems, and overall just working on increasing my mining skill. I watch the Queen of Sauce TV show on day 7 and learn how to make pizza. Also, I forgot to mention, reruns of the Queen of Sauce TV show play every Wednesday. We missed out on every cooking recipe in year 1, so these reruns are how we will learn the recipes we missed. 
I'm also going to be completely honest here. I don't know if by watching every rerun in year 2, we will be guaranteed to learn all of the recipes we missed in year 1. I hope that's how it works, but there could very well be a possibility that we will get to the final day of year 2 and be missing a cooking recipe. If that happens, then we have failed this challenge, and that would not be very cash money. I consider buying a rare seed and a coffee bean at the traveling cart, but I decide against it. I will be making big money moves very soon, so I don't want to be making any purchases right now. That and I also can't afford these two items, so... You know, there you go. I head to the community center and read the golden scroll. If I'm being honest, read is a bit of an exaggeration because I have no idea what it says. I cannot read the language it is written in. Not yet, anyway. You see that? That's a little bit of foreshadowing. I don't know if I'm making a YouTube video or an M. Night Shyamalan movie at this point. Once again, it is off to the mines for the rest of the day. I am fully aware that I'm spending quite a bit of time in this location, but this is all part of my master plan. All shall be revealed in due time. The wizard sends us a letter on day 8. He is aware that we went into the community center and found the golden scroll. He wants us to pay him a visit in his tower. If I got a letter from somebody called M. Rasmodius telling me that their sources let him know that we've been exploring a local building and told me to meet him in his tower in the forest, I would immediately leave town and never look back. Some potatoes and parsnips are ready for harvest, not enough to be excited about, but I'm still grateful for these crops. I visit the wizard and he teaches me how to read the scroll in the community center. It seems like the wizard is under the impression that I'm going to rebuild the community center. The wizard thinks too highly of me. That's not me saying I'm going to go for the Georgia route though. Actually, no, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm doing the Georgia route. I figure I might as well let you all know now so you can click off the video if you don't want to watch a playthrough where somebody doesn't repair the community center. I understand if that's what you decide to do. I do not blame you at all. The reason why I'm doing this is it's a lot easier to complete the Georgia route and unlock Ginger Island than it is to complete the community center. And the sooner we get to Ginger Island, the more likely we are to achieve perfection by the end of the year. Once again, it is back to our home away from home, the mines. Using the tractor in the mines gives me the same sense of happiness I felt watching Cody Rhodes make his return at WrestleMania 38. For any of you who don't watch wrestling, I am basically very happy right now. I reach level 10 in mining and choose the perk that gives a 50% bonus to the money we earn from selling metal bars. Like Triple H putting on a new outfit, the game has changed. I earn almost 40,000 gold mainly because of the gold bars I sold. Demetrius blesses us with his presence on day 9. He has a proposition for us. We can either choose to have mushrooms grow in the cave on the farm, or we can have fruit show up in the cave. Ordinarily, I would go with the fruit because it makes it easier to get the fruit I need for the shipping collection. But I want to challenge myself just a teeny bit considering how easy I've made things already. So I go for the mushrooms instead. A bunch of potatoes have grown so I collect them. Are there enough potatoes for me to be excited about? Yes. Absolutely yes. Especially because it's all potatoes. Potatoes are sensational. I will be honest, I do feel like my laziness has reached new heights as I use my tractor to water the few seeds that are still growing. Also, I have not forgotten about working on my friendship with the villagers. I'm making sure to give marvelous gifts to all of them. The one thing I don't want to happen is to fall behind on our friendships. It is very easy for me to forget about talking to the villagers and giving them some nice items, so I'm making sure I stay on top of it. I also want to make somewhat of a good impression on these people before I put the final nail in the coffin of the community center. Speaking of which, it is time to do exactly that. I head to Georgia Mart and buy a Georgia membership. The Georgia route has now officially begun. But make no mistake about it, I did not sell out. I bought in. I did this for all of the villagers. Okay, no, I did this for a few of the villagers. I did this to make sure I can get to Ginger Island really quickly? Alright, I, I did it because I like the color blue and Georgia Mart is blue. The wizard has a special order for us. He would like us to defeat a prismatic slime, collect the prismatic jelly it drops and bring it to him. I will get around to this eventually. But for now, I want to catch the fish that show up in the mines. I go to floor 20 because I want to start with the stonefish. 
I catch a ghost fish followed by another ghost fish. Next we have a third ghost fish. A fourth one does pop up and I do catch it, but this one is iridium quality as opposed to gold quality, so I'm not too annoyed about this one. Of course, next we have a fifth ghost fish followed by a sixth ghost fish. Yeah, this, this isn't working. I swap to floor 60 so I can get the ice pip. I catch a ghost fish, then I pass out. On day 10, I watch a Queen of Sauce rerun and learn how to make coleslaw. Demetrius wants a cave carrot. I have plenty of these, so I will happily accept this quest. I make my way to Georgia Mart, where I spend 40,000 gold to unlock the boss to the desert. Part 1 of my master plan has just been achieved. I give a carrot to Demetrius as he requested. I am such a good person. Then I return to the mines to continue our fishing adventure. Will I have better luck today than I did yesterday? No. No, not at all. The same thing happened. I kept getting ghost fish. At this point, the playthrough might as well be called I played 112 days of Stardew Valley and was haunted by the ghost fish. Once again, I opt for a change of scenery. I do some fishing on floor 100 where something not that chill happened. I got a bunch of trash. I did not catch the lava eel. That is it. That is the entire day. I'm going to cry. Day 11. Let's just forget about yesterday. It's not canon, alright? Yesterday never happened. I impatiently await Pam's arrival at the bus stop, purchase a bus ticket, and arrive at the desert. I immediately enter the Skull Caverns, and of course I call upon my Lyle Steed, aka the Tractor. I pick up Crystal Shoes on floor 22. I love these shoes. This Skull Cavern run is already a massive success. Anything that happens after this is just a lovely bonus. I'm not too concerned about breaking every rock I find on the early floors. The main priority is getting to around level 100 as fast as possible. That is when we will start getting quite a bit of Iridium Ore. Thanks to the perk I picked at mining level 10, Iridium Bars sell for 1500 gold. As soon as we start throwing the Iridium Ore into furnaces, there won't be enough yeast in the world for the amount of bread we'll be making. On top of this, we're also picking up a lot of really good items. We can get dinosaur eggs from the Pepper Rex monsters, as well as a decent amount of copper, iron and gold ore, diamonds, emeralds and pretty much every other gem. We can give these gems to the villagers. Omni geodes are also easy to get now, so that will help us with the museum collection. There are also chests in the Skull Caverns that will give us some valuable items. I make it to floor 134 at 7pm. Floor 134 is not significant or important in any way, shape or form. I do not know why I specifically mentioned it here. Anyway, at this point I've got over 300 iridium ore, a couple hundred copper, iron and gold ore, various gems and even a prismatic shard. I get a crystallarium from a chest and pick up another prismatic shard on floor 159. It turns out it's pretty easy to get prismatic shards when you can break every rock on a floor in like 10 seconds. Who would have thunk? At around midnight, I make the executive decision to leave the Skull Cavern. I am very happy with the loot I have acquired here today. I exchange a prismatic shard for the galaxy sword, make 21 furnaces, pop them beside the existing furnaces, and toss my ores and coal into the chest attached to them. I did have a bit of a silly goose moment, though. I wanted to put a diamond into the crystallarium I picked up today, but I passed out before I could. Mr. Key sends us a letter on day 12. He has challenged us to make it to floor 25 of the Skull Caverns. Already done, brochacho. Give me my money. When I opened the chest beside my furnaces, my eyes were blessed with a beautiful sight. 31 iridium bars are ready. I make a sizable donation to the museum, sell my purple gold to Clint, and start the process of opening up all of the geodes I have. This was a gargantuan task and took up many, 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 many minutes of my time as I went from cracking open geodes to donating the items I received to cracking open more geodes and so on and so forth. Despite donating a small percentage of my lifespan to this task, I do have to admit that it was absolutely worth it as we get multiple prismatic shards and the museum is quickly filling up. I am strong enough also to admit when I have made a mistake, and this is unfortunately one of those moments. Basically, I realized after I was done with all of this that it would have been more worthwhile to go through the magma geodes and normal geodes first as opposed to the omni geodes. The reason for this being we can trade our omni geodes for artifact troves in the desert. Actually, you know what? Mistake isn't the right word for it. As the great Bob Ross once said, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. 
Speaking of happy accidents, I go into the Georgia Mart and purchase the minecart upgrade. Yeah, look, I'm not proud of the fact that I'm doing the Georgia route. Ignore everything I said previously, I'm actually very ashamed of it. It is time now for us to work on the special order the wizard gave us. Just to refresh your memory in case you have forgotten, he wants us to find a prismatic slime, collect the prismatic jelly it drops, and deliver it to him. This whole process of obtaining prismatic jelly has always been very hit or miss for me. And make no mistake about it, today was a miss of seismic proportions. My frustration levels rose higher and higher as a prismatic slime simply refused to show up. Dare I even say that my frustration was so strong that it registered on the Richter scale. I'm exaggerating for comedic purposes of course, only slightly though. I was truly a bit miffed about this whole kerfuffle. The end result of this whole ordeal was I did not obtain the prismatic jelly. This was an upsetting end to a good day. Long story short, 9 out of 10. Gunther pays us a visit on day 13. He thanks us for our contributions to the museum and gives us the key to the sewer as a thank you. Sweet, now we can meet Krobus and work on our friendship with him. Mr. Key has given us our 10,000 gold reward for reaching floor 25 of the Skull Caverns. Alright, listen. I need everybody right now to agree that we won't tell Mr. Key that I used a tractor to go through the Skull Caverns. I don't think he would be too pleased with me if this information was revealed to him. Moving on quickly now, some cauliflower is ready for harvest. Today is already a fantastic day. This is making me feel a lot better about the prismatic jelly incident. I toss some gold and iridium bars into the shipping bin. I'm already starting to feel like a bit of an entrepreneur, and I do a quick forage run at the bus stop. I probably did not have to mention that, but it's something small that brings me happiness, so I want to share that. The good news train continues to roll steadily along the tracks as the egg festival takes place today. I buy 985 strawberry seeds, which honestly caught me off guard. I did not think I would be able to buy that many. This is going to put us in a very good position later in spring. Next up is the egg hunt. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, I absolutely steamrolled the competition here. I collected egg after egg after egg with a completely unparalleled amount of speed and efficiency. I almost felt bad for the villagers competing against me, almost. So much so that I made myself believe that every one of these villagers was given the option of adopting the dog Marnie brought to her farm on day one, and they all said no. That is the only reason why I will be able to sleep tonight without constantly thinking about how I took a friendly competition this seriously. Also, planting all of the strawberry seeds I bought has led to a significant increase in the production of serotonin in my body. I also earn over 100,000 gold from the sale of iridium and gold bars. I love this game, I love this game so much. When it goes well, it just goes well. Mother has sent us a pink cake on day 14. I learn how to make hash browns, which by the way, hash browns are incredible. Hash browns and a nice cup of tea is always a phenomenal way to start the day. I head to the beach and use 300 pieces of wood to rebuild the broken bridge. Now we can access the tide pool area. This is a wonderful little area, I am always very happy when I unlock it. I enter the sewer for the first time and introduce myself to Krobus. I buy two crafting recipes and a star drop from him. Our shopping spree continues as I pay 35,000 gold to unlock the greenhouse. Next stop is Robin's where I ask her to build a coop on the farm. Again, I also buy multiple crafting recipes from her. Finally, I head to the mines where I ruin my day once again. I failed to obtain prismatic jelly. I am the opposite of happy right now. Evelyn shows up on day 15 to brighten up our day. She gives us the garden pot. This allows us to grow a crop inside it. Assuming the garden pot is indoors, we can grow a seed from any season in it. For example, starfruit seeds can only be planted during summer on the farm. But if I was to go to Sandy's shop in the desert and purchase a starfruit seed, I could plant it in the garden pot. I'm not going to do that though, I don't know why I even said all of that. Moving on very quickly now, I harvest some spring forage that has grown, make some spring seeds and plant them. I felt like our smelting situation was not as efficient as it could be, so to rectify that dilemma, I made some more furnaces. Now we will be producing dozens if not millions of bars every day. 
It is salmonberry season, which normally would be a very good thing for us as salmonberries are a decent source of energy during spring. However, we have something better than salmonberries at our disposable. Complete, unlimited, sheer willpower. And a tractor. I give Pam a parsnip as a thank you for being our personal bus driver, and I give a pink cake to Marnie just because I feel bad for the way Lewis treats her. If you are not aware of the whole situation, Marnie wants to be in a relationship with Lewis. He does not want to be in a relationship with her, but still strings her along. That is diabolical behavior. I know I normally use words like diabolical in like a comedic sense. This is not one of those moments. I'm being seriously right now. I purchased the bridge upgrade. Pam has a special order for us. She wants some potato juice. We don't have any kegs right now, but I feel like this special order will give us the motivation we need to start producing kegs. So I accept it. There is one small problem though. You unlock the crafting recipe for kegs when you reach level 8 in farming. Yeah, we need to hustle with this one. We have 14 days to do all of the following. Reach level 8 in farming. Make tappers. Attach them to oak trees. Wait 7 days for them to produce oak resin. Make kegs. Put potatoes into the kegs. Wait 4 days for them to produce potato juice and give it to Pam. Yeah, that's not happening. I will not be able to do that. I'm just going to give up before I even get started on this one. Also, I have decided that I will not be using the shop overhaul mod. It is simply too good to use alongside an easy mode playthrough. To make myself feel better about not utilizing the shop overhaul mod, I decide to purchase 25 of each spring seed along with an extra 25 parsnip seeds. Our farm is looking splendiferous with all of the strawberry seeds we have planted. But I believe it could look even more splendid with the planting of even more seeds of various types. So that is exactly what I do. We now have over 1200 seeds planted on the farm. And you know what? That still isn't enough. I want to get to the point where the entire farm is covered with seeds. Then and only then will my appetite for seeds be satiated. In rather dreadful news however, I am too late to purchase a ticket to the desert. But even if I had not been late, I still wouldn't even have enough gold to afford a ticket. Woe is me, and me is woe, and we is mo. In lieu of a Skull Cavern adventure, I opt to go through the mines. The primary goal here is to collect copper ore, which will be used for the production of more furnaces and copper bars. Day 16 begins with the most satisfying watering session of all time. I could feel my right arm begin to shake slightly out of excitement as the ground turned from light brown to dark brown. This is what easy mode is all about. Having the power to water over a thousand crops in the space of 30 seconds. I sell some cave carrots to Caroline's husband and use the money to fund my trip to the desert where I enter the Skull Caverns. I have begun incorporating the spicy eel dish into my Skull Cavern Skylarking sessions. The spicy eel dish gives a plus one to her speed when we eat it. This speed bonus also affects the speed of the tractor, which is just gravy. I get a rain totem in a chest on floor 128, which is a very nice pickup. I am very happy about that one. I end up completing the Pepper Rex monster eradication goal tonight, which I was not expecting, but I will gracefully accept. Just after 1am, the satisfaction I feel regarding the state of my inventory is so high that I decide to use a warp totem to get back home. I toss every ore I have into my furnaces, except of course for the copper ore. These are used to make more furnaces, all of which I manage to place before the night is over. It is day 17 and the script for this video is already over 6,000 words. Spring is going to be like 50 minutes long. I hope you've all got a nice drink and maybe even some snacks with you because I'm only just getting started. I will be so happy if I can start every morning off by watering a field of seeds. I do not know why, but it is a feeling I can only describe as a purification of the soul. I sell some iridium bars to Clint, then I fulfill the prophecy and buy the final upgrade in Georgia Mart. What prophecy is that, you may ask? I don't know, it's sort of a plot hole, really. Any whomst, I visit Haley and Emily's house where they are arguing. Haley does not want to clean under the cushions. Unfortunately for them, I am not here to resolve their argument or to help them reach a compromise. No, you see, I am here on very important business. I combine a piece of cloth with a field snack to make a denim jacket. 
That is the important business, which I am sure we can all agree is a far more valuable use of time than helping Emily and Haley with their kerfuffle. I ask Robin to upgrade the coop on her farm, then it is off to the quarry where I continue the tradition of eradicating the nature vibe of every location I visit. I plant many tree saplings here though, so technically I'm actually making the place more environmentally friendly. I spend quite a bit of time in the Skull Caverns. I find some iridium sprinklers in a chest on floor 63. While I won't need these for the main farm, they could be useful in the greenhouse. I also find a cowboy hat on floor 135, which means it is officially time to retire the straw hat I received for winning the egg hunt. I remain here until around 1am, at which point I head to the desert trader and exchange my omni geodes for artifact troves. I also exchange diamonds for triple shot espressos and rubies for spicy eels. If we consume both of these items at the same time, we will get plus 2 speed boost. I deposit the ores I collected into the furnaces chest, save for the copper ores which I use to make more furnaces. I would like to begin day 18 by showing you what a typical hardwood collection run looks like. I literally just drive the tractor through the secret woods. I break all 6 tree stumps here which gives us 12 hardwood every time. I also catch the wood skip while I'm here. Next up is a very special cutscene. Morris, the manager of the local Georgia Mart, has thrown a little celebration for us. You know what? I may not be the biggest fan of Georgia, but it's nice to feel appreciated, and that is exactly how the members of Georgia have made me feel. They also gave me a soda machine, so I no longer feel bad for taking the Georgia approach. I wanted to give Krobus a horse radish, but I can't as I've already given him two gifts this week. That is deeply upsetting. I sell 111 iridium bars to Clint, earning us a tasty 160,000 gold. I immediately purchase 250 coal before starting the process of having all of our artifact troves broken open. We are getting some nice things like a pearl, a treasure chest, and various artifacts. I donate said artifacts to the museum, then I check how much progress we have made. It turns out we have made quite a bit of progress. I only have to donate one more mineral, which is marble. I can get this from frozen geodes and omni geodes. I still have to donate 16 artifacts, which honestly isn't too bad. I can get most of them from artifact troves and I can use the tractor to easily dig up the ground to get the others. So overall, I would say things are looking pretty nice for us in this area. I finally introduced myself to Sandy, the owner of the shop in the desert. I should have done this sooner, my bad. I buy 25 rhubarb and beet seeds along with a full stack of deluxe speed grow. 100 starfruit seeds are also acquired during this little shopping spree. I give Pamela a prismatic shard as a birthday present. She responds by telling me to go away. You know what? I have heard worse from people who I respect a lot more, so this didn't bother me. The wizard has requested a cave carrot. I love getting handy quests like this one. I buy 25 garlic seeds and one of each fruit tree sapling. I then spend 5000 gold on sugar. I don't know why I did that. A nice blue wallpaper and flooring is on sale, so I decide to scoop them up. I plant the garlic and rhubarb seeds I bought, plant the fruit tree saplings, and get my greenhouse set up. I have four iridium sprinklers, thanks to the time I spent in the Skull Caverns, so I don't have to worry about coming in here and watering the seeds every day. The seeds in question being starfruit seeds and beet seeds. I also sprinkle deluxe speed grow on them. I do have some unfortunate news, though. It seems like my very being has been infected with the Georgia gene. Without even realizing what I was doing, I converted my house from a cozy cottage to a shrine dedicated to Georgia. I even turned off the fireplace, perhaps a metaphor for the manner in which my heart has been turned cold after allowing the community center to be destroyed. I decide that a moment of peace is needed, not only because of my conversion to a fully-fledged Georgia member, but also because the last 18 days have been nothing short of hectic. I sit on a chair on my porch and do nothing for the rest of the night. This was absolutely therapeutic. I listen to the hum of the furnaces, the smooth crackling tickling in my ears and observe the natural beauty of the farm. My soul once again feels at peace, the beating of my heart has slowed and I feel absolutely sterling. I needed this reset. I needed it so much. But enough dilly-dallying. Let's get back to business. William sends us a letter on day 19. He wants us to come to his shop when we get the chance. He also said something a bit weird at the end. 
P.S. I have noticed that my left hand shakes when I eat dirt. This is the first time it's happened during my 25 year streak of eating dirt every day. Do you know anything about this? I am starting to get a bit concerned. Uh, n- no. No, sorry, Willie, I-, I don't know anything about that. Moving on now from that, uh, situation, I toss a dinosaur egg into the incubator in the coop. A lizard will hatch from it in 12 days. Many parsnips are ready for harvest. After collecting those, I head to the quarry where I enter the mines. I make it to the end where I obtain the golden scythe. This was an absolutely grueling task, one which I almost failed many times. It took every ounce of passion and dedication of my body to obtain this wonderful tool, and I am not being serious at all. It took like maybe 20 seconds at the most to do this. Which makes sense, of course, because I'm using the tractor. I ask Robin to upgrade the coop. No, I don't, actually. I can't afford it. That's kind of embarrassing. Uh, I sell some already embarrassed to Clint. Then I return to Robin's and actually have the coop upgraded this time. I head to the shop owned by Abigail's father, where I purchase 50 of each spring seed. I plant all of these seeds, then I do my regular hardwood collection run in the secret woods. It is time now to begin a very special mission given to us by the wizard. I meet him at the mountain area where he instructs us to head to the mutant bug lair, an area that can be found in the sewers. Our good acquaintance, Krobus, gives us a hand as he opens the door to the mutant bug lair. Before I head in, however, I decide that now is the perfect time to do a bit of fishing. A legendary fish called the Mutant Carp can be caught here in the sewers. In what has become a bit of a trend when it comes to fishing, the fish I wanted, in this case the Mutant Carp, did not show up. With a heavy heart, I enter the Mutant Bug Lair where I attempt to catch another new fish called the Slime Jack. Thankfully this fish actually does appear and I catch it. I meticulously maneuver my way through the area and collect the Dark Talisman at the end. In what would end up being a terrible decision, I spend the rest of the night fishing in the sewers trying to catch the elusive mutant carp. I failed. I am awoken on day 20 by the sound of Cheese snoring loudly. He's such a Gouda dog. Do, do, do you get it? Like, like, like good dog, but like Gouda because of uh, Gouda Cheese? I'm sorry. I harvest some kale, then I collect some more hardwood. I'm going to stop mentioning the hardwood collecting thing from now on. You can just assume I collect hardwood pretty much every day. I make nine lightning rods and place them a bit haphazardly on the farm. I'm not too concerned with the visual aesthetic of the farm right now though. I'm all about the productivity side of it. I venture into the skull caverns and at this point there's not much to say about the skull cavern runs that I haven't said before. We're getting a ton of omni geodes, ores and gems every single time. It's also a lot less stressful than normal Skull Cavern runs. I said it before, I will say it again. It is so incredibly satisfying doing this with the tractor. I get another Crystallarium on floor 84, followed by two Rain Totems on floor 86, and one more on floor 100. I trade my Omni Geos for artifact troves, then I spend the rest of the day in the mines with a heavy focus on collecting artifacts. Using the hoe to dig up the ground here yields significant results as I get multiple artifacts I still need to donate to the museum. I reach level 5 in farming so I choose the perk that gives us a 10% bonus to the gold we get from selling crops. I learn how to make a complete breakfast on day 21 and a beautiful sight awaits me when I leave the house. All of the strawberries have fully grown which means it is time for our first strawberry harvest. Blue jazz, tulips, and potatoes are also ready for collection. Also, also, if you use a rain totem on a stormy day, there will be a storm on the following day too. So that is exactly what I do here. I'm going to do this a couple more times so we can get more battery packs. Speaking of battery packs, the lightning rods I created yesterday have produced some so I collect them. A battery pack is a very valuable item for multiple reasons. They are needed for a couple of crafting recipes and we need them to repair the boat that will take us to Ginger Island. Our bank account is looking pretty miserable right now so I sell some already embarrassed to Clint. I sell my strawberries, ask Robin to build a barn for us and buy some chickens, ducks and rabbits for a coop. The following animals have joined the family. Rhea, Finn and JD the chickens. Dominic, Damien, Jimmy, Jay and Solo the ducks and Paul, Roman, Sammy, and Hornswoggle, the rabbits. 
I buy two auto grabbers from Marnie. I have given her a ton of money today, along with a rare seed and a coffee bean from the traveling cart. I put an auto grabber into the coop and say hello to our new animals. Then I plant a coffee bean right in front of a scarecrow to keep it safey wafy. I spend the rest of the day fishing. I want to get to fishing level 9 at least before the end of spring. Days 22 to 26 are also spent fishing. Some other things happened during that period of time that I would also like to talk about however. I reach level 10 in farming so I choose the perk that makes crops grow 10% faster. An ancient fruit appeared along with some spring forage. I created a seed maker along with some more spring seeds. I did some frolicking through my little lightning rod area collecting battery packs as I did before planting the spring seeds I made. I used another rain totem, tossed an ancient fruit into a seed maker, harvested beets and planted two ancient seeds and a rare seed. Sebastian wanted a sardine, lovely, I was able to get that for him very easily. I decided to give a prismatic shard to Abigail and her father, then I bought all of the fruit tree saplings a second time. I didn't want to run the risk of the ones I planted on the farm not growing properly, so these were thrown into the greenhouse very soon after I made this purchase. Crobus was next up on our list of gift recipients, followed by the aforementioned planting of fruit trees in the greenhouse. I attended the Flower Dance Festival where I purchased the Tub of Flowers crafting recipe along with a rare crow. I decided to ask nobody to dance with me here. Quite frankly, I am not comfortable with any of them dancing with me or even being near me in any capacity. I do not want that. Nothing against the villagers, I simply do not wish to partake in any of that. Back to the present day now as we begin day 27 with our second and final strawberry harvest of spring. Many other crops and forage items grew during the period I spent fishing, but I decided I would wait until now to harvest them so that we could all enjoy it together. I collect the battery packs that I've accumulated in the chest, harvest a tantalizing amount of starfruit in the greenhouse, and toss all of the starfruit into the shipping bin. I do not toss all of my other crops in there however, only one or two of them each, so they'll be crossed off the list of items I need to ship as part of the shipping collection. I'm going to show me collecting hardwood here just because this was the moment when I got enough hardwood to repair the boat in Willie's shop. I grab a piece of wool from the auto grabber, make some tree fertilizer and plant some mahogany tree seeds in the quarry. I'm going to need a significant amount of hardwood in the future so these mahogany seeds will be a lifesaver. I sprinkle fertilizer on all of the seeds I have planted here and ask Robin to upgrade the barn. I give Emily a piece of wool for her birthday, I am actually really surprised I'm still making good progress on our friendships and I check the special orders board. The wizard is giving us a second chance to acquire the prismatic jelly. That is tremendously kind of him, but I'm going to have to decline. You see, I just won't have enough time to go to the mines today or tomorrow. I have other things in mind. So instead, I accept Demetrius' order to catch 20 ocean fish. Hopefully, Rasmodius has enough kindness in his heart to give us another opportunity in the future. I enter Willie's shop where the big man himself, Mr. William, shows us his dilapidated boat. He says he needs 200 hardwood, 5 iridium bars, and 5 battery packs to repair it. Well, Mr. Will I Am, have I got news for you? I have all of those things with me right now. How did I know you would require all of these materials? I'm actually a sidekick. Not a sidekick, no, but a sidekick. You see, my partner in crime told me that I would need all of these things to repair the boat, hence me being here with these items. In other news, Willie wants us to catch a sardine. Okay, now he's just being greedy. I have done way too much for him today already. I'm going to pass on that quest. As I predicted, we are going to fail Pam's special order to bring her potato juice. It's not all bad though. It did motivate me to plant oak trees in the quarry and unlock the crafting recipe for kegs, so I think I'm going to consider this a... Yeah, well, you know, I'll call it a win. Despite not actually completing the order, some good did come out of it. I use a rain totem, then I spend the rest of the day at the beach working on Demetrius' order. I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to talk about my plan for tomorrow. In short, I have two options. Option number one, focus on catching the legend fish. The legend only shows up in spring on a rainy day when you have reached level 10 in fishing. I used a rain totem to make sure it rains tomorrow and I'm currently level 9 in fishing. So I can buy a trout soup which will bump me up to level 10. The problem is, I have pretty much always struggled with catching the legend. 
So if I go with this option, it's almost a guarantee that I will be spending the entire day fishing. There is also a decent chance that I won't catch the fish at all, which would end spring on a bit of a sad note, and I don't really want that. Option number two is I spend the entire day on Ginger Island. I already like the sound of that. And the thing is too, tomorrow isn't my last chance to catch the legend. There's an item called Magic Bait. This type of bait allows you to catch any fish in any season. Which means I can still catch the legend in summer or fall or winter. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Ginger Island tomorrow, I've just convinced myself. Uh, Alright, let's, uh, let's move on to the final day of spring. On day 28, I check the progress I have made on this special order. I only have to catch 6 more fish to complete it. Nice. Here is an update on how our friendships have been going. You can tell straight away which villagers had a birthday in spring. Pam and Emily are on 5 hearts, a couple of villagers are on 4 hearts, most villagers are on 3 or 2 hearts, and a small amount are only on 1 heart. I'm not concerned about those villagers. By the time their birthdays come around, I'll be able to give them a gold star items that they love, which will give us a bonus 3 hearts of friendship with them. So, overall, I am very happy with how this whole thing is going. Of course, it goes without saying that we had easy access to gifts thanks to Detractor. We used it to get gems in the mines, and it also boosted our foraging level, which resulted in us picking up silver and gold star forage items, which also make great gifts for the villagers. The final harvest of the season comes in the form of cauliflower. I kinda wish it was potatoes, or even better, another strawberry harvest for even more gold, but this is still nice. I spend some time fishing at the beach to complete the special order Demetrius gave us. I immediately receive a reward of 1500 gold. But I will also receive the crafting recipe for the computer in the mail tomorrow. I buy 15 crab pots and set them up along the boardwalk, making sure to fill them up with bait as I do. I pay 1000 gold to be able to purchase a ticket to Ginger Island. Considering I single-handedly retrieved all of the items that were used to repair this boat, I don't think it's necessarily fair that I have to pay to be able to use it. But, I mean, at least that money is going to William, so I will let this one slide. I finally set foot upon the sandy shores of Ginger Island, and I immediately get to work collecting golden walnuts in the forest area. I collect a second walnut from a bush, then I obtain a third one by using an axe on a tree in Leo's treehouse. I watch a cutscene where I introduce myself to Leo, or at least I try to introduce myself to Leo. I have to collect a total of 10 walnuts before he'll speak to me. The good thing about using the tractor is it makes finding golden walnuts a lot easier. Or at least it would, but I forgot to bring my hoe with me, I feel very foolish right now. I run home and grab my hoe and the copper pan, I kinda panicked and decided to bring that with me too just in case. I spend another 1000 gold on a ticket, I'm not mad, I just think I should get some sort of discount on the ticket at least. Then, as I was saying, the good thing about using the tractor is it makes finding golden walnuts a lot easier. I can just equip my hoe while I'm on the tractor and it will dig up a big patch of land in like 3 seconds. So, finding all of the walnuts that are hidden in the sand is a walk in the park. I make sure to collect every walnut I have access to in this area at this very moment before I enter the volcano dungeon. The first thing I do here is use my watering can to create a path leading to the left side of the entrance. I go through a door here and collect two golden walnuts on the other side. The rest of the day is spent going through the volcano dungeon. I obtain quite a few golden walnuts here by defeating monsters and breaking rocks. I am also getting some valuable items like a dragon tooth, pineapple seeds, cinder shards and journal scraps. Some of these journal scraps will reveal the locations of hidden golden walnuts when I read them. Just to very quickly give my thoughts on spring, I feel like the first 28 days went pretty well. Comparing this playthrough to the original easy mode playthrough, I am already making far more progress in this one. I repaired the community center the last time I did this, so I didn't get to Ginger Island until the start of winter in that one. But in this playthrough, not only have I made it to Ginger Island already, I have also collected around 20 golden walnuts on the last day of spring. I hope you have all enjoyed watching my escapades during this season, and again, I do want to emphasize that the point of this whole easy mode playthrough isn't a showcase of skill or anything like that. It's more so just trying to have as much fun as possible with the upgraded tools and the tractor. 
I understand a playthrough like this isn't everybody's cup of tea, so if you've made it to this point and you're still 50-50 on the whole easy mode concept, then that's completely understandable. I just hope you found it entertaining up to this point. Any whomst, I will not waste any more of your time. I wasn't able to make it to the end of the volcano dungeon before I passed out unfortunately, but that's okay. I can come back here tomorrow and avenge myself. And with that, I will see you all in summer. Day 29, the first day of summer. I say goodbye to the remnants of the spring crops, which is always a bittersweet moment. I hate seeing all of these wilted remains, but there are many more crops we can plant this season that will continue the legacy that was started by last season's crops. I decide to make five iridium sprinklers. These shall be used on the Ginger Island farm. William has sent me a letter in which he tells me about how he had to drag me back to the boat last night after I passed out on Ginger Island. Okay, what, what, do you, do you want a medal or even a cookie? Because I can give you both of those things. That was very kind of you, William. Thank you. We also receive the crafting recipe for the computer as a reward for completing the special order Demetrius gave us. It is time for the routine chopping down of trees. If there is one thing I never want to be short of during this playthrough, it is wood. That would be a dire situation. Just in case you don't know what a dire situation is, it is like a normal situation, but it is dire. I buy 450 starfruit seeds from Sandy, a purchase which I am sure I will repeat many times during summer, and I accept a quest from Maru. She wants Jade. I have Jade. She has money. I want money. As a professional businessman and part-time entrepreneur, I can sense when a deal can be made. And this is one of those moments. I purchase 25 of most of the summer seeds along with 50 of a couple of the summer seeds. I also buy 100 of my favorite item, the Lux Speed Grow. We are truly being blessed today as Lady Luck herself has decided to shine a light upon us. We have been given a third opportunity to get Prismatic Jelly. The unfortunate aspect of this is both of these special orders have a crafting recipe attached to them. In a perfect world, I would be able to accept both of these right now, but as we can only choose one, I decide to choose the Prismatic Jelly order. I head to Robin's where I do not have enough money to upgrade the barn, so I ask her to upgrade our house instead. Back on the farm, I plant all of the seeds I bought today. I am already very excited to see everything grow, especially the starfruit seeds. It is going to feel cathartic harvesting all of this starfruit and seeing the effect it has on our bank account. I toss a garlic into a seed maker so I can get garlic seeds, then I head to the boardwalk at the tide pool area. We have a very important mission to complete here. That mission is to catch our first legendary fish, the Crimson Fish. I catch a Super Cucumber followed by a Super Cucumber, next up is a Lingcod and a Halibut, for a second there I thought we were going to keep getting Super Cucumbers. I did get to a point where I felt like the Crimson Fish was not going to show up tonight, but thankfully it eventually did. It also isn't a particularly difficult fish to catch, so all in all this was a rather enjoyable experience. I was feeling pretty good about myself and wanted to keep the fishing train going, so I head to the sewers where the mutant carp does not show up and I pass out. I buy a melon seed, a wheat seed, and the Lux Speed Grow on the morning of day 30. Next up on our list of super duper important things to do is to use 10 golden walnuts to unlock the west side of Ginger Island. As always, using the tractor to clear out the farm is nothing short of a phenomenal experience. I wish I could do it over and over again, but alas, I am a very busy bee. I plant the wheat, melon, and garlic seeds I have, then I take a moment to absolutely annihilate the natural beauty of the beach. In my defense, I got a golden walnut by doing this. I collect a walnut in the shipwreck, pour some water on an innocent creature, I apologize but that was a necessary evil, I need this golden walnut, and I use the tractor to make the process of finding the walnuts that are hidden in the ground a lot easier. And by easier, I mean I kinda just do nothing. I just drive around and let the golden walnuts come to me. I defeat a group of tiger slimes and dig up a patch of dirt, which nets us a further two walnuts. I find one in a bush, followed by another in a bush, and long story short, I collect almost every golden walnut you can find on this side of the island. I will, however, make sure to specifically mention any future walnuts I find in this area. 
I make my way to the Volcano Dungeon where I used the Slingshot to obtain a Walnut before unlocking the Dig Site area. I do a bit of landscaping, shall we say, which provides us with bone fragments and artifacts. I utilize the tractor and my brain, I know, I know, I'm also surprised that I'm using my brain. It took a while for the cogs to start turning and for the cobwebs to be cleaned up, but believe me, my brain is and has been working at 101% power during this entire run so far. I do not want to fail this challenge, that would be just a little bit embarrassing considering how easy it is. The farmhouse here on Ginger Island has been repaired, which means I can now sleep on the island. On day 31, I remember I never made it to the end of the volcano dungeon when I came here at the end of spring. That is a miscarriage of justice, I cannot allow things to remain this way. I steamroll my way through the volcano dungeon, collecting copious amounts of goodies and golden walnuts along the way. I reach the shop on level 5 where I realize I cannot buy anything from the dwarf here because I haven't donated all of the dwarf scrolls to the museum. There is one scroll absent from the collection. I'm sure I have it lying in a chest somewhere, so this is just me being lackadaisical and forgetting to donate it. I really do need to take it to the museum soon though. We will receive the Dwarvish translation guide for doing so, which will not only allow us to buy things from this shop, but we will also be able to become friends with the dwarf in the mines, and the sooner we do that, the better. Okay, now that I've said that out loud, I really should have donated that scroll sooner. That could be our problem in the future, and a big problem at that. Anywhomst, our journey through the dungeon went very well. I acquired many more walnuts and made it to the end. Here I obtain a further two golden walnuts as well as a prismatic shard. Changing course completely now, I have found a rainbow shell at the beach. What an absolutely marvelous piece of forage. Also, I really wish we could go to more locations with the minecarts. They make getting around the area so much faster. It is time now to water our massive field full of seeds. This is something that will have to be done daily as I refuse to use iridium sprinklers on this farm for some reason. I don't really know why. I mean, I know I have the tractor, but they would still be useful, so I don't know... Like, maybe somewhere deep down inside of me, some little part of me is just completely opposed to the idea of using sprinklers on this farm. I don't know how to explain it. I don't even know why I'm saying this. I'm off topic again. This is going to happen quite a bit. I'm sorry. Uh, but just to go back to the whole sprinkler thing again, I am using them in the greenhouse because I'm too lazy to go in there every day. It is time now to end the day on a good note. It is time to get the prismatic jelly. You will notice I did not say I'm going to attempt to get the jelly or we have the chance to end the day on a good note. No, there is no maybe. There isn't just a chance. I am manifesting the appearance of a prismatic slime. I will get the jelly and this day will end on a positive note. Sure enough, the prismatic slime does appear. I defeat it and obtain the elusive jelly. I kind of want to spread this jelly on some toast and see what it tastes like. I run to the mountain area and use the dark talisman to open up the entrance to the witch's swamp. I do a bit of fishing to obtain the void mayonnaise and give it to the single best character in the entire game. The Goblin Henchman. And that isn't just my opinion, by the way. The Goblin Henchman is objectively the best character in the entire game. I mean, just think of all of the moments that involve the Goblin Henchman. We have this moment here. I return to the wizard and present him with his magic ink. We have now unlocked his shop, which means we can buy Junomo Huts, the four obelisks, and the golden clock. We need to obtain all four obelisks and the golden clock to achieve perfection, so that is going to be a really easy thing for me to do and will not be time-consuming, stressful, heartbreaking, and just overall a soul-crushing experience for me. No, I'm absolutely going to thoroughly enjoy earning enough gold to buy all of those items. I finally give the prismatic jelly to the wizard, completing a special order. I receive 5,000 gold from the wizard on day 32. The crafting recipe for monster musk has also been added to our repertoire. A little harvesting session takes place next, followed by a trip to the store owned by... I, I can't think of anything else to describe this man as, but I just I don't want to say his name. I don't like him. I buy 125 radish seeds, give a prismatic shard to Jazz for her birthday, and donate a couple of items to the museum. The dwarf scroll was not one of these items. I forgot about it again. Clint cracks open a golden coconut for us, which yields a golden walnut. 
I received marble from a frozen geode along with a few more new artifacts from artifact troves. All of these items are of course donated. Gunther better give me a very nice Christmas present this year, I have been working overtime on basically making his museum look very nice. I think I deserve a hot chocolate or a hash brown or even both as a thank you. I make a cherry bomb, plant all of my radish seeds and spend a bit of time digging up the ground on the beach. We can get golden coconuts and artifacts that can be donated to an office on the island by doing this. So I will make sure I do it as often as I can. I talk to Birdie who has a quest for us. She gives us a memento which we will have to use to obtain a pirate's locket. Basically we give the memento to someone, they give us an item in return, we give that item to someone else, rinse and repeat until somebody gives us the pirate's locket. Unfortunately for Birdie however, my schedule has already been filled and so she will have to wait a while before I get around to doing that. I use the cherry bomb I made to free Professor Snail from the cave he was trapped in so I can begin donating items to the little museum he has in his office. I answer two questions related to the island in record time to obtain two golden walnuts, then I dig up another walnut and an ostrich egg. I toss this egg into the shipping bin. I could have saved it and used it to get an ostrich in the barn on our farm, but this egg is required for the shipping collection so I wanted to get it out of the way now. Day 33 begins with the crafting of 70 tappers. I head to the quarry area where I chop down just a couple of maple trees, then I place tappers on the oak trees here. I give the memento to Kent who gives us gourmet tomato salt. Gus is thrilled to receive this salt and in return gives us a Stardew Valley rose. I decide to have an early night, gotta make sure we keep our sleeping pattern intact, that is very important. Some radishes are ready for harvest on day 34. The rest of the day is spent going through the skull caverns. Our skull cavern escapades continue on days 35 through 38. I won't lie, I may be becoming slightly attached to the thrill of breaking rocks, breaking more rocks and breaking even more rocks. In all seriousness though, seeing little pieces of iridium ore and prismatic shards fly towards my farmer causes the dopamine receptors in my brain to light up every single time. But make no mistake about it, these skull cavern runs aren't being done just to prevent the production of sad vibes in my body, no, they're keeping the dream of achieving perfection by the end of the year alive. I will forever be grateful to both the skull cavern and the tractor for this. Some important things did happen outside of the Skull Caverns during this period of time that I also want to mention. William had a delicious special order for us, he wants us to fetch 100 pieces of bug meat for him. I gave Gus a diamond for his birthday, then I decided to keep spreading the good vibes as I give presents to everybody in the Carpenter slash Scientist slash Sebastian family. It was Maru's birthday but I can't leave the rest of her family out, can I? I mean I could, actually, I absolutely could, but I decided to be nice here. Many different crops are ready for harvest on day 39. Melons, starfruit, blueberries, taro roots, peppers, tomatoes and hops are all added to our inventory. Some of these crops grew during the period I spent in the Skull Caverns, but again I wanted us all to be able to share this wonderful experience together. I toss all of my starfruit into the shipping bin along with one each of the other crops before throwing everything else into a chest. I want to make sure I've got everything I need for the cooking recipes in the future so I'm gonna keep around 90% of my crops in a chesty westy. I harvest a sweet gem berry in the greenhouse and give it to my old pal the old master cannoli statue in the secret woods. I receive a star drop in return. As a part-time businessman and a former entrepreneur, I know a good deal when I see one and this was a good deal. Dare I even say it was a very good deal. Moving on now to the luau, I toss a gold star melon into the soup. I spend some time talking to the villagers, then the governor tries the soup made by the entire town. The melon I added gets the best reaction from the governor, earning us half a friendship heart with the villagers. Moving on to day 48, the remaining starfruit are ready for harvest. I plant summer seeds because I want to make a monumental amount of progress this season when it comes to my foraging skill. I, I want to make a monumental amount of progress in general actually now that I think about it, but like you know what I mean. I have maneuvered the crab pots from the beach to the town river so I can continue getting sea creatures that are needed for the fishing collection. 
I sell around 75, maybe 80% of the Iridium bars I have to Clint, which pushes our bank account up to over 1.1 million gold. We are finally the opposite of broke. It took a while, but we are officially a millionaire. Our bank account goes from tasty to tantalizing as I sell my crops. I have big plans, some may even call them really big plans, that require two stacks of Deluxe Speed Grow. This is quite expensive, but it will absolutely be worth it. I also purchased 50 red cabbage seeds because for some reason I forgot to buy them at the start of summer. Oops. I grab the wallpaper catalogue while I'm here too, then it's off to the desert where I buy two full stacks of starfruit seeds. I do a little foraging run, this is something I will be doing as often as I can to make sure I have a plentiful supply of coconuts and cactus fruit. I reach an entirely new level of farming as I plant my starfruit seeds, sprinkling deluxe speed grow on them as I do. This is the moment where I was no longer a humble planter of seeds, nay I became a shining beacon of hard work, passion and hope. Not just for the residents of Pelican Town, but for every citizen in the region of Stardew Valley. As I planted my seeds and I chopped down trees, an old Irish saying popped into my mind. It is a long one, but I would like to share it with you all. Sen art a will fua, go quarter me angra. Sen art a will kiuntucht, go quarter me pardun. Sen art a will auris, go quarter me credative. En art na edokis, go quarter me andokis. En art na dorkadis, go quarter me solis. Sen art in a will bron, go quarter me lucre. That translates in English to. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. That might be too much for a Stardew Valley video, but I will take any opportunity I get to practice my Irish. With today's Irish lesson out of the way, let us progress now to the mines where I gallivant around the area collecting bug meat for William. I was not able to collect all 100 I needed, so I shall return in the very near future to continue working on this. I decide to expand my range of seeds on day 41, so I toss taro roots, ancient fruit and a pineapple into a seed maker. Up next on the agenda is a visit to Sandy so I can give her the Stardew Valley Rose. I receive the advanced TV remote in return. I also buy 100 beet seeds while I'm here. Shane wants a coconut, I can take care of that very easily. I give a prismatic shard to Alex for his birthday and I give the advanced TV remote to George. He gives us the arctic shard in return. I need to pay a visit to the wizard, but I make a quick stop in Marnie's first. Please give a warm welcome to four new goats. Yeah, nah. Perhaps, and certainly. As well as this, Tranquility and Turbulence the Cows have also joined the family. I have made what I believe is the single best business deal of my entire life. I gave the Arctic Shard to the wizard and he gave me a wiggling worm. He got absolutely swindled in this one. What can I say? When you're good, you're good and I am a good tradesman. I collect the seeds produced by the seed maker, then I watch a cutscene involving Abigail. She is playing the flute in the rain. I have no time for dilly dallying, so I skip this cutscene, avoiding a scenario in which my farmer joins her. Instead, I ask Robin to upgrade the barn. It is at this point I notice the time. I want to go to Ginger Island, but Willie's shop closes at 5pm. I make a beeline for the beach, I was listening to the final countdown during this and it really got me in the zone. I felt it. Deep down in my soul I knew that I would make it on time. Unfortunately I arrived too late, so that was very humbling I must say. The good news is I ran into Willy so I was able to give him the worm. I received the pirate's locket for doing this. Now all I have to do is present this locket to Birdie and her mission will be completed. But that will not be taking place tonight as I have rather important business to tend to. I must return to the mines and continue collecting bug meat. Floors 15 and 16 are very lucrative areas in terms of bugs, so I just farmed these two floors over and over again. I eventually reached the first goal of collecting 100 bug meat. I drop this off at Willy's shop before the night ends completing goal 2. 
You may notice I had over 100 bug meat in my inventory. That is because I didn't collect all 100 today, so I went back to my farm and collected a bunch of meat from a chest to make sure I would have enough when I dropped them off at Willy's. We are halfway through summer now as we have made it to day 42. As I am watering my field of seeds, I can't help but notice there is a patch of land in the bottom right of the farm which is completely barren. This will have to be rectified soon. I plant pineapple and ancient fruit seeds along with taro tubers in the greenhouse, then I clean up the desert. Some absolute scallywag must have dug up all of the ground here, so I use my pickaxe to make it go back to normal. I do not know who dug up the ground here. That is a mystery. I exchange a lot of omni geodes for artifact troves, and I ask Clint to crack them all open. I make a few donations to the museum, and I am very happy to announce that this time I actually remembered to bring the final dwarf scroll with me. Also, here is a progress update on the museum collection. I have but three items left to donate. Two of them can be found by digging up the ground. The third one can be obtained during winter. We will receive the magnifying glass during that season, which will allow us to collect and read secret notes. One of these notes reveals the location of the third artifact. I head to the mines where I don't introduce myself to the dwarf because I forgot to collect the dwarvish translation guide from the museum. I'll be honest, at this point I have one brain cell left and it is just playing a video of Subway Surfers on a loop. Nevertheless, I collect the translation guide, then I finally actually introduce myself to the dwarf. I purchase a crafting recipe from him and I give him the first of many, many, many gifts. The dwarf loves gems, so amethyst, emeralds, aquamarine, those kind of things. This will make getting him to maximum hearts pretty easy, I reckon. William is having a bit of fun at the beach. He has taken the bug meat I gave him and is using it for fishing purposes. He gives us the crafting recipe for the quality bobber. Thank you so much, you are a star, William. I use a rain totem as soon as I step foot on the island of Ginger. I head into the cave on our farm where I talk to the frog inside. I show him the melon, wheat, and garlic I grew, which earns us 15 gold and walnuts. I take back what I said about the goblin henchman being the best character in the game. Uh, the goblin henchman did not give us 15 gold and walnuts, so the frog has officially taken his place. I harvest the crops here, which rewards us with more gold and walnuts. You can get a total of 5 by doing this, and truth be told, I was not keeping count of how many I harvested here, so I don't know how many I got. I give the pirate's locket to Birdie, who rewards us with more walnuts and the crafting recipe for fairy dust. I am very curious as to how many walnuts I have obtained at this point, so I check and I have collected 80 of them. I am very pleasantly surprised, I must say. I was expecting to see a total of 40, maybe 50 at the most. This has rejuvenated my spirits. I am now more motivated than ever to complete this challenge. I obtain a golden coconut by digging up the ground at the beach, then I unlocked the island resort. I go a step further and spend even more walnuts to unlock the island trader. I buy a crafting recipe and a banana tree sapling here. I find one of the three artifacts I need at the dig site, very nice, then I make a donation to the island field office. This field office should be very easy to complete thanks to the tractor. I return to the island trader where I purchase another crafting recipe, dig up a walnut, collect another by fishing, and earn another three by playing games of darts. I dig up another walnut, then I do some fishing. We can collect five by fishing, so I would like to get that out of the way as soon as I can. I catch a super cucumber, followed by a super cucumber, I'm getting a bit of deja vu here. Thankfully I secure a lionfish, then one, two, three, Four golden walnuts. Not bad. Not bad at all. The harvesting of some radishes on day 43 yields another walnut, and just like the previous two series I have done on this channel, the word walnut has now lost all meaning for me. I use a rain totem again, the reason why it will be revealed shortly. And by shortly, I mean right now. I head to the north of the island where I find a bird that drops an amethyst. I bring it to the forest where I put it on a podium. When it's raining on Ginger Island, a bird will spawn in one of four locations. The north, south, east or west of the island. Each bird will drop a gem and each gem must be placed on the corresponding podium. So because the bird spawned in the north today, we put the amethyst on the top podium. 
Collecting all four gems will give us five walnuts. I donate a mummified frog to the field office, earning two more golden walnuts. Despite all that has happened, today is not a good day. You see, the two special orders this week are useless to me. Completing Willy's order won't give us a crafting recipe, and I already got the recipe from Demetrius. With a heart full of sadness, I ask Clint to crack open a golden coconut. I really wanted to get the fossilized skull because I need it for the field office, but I received a banana tree sapling instead. I do replenish some happiness, however, as I water my starfruit seeds. I decide to work on the fishing collection for a while. I am not going to acknowledge the first fish I caught. I do catch a red mullet, though, and I buy some coffees in the saloon. I also buy some salads, pizzas, and spaghetti, which I can and have been using as gifts for the villagers. The fishing expedition continues as I catch a pike. Then I realize all of the fish I need stop appearing after 7pm, so that was pretty heartbreaking. I had pretty bad luck today. I'm gonna go watch Shaun of the Dead to cheer myself up. Summer seeds have been planted on day 44. That is very important information and will absolutely change the trajectory of this playthrough, so I wanted to mention that. I return to the river where I catch a rainbow trout, then I head to the beach where an octopus, a tilapia, a pufferfish, and a tuna are added to our collection. As always, I start my Ginger Island experience with a rain totem. A bird in the forest, aka the east side of the island, drops a ruby which I place on the corresponding podium. I trade mussels for a mango tree sapling and plant it beside my banana tree sapling. With this, I have pretty much guaranteed that I will complete the shipping collection before the year ends. Normally, the final four items I need are a mango, a banana, a radioactive ore, and a radioactive bar. Here's hoping I get access to radioactive ore before the end of winter. We now have a grand total of 93 golden walnuts. I was very happy about this, so I celebrate by going to sleep. The fourth and final rain totem has been used on day 45. The final rain totem for now, I should say. I will be using one more on this island at some point. I will be sure to point out when that moment is, but what I can say is that it will probably occur during fall. The third bird drops an emerald for us, which is promptly placed on the podium. There has been a lot of alliteration in this playthrough, which I kind of regret because I've had to record so many lines multiple times. A and that's because what I was saying was basically a tongue twister. I struggled so much reading this script. L like that line right there, promptly placed. It took me like seven attempts to say it properly, and I don't even think I said it right there properly. I don't, I, look, I like to complain about small things. Anyway, I catch a red snapper at the beach. Lovely, I am glad that one has been taken care of. Red snappers only appear when it is raining, so I may have forgotten about that one if I hadn't caught it today. I make a donation to the museum, then I travel to the desert where I catch a sandfish and a scorpion carp. I plant some coffee beans in the greenhouse. I would eventually like to be able to make hundreds of coffee instead of spending money in the saloon. My recent victories in the field of fishing have inspired me to return to an area that previously defeated me. The mines. I catch the stonefish pretty much straight away, which motivates me even further. So I head to floor 60 where I catch an ice pip. I cannot believe how well this is going. I'm going to park the fishing here for today though. I do not want to push my luck and try to catch the lava eel. I do have sensational news though. I have finally reached level 10 in fishing. Day 46 starts in a very productive manner. I have decided to make a keg, a preserves jar, a mayonnaise machine, my voice is going, and a cheese press. I place chests beside these machines and fill them with all the items needed to make one each of wine, juice, jam, pickles, pale ale, cheese, and mayonnaise. This was done for shipping collection purposes. I head to the river in the forest because I need to catch a Dorado. This takes a bit of time, but the fish finally shows up and I catch it. One more added to the collection. I use my tractor to dig up the ground on the farm so I can try to get a snake vertebrae. I have no luck with this today, but rest assured I will obtain two snake vertebrae. The final bird has appeared. It drops an aquamarine. It is time now for me to take on my mortal enemy, the Simon Says Game. It takes me around 4 minutes, but I channel my inner Cody Rhodes and I finish the story. That's not actually the best comparison now that I think about it, considering he hasn't actually finished his story. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, 
basically Cody Rhodes is a wrestler and for months he was saying that beating Roman Reigns, the current champion, was something he had to do. So he wins the Royal Rumble, faces Roman Reigns at WrestleMania and loses. So he, he didn't finish the story, but hopefully he can do it at next year's WrestleMania. I mean, if I'm capable of finishing my story, I have faith that he or indeed anybody else can finish their story. I head to the area with the podiums where for some reason I completely forgot that I picked up the amethyst earlier. I do not know how to explain this, but I was convinced I did not see a bird today. Let us move on to tomorrow so we can see what I did to overcome this self-imposed roadblock I have placed in front of me. Day 47 begins with some fishing at the mountain lake where I catch a sturgeon. This can be a tricky one, so I definitely got lucky here with how easy it was to catch. Over on Ginger Island, I perform what I believed was a big brain move at the time. The final two possible gems that could be placed on the podium are a topaz and an aqua... aqua... oh no. I can do it. Are a topaz and an aqua marine. There we go. I collected both of these from a chest and placed the aqua marine on the final podium, earning five walnuts. I now realize this was completely unnecessary as I saw the bird drop the blue gem and I picked it up so I didn't actually have to guess whether it was the blue gem or a topaz. You remember how I said my one brain cell just plays videos of subway surfers on the loop? Well that has been upgraded or maybe downgraded depending on the way you see it. There is now audio playing in my brain and that audio is somebody reading a story from reddit. Something fantastic happened though that made me feel a lot better about that whole kerfuffle. I have collected over 100 walnuts and unlocked Mr. Key's walnut room. I can now accept special orders from Mr. Key, earn key gems and use them to purchase things in this room. The first of what I assume will be many orders requires us to bring 100 each of different colored items to Mr. Key. This is always a fun one for me, honestly, it's one of my favorite special orders for sure. In terms of perfection, I am at 25%. I was slightly disappointed by this, but then I realized summer isn't even over. I think we're doing pretty well when you take that into consideration. But again, I am using the tractor and I started with the best tools, so in no way is this me saying that I'm a great Stardew Valley player or anything like that. What I will say is that this is the most fun I've had with a playthrough in a long time. And I'm including the playthrough with the loot boxes in that. That one was fun, don't get me wrong, but this one is just on a whole nother level of satisfying. In other news, I have quickly grown to love the dig site area. Mainly because it is just another excuse for me to dig up large amounts of dirt. I donate an item to the field office, then I return to Pelican Town where I purchase two lead bobbers and two trap bobbers. I give a strawberry to Demetrius for his birthday, then I hit the floor 100 of the mines. Long story short, I was defeated by the lava eel once again. Here is a look at the fishing collection to begin day 48. I believe I have caught every fish that is exclusive to summer at this point. In terms of the fish I still need to catch and can catch right now, we have the lava eel of course, I am quite frankly terrified of my next encounter with that one. There are two fish on Ginger Island which I am sure I will get around to at some point. The Void Salmon can be caught in the Witch's Swamp, the Mutant Carp can be caught in the sewer, and I can buy Magic Bait in Mr. Key's Walnut Room and use it to catch the Legend. I think that covers all of them. Actually, there are fish that are exclusive to Fall and Winter that can be caught on Ginger Island right now, but I'm, I'm too lazy to get them, so... Phenomenal news now is all of the starfruit seeds I planted have grown. I am running out of ways to describe my happiness in a convoluted way, so what I will say is that the vibes are very good right now. We are about to make so much money from this, I cannot wait to go to the store owned by the bootleg version of Matthew McConaughey. Actually, that's an insult to Matthew. I, I very much enjoyed the role he played in a movie called The Gentleman, so I, I take that one back. I'm talking about Pierre, alright? I'll, I'll say his name just this one time. Anyway, I make more summer seeds, which I plant, Pamela catches me going through a trash can that was unfortunate, and I sell all of my starfruit. I now have over 2 million gold at my disposal. As a retired businessman and a freelance philanthropist, I know that the smartest thing to do with this money is to invest it. So I do into 3 full stacks of Deluxe Speed Grow and 4 stacks of starfruit seeds. As I plant these seeds, I am already incredibly excited at the thought of harvesting them all in the future. I plant some more in the greenhouse and harvest some ancient fruit and taro roots while I'm at it. 
I do the same thing over on Ginger Island as I fill the entire farm with even more starfruit seeds. Day 49 begins in a rather disappointing way as none of the muscle nodes I break give us a golden walnut. Not to worry though, as I accidentally dug up a walnut to make up for it. I gallivant around the beach on my tractor before harvesting some forage that has grown on the farm. I make sure to replace the forage with more seeds, sell some iridium bars to Clint as our bank account was in shambles, then I watch a cutscene with Sebastian. He offers to take us on a motorcycle ride some night. No thank you. I feel like I'm the first person in the history of Stardew Valley to actually say no to that. At the beginning of this year, I would have said yes, but I am a completely different person now. I ask Robin to build a shed for us and buy four mini fridges along with a workbench, a calendar and a telephone. I deliver some items to Mr. Key, completing his special order and earning 35 key gems. I make the executive decision to not purchase anything with my gems. It costs 140 gems to buy every crafting recipe that is being sold here, so I'm going to save my gems until I can get all of them. After that, I'm going to aim for the key to the town and Pierre's missing stock list. I just said his name by accident. And of course, I will buy some magic bait at some point so I can catch the legend. I spent some time going through the volcano dungeon. Of course, it is nice getting items like a dragon tooth and cinder shards, but the priority here was making it to level 5. I buy a crafting and a cooking recipe from the dwarf here, then I keep pushing forward. I might as well. I'm glad I did because I get a golden walnut near the end. I do some magic forging stuff with my galaxy sword and an emerald to give it more speed. I hunt for coconuts on the morning of day 50. I still need to get the fossilized skull from a golden coconut and we can trade 10 coconuts for a golden coconut at the island trader. We can of course also get golden coconuts by shaking these trees. Our farm is looking splendiferous, I must say. I donate an item to the office, go fishing to get another artifact and donate that too. All I need is the fossilized skull and two snake vertebrae. At the special orders board, the vibes are in limbo, shall we say. Clint and Linus have decided to offer us special orders. We can only accept one. The problem is, both of these orders have a crafting recipe as a reward. I need both of these recipes. This is a very difficult choice. It's like asking me to choose between water and cherry Pepsi. I want both of them. In the end, I choose Linus's order. I just hope Clint doesn't hold this against me and will give me that special order again in the future. Speaking of Clint, he cracks open the two golden coconuts and I don't get the fossilized skull. I feel like this is going to become a trend which I am not looking forward to at all. I place my fridges, calendar and telephone in the house and collect fruit for my trees in the greenhouse. I give an amethyst to the dwarf for his birthday. I feel like this just saved us. I don't know if I would have been able to max out his friendship by the end of the year if I didn't get the three bonus friendship hearts from doing this. I mean we still could fail, like let's be honest, uh, but we have a higher chance of succeeding now. After purchasing a rare crow from the dwarf, I head to floor 100 of the mines. Thankfully, I'm just here to get trash for Linus's special order. I make some decent progress, but I don't get all the trash I need before the night is over. I finally visit the tree farm in the quarry area on day 51. A lot of oak resin has gathered in the chest here, along with some maple syrup and pine tar. I'm not entirely sure if I mentioned this before, so I'll just say it now. The automate mod allows you to use flooring and pathways to connect things to a chest. In this instance, I used wood pathways to connect all of the trees with tappers on them to the chest. Which means all of the oak resin, pine tar and maple syrup automatically goes into the chest. While I was collecting trash for Linus's order, I unexpectedly hooked the lava eel. Even more unexpectedly, I was able to catch it. I'm still surprised that this happened, but I certainly will not complain. I am very glad that the lava eel has finally been added to the collection. I wanted to ask Robin to upgrade the house, but she isn't here, so I give prismatic shards to everybody in her family besides her. Was that spiteful of me to do? Absolutely, yeah, it was, and I'll do it again. My farmer does not take kindly to that kind of disrespect. Scandalous behavior from Robin here. I throw the trash I collected into the dumpster for Linus, finishing his order. Also, here is a look at the Mushroom Cave Demetrius setup for us. 
I have done the same thing here as I did at the quarry so all of the mushrooms automatically go into the chest. It is time now for us to obtain the casino membership card. I put a battery pack into a box in the tunnel beside the bus stop and a rainbow shell goes into the box at the train tracks. I can't do the next step right now because of the time so instead I go into the witch's swamp where I catch a catfish and a second catfish and another one I see where this is going. Thankfully after 5 catfish I finally manage to secure a void salmon. I buy 2 void eggs from Krobus and as has become tradition I pass out without catching the mutant carp. I am greeted by the sight of some lovely forage on day 52, what a beautiful start to the day. I toss a void egg into the mayo machine, toss another egg and jam into the shipping bin and read a letter from Linus. He has sent us the crafting recipe for fiber seeds. This is a bittersweet moment. I'm glad we got this recipe but it's also a reminder of Clint's special order that I couldn't do. I give William a catfish for his birthday then I watch a cutscene involving the proprietor of the local fishing shop himself. Crabs have invaded the shop but thankfully Gus shows up and helps Willie get rid of them. I always get so happy when I watch this cutscene because it means crab cakes will be sold in the saloon for the rest of the week. It's worth buying at least a few of them when this happens. It is time now to get back to our mission of obtaining the casino membership card. I put 10 beets in Luce's fridge and put a solar essence into the mouth of the dragon skeleton in the desert. I find the casino card hidden just outside our house. I ask Robin to upgrade the shed, I will ask her to upgrade our house another time. I enter the adventurers guild and take a look at the monster eradication goals. I have a bit of work to do with quite a few of them which isn't too surprising considering I focused exclusively on getting through the mines as fast as I could. And it has been pretty much the same with the Skull Caverns. At some point during fall or winter I will dedicate a few days to doing all of these. We can't use the boat to get to Ginger Island as the shop is closed so I make a warp totem and use it to teleport to the island. I harvest a few tower roots while watering my starfruit seeds, shake the trees to get some coconuts and enter the walnut room. Some fantastic news now as the danger in the deep special order is available. The mines have been given a makeover for lack of a better term. If we reach the bottom we will receive 50 key gems which is delightful. We can also find radioactive ore in this new mine system which we of course need for the shipping collection. I exchange my coconuts for 2 golden walnuts and then I make a deeply upsetting discovery. I never introduce myself to Leo. This is the first time I'm watching the cutscene where we actually become his friend. This isn't just bad, this is very bad. I don't know when his birthday is, I hope it hasn't happened yet because if it has, I could be in a lot of trouble when it comes to maxing out his friendship. I had a feeling I would forget something important during this playthrough, so in a way I'm not really surprised this happened but it still sucks. But as always we shall push forward, these things happen, you know that's life, it is what it is, what can you do? In fact no, let's go a step further, I'm going to use this as motivation to work even harder for the rest of this playthrough. A conglomerate of summer forage has appeared on day 53. I head to Clint's where I crack open 3 golden coconuts and I don't receive the fossilized skull. Wah. I'm not going to give up yet though, after collecting some coconuts from a chest I return to town then I make my way to the boat so I can reach Ginger Island. The entire time all I was thinking to myself was, I'm very hungry. I collect more coconuts and buy a single golden coconut. I give Leo a duck feather, there can be no dilly dallying with the process of increasing his friendship and crack open the golden coconut. I get the fossilized skull, nah just kidding, no I don't. I head to the mines to get started on Mr. Key's special order. I was having fun, a lot of fun, dare I even say an infinite amount of fun until I reached floor 30. Floors 30 to 40 are dark. It is very difficult to see and I am straight up not having a good time. Nevertheless, I persevere and make it through this difficult time. Is what I wish I could say. The dark floors continue even after floor 40. I am... suffering. I'm not actually suffering, I'm just being dramatic. I pass out on floor 52. I finally decide to make some kegs on day 54. I have made 66 and while I do have everything I need to make 51 more, I'm trying to decide if I want to sacrifice that much wood right now. 
While I am placing these kegs in the shed, I make up my mind that I absolutely want to make more. It simply does not feel right having this much empty space in this shed. I craft the aforementioned 51 kegs and add them to the shed. This feels so much better. I do want to fill it up entirely though, so I will get to work on that pretty soon. Gus is on Ginger Island, so I buy the tropical curry cooking recipe from him. I give Leo a duck feather, and it turns out today is his birthday. All right. Cards on the table here, full transparency. I got really lucky. I was really nervous about Leo's friendship, but this may have saved it. I said the same thing about the dwarf. We've gotten very lucky twice now. That does not bode well for the future. We may have used all of our luck. But anyway, I head to the island trader with what I believe is the last of my coconut reserves and get one golden coconut. I am too late to go into Clint's shop, so I return to the mines instead. I get some radioactive ore, which I am very happy about. By the end of the night, I will definitely have enough to make a radioactive bar, as well as some extra ore for future crafting recipes. I make it down to floor 84 before I pass out. Not bad. We're basically two-thirds of the way there. It's straight back to the mines on day 55. There's not much to say about this one other than it was actually a lot of fun. I really enjoy the look of this mine system. It is very aesthetically pleasing in my humble opinion. I make it down to floor 120 at around 2pm, securing my 50 key gems. I also obtained an extra 3 gems during the last 3 days from monsters dropping them in the mines. I head into Clint's with my golden coconut and I receive pineapple seeds. I might cry. To cheer myself up, I buy some new animals for the barn. Say hello to Hi, Hello, Bye, Pig, Piggy, and Fernando the Pigs. I spend 5 walnuts to unlock the mailbox beside the house on Ginger Island, then I spend a further 20 walnuts to unlock the warp tower that will take us back to the farm in Pelican Town. I get a golden coconut by shaking a tree, ordinarily I would be very happy about this, but these golden coconuts have brought me nothing but misery and disappointment so far. I head to the saloon at the end of the day. This is one of the ways I have been consistently improving my friendships. I go in here when I can and give gifts to everybody. It works like a charm. I buy 200 crab cakes. I said earlier it's worth picking up some of these when they go on sale, so of course I'm going to ensure that my actions reflect my words. Day 56. The final day of summer has arrived. I am already loving the speed boost I get from eating a crab cake and drinking a coffee simultaneously. I really do not want to go back to the normal walking speed after experiencing this. I harvest all of the star fruit that has grown and this is without a doubt the single best moment in this entire playthrough so far. I feel more and more content with every star fruit I pick up. I collect some oak resin, pine tar and maple syrup from the quarry area, ask Robin to upgrade the house and sell my gold and silver star quality star fruit. I'm keeping the normal star fruit for the kegs. I buy 50 of each cooking item, ask Clint to crack open a golden coconut, I do not want to talk about what I got from it, and visit Robin's once more. I decide to go on a bit of a spending spree here and buy 7 stacks of wood. I use the oak resin I collected to make 87 kegs which I place in the keg shed. It is now officially full. I throw star fruit into a chest in front of the kegs so they will automatically be placed into the kegs. I donate two artifacts to the museum. I thought I donated the skull earlier, so I'm glad I remembered to bring it with me here. But the good news is, all I have left to donate is the artifact I can find after reading a secret note in winter. Also, uh, that skull isn't the same one I need for the field office on Ginger Island, unfortunately. It's a completely different one. I trade 10 iridium bars for the desert warp totem crafting recipe, collect some coconuts, and clear out some space at the bottom of the desert. I plant around 50 acorn seeds and sprinkle tree fertilizer on them. I need to expand my oak resin empire, so I will be placing tappers on these trees when they have grown. I do the smart thing, place wooden pathways beside the acorn seeds and connect the paths to a chest. This way I don't have to deal with the hassle of doing this when they're fully grown. I head to the beach where I enjoy the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies festival. And that is the end of summer. Just like spring, a lot of things happened during this season. A lot of that was good, some was bad, but that's okay. Not every day is going to be a winner. But overall, I feel like we had a very productive 28 days. 
I am cautiously optimistic when it comes to fall. Day 57, the first day of fall. My personal favorite season. I plant some ancient seeds, then I head to the special orders board where my day is ruined before it even begins. Unfortunately, I have been offered two orders that are of very little use to me. There are no crafting recipes attached to either of these two orders, so I'm just not going to bother with either of them. That is a deeply upsetting start to this season. Okay, I'm, I'm being a little dramatic right now, I will admit, this isn't actually a big deal, I just, I just like to complain, it's fun. A visit to the general store is on the table now as I buy 50 of each fall seed along with two full stacks of pumpkin seeds. Just like the previous two seasons, I want to make sure I have access to all of the crops I can get during fall. I also get three stacks of Deluxe Speed Grow while I'm here. I return to the farm where I begin planting every seed I bought. I make sure to sprinkle Speed Grow on them and water them as I do. I plant some pineapple seeds in the greenhouse, then I teleport to good old Ginger Island. I give a duck feather to Leo, I really do not want to forget about him for the rest of this playthrough, before watering the starfruit seeds on our Ginger Island farm. I replant some seeds and crack open mussel nodes on the beach. I still need a couple of golden walnuts from these things, I am not looking forward to trying to get them. I dig up an artifact spot and I finally do not receive a snake vertebrae. I shake the trees here to obtain a golden coconut and a few normal coconuts. The danger in the deep special order has been offered to us in Mr. Key's walnut room. I'm going to go ahead and accept this one. I will never turn down an opportunity to receive 50 key gems. Our starfruit is ready for harvest on day 58. What a wonderful start to the day. Of course, I replant the seeds. Got to keep the money train rolling. I give a gold star melon to Penny as a birthday present. This just earned us around three hearts of friendship with her. I make my way to Ginger Island where I take a few steps, turn around, and immediately leave the island. I don't know what was going through my mind here. This was a certified lackadaisical moment for sure. It's off to the mines for the rest of the day. The last time I was in this version of the mines, I struggled quite a bit when I reached the dark floors. But this time I came prepared. I brought a glow ring with me. As I push further and further through the mines, I am reminded of the speech Captain Price gave during the final mission of Modern Warfare 2. Out of all our vast array of nightmares, this is the one we choose for ourselves. We go forward like a breath exhaled from the earth, with vigor in our hearts and one goal in sight. We will finish this special order. The glow ring proves to be invaluable as I make it down to floor 105 before the day ends. I learn how to make a pumpkin pie on day 59. I also harvest some bok choys and wheat. I drop by the quarry area to collect some goods from the chest there. And ask Robin to build a chest for us. It is back to the mines where I manage to reach floor 120 and complete Mr. Key's order at around midday. This earns us a delicious 50 gems bringing us up to 139. We are one more gem away from being able to afford all of the crafting recipes in the walnut room. I'm also starting to get just a little bit nervous at this point when it comes to earning all of the gold I need to buy the golden clock and the four obelisks. I'm gonna have to make sure I keep harvesting and planting starfruit here on Ginger Island. I have a couple other ideas when it comes to making money, but still, that golden clock is definitely the biggest obstacle on the road to achieving perfection. I get a golden walnut from a muscle node, which is very nice, then I teleport back to Pelican Town. I am very glad I bought that little teleportation station there. It has proven to be very useful. It is off to the Skull Caverns for the rest of the day. I won't say anything about my escapades here this time. Instead, I will let you listen to the soothing sounds of the tractor breaking rocks. Our farm is looking BEA beautiful on day 60. I am very excited about the future harvesting sessions that will take place here. I give Shane a prismatic shard. Normally I would be hesitant to hand out as many of these as I have, but at this point I have so many prismatic shards that I literally do not know what to do with them. I could sell them, but I'm gonna be nice. It is Christmas time after all. I continue my gift-giving adventure as I provide the residents of Pelican Town with items they love. 
This totally isn't me trying to make up for doing the Jojo route. Nope, not at all. I am absolutely, positively, absolutely proud of the choice I made. I'm lying. I head to the sunroom in the general store where I finally watch Caroline's two heart cutscene. Tomorrow morning we will receive the crafting recipe for tea saplings. I would like to formally apologize to Gamer Gar for taking so long to unlock tea saplings. I will not let it happen again. Now it is time to do something I have quite frankly been putting off for a while. It is time to spend a few days exclusively in the Skull Cavern. Like I said, I really need to earn a lot of gold this season, so I want to get a ton of Iridium Ores, which I can turn into Iridium Bars. This also will not be the last time I do this. I can't say for certain, but I would be willing to bet I'm going to do this again during winter. So with all of that being said, days 61 through 67 are also spent in the Skull Caverinos. Of course, I also make time to give gifts and water my seeds during this period of time. Our pumpkin seeds are tantalizingly close to being fully grown on day 68. I will also be completely honest and say I did forget to feed my animals during the last couple of days, so they're not exactly too pleased with me right now. I did however harvest quite a few crops and flowers during that period of time too. I put everything I harvested into chests. You will notice the plentiful amount of pumpkins and starfruit. I also made sure to replant those seeds when I harvested those crops. I would be quite the silly goose if I did not do that. Dare I even say I would be such a silly goose that I would have to live in a pond. I asked Robin to upgrade the last shed I built and I got started on filling it with kegs. As well as this, I asked Robin to build another shed for us. This is, without a doubt, the busiest I have been during a playthrough this entire year. We have a cutscene featuring Penny, Vincent and Jazz now. Vincent tells us how he saw Sam lift Penny off the ground last night when they were climbing into a tree. I think I speak for all of us when I say I wish Penny and Sam the absolute best in their future love life. They will make a very nice couple. I do some fishing at the forest river where I catch a tiger trout. I catch a sea cucumber at the beach, become reacquainted with the trees on Ginger Island, and crack open some mussel nodes which earns me another walnut. I catch a blue discus, a golden walnut, and a stingray. I return to the beach and get an albacore, then I finish the night by catching the midnight carp. Except I don't finish the day that way, no you see there is still one more thing I must do. I head to the area above Georgia Mart and I catch the angler fish. Admittedly, this is the easiest legendary fish to catch, but still, this was a feel-good moment for me. I ask Robin to build a pond for us on day 69. I sell some grapes and a metric ton of pumpkins to the local shopkeeper, making sure to save a few gold star pumpkins for Krobus. I head into Georgia Mart and spend half a million gold to have the theater built. We can start going there tomorrow. This is going to be very beneficial when it comes to improving certain friendships. I make 87 kegs which I place in the second keg shed. I head to Clint's where I ask him to crack open a golden coconut and I receive a mango tree sapling. That is exactly what I wanted. Thank you so much, Clint. I give a gold star pumpkin to Krobus. These will give a nice boost to her friendship with him and give one to Abigail too as it is her birthday. I have lost count of how many duck feathers I have given to Leo at this point. I get three golden coconuts from the island trader and watch a cutscene where the theater is constructed. I make a tea sapling on day 70 which I plant in the greenhouse. This won't be ready until the 22nd day of winter so I need to come back here on that day and toss some tea leaves into a keg so I can make green tea for the shipping collection. At this point I fully believe I am being sabotaged when it comes to the golden coconuts. There is no way I can be this unlucky. Maybe this is the game's way of getting back at me for playing on easy mode. I head to the theater, except I don't really because I forgot that the Georgia Mart is still here. It's going to take quite a while for me to get used to the theater being where the community center once was. I give a ticket to Leo, buy 350 coffees in the saloon, accidentally go to Georgia Mart again, and enter the theater. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, I like the color blue, I also love the color purple, but I do not like the vibe in this theater. I have never seen the Georgia version of this theater, so this just kind of feels wrong to me. After watching a movie with Leo, I return home and toss all of the ingredients I need for cooking recipes into the fridges in the kitchen. I am now almost fully prepared for the making of every dish in the future. Some ancient fruit are ready for harvest on day 71. This is always a wonderful start to any day in any series I have done. I take all of the iridium and copper bars in my smelting chest, buy 10 stacks of wood from Robin, ask her to add a cellar to the house and check the special orders board. 
Gunther has blessed us with a lovely request. He would like to receive 100 pieces of bone. The best part about this is we will receive a crafting recipe for completing it, so I of course accept his order. I buy 300 coal from Clint, attach tappers to the oak trees that have grown in the desert, and place a chest beside them. The oak resin empire has just expanded substantially. I give a sweet pea to Sandy for her birthday, sell my iridium bars to Clint, and give a rabbit's foot to Leo. Our banana tree has fully grown, so I can start collecting bananas from it. I have no luck with the muscle notes today, but I do have some absolutely amazing news, like unironically amazing news. What you are about to witness is the single greatest moment I have experienced playing Stardew Valley. I dug up an artifact spot and got a snake vertebrae. Immediately after this, I dug up another artifact spot and got the second snake vertebrae I need. I am so happy right now I could actually cry tears of joy. But let's not dilly-dally for too long. I accept the Prismatic Grange order from Mr. Key, throw a sturgeon into the pond so I can collect its row and turn it into caviar, and I make 37 preserve jars. I will be tossing all of my pumpkins into these. I will say, 37 jars is nowhere near enough. I'm going to need a lot more coal. I plop these preserve jars down on the road, but rest assured, I will be back to add more in the very near future. The Stardew Valley Fair takes place on day 72. I set up my Grange display, and I must say, I am content with how it looks. Mir Lewis seems to agree with me as he awards me first place in the Grange display competition and gives me 1,000 star tokens. I could bet all 1,000 of these tokens on green in the Spin the Wheel game, but quite frankly, I do not trust that game at all. I truly do believe that I would lose all of my tokens if I did that. So instead, I spend a ludicrous amount of time playing the fishing game. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and psychologically exhausted, I trade my star tokens for a rare crow and a star drop. Then I leave the festival. That's literally all I wanted to do. I do not have the energy to talk to anyone here. Day 73 is a massive pumpkin harvest day. We have multiple giant pumpkins, which is always a welcome addition to the farm. The general store is closed on Wednesdays. Ah yes, the consequences of my actions. It would be open right now if I had rebuilt the community center, but I didn't, so... You know. I head to a place that has become more and more reliable during the last few weeks, Georgia Mart. I buy two stacks of pumpkin seeds, toss my pumpkins into a chest to keep them safe wafy, and give a rabbit's foot to Robin as a thank you for making her house look absolutely sterling. I buy two full stacks of coal from Clint, that cost me half a million gold, I'm beginning to realize I make bad financial decisions. I use this coal to make 161 preserve jars, so I think this was worth it. Maybe it wasn't, but I'm gonna tell myself it was so I can feel better about my spending habits. A lovely little cutscene plays next where Linus and Willie invite Leo to live in Pelican Town. That was a very nice thing for them to do, this is one of my personal favorite cutscenes. I collect two bananas and two mangoes from a tree and toss one of each into the shipping bin. I place the banana on a podium and receive three golden walnuts for doing so. I donate the two snake vertebrae to the field office and breathe a massive sigh of relief as I collect another three walnuts as a reward. The only item I have left to donate is the fossilized skull. I for one look forward to getting it from the 749th golden coconut I crack open in the future. I spend 10 walnuts to have the island fast travel system unlocked, then I return to Pelican Town where I cover the farm in pumpkin seeds. Also, one thing I want to mention is that some of the oak trees in the quarry grew later than the rest, which means I don't get all of the oak resin on the same day. That is not a big deal at all, I just like to complain about things that don't actually matter like I said. I watch a movie with Leo in the theater, out of all of the villagers, Leo and the dwarf are the ones I'm most worried about. The theater will really help us with Leo's friendship, but we can't invite the dwarf to the theater. So I'm pretty much relying on myself to give him two gifts every week and talk to him as often as I can. I'm putting a lot of faith in myself, but that is something I've grown to be okay with during this last year. And I hope that's something all of you can be okay with too. Having faith in yourselves. Betting on yourself. Believing in yourself. I mean, this time last year I almost stopped uploading videos to YouTube. I had this idea in my mind that I would post the 100 days of Stardew Valley on easy mode video and that would be it. Fast forward a year and I'm still here making silly videos that people actually seem to enjoy and that's pretty cool in my opinion. 
I don't think I've ever talked about this in a video before, so I want to take this opportunity to say this whole experience has been a dream come true for me. Never in a million years did I ever think I would be in this position. This year has easily been the best year of my life, and I hope it was at least a good year for all of you too. I'm very grateful for everybody that has ever even watched any of my videos. It's still surreal, honestly, and slightly terrifying too, knowing that people watch the stuff I make. But it's also an amazing feeling at the same time. Anyway, I'm going to get back into character now, so to speak. I add just a teeny amount of preserve jars to the road and tunnel and fill them up with pumpkins. Just in case anybody is curious, the chest at the end of the tunnel contains the starting tools. I did not think I would come into this tunnel at any point during this playthrough, but I have, so I wanted to address that just in case anybody was wondering. Robin gives us two crafting recipes on day 74. We can now make the flute block and the drum block. Wonderful. I buy 10 stacks of wood from Robin, that was another half a million gold, again I really don't know why I spent all of this money on wood and coal when I could have just gone through the skull caverns and chopped down trees. I think my one brain cell has officially gone on vacation. I sell starfruit pumpkins and starfruit wine to revitalize my bank account. I make 57 kegs which I use to fill the remaining spaces in the second keg shed. I place the other 30 in the third shed. I warp to the desert where I spend the rest of the day in the Skull Caverns. On day 75, I ask the wizard to add the earth and ocean obelisks to the farm. Two down, two to go. I buy a full stack of starfruit seeds, show my casino membership card to the bouncer, spend 100,000 gold and 10,000 key coins, and use them to buy the alien Rurkrow. I make five flute blocks, the reason why shall be revealed shortly. I harvest the starfruit that has grown on Ginger Island, planting more starfruit seeds as I do. Truth be told, it was at this point that I began to grow increasingly nervous about having to earn another 12 million gold for the two obelisks and the golden clock. But I'm going to remain calm and simply hope for the best. I use a rain totem. You remember back in summer when I said I would be using a rain totem one more time on this island? This is that one more time. I use the tractor to break rocks at the dig site. I collected around 20 or so bones when I was in the Skull Cavern, so this was enough to get us up to the 100 bone mark for Gunther's special order. I had some bones lying in a chest here, so I collected those to make sure I would have enough on me to give to Gunther, then I did exactly that. Day 76. This season is flying by. I cannot believe we only have 8 more days left. I complete Mr. Key's prismatic range order, and finally buy every crafting recipe he has for sale. I also grab 120 magic bait. I use the 5 flute blocks I made to earn another 5 golden walnuts, and uh, yeah, that's, that's it for today. On the morning of day 77, I collect a walnut from a bush and another from a bush. I return home and enter the kitchen where I check how many dishes I can cook. Basically all I need is a squid, a void mayonnaise which is currently being made in a mayonnaise machine, and a winter root. Also, the pigs have not found any truffles, which is weird because they should have done so by now. I think it's because the area in front of the barn is covered with seeds, so I take away a few of them. I give Robin a birthday present. Looking back on this, I wish I had given her a plate of spaghettis instead. Spaghettis, for anybody who doesn't know, is of course spaghetti bolognese, which is a fantastic dish. I make my way to the volcano dungeon, where I spend 5 golden walnuts to have a bridge constructed. After doing so, I drink a monster musk and make my way through the area. Based on the research I have done, aka a complete guess, I believe I only need two more walnuts in this area. One for breaking open the... I, I, I don't actually know what they're called, but I'll point it out when I see it. And the other can be found in a rare chest. I collect the first walnut from the thingy I was talking about, but I was not able to find a rare chest. I found normal chests, but not the one I actually needed. But I'm happy with getting just the one walnut today. I give a ticket to Leo on day 78, then I return to the Volcano Dungeon once again. I have much better luck today as I not only find a rare chest, but it contains the walnut I was looking for. Now all I have to do is donate a fossilized skull to the field office to earn 6 walnuts and obtain one more walnut from a muscle node on the beach. I'm tired of doing the Prismatic Range special order and I don't want to play Junima Kart, so I'm not going to do either of these, sorry Mr. Key. I break quite a few muscle nodes, but I don't receive a walnut. Eh, we have plenty of time, it's okay. 
I give a mango to Leo, get one golden coconut from the island trader and take a look at the special orders board. Clint has decided to do us a massive favour. As you may have guessed, we get a crafting recipe for completing this one so I will gratefully accept it. Clint's shop is closed so I can't crack open my golden coconuts. I'm gonna assume Clint is some sort of clairvoyant and knows that I won't get the fossilized skull from either of my coconuts today and wanted to save me from being disappointed. I am being way too nice to Clint, why am I doing that? I warp to the desert where I collect some oak resin, buy 10 coconuts from Sandy, she sells coconuts on Mondays, and collect more oak resin from the quarry. I make 85 kegs and try to go to the theatre, but I'm too late. I believe that means I have wasted a ticket by giving one to Leo this morning. And that is exactly why I bought 30 tickets as soon as the theatre was rebuilt. I actually planned ahead, I know I'm surprised too. I place the kegs I made in the third shed to finish off the day. I give another ticket to Leo on day 79 and I watch the same movie for a third time I believe with him. This has got to be a really good movie if Leo does not mind watching it this many times. Sure enough, Clint was indeed trying to save us from disappointment yesterday as the golden coconuts yield nothing but pineapple seeds. With tears in my eyes, I grab yet another two golden coconuts from the island trader. I search the trees for more coconuts like my life depends on it, trade my walnuts for key gems, and buy 10 key seasoning and 20 more magic bait. I buy a couple of lead bobbers and trap bobbers and do a bit of fishing at the beach. I was hoping to catch the fish that appear in the submarine at the night market, but I did not get them. I think it was because I was standing in the wrong spot though, so I'll come back soon and try again. In the meantime, I finally obtained the fossilized skull. Alright, fall is now officially a success. Every other good thing that happened is exactly that. Good. This, however, is not just good. It is very good. I'm underselling it. This is phenomenal, breathtaking, sensational, and other adjectives of that nature. I use my key seasoning to make two gold star seafoam puddings. These give a plus 5 to our fishing skill, which means we are temporarily level 15. This is good because I need all the help I can get for what I'm about to do, and what I am about to do is catch every remaining fish. I begin with the glacier fish. I once considered this fish to be a massive thorn in my side. The mere idea of even attempting to catch it sent shivers down my spine. But now, now my spine is shivering for like a different reason. It's like it's shivering because I'm laughing and I'm like I'm laughing because of how easy this fish was to, to catch. And you know, I'm laughing pretty hard and like in fact I'm 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 like doubled over and clutching my stomach. That it that is how hard I'm. La Look, what I'm trying to say here is like this was a really easy fish to catch. Next up is the mutant carp. Once again, the seafoam pudding makes this pretty easy. The legend, my old rival. This one was also a walk in the park. If you're struggling with this fish or any fish really, make a gold star seafoam pudding if you can. The green bar takes up almost half of the meter. It gets a lot easier. I swap my magic bait out for normal bait now as I want to catch a walleye, which I do. I equip my magic bait again and use it to catch a squid at the beach followed by a blobfish. The blobfish is one of the three fish that can be caught in the submarine. This has really opened up the door for us to complete the fishing collection before the end of fall. I take the sturgeon out of the pond on day 80 and replace it with a tilapia. I catch a perch at the river in the forest along with a lingcod. Those are the only two fish I needed in this location. I drink a monster musk, then I spend the rest of the day in the mines. Clint wants us to defeat 50 bats, so that is exactly what I do. I manage to complete his order at 1.50 am, literally seconds to spare. The farm has been painted a lovely shade of orange on day 81 as all of the pumpkin seeds I planted have grown. A pig has produced a truffle, I assume this is because a ton of space was freed up when I harvested the pumpkins. A second truffle appears, which is exactly what I was hoping for. I toss one truffle into an oil maker to make truffle oil and toss the other into the shipping bin. I make 115 preserve jars and I have seemingly managed to get myself trapped in my preserve jars. I sadly have to break a couple of them to free myself, a necessary sacrifice in my eyes. I remove the chest with the starter tools as I need all of the space I can get in this tunnel for the placement of preserve jars. I toss the starter tools into the chest beside the bee house, immortalizing them forever. Though I did not use them at all during this playthrough, I still see their value. 
I place my remaining jars at the bus stop. They are absolutely going to get destroyed by the bus in the future, I reckon, but that is a risk I am willing to take, although I will complain about it when it happens. I return to the beach where I catch a spookfish and a midnight squid. The fishing collection has officially been completed. That is such a weight off my shoulders, and we will get a star drop tomorrow too. You know what? I'm going to say this in a way I rarely say it in my videos. I am simply happy. Sure enough, we receive the star drop for catching every fish on the morning of day 82. I collect three bananas from a tree, that's good, I will need ten of these when I buy the island obelisk. I donate the fossilized skull, completing the field office collection. I receive six of the seven remaining walnuts for doing so. I have also decided to set up a little crafting station in the cellar. Similar to what I did for the cooking recipes, I gather all of the items that will be needed for the crafting recipes and toss them into chests beside a workbench. The workbench allows you to craft items using ingredients stored in a chest beside it. I toss a tulip, jazz, poppy and summer spangle into a seed maker to get the seeds associated with each flower. I need these for a crafting recipe, and at this point I cannot be bothered getting enough key gems to buy the missing stock list, which would result in the general store selling all of these seeds in any season. I know this was a very lazy way to get these seeds, but hey, it worked. The only items I cannot craft right now are the desert warp totem and spring, summer and winter seeds. But I have already made all of those items except for the winter seeds, so I'm alright. I decide to cook every dish I can on day 83. I got a winter route while I was going through the mines and defeating bats so I can cook everything I have unlocked up to this point. A quick look at the dishes section confirms this. If the color of a dish is faded, it means we haven't cooked it and none of them are like that. I do the same thing for the crafting recipes, except for the winter seeds of course. I have to wait until winter to be able to craft those. Also, Clint literally just sent me the recipe for the bean hot pot, so I cooked that too. The Spirits E Festival is being set up today, so there's not much I can do, so here's footage of me giving the dwarf a gift. I collect the goods from the quarry, do some foraging in the desert, and spend most of the day in the Skull Caverns. I'm running dangerously low on iridium bars and I need 30 for the two obelisks, so I stay here until I have obtained 150 iridium ore. I toss pickled pumpkins, starfruit wine and some truffles into the shipping bin, then I attend the Spirits E festival for about 20 seconds. I buy a rare crow and the jack-o'-lantern crafting recipe, then I leave and craft the jack-o'-lantern. I earn almost 2 million gold from the items I shipped. It is day 84, which means it is also the final day of fall. I begin by watching the Queen of Sauce TV show. I cook a fiddlehead risotto, collect two bananas and partake in a mini starfruit harvesting session. I give Leo a mango, I probably didn't have to mention me giving a gift to Leo as often as I have, but I have no excuse. That was just poor script writing on my part, if I'm being honest. It honestly makes me so upset watching the footage of me spending hundreds of thousands if not millions of gold on wood while I write a script for this video. I wish I had not done that. I collect two rare crows from the museum, buy the desert obelisk, make 36 kegs and toss them into the shed. And I'm gonna call it here for fall. I feel like this was the most productive season so far and I'm cautiously optimistic when it comes to winter and the overall goal of achieving perfection by the end of it. Will I be able to do it? There's only one way to find out. I will see you all in winter. Day 85. We are officially in the endgame portion now. I meet the shadow guy at the bus stop and track him down to the community center. I find him in a bush and he gives me the magnifying glass. Like I mentioned previously, this allows us to obtain secret notes. At the special orders board, I have received too much of a good thing. The wizard and Caroline are both offering special orders. Each of these gives a crafting recipe as a reward. These are two of the final three crafting recipes I need to unlock. I wish, I really wish I could accept both of these right now, but I have to make a choice. I go with Caroline's order, I hope the wizard will give us that one again before the end of winter. He gave us three opportunities to get prismatic jelly, so I have faith. I think we'll be okay. I head to the sewers and give a gold star pumpkin to Krobus, as has become somewhat of a bi-weekly tradition. I head to Leo's treehouse on Ginger Island, and I don't know how to describe what you are seeing right now. 
This has happened before in a previous playthrough and I am still just as confused by it. I give a theater ticket to Leo along with a mango and harvest starfruit. I toss this starfruit into the keg sheds after grabbing some pineapple seeds I had in a chest. I make my way to the wizard's tower and buy the island obelisk, and with that, all four obelisks have been obtained. I do a bit of foraging slash digging at the bus stop, collect oak resin from a chest, and buy 625 starfruit seeds. I plant my pineapple seeds along with the starfruit seeds. I break a few muscle nodes on the beach and receive a golden walnut from one. That was the final walnut I needed to get. I watch a movie with Leo. These theater trips have been an absolute lifesaver when it comes to improving my friendship with him. I participate in a bit of a scallywag activity at the beach in the form of digging up the ground to get some winter forage. I take some crystal fruit out of the smelting chest, please ignore the state of it, I got lazy and tossed random items into it, and make winter seeds. I plant these seeds along with some deluxe speed grow. I didn't have to do this at all, I really only needed to make the seeds, but I might as well plant them. I receive the crafting recipe for the deluxe scarecrow on the morning of day 86. Now the only two crafting recipes I need are the two crafting recipes from the special orders I mentioned yesterday. I decide to spend the rest of the day in the Skull Caverns working on the monster eradication goals. On day 87, I exchange 200 Void Essence for the Void Ghost Pendant at the Desert Trader. I give this to Krobus, which is basically another way of asking him to move in with us and be our roommate. I spend the rest of the day in the mines working on the monster eradication goals again. I end up getting the skeleton goal completed along with the Void Spirit goal. This inspired me to go all in on the monster eradication goals, so days 87 through 94 are spent completing almost all of these goals. On day 95, I collect some oak resin from the desert tree farm and dig up the final artifact I need for the museum. I donate it and receive a star drop. I would like to personally thank the shadow guy for giving us the magnifying glass, as that allowed me to obtain the final artifact I needed. I spend the rest of the day in the volcano dungeon. The final monster eradication goal I need to complete is the magma sprite goal. I was able to do this before the night is over. That is all of the monster goals taken care of. I make 103 kegs on day 96 and put them in the third keg shed, filling it up to the brim. I harvest some pineapples in the greenhouse, nice, this will help us with Caroline's special order, which I throw into the shipping bin. In terms of perfection, I have some very good news. For the most part, anyway. All I have to do is buy the golden clock, max out a few more friendships, get Krobus to 12 and a half hearts to obtain the final star drop, cook two more dishes and craft two more items. I am slightly nervous when it comes to buying the golden clock and unlocking the crafting recipe associated with the wizard special order. I won't say any more about this whole perfection thing because I'm going to get very anxious if I do. The point is, there isn't much left for me to do so I won't be able to say as much as I normally do about the remaining days. On day 97, I harvest all of the pineapples and starfruit that have grown. I toss the pineapples into the shipping bin and put the starfruit into the three keg sheds. It is now cleanup time. Literally everything I have is getting tossed into the shipping bin. The only exceptions to this are the items I need for the last two cooking and crafting recipes. Starfruit, starfruit wine, pumpkins and pickled pumpkins. Oh, and a few items that can be used as gifts for the villagers. Everything else from ancient fruit, forage items, coffee beans and every crop I've grown during the previous three seasons, to fish, gems, artifacts, ores and bars is getting shipped today. I was hoping to earn around 2 million gold from this massive sale, which is actually what I ended up getting. Caroline sends us the crafting recipe for the solar panel on day 98. I give a gift to the wizard, then gifts to Vincent and Kent, followed by a gift to Harvey, then Lewis, then Clint, then the dwarf. Yeah, this is basically my way of showing whose friendships I still have to work on. Luckily, all of them have, like, maybe one or two hearts left, except for Clint, who has three. So I'll keep giving them gifts, and we will be good. Oh, and Leo too. I need to max out his friendship. And Sebastian. But that's it. I give Krobus a pumpkin on day 99 and receive the final star drop in return. The special orders board is offering nothing but heartbreak, misery and more heartbreak today as I am offered two special orders I do not need. I'm going to accept Piers... Oh, I said his name. Uh, I'm going to accept his order just because we have 14 days to do it, which means it's guaranteed to not show up next week. 
Considering next week is my final chance to receive the order from the wizard, I need all the help I can get with this one. The rest of the day, as well as days 100 through 105, are spent in the Skull Caverns. This is my insurance policy, we'll call it. If I don't get enough gold to afford the gold clock from selling starfruit wine and pickled pumpkins, then I'm gonna take all of the iridium bars I get from the Skull Cavern adventure period and sell those too. On day 106, I continue giving pumpkins to Krobus. I need to max out his friendship too, I can't forget about him. It is the moment of truth at the special orders board. Will we get a special order from the wizard? Yes. Yes, we actually do. We just got insanely lucky. I am so happy right now. I reset my farming skills, then I spend some time going through the icy floors in the mines. The ectoplasm we need to get for the wizard drops from a ghost, so I need to defeat them over and over again until one of them drops the item. After a few minutes, a ghost drops the ectoplasm. I deliver it to the wizard, completing his special order. I choose the perk that gives a 40% bonus when we sell artisan goods like the starfruit wine and pickled pumpkins. I receive the crafting recipe for the mini obelisk on day 107. I make that along with the solar panel and that is the final two items crafted. Marvelous. I grab the starfruit wine from the tree keg sheds along with the pickled pumpkins and sell them. This bumps us up to over 10 million gold. Not wasting any time, I immediately buy the golden clock. I harvest a tea leaf, toss it into a keg to make green tea and spend the rest of the day sitting on a chair outside my house. I harvest another tea leaf on day 108, collect my green tea and throw both of these items into the shipping bin. I spend the rest of the day sitting on a chair outside my house. On day 109, a notification pops up letting us know we have completed the shipping collection. I celebrate by sitting on a chair outside my house. Clint's birthday is on day 110, so I give him an amethyst, and I give the dwarf an amethyst too, maxing out both of their friendships. That means I have achieved max friendship with everybody. I celebrate by sitting on a chair outside my house. Day 111 is spent sitting on a chair outside my house. I learn how to make a shrimp cocktail on day 112, aka the final day of our journey. I cook it and unlock the achievement for making every dish. In the walnut room, the perfection tracker reveals we have reached 100% completion, aka perfection. On the final day of this playthrough, we have achieved the one goal we set for it. And with that, it is time to bid adieu to easy mode once again. And that is the end of the fourth and final playthrough. If you've made it this far, thank you, I hope you enjoyed watching my adventures. Remember to stay hydrated, and as always, thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, have a good one.